Last year, Gordon attempted to turn around restaurants all across America. In a moment, you'll hear how some of them are doing today. But first, a look back at what Finn McCool's was like when Gordon arrived a year ago. Finn McCool's is a family-run restaurant set in the heart of New York's exclusive beach resort, the Hamptons. It didn't take long for Gordon to see this Irish pub had lost its way. Yo, it's a grin. Buddy, the patriarch, struggled to keep his business together. We're in trouble right now. And his sons were ready to tear each other apart. You don't listen to anything I want to say. You almost want to tell him to shut up. While Jason tended the bar, Brian, the chef, was drunk with power in the kitchen. Enough. Get out of here. Melissa, Jason's wife, was caught in the middle. Brian and Jason butt heads a lot. My problems are more my brother. Help you out. Get out of here. I would definitely not recommend working with family. Hello. As soon as Gordon stepped foot into Finn McCool's, it was clear this family was in major trouble. So, what's the problem? Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait the family feud was taking a toll on buddy and his business we just don't have any money buddy is in debt somewhere in the hundreds of thousands a retired cop he poured his life savings into finn mccool's and watched it go right down the drain if there was no significant improvement how long could you afford to stay open for we're in trouble right now you know we're probably i would say five thousand dollars a week under what we need to survive so 20 grand a month. I haven't taken a check yet. You and know. you can't cash them? No. We need this for our families. I'm worried every night going to bed, I can be able to pay this mortgage. I can't describe to you how stressful that is. The debt and family fighting were dragging Finn McCool's down, and the food, unfortunately, only made matters worse. Here you are, some spring rolls with Coleman's mustard. Wow. Uh, are they popular on the menu? Um, people really like them. No doubt half the customers are drunk. Then the one dish an Irish pub should be known for, shepherd's pie, sent Gordon over the edge. It's just a big ball of grease. That's disgusting. Which one? Second door on the left. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh, my God. Having barely recovered from the shepherd's pie, Gordon decided it was time Chef Brian heard the painful truth. When a chef can't make a fucking shepherd's pie, it worries me. Was that you at your best? Whatever he has to tell me, I don't really care. To observe the staff of Finn McCool's in action, Gordon invited the local fire department. It's just dry. But the brigade was less than impressed. Is there something wrong? It's not hot enough. Back in the kitchen, Gordon was not happy with the amount of frozen food being used. When was the last time we got fresh vegetables in the house? Last summer. Last summer. Now I just cringe when I see them, that's all. And one shocking shortcut left Gordon in disbelief. Francis, Francis, he took it off the floor, put it in the fryer, and then back in the sauce. I've never, ever, ever seen anything quite extraordinary as that. Yeah, well, the fryer is going to, uh, it's going to take anything that come off the floor. It's going to, and that cleans it? It cleans it, right? Sterilize it. Sterilize it? Yeah, well, fuck me. That night, Buddy, the owner, and Brian, the chef, nearly came to blows. I'm not kidding. I said, all right. Over how Brian was running the kitchen. I'm fucking saying it right here. I'm doing what I got to do. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Get out of here. Yeah, would, would you who care who to take care of this ticket then? I didn't even want to be here anymore. Uh, I don't know if I wanted to be in the kitchen anymore. Never mind here. Yeah, I'm out of here. I'm done working here. Brian reached his boiling point, leaving Finn McCool's without a chef. If he wasn't my son, I'd have fired his ass out of here. With nowhere else to turn, Buddy and Jason... Shepherd's pie for six coming for them. But fuck say We're left running the kitchen yeah, and not way doing way. a very good job. Buddy, 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 no, no, no. Start again. With their chef gone, for the first time, Buddy and Jason realized the stress Brian was under. You get a renewed respect for what Brian has to go through. It's a tough job. All these times that I'm hard on my brother and we fight about stuff and I couldn't do what he does. I wonder Brian's a cranky bitch.
The next day, Gordon gained valuable insight into the pressures Brian faced. There's parts of me that feel for you in a way that I, I started to understand what's on your shoulders. Have you thought about quitting and, and setting up elsewhere? Constantly. Yeah. You've got to handle it a different way, in a way that you become the responsible one. OK? Thank you. Good man. Chef Ramsay definitely kicked me in the ass and got me excited to do what I'm doing. The following day, Gordon implemented some essential changes, beginning with a fresh new look. Welcome to Finn McCall's, yes? Lovely. Right. Wow. wow. Isn't that beautiful? That, that is, is gorgeous. Huh? Yes. Oh, my gosh. You walked in and you felt like you were in your home. It was, it was so comfortable. Holy Moses. Wow. I, I'm in shock. It was very cool seeing that, just a look on his face when we walked in there. Wow. I'm happy. But Gordon's key change, not surprisingly, was the menu. The first thing I did was got rid of two thirds of the menu because it wasn't fresh. What's the point in having it on there? Gordon even taught Brian his own family recipe for shepherd's pie. Up to drain off that fat. To think that we are fortunate enough to be schooled by a man like Chef Ramsay, boy, you'd be a fool not to uh, not to jump on this. Mmm. News of the relaunch spread throughout the Hamptons, and Finn McCool's was packed. Buy them in a high chair. Buy them in a high chair. This is their one big last chance at getting this thing right. We opened up the floodgate. Although it was their busiest night ever, yeah, I see you work for us on this, yeah. The Mazio family came together and proved they had what it takes to run a restaurant, at least for one night. Gordon Ramsay, you know, made me feel like uh, I wanted to cook again. There was a buzz. Everybody felt it, you know, and we were a family again. We appreciate what he did. All the work that he did didn't fall on deaf ears. I was proud, really proud. A year has gone by. Now let's see how Finn McCool's is doing today. I arrived at Finn McCool's over a year ago to a family in absolute turmoil. I'm dying to find out what's going on. Are they still arguing? Are they still fighting? Has Buddy cashed his checks? Come on. Oh, no! Hey, I need you. Look at you. <laughs> hey, how, how are you? Man? What's going on? How are you, buddy? I'm well. It's nice, nice to see, see you. When Chef Ramsay arrived here, hey, look at you. I thought he was going to be happy. And I was glad that he could see that his words and his advice didn't fall on deaf ears. Melissa! Yeah, nice to see you. Likewise. When Gordon Ramsay first came in, I was actually excited because I knew he was going to be proud of us. Good to see you. So I didn't feel nervous like I did last time. Where's the arrogant fucker? Where is he? <laughs> Where is he? Hey, Brian! Hey! Well, Chef Ramsay, you hear his voice, and it's just like you go, uh-oh. Hi, my man. All right, good to see you. Good to see Pleasure. you, too. Likewise. I want him to see that I listened to what he told me and hopefully make somebody like of his stature proud of me. Am I glad to be back here? You know that? Uh, huh? I hope so. Last time I saw you, I looked at a chef that was pissed off and didn't want to be here. All right. Yeah, I'm out of here. I'm done working here. Are you busting his balls? Yes, Chef. No. Yes, Chef. No, chef. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's still an arrogant bastard. <laughs> but he's my arrogant bastard, and I love him. Business, how's it been in the last 12 months? We are up average across the board. 35%. Uh -huh. Great. Are you cashing your checks? Many dollar question. Oh, yeah. Cheers, everybody. When I first arrived, losing 20 grand a month, yeah? There's no losses per month? No. Are you making money? Yeah. We're at a point right now where I don't know a dime. It's nice to go home and know that you can pay your bills and wake up in the morning and go to work and you're going to make some more money. It's a pretty good feeling. We are just heads and tails above where we were. And I owe that to Chef Ramsay. How have you been? Yeah, had a little glitch there for a little bit. What happened? I had a heart attack. You was? Yeah. Yeah. My dad's heart attack was a, it was a uh, very traumatizing experience for in a lot of different ways. And it was bad. You know, he, the doctor told him he could have he could have died. That was a very scary time. Who's getting the prime rib? Realizing how close we were to losing him. It was beyond scary. I was down for a few weeks, actually. And I was shocked the three of them stepped up, took the bull by the horns, and when I came back, everything was perfect. 
I don't think last year we could have done it. If, if this would have happened before Ra Ramsey came, I think that Finn McCool's would have been doors locked, done. Bloody good to see you now. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. It really is that fucking handshake, I swear to God. Honestly, I yeah. feel like you crushed my fingers up. <laughs> it takes three days for the blood to go back. Yeah. Since Chef Ramsey was here, we learned a lot of really valuable lessons. When we all worked together, it runs smooth. I'm so happy to see my son enjoy what he's doing now. Good. Brian's passion for cooking has come back, and it's stronger than ever. I feel a lot better. Uh -huh. You get good feedback, which makes you want to go to work the next day. After Chef Ramsey left, Brian was a changed person. You know, just a, a new man walked into the kitchen, and the food that he's putting out is, not only is it beautiful, it tastes wonderful. We have people coming from all over, and they're blown away by how good the food is. Last time, there was so much frozen food here, I got upset with you. Yes. Said, when was the last time we got fresh vegetables in the house? Last summer. How much of your produce is fresh now? All of it. All of it? Yeah. Show me your freezer. Please. Yeah. Chef Ramsay definitely set the bar high as far as standard-wise. But, you know, how do you not listen to what Chef Ramsay tells you to do? Fresh meat. Fresh, fresh meat. Fresh vegetables. That was Chef Ramsay's thing. You know, he was like, you're an island. You know, we're Long Island. Monkfish, calamari. So it was crazy not to have fresh seafood. That's the marinade for the chicken. For the world-famous chicken wings, yes. Delicious. Does Francis still come in and pick them off the floor? Moved on to other He's things. gone, yes? Yes. Uh, right, what's the special today? Um, well, tonight we're uh, a nice fried local calamari. We're doing a little uh, roasted pepper remoulade with that. Lovely. Shepherd's pie. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're trying to figure out a way to market because I'm getting phone calls from St. Louis for some. From St. Louis? St. Louis. For shepherd's pie? Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, I change it depending on seasonally what kind of vegetables we're going with. Spring rolls. Are they here? Yes. Oh, shit. By popular demand, we did have to put the spring rolls back on the menus. Spring rolls, what have you done with them? Last time we were using carvings from the, from the roast yeah. beef. Throw it in the corner. Shit bits. Right. Now, now they're fresh. The cabbage is steamed directly for that. You sound proud of them. They're, they're nice, and the people love them. I'd like to taste them again. I hope so. If you've reinvented it. Wonderful. You sound so confident, Brian. You know that. We're having fun. It's refreshing. It's great. Yes. My brother's attitude's changed completely. It really has. I mean, he's a chef, and chefs are crazy. They'll always be crazy. But <laughs> his attitude's so much more positive. It, Makes the whole family dynamic a lot easier. Here you go, Chef. Thank you, my darling. Seafood chowder. Lovely, thank you. And our famous spring rolls. <laughs> I think they're good, but not only do I think they're good, the customers love them. It's kind of our signature thing. Mm -hmm. They are nice. That is delicious. Thank you for somebody of that stature to come in and compliment you on things. It's amazing. Tasty. Yeah. Absolutely tasty. We stuck with what he showed us how to do. We're reaping the benefits because we did. He made us who we are right now. We did everything he said, and he was spot on. What he's done here has uh, it's had a lasting effect, and it, and it will. It's, it's, uh, he's helped us go in a positive direction. This is a 1,000 miles away from what I tasted last time. More importantly, over that, you guys look happy. Spring rolls. Can I have the recipe? No. <laughs> <laughs> you selfish bastard. <laughs> the Finn McCall's family restaurant, yes. And more importantly, lunch. buddy's health. Lunch. Uh, yes, yeah. good yeah. health, Thank best wishes. Right. Thanks. Brian. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> I know. It's my boy. That is one very happy family, and it's so nice to see because they're back in love, they're busy, and they're making money. Game over. Last year, when Gordon rode into Tuckahoe, New York, a wealthy commuter town outside of Manhattan, he was at first intrigued by the old stone mill. Beautiful. What a beautiful building. What scares me is why no one's eating here. I'm about to find out. Business at this upscale restaurant had ground to a halt. There was Dean, the cocky owner. I don't believe there's a better operator or restaurateur than me. Who was desperate to succeed. Read the fucking ticket! While Mike, the chef, had lost hope. Do I still have passion for food? No. Barbara, Dean's wife, was a nervous wreck. This restaurant isn't just a restaurant. It's our life, it's our future, it's our children's future. 
Six years ago, Dean bought this 200-year-old mill with the dream of turning it into a restaurant. I have a reoccurring nightmare that I've had from day one. What happens if I open up, staffed up, food ready, and no one decides to come here? Well, it happened this year. What the? Good. How are you? I'm Dean Lorenzo. Nice to see you. Well. Very nice to see you. No matter what you say, the guy's a winner. His Michelin stars are like World Series rings. He's got them. But it didn't take long for Dean to change his tune about Gordon. Look at that. What's that squashed into? OK, that's it there. <laughs> right, that sits on top. Was the chef a mechanic? You know, this is my house. He was in my house, and he was embarrassing me. OK. And it only got worse when Gordon tried one of the specialties of the house. It's gross. Looking at it, it looked like it'd come out of a baby's diaper. Honestly, your food's crap. I was pissed. I wanted to take the plate and smash it on top of the chef's head. After being wounded by Gordon's criticism of the food, there was more pain when Gordon delved into the restaurant's finances. Are you aware of the current financial situation, Baba? Um, he kind of keeps me in the dark a little bit. So. I don't want her to worry. If we had to close yeah. tonight, what would we owe? Half a million. Half a million? Yeah. Got money tied up in the home, mortgage-wise? Oh, sure. I just choose not to deal with it right now. I'll let him deal with it. Yeah, if the house gets taken away and you lose that, then you have every reason to be worried. A financial crisis and bad food weren't the only problems plaguing this restaurant. Are they okay? Yeah. On weekends, when the restaurant was busy, Dean tended to overstay his welcome at the tables. Just okay? Yeah. Just okay. Just okay. And in the kitchen, he seemed more concerned about the speed of the cooking. I need a risotto and a tilapia, and that's done. Than the quality. It got me very frustrated. We let the customer wait. If he waits 20 minutes and he's happy, or he waits 20 minutes and gets crap, what's worse? Does it make you feel better if we rush this to the table? No. I'm amazed. You know that more than anything. I don't know. I don't know what you, I don't know what you want me to say to you. Your restaurant is on the ass. After a disappointing dinner service, Gordon confronted Dean over his lack of commitment to make real changes. I think you're treating this like a game. How dare you accuse me of not having a commitment? Dare you? I don't know, dare you. I'm telling you. You're not telling me anything. You, this is your own figment of your imagination that I don't have a commitment to this place. You just give me two minutes, you guys. Do you mind? You float on the customers coming around, blowing smoke up your ass. That's right, I do. When I ask people how their food is and they tell me it's good, it makes me feel good. I don't rob around my customers kissing. How was it? Please tell me. You don't go to the table and ask people how their meal was? Or no, you, you probably pay 10 people no, to go to the no, table. I listen to the phone every morning to see how fucking yeah. fully booked I am. This is what to I get stand. paid to do. To stand in here. That's what, what I get paid to do. To, to stand, stand here next to people and give them a good fucking experience. And that's what I get paid and for. Watch this shit come out. No. That's and your I don't opinion. feel good about it. No, I don't feel good there about it. There you go again. That's my I don't opinion. feel good about it. You fucking do. It's what I gotta do. That's what I do. You're a fake. Fuck you. You're a fake. You're a fucking fake. Is that how you're going to act? Walk away? You're not face it like a fucking man? The next morning, undeterred by Dean, Gordon canvassed the town to see how the old stone mill could carve a niche in the neighborhood. This place has got every chance of becoming a phenomenal steakhouse. Dean, still reluctant to change, was not convinced. I'm fuming. That was your resurrection of the place? Hey. I'm I've got 12 successful rations, highly profitable, and you, my man, missed out on a fucking trick. You've got some serious thinking to do. Before Gordon could convert the old stone mill into a steakhouse, he knew he had to work with Chef Mike to get his passion back. First big change, prime rib. Prime rib. Gordon's idea of a steakhouse would really work here. He's 100% right that there is nothing else in the area. Gordon added a number of exciting meat dishes and said goodbye to some old stone mill classics, like the funnel salad. Meltdown. OK. <laughs> yes? Oh, just think of the complaints. What? You're not stuffing my salad in a funnel? After re-energizing Mike, Gordon knew he would have to get through to Dean if there was any hope of saving the old stone mill. The fascinating thing about you, Dean, is that you're you're scared of failure. Walk a mile in my shoes, and then we'll talk. I failed before. 
in business. When? When I opened a restaurant up in my hometown thinking I was the dog's bollocks. And it made me the person I am today. Don't be scared. You can't keep on sidestepping problems. You're right. I got to implement changes to make this work this time. I can't wait any longer. Now confident that Dean was ready to accept change, Gordon unveiled his plan, beginning with some aesthetic changes outside. Oh, look at it. Oh, Beautiful. And in. Oh, my goodness. It's open. It's classic. Barbara, what do you think? Gordon. Got rid of the dark colors. Too depressing. Yes. I'm man enough to admit that it's great. Minutes after the doors opened for the relaunch, the steakhouse was jammed with eager customers, including the mayor. The Kobe beef, medium low. But an hour into this important service, the kitchen printer broke down, and Chef Mike and his staff were totally confused. I need the mayor's table, man. I'm not getting tickets through this printer right now. Please help me. I don't rip have medium the rare. ticket is what I'm saying. But it fucking, if this is the copy, you got to have the other half. This goes from the salad printer. It's been an hour, and I got nothing. Read the fucking ticket. Oh, fucking hell, here we go. What the fuck? Read the ticket. It's the last fucking table! Before the dinner service spun completely out of control... Mike, just come around for two seconds, please, yes? Gordon got the staff focused again. Let's get this thing back online, especially at this critical moment. All right. This is going to make or break this place. I will be right back, and I will wrap those up for you. Thank you. To medium rare. Everyone rallied, and the night finished on a high note. Sorry for the delay. Give me a steak knife, please. Well, bon appetit. I certainly hope it was worth the wait. Excellent. By the end of the evening, it was clear Gordon's vision for the Old Stone Mill was a success. The most important thing is the confirmation that it can work. The potential is staggering. Now that you know what to do, don't stop doing it. Thank you. Gordon Ramsay, he's such a blessing to our family that we could never, ever thank him enough for all that he's done for us. I think you got something fucking phenomenal on. Now I have something to really be proud of. Thanks. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, man. I'm excited about what the future holds here. A year has gone by. Now let's see if Dean stuck to Gordon's plan and turned his steakhouse around. When I first arrived at the Old Stone Mill, I fell in love with the building. It's beautiful. What I didn't fall in love with was the food. So we changed the direction of the restaurant and its owner, Dean. I'm dying to find out what's going on. Well, well, well. Look at you. Look at you. Immaculate as ever. <laughs> How are you, buddy? I thought you, I thought you forgot uh, about me. I have very mixed emotions about Gordon coming back here. And I don't know whether I want to hug him or punch him. What is this? Botox or is it just you? Come on. I'm just asking stop. you. Just stop me. with that. <laughs> look, look at you. <laughs> like a male model, for God's sake. Yeah, well. Huh? Family all well? Everyone's great. Yep. It's been real good. How's business been? Initially? Yep. Double. That's fantastic. And then some. Um, New York that's Times. New York Times. Literally last week. That's last week. What was the food like? She, she loved it. That's fantastic. Yeah, man. Where are we a uh, year on? This winter, I am up 25 to 30%. Last year, at this point, I was falling in the red severely. And this year, I'm not. I'm maintaining. People are paid. The staff is paid. My mortgage is paid. And that's a good thing. Who's in the kitchen? Mike. Yeah? Where is it? Right there. No. No. You know the funnel. Oh, come on. Oh, shit. Touching a tender cord with the funnel issue with me, you know. I bought this just, just for you. Before. And you owe me four dollars. You burned my last two. Oh, just think of the complaints. What? You're not stopping my salad in a funnel? Hey. Where did that come from? Huh? The car? Uh, it's to fill the salt and pepper shakes. <laughs> we use a different man today. I could kind of get like this guy. Last time I saw you down here, you looked like a man that was hurting. Now you look like a completely different guy. Yeah. It's been a lot less stressful. So the weight's gone, the, the acid reflux is gone, it's all good. <laughs> My own passion for cooking has changed. It's uh, when, when you want to come to work and you're excited to come to work, it shows. Which wasn't there, I'd say, a year ago before Chef got here the first time. Happy with the steakhouse? Yes, sir. Yes. And Friday, Saturday night, how many covers? What are you doing? I'd say anywhere from 120, 150. 
Well, overall, business is better. People need to call for reservations. There is a wait on, on weekend nights. The numbers are up, so that numbers don't lie. Yeah. Can I just say, seriously, you look great. Thank you. Relax. So do you. And not the kind of sort of worried individual I saw last time. You know, I was a mess. Read the fucking ticket! Oh, fucking hell, here we go. What the fuck? But I tell you what, I, I don't put out fires anymore. I, I'm, I'm growing the place instead of worrying about sustaining it. You were heavily in debt last time I saw you? Correct. What's the situation now? This spring, I will certainly chip away. Brilliant. But I caught up, and I'm current. Hey. Here's the glamour. How are you, Miss Ali? Very good. Um, good How are you? Very well, thank you. I was most proud to show him my wife being comfortable and at ease and happy and not crying. He looks a different man. What's going I mean, it's not yeah. just he's using bravado with confidence, but relaxed and relaxed, it's so nice to see. Stress-free. Yeah. Yeah, it's a light relief, right? Oh, it's such a relief. It's, it's a relief just to wake up and see a smiling face instead of seeing somebody stressed out. It's always stress, but it's good stress now. Yeah. That's a happy problem, being busy. Yeah. It's a privileged dilemma. Yeah. And you were that close. I was, I was screwing yourselves was, and the restaurant. It was almost gone. I almost so it was heartbreaking for me. Right. And then you were such a stubborn fucker to get through to. You don't like the truth, Dean. No, I, I do like the truth. You. No one's I burnt your fucking I, I heard the truth of my life more than you'll ever hear the truth. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's what you think. Yeah, it's like, Christ, I like banging my head against the old stone mill. Because you weren't for it to begin with, were you? You um, mentioned Steakhouse and it I didn't, was, I was the penny didn't drop straight away. Well, you know why? Because... Because you were scared of change, weren't you? You were sort of scared within. You were yeah, sort of... yeah, I didn't want to fail. I, no. you know, I, wanted to, I didn't want to lose what I had. No. Couldn't afford no, to. No. You know, when you can't pay your bills and you're not thinking clearly, you, you make stupid choices. Yeah. I made some stupid decisions. Yeah. It wasn't the changes he made to the old stone mill. It was the changes that he made to me. Gordon gave me a swift kick in my you-know-what. I'm happy you're both happy. I needed you in here. I was lucky enough and blessed to, to get you in here. I weathered the storm, it's behind me, and I guess I can give Gordon credit for that, as much as I hate to. <laughs> I'd like to introduce somebody very special, Gino Tool from the New York Beef Industry Council to present a very special award. Thank you. We'd like to say congratulations on your incredible turnaround and continued success. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Very nice of you. <laughs> Woo okay, okay. Well done. Congratulations. To Absolutely. get an award from the New York Beef Industry Council is special and something I'll never forget, but to get it from him is even more. Absolutely Very brilliant. Nice. Yes. Very nice. yeah. Thank you so much, Gene. The core of what he gave us is certainly there, and, and I stay true to the concept and to him. Like he said, it won't happen overnight, but stay the course and, and it'll pay off. And, and his words were never so true, it certainly paid off. Located just outside of New York City in Belmore, the Mixing Bowl was a thriving restaurant 10 years ago. But in the last few years, business had dwindled to almost nothing. I'm nervous, because this looks dreadful. Billy, the owner and chef, was barely holding on. I'm so stubborn about keeping it alive, but am I hurting myself? Am I hurting my family? Mike, the manager, was losing it. I wasn't told! Why do you keep morning. saying that? I'm pissed off! Lisa, Billy's wife, wanted to close the doors. I can't sacrifice myself and our children for the mixing bowl anymore. This once popular restaurant was on its last legs. And when it came to the food, Gordon had little, if anything, nice to say about Billy's cooking. Zucchini pancakes. It's like having a mouthful of glue. It didn't blow me away today, and it's very sad. End of story. Gordon noticed immediately that Billy operated more like a line cook, never leaving the kitchen. Do you ever go out there? Yeah. When I, you know, it dies down, I'll walk around allowing manager Mike to run the business into the ground. I'm taking 50% off my check. 15? 50, no, no, 50. Holy smoke. But Mike's ridiculous coupons paled in comparison to his promotional signs. All of them go in the window at some point. Where did you get all these from? I have a place. They make them up for me. It was expensive. Is there anything else that I should know? That's, that's, that's it. That is it. Well, there's, well, well, oh no. Gordon, can you come here? It's a little big. What in the fuck? Free appetizer with dinner. Ooh, fucking hell, man, man. Get me out of here.
Gordon knew it was time to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Billy and Lisa. I've got to be fucking brutally honest with you, you know that. You seriously have to start thinking as a businessman and then watching you cooking. You look like a man that's dying to be put out of his misery. Lisa, you may be right. Maybe we should close this place down fucking tonight. If the restaurant dies, it'll be like a death in the family. I'm gonna turn this around. Seriously? Yeah. Unless you change, you'll be gone in six weeks' time. The next day, Gordon was on a mission to turn the mixing bowl around. It's time to say goodbye to the past. Later that morning, Gordon revealed his plan to help the mixing bowl make its mark in this competitive neighborhood. Healthy is something that's not even listed anywhere near here. Taking advantage of a need in the area for healthy dishes, Gordon and Billy went to work in the kitchen, creating new specials for the next dinner service. This is the kind of food that the mixing bowl should be serving. This is um, poached salmon topped with a um, walnut pesto. It's exciting to realize you can do things healthy and it just opened my eyes to a whole new world. Push the salmon, please, yeah? Okay, okay. Push the salmon special, Thank yeah? You. If you like yeah. salmon, yeah, I would try salmon. The success of the new salmon dishes with customers validated the new direction of the mixing bowl. Good. We're selling the salmon. Good. But the front of the house was still suffering from Mike's managerial style. Is he working out? All he does is stand and talk and lean and pray. Kimmy, you gotta work the tips, baby. It's impossible to work with him, and he takes half of your tips. You get five times more pay than the servers. What the hell is your problem? And in a post-dinner meeting, the staff's and Billy's wife Lisa's frustration with Mike reached a breaking point. When I'm busting my own tables and everybody else is running around crazy. We are aware of what the problems were. I'm fighting for my life here. You right now need to step up to the plate and make the changes every freaking day, every minute of the day. That's it. Billy, that's the first time you sounded like a boss because it's your fucking life on the line. Don't ever forget that. With everyone now on the same page about the plan moving forward, Gordon's team gave the mixing bowl decor a facelift. Wow. It's gorgeous. It looks like a restaurant now, doesn't it? Yes. Are you serious? going to start spending time in your own restaurant now? Yes. Saying hello to customers? Yep. It's gorgeous. Lisa, have you got any tissues? <laughs> ah, hey. And to complement the decor, Gordon designed a menu rich in healthy ingredients. Good luck. Yes? Let's go, big boy. It was time for the relaunch. But minutes after opening, it was clear that Mike had overbooked the restaurant. It looks like we have 47. Oh, no. And on top of that, there was a mix-up with the reservation for the New York Dragons football team. You're overlooking extremely important things. I was not told about the Dragons. I found no, out. Like, why do you keep morning. saying that? Because I wasn't. I wasn't told. That's it. Not my fault. Hey, yes. Can you fuck off outside now? Let me just tell you something. You've got one problem here. Mike. Mike's going to have to change. Like, the place has changed. It's everybody else in the place is going to get a second chance. So Mike should get a second chance. After Mike's blow up, everything settled down, and the relaunch was a success. All right, table two's getting up. We're going to push it together for a table of four. It's so different. It feels great, right? Everybody's really loving the food. We are going to build the best damn restaurant that, that ever existed. And at the end of the night, Billy finally came out of his kitchen. I'm so proud of him. Couldn't be more proud of him. The difference tonight from when I first arrived was extraordinary. You're talented, big boy. You've got to make that transition from a chef to a restaurateur. Ladies for oh, <laughs> oh. 
I got the message on how I have to change to make this place the best it could be. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Last year, when Gordon arrived at the mixing bowl, he found an empty restaurant that was about to go bust. Oh, this is quiet. Mike, the manager, was spinning out of control. Can we please move on? That's it! While Billy, the owner, was stuck in the kitchen. You're holding everything up now with all this crap. And Billy's wife, Lisa, had simply given up. My hope is really gone for this place. But by the time Gordon left, all three were re-energized and determined to succeed. I'm so proud of him. Couldn't be more proud of him. Now it's time to find out how they're doing today. When I first arrived at the mixing bowl, everybody was stressed the hell. Mike, the manager, was running around like a fucking headless chicken. Lisa, the chef's wife, well, she wanted to close the place. And Billy, the chef, he was just chained to the stove. Now, when I left, things were much better. I hope they're still like that. Let's go. Well, there's no signs, and there's customers. What are you doing here, out? Huh? I'm out the front. How are you? Are you well? Good to see you, my man. You well? Huh? How are you? Nice big smile on your face. The last year since uh, Chef Ramsay's been here has been amazing. Business has improved three, four times what it was. It's been unbelievable. That's looking nice. Nice to see you. you know, are you well? Good to see you. Huh? Good to see you, my man. Pleasure. Huh? How's things? Things have been great. We made top 20 best restaurants in Long Island for 2007. Really? Yeah. That's great news. I think it makes him proud to see that, you know, he gave us the tools. He did all this for us. Well done. Are you happy? Awesome. Yes. Very good. Happy. Yeah. And feedback from the customers? Great yeah. feedback. People love the food. Uh -huh. Prior to Chef Ramsay coming here, I never thought that the restaurant could change the way that it did. We turn away 50, 100 people a night now for dinner. And we need a 300 seat restaurant. Coupons? What, what? No, 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 we don't need coupons. Must, there's got to be one. No, we don't need no, it. No, no, no. Don't need it. I'm taking 50% off, my sure. chef. 15. 50, no, no, 5 0. 50. The biggest lesson that I learned from Gordon Ramsay was that people should want to come to your restaurant. You shouldn't have to bribe them. I see the window so clear. No signs. No Great. Sign. You must have thought about something along the way. A little sign. A, bit, a picture of us up there. That's about it. Picture of who? All of us. You and I? Together? Oh, oh yeah. I haven't seen that. Oh, my God, it is that. People drive by like, wow, Gordon uh, Ramsay, you know? Remember the last time we were out here, you were showing me all your signs? Yeah. Holy mackerel. I tried everything. The customers, they're the ones that are spreading the word, so we don't need any signs or any promotions or any gimmicks anymore. I did not expect to see you in the dining room, yeah? Are you spending time between kitchen and dining room? Yeah, half and half. Half and half, that's great. You getting to meet customers? Yeah. That's fantastic. How are you doing tonight? I think the most important thing Chef Ramsay like did to help out the restaurant was, I think, in me. How are we doing on table five? And bringing me out into the restaurant and start running the whole restaurant instead of half of it. Hi. Hey, Hi. look at you. Another <laughs> smiley face. How are you doing? Good to see you, my darling. You oh. The past year has been unbelievable since Chef Ramsay came. Are we going to catch up? Funny. Five yeah. minutes somewhere? Everything's different at the mixing bowl. Last time we sat in this office? I wanted it. Yeah, close the place. You've had enough. Lisa, you may be right. To put you out of your misery, maybe we should close this place down tonight. To see him now, standing there, I mean, he's a different guy. He's transformed. So different. Yeah. Different when he comes home, different when he's here. Brilliant. No regrets? No. No. No regrets. Do you still want to kill or strangle Mike? You know, I don't. He's really turns around. No, I just need that food. Okay, I'll take the key. Thank food, you. Huh? You got it. Mike is completely different now. And when was the last time he flipped out? When the dragons came in. Dragons, right over here. I put them on at 7 o'clock. Can we please move on? That's it. He's really been much calmer. <laughs> He's been much calmer. Oh, Everyone's just so much happier. And I think everyone's a lot more at ease now. Mike's not yelling. I'm not yelling. No one's yelling. It's very nice. <laughs> Are you happy that you didn't sell the restaurant? I am. I am. At this point, I really am. Yeah. Thankfully, everything's yeah. going great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you've transformed. I mean, you've just yeah, you've got this glow on you. I, I don't know where the hell you got <laughs> it from, but it's completely right? He's so much easier to be around. Yeah. I mean, I talk now. Yeah. Right. No, yeah. it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's Everybody. Nice. Everyone. It's true, though. It's been quite a ride. It's changed my life 100%. It's been unbelievable. This is his life, cooking 
being a chef, having a restaurant, he loves it. I'm really proud, yeah, really proud and very happy that it's going so well. Don't stop, nope. please. And as a way of saying well done, this is for Billy, that is for you. Thank you. You deserve it. Thanks. Really well done. Uh, well done, buddy. Uh, uh, Steve Jerry, yes? The Mixing Bowl is awarded Gordon Ramsay's seal of approval for excellence and consistency, quality, and overall customer satisfaction. It's like a thousand pounds lifted because I'll never forget where I was. A lot of businesses don't always get a second chance. So I don't take anything for granted. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is the longest we've ever spent together without any tears. <laughs> huh? Come here. <laughs> yes? Hey. Well done. And that, yeah, I really mean. Don't stop. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. It's so hard to believe that this place nearly closed. They're happy, they're making money, and they're doing a fucking good job. Success is the only sign they need. Manhattan may be the mecca for great restaurants, but last year, in the heart of the Big Apple, Gordon found his biggest challenge ever. There's one restaurant that needs my help more than any other, and it's right down there. Dylan's, an Indian restaurant in Midtown, was a catastrophe. The menu was confusing. Where are we choosing from? Which menu? The food was appalling. OK, it is disgusting. And the kitchen was infested. The kitchen's not clean. Martin, the general manager, didn't seem to care. <laughs> Andrew, the operations manager, struggled to keep everything running. If something's broken, I fix it. I make sure that there's toilet paper to wipe your butt with. While Mohammed, the owner, was losing a fortune. For the last six months, we are losing like twenty to $30,000 a month. This Indian eatery was a disaster. Martin, general manager, this is Dylan's. Welcome. Dylan's Indian restaurant. Indian restaurant, yes. Doesn't Indian sound Indian. like an Indian, does it? Dylan's. No. No. Dylan's. It didn't take long for Gordon to realize he was facing a huge challenge. Why is it over? First off, the menu wasn't even Indian. British, Italian, buffalo. Yes. The only thing that's not on here is Chinese. Secondly, and more importantly, the dishes right. were barely edible. There's two fritters. They're both vegetable. Yes. There's meat in there. Um, that one's got meat in there. It's not vegetarian. It tastes like lamb. You guys are killing me right now. The sorted vegetarian appetizer plate has to be vegetarian. Vegetarian? He okay. just had a meat one. After having a vegetarian appetizer that wasn't even vegetarian, Gordon dug into his next dish, beef buna. That is not a piece of beef. Does that look like a piece of beef to you, my darling? It looks like pork. And if that's beef, then, hey, I was born in Bangladesh. He says it's pork. Pretty sure it's pork. Is it beef? Pretty much everything that could go wrong went horribly and catastrophically wrong. Where do you start on this one? Gordon knew there was an awful lot to do in a short amount of time. Welcome. But before he could start, he had to observe Dylan's in action. Are we going to reset this table? Eeny, meeny, mine and mo, catch your manager by the toe. You are what? Floor. You're the floor manager. Floor manager. Holy mackerel. OK, Farouk. Oh, fucking holy Moses. Hello, floor manager, operations manager, general manager. Anybody? Mamid. Can you explain to Gomez? Yes, yeah. That we've got to stop putting things on the floor. Mati yes. Mati de, mati de uh, yeah. It's unhygienic. Unhygienic, and it could but be dangerous too. It's very dangerous. Yes. What's going on back there? The ice cream is taking so long. Not surprisingly, chaos in the kitchen resulted in poorly prepared food. This is raw. Thank you very much. You. And unhappy customers. In two minutes for leaving. And you know we asked like. Seriously, two minutes for leaving. But the next day, Gordon uncovered Dylan's biggest horror lurking in the basement. What's that smell? What? Is that for rats or mice? No. It's rat droppings. Look at them all. Oh my good God. Oh my God, look. I've got one in my fucking hair. Cockroaches. Box is full of them. Look. Look at them all. Oh. Oh no. Look at that! Oh my god! Martin! Shh! 
shocked by the deplorable conditions, Gordon called for the management to meet him in the kitchen. Are you in charge of this? Are you responsible for this? Uh, gentlemen, it gets worse than that. It's green. It's beyond edible. Look at the color of those chicken wings. Everything in there was putrid. How long has that been in there? Can Give I... me an answer, because yeah. I'm shitting myself. Yes, uh, there's a head chef responsible for this. A this will fight. kill somebody. We're not passing the buck, but... I know my general manager knows what the fuck's going on in my fridges. Let me just tell you something. Yes. I've eaten here. The kitchen is closed. Right now. Out there and tell them the truth. Gordon was so outraged, so angry. From green burgers to fucking furry cucumber. Out there. Hello. Hi. I'm sorry to inform you that we are not going to be serving dinner this evening. Um, Chef Ramsay's shut down the kitchen. What do we need? A death in the restaurant before some fucker gets a grip? Undeterred by the disgusting conditions, Gordon returned to the restaurant, equipped to deal with the mess. You dirty little fuckers. Where are you? With the help of professional steam cleaners. Guys, kitchen straight through there. Gordon and the staff of Dylan's worked through the night, getting rid of all the old rotten food and sterilizing every square inch of the restaurant. In the days that followed, Gordon's design team dramatically changed the decor. Dylan's drab and dreary look Take off your blindfold. was transformed into a sleek, contemporary Indian restaurant. Wow! wow. Haven't they done an amazing job? This is beautiful. Outside, Gordon installed an eye-catching awning, revealing the restaurant's new, authentic Indian name, Purnima. But the most critical change was Gordon's decision to enlist one of New York's top Indian chefs, Vikas Khanna, to help make over the menu. After the trio, we have the chicken korma. The new menu featured classic Indian dishes with a modern twist. Hello, good evening. On the night of the relaunch, with Vikas in charge, the kitchen got off to a great start. Let's go. But unfortunately, poor management created chaos in the dining room. So that they want the lamb. Who? Uh, the ladies. The, yeah. The disorganization in the dining room created confusion in the kitchen. Who's running the restaurant? And customers were forced to suffer the consequences. It's unbelievable. It's cold. They forgot our order. Fed up with the dismal service, Gordon asked floor manager Khan to step up. Be honest with me. Can you manage this place? Yes, I can. Ready, go? Ready. Everything is ready, but I have one naan. With Vikas manning the kitchen, the staff hit its stride. It tastes really good. This is great. And the opening was a smashing success. Two, three. Feeling that there was now hope for this restaurant. Uh, Ma'am, have a cup of you, please. Gordon sat down with Mohammed for a candid conversation about Martin. This is a new start. It's you easy. have to treat it as a new beginning. Um, of course. In a perfect world, I would sacrifice one of your managers to employ Vikas. Between you and I, Martin is not worth his weight in terms of what he brings to the table. Hearing Gordon Ramsay say that to Mohammed, that makes me upset and angry. I've never used you. I've, I've respected you. Yeah. I'm proud of what we've done. I've never cheated you. Excuse and I take what, what, what's, what's going on? I can't you. recommending. You're not recommending. You are in, you're enough. I've had enough. Okay. Because okay. you have been insulting. Okay. You have been okay. accusing me of, 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 of cheating this bad. Did you hear what I just said to him? Mardin. So, yes, so let, let, let him go. Go on. This person I've respected, yeah. and you've had the audacity to accuse me of, like, taking his money... Riding off his back. Riding off his back yeah. is, is, is what you've said. Well, that is disgusting. You have no right. You I have right? nothing to be guilty of. You what? Nothing. You ran it. You sat in it. Yes. You wasted it. Yes, I wasted yeah. it, yes. You encouraged it. You this wasn't this always go. like this. We, it it, it spiraled, go to shit. It spiraled yeah. out of control, yeah. and I I'm asked you to guilty. come on board. I'm glad. Not guilty, Mohammed. I'm not going to take this put down anymore. I'm out of here. I quit. I think Gordon Ramsay is full of shit, and I'm extremely angry, extremely pissed off, and I now turn my back and walk away. Determined to move forward, Mohammed asked Vikas to come on board as a consultant. Thanks a lot. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's be honest, it's gone exceptionally well. Great food, great decor, great buzz, happy customers. Thank you. 
for all of us over here. I thank you very, very much. Thank you, Richard Reed. Thank you. Stand strong. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. A year ago, Gordon faced his toughest assignment right in the middle of Manhattan at an Indian restaurant plagued with bad food. It's rotten! Inefficient managers. Who's running the restaurant? And one of the dirtiest kitchens Gordon had ever seen. It's rat droppings. Oh my good God. With the help of Chef Vikas, Gordon left the restaurant in a good state. Let's be honest, it's gone exceptionally well. But a year has gone by, and one wonders if the Manhattan mess is even open. Time to find out. Last year, Dylan's was my biggest nightmare of all time. Personally, I could hardly step foot in the place. It was badly run and festered with cockroaches. So, I'm dying to find out how they're doing. Let's go. There you are. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Good to see you. Welcome back. Can I just say, first of all, it smells nice in here. It's going to be very interesting to see how Gordon reacts today. How are you? I've, I've done well, thank you. Uh, I hope that he's going to enjoy what he sees, because we're proud of what we're doing now, as opposed to slightly embarrassed. In terms of business, um, are we up? Yes. That's great yes. news. Yes. How have you been? I've been very well. Yeah. Actually, I've, I've had the great pleasure of working with Vikas Hanna. It's been a tremendous experience. Vikas is still here? Yes. That's great yes. news. Yes. Good, good, good. Vikas has is, is sort of become the anchor, the leader, the visionary. Mm -hmm. The greatest thing that happened from Gordon coming here was him bringing Vikas. Cilantro vinaigrette worked extremely well. Vikas has the ability to inspire people, and we are now committed to being an Indian restaurant and the best Indian restaurant that we can be. I'm so pleased you're here. That's given me so much satisfaction. I tell you, you've got no idea. I promise to you, God. Yeah, I've kept my promise to stand by Purnima as a part of my respect for what Chef Ramsey has done to this restaurant. The kitchen looks immaculate, absolutely spotless. Andrew, any burgers with blotches on there? No green burgers. This if I kill somebody. No <laughs> green burgers. What's going on in the basement? What have yeah, you done? I'll show you the basement. There are no more bugs here. Everybody was sent out for a week from Purnima. I made them do a food protection course. Oh my gosh. Wow. Holy mackerel. <laughs> my gosh. That's extraordinary. I cannot believe the difference. Oh my god, look. I got one in my fucking hair. It's cockroaches. Look at this. <laughs> Mohammed, come over. Congratulations. How are you? Very good, thank you. Good to see you. The best part of this thing is to let oh Chef Ramji see the, how he transforms. Oh, he's very thrilled and he's very excited, which is a big thing for us. That's incredible. Well done. And I mean, well done. It became such a big, important part of our lives, just to make it spotless clean. My God. When customers come to the restaurant, Vikas loves to invite them to look around in the kitchen, downstairs. This is the main basement. To show them the changes we've made are real. This is completely transformed. Wow. Amazing. It was a very tough week when we were here last year. Obviously, uh, Martin didn't come back. No. So, you uh, know, we have to move on. Yeah. How's business been? Every week we're getting more and more and more customers. Mm -hmm. What's the restaurant turning a week now? Somewhere around 18 to 20. 18 to 20,000? Yeah. That's fantastic. That's a million dollars a year. Yeah, almost a million dollars a year. Yeah. Brilliant. Chef Ramji definitely gives me a second chance. He motivated everybody. He just reignited the flame. Thanks. The lamb chops. Wow. Just a simple marination of ginger and yogurt. Chef Ramses' visit to Purnima was extremely important. I am so happy. I didn't expect the transformation to be this good, to be honest. Mm -hmm. The food is absolutely delicious. For me, the most important you know, connection was bringing you two together. I told Chef Ramsay that, and Mohammed and Andrew, I promised them that we will stand together and we'll make this, make this restaurant a success. And it's such a good feeling. I bet. Being reborn, you see the whole place given, coming back to life. Purnima will always have a very warm place in our hearts. Next time we'll eat downstairs, right? Weird. Yeah. <laughs> Purnima is a gift to us, and I want to respect that gift. Mohammed, thank you. Good to see you. Chef, it's a pleasure. It's still far too good looking to be a chef, you know that. Yeah. <laughs> too clean can't be, you know that. Huh? Take care. Bye, guys. Thank you. Wow. I mean, absolutely incredible. From the biggest disaster to the biggest transformation. It's on track, it's clean. It's delicious, and now they have a proper vision. Thank God for that. Last year, when Gordon arrived at this Italian eatery... Campania. 
he found a little bit of southern Italy in a New Jersey suburb. One? Uh, oh, yes, today I'm on my own. And a restaurant on the brink of disaster. Mr. Ramsey. There was Joe, the owner, a self-taught chef. We don't have recipes. We don't use measuring cups or spoons, because I'm the best. <laughs> he ran a carefree kitchen. You. While the staff was goofing around. <laughs> like a big romper room back there. Joe was quickly going broke. I owe my purveyors about $80,000 right now in cold, hard cash. Joe's passion for big portions was eating up his profits. I can't see us going on another year. His wife was distraught. It takes a, a lot of courage. And his mom, a nervous wreck. I worry about Joe. I worry about stress level. I worry about Melissa. I worry about the boys. The cash crunch took its toll. These are not working ovens. And the customers paid the price. We've been here since 7 o'clock. We need your specials now. That fucking never went out? But clearly, Campania's biggest problem was its food. Garlic everywhere. Big, big chunks of it. You wouldn't want to go back to the office with that breath, would you? <sighs> Holy mackerel. Looks like a bison's tongue. <sighs> oh, dear. My food, I think, is pure and honest and good. I think it was a mistake that I did this. In the first dinner service, Gordon noticed doggy bags on nearly every table. What's wrong with that? Uh, nothing is wrong with it. I'm going to take it out. They're taking it away. Oh, my God. He knew Joe's huge portions made food costs astronomical. Unbelievable. And would eventually force Joe out of business. Sit down, sit down. I've never seen such humongous portions. Why did you decide to go into business if you haven't got a clue how to run a business? Talk to me. No. You getting upset now? Yeah, I'm getting real upset. Thank fuck for that. Hopefully, I'll get through to you now. All right, you know what? Why don't we make it a fucking public issue with this now? There's customers here, there's customers here. I'd rather have this conversation Thank downstairs. You. How about that? Yeah. You're embarrassing me in front of my customers. Frustrated by Joe's stubbornness, the next morning, Gordon decided to visit his wife, Melissa, to get a better insight into Joe. Hi. Hey, how are Melissa, you? how are you, darling? Hey, how are you? A lot of pressure on Joe's shoulders. Um, how do you think he's doing? He's very positive, and, you know, it's his dream, and I know he's giving it his all to, you know, try and succeed, but the hardest thing for me is that people like us put everything on the line for a dream. And I just want to see him have the time, you know, to succeed. This restaurant failed. We would lose everything. I mean, I'll lose my house. But this business can be turned around. So you're going to help them? Yes. Determined to help Joe and his family, Gordon went right back to work. This menu is far too big for his own good. I don't understand what's going through his mind to have this fridge stocked with all these ingredients and no customers to cook for. Look, bag after bag after bag. This is where his $80,000 debt is. Stupid. Absolutely crazy. I saw that fucking walk in in a completely different light. I went, holy shit. Gordon's next step in turning Campania around was retraining the cooking staff from prep to presentation. I know it's rustic, but at least make sure that we've got a little bit of pride in what we're doing. You can do better. Then Gordon came up with one menu item that would separate Campania from all the other local restaurants. Why can't this restaurant become famous for a meatball? I go to my restaurant in Sicily for meatballs. That's all I want. Just give me meatballs. Armed with meatballs, Campania's new signature dish, Gordon and the staff hit the streets to promote the restaurant. Give these meatballs away and get the reputation out there on the street, yes? Mmm, that's wonderful. The best meatballs in New Jersey! Now that the word was starting to spread about the new Campania, Lovely. Gordon introduced some decorative changes. How cool is that? Both outside. Awesome! Oh, it's unbelievable. Wow. I was just absolutely blown away. Hey, hey, hey. And in. Really? Nice? Oh, I love it's a place I just want to hang out. You guys have transformed yeah. my restaurant. Follow me through to the kitchen. Let's go. The kitchen got a state-of-the-art stove. Oh and in a big push to cut costs, Gordon introduced smaller plates for the smaller portions. Check it out. Happy? Oh, wow. good. Oh, good, good, so good, good, good. And a much more focused, vibrant menu. Dry steak is awesome. On the night of the relaunch, oh, here we go, here we go, come on. Gordon's new dishes were welcomed by the customers. This is uh, absolutely unbelievable. Best food I ever had. Good man. By the end of the evening, the staff was ecstatic. More than 200 people were served dinner, 
and Joe had his most profitable night ever. But there was one important task Gordon had to look after before he left. The food looked great on there. We're not going back to stupid big steering wheels. That's what we're serving. Look at them. Aren't they horrible? Let's go. Hit one. Say goodbye to them. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Goodbye to the big place. Hello. Profits. One, two, three, go. God. You happy? First day I met Gordon, I couldn't wait until that guy said goodbye. But once I got beyond my ego being hurt and started listening to what he had to say, he was like a true mentor to me. Hey, don't stop. I won't. When Gordon arrived in Fairlawn, New Jersey last year, Campania. he found owner Joe in dire straits. I owe my purveyors about $80,000. But the staff was goofing around. Relax. When he confronted Joe with the truth. If you haven't got a clue how to run a business. Joe resented Gordon. You getting upset now? Yeah, I'm getting real upset. In the end, Gordon did make big changes. How cool is that? And Joe rose to the occasion on relaunch night. All right, here we go, here we go, come on. But how is the home of New Jersey's best meatball doing today? Time to find out. Last time I came to Campania, I found an owner that never clue how to run a business, a wife that seriously wanted to give up, and every member of staff were far more interested in having a good laugh as opposed to serving a good dish. Can't wait to find out what's happening. Hello. Look at you. Nice to see you. Ah, how you doing? It's very good to see Gordon today. Nice to see you. Business is doing a lot better since he was here. It's just busier and busier all the time. Wow. So busy. Wow, wow, wow. Ladies. How are you? Nice to see you, Madonna. I definitely hope Gordon's really happy for us, and he's glad to see that we're doing better, and um, that I have a lot more hope for the restaurant now, and that things are going easier. The restaurant sounds great out there. Yeah. Huh? Busy? Yep. You look great. So much better. Well, wow, nice to see you. Uh, where's Chef? In the back. Hey, look at you. How are you, buddy? What's going on? Yeah, good to see you, my man. Huh? The atmosphere in there as I walked in was electric, huh? And that's like every day. Fantastic. Since Chef Ramsay visited Campania, things have just turned around on a dime completely. The influx of customers has nearly doubled, and, and, and that's due to Gordon. Before I go to the dining room, can I have a quick peek in the walk-in? Yeah, come on. I don't understand what's going through his mind to have this fridge stocked with all these ingredients and no customers to cook for. Take a gander. Enough for the next couple of days, maximum. There's nowhere near the amount of produce. No, I mean, we were, we were stacked in the rafters before. Huh? In, in food alone, we're saving about $5,000 a month. That equates to about $60,000 a year. Um, we've got so much of a financial cushion, I could finally pay my purveyors on time. They really helped me out. So it, it's just been nothing short of, a, I think, a small miracle. I almost feel guilty about how, you know, how, how good it's been for me. Before Gordon was here, we were pretty close to, to the edge financially. It's been spectacular. But the hardest part for me was watching my wife go through it, because she didn't sign up for it, I did. You look so much more confident now, because last time we yeah. met and we had that chat, it was pretty hard on you. Yeah. The hardest thing for me is that people like us put everything on the line for a dream. Yeah. How would you feel now? Better. I yeah. mean, you really gave him a fighting chance, you know? I just think Gordon Ramsay is so inspiring. You know, I respect him for coming in here and being honest and, you know, letting my husband know what he needs to do. Are the bills getting paid? Yeah. They are getting you know, paid. They are. It's been great. Just it's so nice yeah. to see you sounding and looking so confident, you know that? And that kind of support you give him is just the foundation to the success of this place. So don't stop. Okay. Yeah, good to see you, my darling. You too. Huh? But it's important for me to see my husband succeed. This is what he wants. Thank you so much, really, for everything. Here you go, little meatballs. Nice to okay, see you, my you darling. Too. Now, how many portions of meatballs have you served? I sell tons of meatballs. Seriously. Everybody comes in looking for these meatballs. <laughs> A1 on the meatballs. <laughs> They're delicious, huh? Good. So soft. Yeah, huh? great. That is better than what we left it with. I mean, we're sending trays out. Like, you know, people want like 100 of them, 200 of them. Like, they're asking if they can ship them across the country, you know? <laughs> Gordon's visit, it was just thumbs up all the way. And man, it was just infinitely gratifying for me. Yeah. Last time we sat at this table, you got pissed off with me, remember? Why are we making a fucking public issue with this now? There's customers here, there's customers here. I'd rather have this conversation downstairs. You came in, you know, gave me like blow after blow, yeah. and I took it pretty bad, you know? Ironically, I think that that was a really, uh, in retrospect, a, a pretty clever way of, of um, just batting me down so much that I just was able to really to look at myself objectively and to really see my flaws. I think nobody could have done that but a guy like Gordon. Smaller plates, is it working? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, 
The customer doesn't feel like they're getting any less. You know, they're just not taking doggy bags out. That is delicious, my God. Isn't that nice? nice. The flavor is extraordinary. For Gordon Ramsay, a Michelin three-star rated chef, to come in and give me the praise that he gave today, um, a self-taught chef, was just a, a phenomenal compliment. One last thing. Very important, gentlemen, I think you should meet. I'm Mayor Weinstein. Deputy How are you? Desky. I'm Joe Tedeschi. Hey, Joe. Hey, How are you? Pleasure. Gordon told me he had, like, one last thing before he left, you know? And I knew it was going to be something big. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And you're here because of... He secret. makes great meatballs. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you're here to give him a little presentation on behalf of the borough, a little proclamation for you on the best meatball, not only in New Jersey, but probably in the United States. <laughs> You know, Joey's put everything into this. It's always been his dream. Thank you very much. Harris certified. It's been a long road, but good things are to come. And also, today is your day in Fairlawn. Today forever. is, okay. that's true. On behalf of the mayor and council, today you is Joey Zaniglia no, on your Day. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Gordon coming in and making changes to my restaurant actually translated into big changes in my life at home. No, I feel more confident as a father, as a husband, as a restaurateur. And Gordon's had a huge impact on me. There's one more very important thing I have to say. Those meatballs were fucking fantastic. I've even got a doggy back. I've never done this before. Still to come. Why is this guy here? Gordon's most explosive nightmare ever. Who the fuck is here? Who can forget fucking... Peter's fits of You're fury? A fucking, you fake fucking gangster! And his sister, who suffered watching her restaurant fall apart. At times, I can shoot every person in here. We'll tell you how the family is doing today. Up next on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon returns. Last year, when Gordon arrived in Babylon, New York, a small village on the south shore of Long Island, he found numerous Italian eateries. But Peter's, a family-run restaurant, needed Gordon's help more than any other. Tina, the owner, was in distress. I want to cry or commit bloody murder. Her brother, Peter, the manager, was a bully. Get the fuck out of here! Robert, the chef, was worn out. When the fucking dishes are ready, that's when they're going to come out. The kitchen was completely broken down. This is my one working oven. And Peter's priorities were upside down. Instead of buying a stove, I bought a suit, you know. He's a 250-pound spoiled baby. This Italian eatery was on the brink of bankruptcy. I'm going to kill myself. Gordon's arrival in Babylon got off to a slow start. He said he was going to pick me up. When Peter kept him waiting nearly an hour. This can't be him. Peter? How you doing, Gordon? Good to see you. Nice car. From the minute we met, it was like Superman arrived. FDR. And from the minute Gordon sat down, he knew this dysfunctional family was in crisis. I'd like to be told the truth. Nothing but the truth. I, I have my life. It quickly became clear to Gordon that not only did this family have a communication problem, their kitchen had some of the worst Italian food he'd ever tasted. That's stone cold in the middle, and that's not fresh crab meat. That's not even lobster, that's just like baby food inside gunk. When Gordon did finally step into the kitchen, Shit. he realized these chefs were never given the proper tools. What doesn't work? All these stove tops here don't work. This oven does not work. Peter is a lot more proud of his car than he is his fucking restaurant. Then Gordon inspected the walk-in and was shocked by its condition. There's onions growing on top of onions. The whole thing leaking here. What the fuck is that? You can become famous in the next 24 hours for fucking poisoning half of Babylon. Does it just fall under the chef's job? This is your fridge yeah, in the middle of your, your fucking fridge. business. And Gordon realized that most of the restaurant's problems pointed to one person. It's like blame everything on me. Stop Just... acting like a fucking baby. I'm not acting like a baby. Yes, Just you throw are. everything on me because it's like, you know what? Here. I That's take it number one, me. This is unbelievable. Gordon knew he had to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Tina, the owner, about her brother's irresponsible behavior. 
Does Peter play a part in the financial side? He'll take his paycheck, but not come in. I come in, and I'll, they'll tell me, oh, Peter took $200. Shit. It's like, I didn't even fucking break even for the day, and he took money. I get so exasperated sometimes, so stressed out, that I want to cry or commit bloody murder. That night, as the staff prepared for dinner service. Tonight is a critical, crucial night. An unexpected bill collector arrived, and Peter snapped. Get the fuck oh, out! Come on! 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 Gordon knew if this restaurant was to move forward, he would have to confront Peter. I just think you've seen him day's work for fucking 20 years. Yeah. I, I, I've had my own personal problems. We all have problems. Let's start working at the problem. What's the, pro what's the what's problem? What's the problem? You. That's where I'm starting. Excuse me? You're the only fucking here right now that's not pulling their weight, and that's not fucking good enough. Think about what are you going to put back into the business tomorrow. Think about it. The next day, Peter proved not just to Gordon, but to the staff that he was serious about his commitment to the restaurant. We need our walk-in box fixed. I'm going to be a team player here, and whatever needs to be done, I'm going to do. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to ask people if they need help with things. Here you go. Enjoy. I like that shirt. Thank you. Beautiful. I even think Peter will do his part. I really do think he's going to keep his commitment. Convinced that Peter was determined to change, Gordon revealed crucial improvements to the restaurant. Welcome to your new kitchen. Oh, my holy <laughs> shit, bro. Have a look, have a look, have a look. The biggest change? A brand new stove. Every oven is working. Oh, my god. Yeah. I knew double fridge as well. Uh, what a kitchen. I think we were all starting to lose steam here and give up. And he, he brought us back to uh, this, a sunny day. Your new kingdom. To prepare for the relaunch, Gordon went to work on the state-of-the-art equipment to create a new menu. There we go. I want to focus on family-style dining. News of the opening spread through the town, and the restaurant was packed. Let's set this up for 14 right now. Come on, come on, come on. The new menu was popular with the customers. I like the idea of family style. The kitchen staff hit its stride. The big tables are all ordered in family style. And Peter worked hard to make the relaunch a success. I think everything's going so well. Uh -huh. We got a taste of how good this restaurant can be. Absolutely. And just comparing to what I experienced the first time I arrived here, the difference was night and day. The man reinvented my restaurant. If you cannot make this work, you're mad. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> I really fell in love with him. My first son is going to be named after Gordon, Gordon Ramsay Pellegrino. And Gordon really brought our family much closer together. Now that a year has gone by, it's time to see how this family business is doing today. Since the last time Gordon was here, business has been phenomenal. We took, you know, the fundamentals of what Gordon gave us, and we built on it. And we followed what he did. I mean, how could we not? I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's a proven winner, right? Hey, what's up, T? Hey, what are you doing? What's going on? How are you? Good. No, just going over Saturday night's page. Oh, uh, yeah? Uh, Looks busy. I'd say that business probably has to be up at least 30 40%. We're at the top of our game. Good evening, Peter. I am happy with the state of business right now. I think everything is, I think we're all really doing our best. Saturday, sure. What time? I think we're really working yeah. on our full potential. and. If there's something that we see that needs changing, we, we change it now. How you doing, you all right? Very good. After Gordon left, I realized it was time to really make some changes here. There were fights every day and arguing, and that's where Robert and, and John, they just didn't fit in anymore. When the fucking dishes are ready, that's when they're going to come out. 
My new head chef is Fernando. You guys are doing a great job. We're really busy tonight. Everything's wonderful. In 20 years in business, I've never met a chef like Fernando. He's got a calming effect that puts you at ease. But we're going to start getting a little rush now. We have some big reservations about to come in. I think we're really happy, everybody here. They take care of me. They treat me like a family. He trusts me, and I trust him. The morale does stem from the kitchen, and Fernando has a lot to do with that. You know, he's at his craziest moments. He's always at ease. And that transfers. That goes from the chefs to the waiters and, you know, to us and back to the customers. It was good. It was Yours? Good. It was very good. We use the best of everything. Everything is top-notch from our produce to our meat, our fish, and I'm just working hard and doing it the right way, and it's just, you know, when Gordon was here a year ago, I wasn't pulling my weight. Let's start working at the problem. What's the, pro what's the what's problem? What's the problem? You, that's where I'm starting. Excuse me? He was right, it would have been better without me. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem, and I was, I was part of the problem. My temper, got away from me in this business. And now I'm a much calmer person. Gordon said something off in my head, and at the end of the day, it really helped me. I do see the change in Peter. He'll always be silly and somewhat of a pain in the neck, but um, I do see that he does care. How's that table at A7? They, uh, they're all set? They're good. They're ready to roll. Okay, good. I realized doing everything the right way is much easier than doing it the wrong way. And that was stuff that Gordon taught me. Would you like one as well, Frank? Yeah. I make a mean espresso. When you're happy in your business, when you're happy in the kitchen, when everything is flowing, it just um, transcends through the place. People see it, it just trickles down. And the customers are really happy. You know it's good when you need more wine. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> I'm not hearing that. Gordon really points it out how wonderful this restaurant really is, how lucky we are to work together. I think Gordon definitely saved us. He put everything in perspective, and he came uh, just in time. Salute. Okay. And I thank you, Gordon. I really do. If Emma calls, yes, yeah. I'm really proud. They were restaurants on the verge of disaster. Now they are on the road to success. Gordon Ramsay gave me that X factor, that aura that you can't pay for. I'm sticking to this plan, and we're going to go forward no matter what happens. Don't stop. Please, yeah. don't stop. It's like having the best of the best tell you you can do it. A year has gone by, and the impact of Chef Ramsay's work is undeniable. Chef Ramsay gave a whole new life to this restaurant. Thank you so much, really, for everything. He's brilliant. You know, he really knows what he's doing. <laughs> But if they slip up, they just might get another visit from Chef Gordon Ramsay. Mount Sinai, New York, an upper middle class town on the North Shore of Long Island. Inhabited by the working class and city commuters with no shortage of trendy eateries. And then there's the handlebar. Hello, Handlebar. How can I help you? Bill Leroy, a former construction worker, and his wife, Carolyn, bought the Handlebar just one year ago. Oh, boy. The Handlebar was a really nice place. And when I saw it was for sale, I jumped on it. And our specials menu. When we came into the Handlebar, we saw that it had been run down. But Billy being so handsy. Now they're on. We saw the potential of having a great place. In its heyday, this was the place to be. This was the place that the judges came. This was the place that the lawyers came, the doctors came. Now it's not like that anymore. The nightmare began when 70% of the money was coming from the bar and almost nothing was coming from the dining room. When you can't turn 18 tables on a Friday or a Saturday night, you're in a lot of trouble. <sighs> Bill is an OK manager. Can I bother you to make me a cup of coffee? Billy usually stays at the bar. But being an owner, he has to be more involved. Like, answer the phone. Somebody on the phone? Sometimes he can be very grouchy. Now, go put all the stuff back you where you got it, then. I didn't do that. Like, his mood swings change. Well, I've had it with these people. This place is gross. Like, dirt, filth that had been built up over the past 20 years. The interior, it looks dated. The decor, <laughs> I think it's great. 
the core menu I, is basically the same as I inherited with the restaurant. They look disgusting. I don't know why anybody orders them. Melissa is an excellent chef. I'm not a chef. I don't claim to be a chef. I don't want to be a chef. I'm not very creative. Five minutes. The food is crap. I wish it wasn't good. I think hiring me wasn't necessarily the best idea. I don't even know what I'm doing here. I don't intend for it to be my career. I really don't think Melissa has any weaknesses as a cook. The day we call it quits is the day we have not one penny to put into this place. We took out an equity line of credit that's almost maxed out and drained our savings account. God help us. If the handlebar fails, we risk losing our house. Then I'd never want to lose my house. We need to worry about you and me and the handlebar, bottom line. If Chef Ramsey doesn't come here, our time is very limited. I definitely don't think it's another year. Chef Gordon Ramsay is on a mission to turn the handlebar around. Go west. West, left, west, right. Except he has one small problem. Handlebar. I'm lost. Um, I wonder if you could help me. OK. I'm right on the fork, but do I go left? Do I go right? Because they both say west. OK, so you're going to bear to the right. Right. And there's going to be like a big shopping center right after it. OK, there it is there, handlebar. There's Gordon Ramsay. How do you know? Because I just talked to him on the phone. Get out of here. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Handlebar. Finally. Now, we're in Mount Sinai, just outside New York. Mount Sinai. Sounds a little bit like cyanide. I hope it doesn't taste like it. I'm a little nervous to meet Chef Ramsay. I'm Carolyn. Carolyn. Hello, Hello Bill. How are you? How are you? How are you? The man is an expert at what he does. The man is A, a well-renowned chef. B, owns beautiful restaurants because I've seen them on the internet. Whatever you like. Uh, you don't get that way because you're an idiot. Right. Hello. Gordon Ramsay's like really hot. He has like a nice body and stuff. Like for an older man, he's very, very hot. I didn't want to serve him because I just talk and I just don't stop talking. So I was nervous if I said something stupid that I just wouldn't stop and I would just keep talking and talking and talking. This is our dinner menu. Right. We also have our price fix menu. Right. And the early wow. bird specials. Okay, great. We'll have a quick look. Thank you. Yeah. One menu, two menu, three menu, four menu. Right. Definitely quantity. Let's hope it's quality. I need to continue to cook this because I fucked up. Pizza fondue, filet mignon fondue, Swiss cheese fondue. Weird. Excellent. You ready yet? I'll go for the soup of the day. Soup of the day? I'll go for the seafood uh, crepe as well. And then I'm going to finish with the filet mignon fondue. Filet mignon? Please. Thank you, man. No problem. Excellent. That was nice and busy. Dining room's empty. Look at the place. The decor's ghastly. It's so 80s. Even the fish tank's been here longer than me. Wow. Gosh. How am I feeling? I think Chef Ramsay came close to ordering the worst things, but, you know, everything that's here is pretty much crap food. Thanks. Yeah? Thank you. No problem. New England clam chowder. This is saying this is good. When Chef Ramsay was sitting there, I was just praying that he was going to be happy with everything. Where's Bill? Let me see if I can Where is find he? him. Thank you. Oh, dear goodness. Honey, Gordon would like to see you for a minute. Great. First thoughts that went through my head was, oh my God. Excellent. Yes. And just like to say that that's uh, nicely seasoned, um, very tasty, and perfect for a winter's day. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Nice. Melissa does a nice job. Grabs it. I'll, I'll check on the rest of your food. Thank you very much. He said your soup was fabulous. Really? Yes, he loved it. I think Melissa's a great cook. I think she's very creative. I think Melissa underestimates herself a lot. But I thought it came out pretty shitty this time. There's <laughs> <laughs> some well. grapes. There's crab in there, there's lobster, and some shrimp in there also. Thank you. No problem. Ay, ay, ay. Chef Ramsay seems to have a uh, habit to take his food apart before he eats it. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say. Uh -oh, here we go. 
How is everything? Robbery. Um, the scallops are firm. Uh oh. The prawns are way overcooked. Oh god. And the crab meat, it's plastic. It's imitation crab meat. Yeah. If you told me it's imitation crab meat, I wouldn't have ordered. Oh god, help me. Well, that was a zest. Seafood crepe. Yeah. That's seafood crap. This is the worst of it, I'm sure. And, uh, I'm waiting on my beef fondue, filet mignon fondue, which is raw. So why am I waiting so long? There's the steak. And this is the oil. Thank you. No problem. Nothing like waiting to cook your own meat, is there? All right, put that in. Time for a little prayer. <laughs> ah, comes out looking like dog food. He spits it out, I'm bleeding. That was rancid, pointless, tasteless, a complete utter joke. I'm gonna cry. Why would you deep fry a filet mignon? One of the country's best steaks, deep fried. Are they stupid? Oh no. I wanted him to be happy with us, but I kind of knew deep down inside that there has to be something wrong with the restaurant. Otherwise, he wouldn't be here. Oh my God, what a disaster. <laughs> disaster. Okay. It's, it's, okay. that it's, it's, that it. it's a disaster. No, it's not. After an underwhelming first meal, Okay, pull together. Gordon realizes that the owners and the chef are oblivious to the restaurant's real problems. What's wrong with the business? It's test room, as you see it. And we can't fill 18 tables on a Friday night. That's the problem. No, the problem here is the food. The food's bad, Bill. I never really had complaints about the food, so that was never really an area of concern to me. When the fondue arrived, I mean, that's just a joke. I don't enjoy the fondue either. But you're the chef, aren't you? You're the one that's, you know, you're, you're running it as the head chef, right? That, that's the intent. So, change it. I don't know what to do about it. Have you lost your passion? I never had a passion to begin with. I, I don't want to be a chef. I was really shocked that that's the way she felt. So you're not a chef? No. I had applications for the job here as a chef. When she approached me and said, would you give me the opportunity? I mean, you don't ask for that opportunity if you don't care what you're doing. Why did you take the job, Melissa, if you're not a chef? The other guy was going out that was here. OK. Um... I didn't think our situation was as bad as I'm finding out minute by minute. Having exposed Melissa's apathy in the kitchen, I don't need this. I'm out of my mind. Gordon observes a dinner service to find out how her attitude is affecting the food. I know he's here to help, but it's still very nerve-wracking having someone of his stature standing there staring at you. What are they there? The mushrooms. Is that how that goes out like that? Yes. Holy crap. Stuff mushrooms. <laughs> Oh, so his mushrooms look sadder than the customer. Gordon said they're very sad mushrooms. Why? <laughs> well, just now? Actually, that's a recipe of my own. I made it myself. I was very disappointed that it wasn't presented to him the right way. People eat them, shit. For you? What's my choice? Potato, rice, vegetables? Big potato, mashed potato, french fries, rice, little veggie. We use half instant, half with fresh potatoes. Why do they mix the powdered mashed potatoes with fresh mashed potatoes? That's a way of reusing the baked potatoes. So you don't even actually make fresh mashed potatoes? No. No. Do you want mashed potato, baked potato, french fries, rice, or vegetables? Don't burn them, please. OK. That's burnt. A little more done than usual, but other than that, yeah. Just an hour into dinner service, and the restaurant has run out of basic vegetables. We ran out of broccoli cauliflower. Yeah. And replaced them with an unusual substitute. Radishes. Radishes? Ooh, yes. Wow, I've never heard of that before. 
How are you, radishes? Honestly, Gordon? Of course. Not something I would, you know, expect with my steak. You want some veg, right? Yeah, you know. Is there anything to keep him happy? Have we checked with Melissa? I, I want to eat the radishes either. So customers are complaining about no vegetables. Any broccoli, vegetable, carrots or cabbage? Veg. Ah, yeah, veg. Oh, stop. Oh, it go. What is it? They're stalks. Uh, yeah, that's a frozen bag. That's why it's crap. Even though Melissa is managing to keep up with the orders, the customers are still not satisfied. No, I don't like it at all. This is unusual. It's not real crap. And Gordon needs Billy to finally understand that the food is Handlebar's biggest problem. Billy, customers are complaining about the food. You can't walk around oblivious to the fact that you think this is good. Yeah, but it's not bad in everybody's opinion. You can't take care of everybody's taste buds. Something that some people like, other people aren't going to like that at all. No one's got any control. And basics here that have just gone completely fucking wrong. If you accept it, everybody else has accepted it. And truthfully, you've accepted it. No, oh, absolutely not. I was kind of really disappointed. I, I knew we needed help. I didn't think we were that bad. I was quite skeptical about his intentions. Whatever. Really starting to dislike him. After witnessing last night's pathetic dinner service, Gordon comes in early for a kitchen inspection. What a mess. Nothing labeled. Portions taken out. That's dreadful. Broccoli. Last night we ran out of vegetables because the chef can't be bothered to cook fresh broccoli. The reminiscence of Exxon Valdez. Oh my God. When was the last time the back of the fridge was clean? And you look at it. What is that in there? Oh my God almighty. That there was a clam. Oh, what a mess. The state of the fridge Melissa, got two minutes. has only confirmed Gordon's belief that the restaurant lacks true passion and leadership. So you're in charge of the kitchen and the general hygiene. It's yeah. supposed to be, yes. <laughs> Why is it in a mess? Uh, it's 100 times cleaner than it was six months ago. Sure it was. OK. When was the last time you had a little wipe down there or uh, in here? Just, just even... That a... I've never done. My god. Unbelievable. Oh, this is embarrassing. That oh. she usually does clean that. Right, OK. Um, I'm glad you're starting to make excuses for it. Yep. If you thought this was bad, have a look at this. Chef Ramsay seemed to feel that I was making excuses for everything and really had no idea of the past practices that had gone on here. OK. Last night we served frozen vegetables to a customer and we got two boxes of broccoli there. You know, I can't do it all. That's it. You were happy to serve frozen broccoli over fresh broccoli. I'm trying to open up your eyes, Billy, and explain to you, you know, what the current situation is. When was the last time this fridge was cleaned? A week ago. Oh, come on. This hasn't been cleaned in years. No, 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 it hasn't. I'm sorry, 21 years in the business, I'll bet every fucking dollar I have, this fucking place hasn't been cleaned in years. I'm disgusted. Put your hand down there. He still never did bend down and touch it. It was a big thing of denial for him. I'll take responsibility for the fact that I haven't changed it, but it's not all my fault, you know? Everything's coming out, and this place is going to get cleaned. I wish you'd give me a little more credit for cleaning it up as much as I have so far. It looks 60, 70 percent times better than it used to look in here. Billy, that's disgusting. It's fine. No, it's, it's, it's not fine. We've got a big problem. When was the last time that fridge was steam cleaned? I had the kid in there doing it last week. Did you check what he'd done? No, obviously not. So why can't you act like a man and do something about it? Yep. My God. I just don't even know what to say anymore. He just keeps tearing apart everything that wasn't done and not giving me credit or a uh, pat on the back for things that were done. Unfucking believable So that just proves and confirms how weak this guy is. He's not running this place. This place is running him and is in need of a fucking serious clean. That is appalling. 
Prompted by Gordon's shocking discovery, Melissa enlists the wait staff to do a thorough cleaning. What do you use to clean that? Bleach and soap. It's disgusting. I really wish I had a mask on me right now. Billy. Just two seconds in. I was hoping he was going to tell me, I understand, Billy, that this isn't your fault, but it really needs to be taken care of, so let's take care of it. I'm fucking pissed off. And I'm upset on the kind of shit that I've just discovered in there. Time to drag me through the mud some more. It is what it is. You don't seem one fucking ounce bothered about it, Billy. You can't just stick your head back in the sand and ignore it, Billy. Sure you can. What do you want me to do, flip out and yell and scream like you do? That's not my way. The responsibility is yours, Billy. I guess if you want something done right, I guess you have to do it yourself. But well, maybe I'll just get rid of everybody in the restaurant and I'll do it all myself. Great idea. And then when it doesn't work out, and then when I drop dead because I fucking sleep two hours a day, then maybe it'll get done. Or maybe, who cares, once you're dead, it doesn't make a difference anyway. Oh, come on. Now I feel you're copping out of me now. No, oh, because now I'm just getting dragged through the mud. And... You're a weak man, Billy. I really I'm just glad you had enough. I was not going to be ridiculed just for the sake of needing his help. Finished. Can you at least talk to me? Nope. Billy, can you talk to me, please? Nope. I have nothing to say. Billy. I wouldn't talk to my dog the way you talk to me. Go fuck yourself. That's right. The hell with everything. I'll make it work myself without his help. Everything in my life that I've ever set out to do, I did on my own. Finished. You know, right? I'm done. What a week, man. Billy! Unable to accept Gordon's criticism... Billy! Billy decides he's had enough. Fuck him. Fuck him, fuck them. The fridge is disgusting. I've asked her to be cleaned. He's telling me I'm dragging him through the mud. And he fucking walks out. He's mad right now and he's being stubborn. He doesn't we... want you to leave. He wants your help. We... He's just not... Right now, he's too ashamed to admit it. I just want him to act responsible. While Gordon tries to make sense of Billy's actions... He doesn't have to act like a baby. Billy rehearses a speech to Gordon. I am so done. Don't act me on. I have nothing to say to you. Not a word. There was nothing in my head that made me want to think and reconsider about doing this. Can you go out there and just, you know, have a word with them? You guys are the backbone of this place. You can't just throw the towel in. I knew Billy would get mad. Done. Just fucking done with all this bullshit. But honestly, you don't face the truth, you can't do anything about it. We've been busting our ass trying to help you out. You're giving up on yourself, this place, and all of and us. us. I wouldn't talk to my dog the way that jackass talks to me. I'm done. He's telling you the truth, though, Billy. Great. There's ways to go about it. 46 years old, never been talked to like that by anybody. And you know what? The only thing that's keeping me from fucking hitting him with a fucking baseball bat is that I'd go to fucking jail for it. I'm done. 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 Finished. And you're not the man everyone here thought you were, Billy. Absolutely you, not. You're going to give up, and you're going to give up on all of us? Yeah. Fine, be a fucking baby, Billy. Fuck it, I'm done. Yeah, you know what? Put the place up for fucking sale. I can go back to construction and enjoy my fucking life the way I used to before I, all of this bullshit. We'll go to bankruptcy court and just give it all up. Fuck it. I'm done. Bye. So help me God, I will not open the door tomorrow. You can all go fuck yourselves, and I don't care if it's all for nothing. Do not care. Billy! You know what? I'll survive somehow. Billy. Fuck you. Unbelievable. Having just missed her chance to defuse the situation, Carolyn now faces the prospect of running the handlebar alone. Very upset. I have a husband that's ready to throw in the towel. So here I am, stuck holding the bag. Let me help you. I want you to help me, but I don't know what to do. I have a job okay. that I have to work so I can pay my mortgage. Sure, okay. I don't know what to do. Why can't we work at turning this around? I this would love to work at turn this around. OK. Let me open the restaurant tonight. OK. OK. I'm feeling that I'm going to do what I have to do to make everything work. 
because I'm not walking out now and I'm not flushing the last 17 years of my life down the bowl. To further inspire Carolyn to move forward with the plan, Gordon shows her the dedication of her staff. What a difference. It's looking great. It looks so much huh? better. You've done a great job. We were clean the walk in. We were more or less just doing it to just show that like we are dedicated and we do want this to work. Billy's gone. Whether he comes back later or not, it's not going to affect what we're doing tonight. We're opening, and we're opening with a clean fridge, healthy attitude. We're hungry to get this place full. Yes? Yes. yes. Let's go. Her courage now bolstered by her staff's support, Carolyn leaves Billy a message. Billy, I'm not going to stop now. I will do whatever it takes to make my restaurant succeed with Chef Ramsay's help. I'll succeed. I just told him my determination that I'm going forward with this, regardless of if he wanted to or not. The restaurant is about to open for dinner, but to get the handlebar moving in the right direction, Gordon makes some quick additions to the menu. Melissa, let's do a special tonight. Some fried clams with a homemade tartar sauce. It's which clams? Chef Ramsay, he's one of the best chefs in the world, you know, standing right next to me and was uh, very surreal. Generously season them with the flour straight in, into the fire, and then again, a nice little season there. OK. Yeah. The minute the customer arrives at the table, they sit down, and we need to give them fresh, hand-cut, homemade potato chips. A warm welcome. Mm. No, those are good. This place is more laid back, so I think the chips are a good idea. It's different. Nice. Hi, good evening. Do you have a reservation? I thought it was great that Chef Ramsay could show us how to make such a simple thing like potato chips that everybody would love. We do have a special appetizer today. Deep fried clams with a homemade tartar sauce. All right, we'll do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. Uh, potato chips are going well, special's going well. Keep it going, yeah? Nice atmosphere in the dining room, really good. Clams. There we are, clams. Every day love the clams. Oh, they said that's the best thing that they've ever had here, so it's going really good. We're not serving dirty bowls to the table. Let's go, Melvia. Yeah? I didn't think he was going to come back. I was really, really surprised that he came back so quickly. I am angry about things that transpired earlier in the day, still. Hours after threatening to sell the business, owner Billy returns to the handlebar just in time for dinner service. There was absolutely no part of me that still wanted Chef Ramsay to be here. I wanted him to be gone. Billy, come on. Let go of it. When Billy came back, he had his bad attitude of, yeah, whatever. Billy, please, I love you. That's why I'm here. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. I can honestly say that I love my wife more than anything in this world, so I came back here for my wife. While Billy tries to reconnect with his restaurant, I need my food. Melissa struggles to give the wait staff complete orders. I ran half the fucking order. I need the rest of it. And there's a lot of problems. Who's this for here, Melissa? That's been here in 37 minutes. I don't know. The crepes, I forgot half of it, so. Melissa just stopped communicating. I mean, that's just how Melissa is. And I think that's when we ran into problems. Are any of my foods coming out for any of my tables? I have no idea. Communication is the one thing, and it's not happening right now. Oh, boy. And I was, you know, in the weeds so much, I really couldn't tell who was waiting and who was wanting. I need salmon Pontieri. Was the salmon on that? I think Melissa got very flustered back there. This place was total chaos. It's 9 o'clock. I've been here since what time? 5.30. I just don't know what to say. With the orders backed up in the kitchen. Killing me. Killing me. Whatever. God help us. Impatient, hungry customers begin taking out their frustrations on each other. You know what you're talking about before you open up your mouth. I don't open up my mouth any time. You can do it with Can you please stop talking to my parents this way? That's ridiculous. It's a total disaster. And uh, really think I'm to the point now that I don't know what else to do. Come on, Billy. Can we talk about it? Yeah. 
Billy has no choice but to listen to Chef Ramsay, because if he won't listen, then we might as well just shut the doors and walk away right now. I have never, ever, ever seen my kitchen fall apart like that, ever. Ever, on our busiest nights, never have I seen that, ever. Melissa has to talk now. This is the most crucial stage of the service, where she has to open up and, and talk. And get help from the and other get help. It's just delegate with so many tables on. The man is one of the top chefs in the world. And um, maybe I should um, put aside the ill feelings and listen to what he has to say. Melissa may not be communicating, but the menu is faster. Yeah. I see what you're saying. At that point, I was very open-minded to his ideas. Seriously, I'm pleased you're back, yeah? I, you're, the, you're the foundation of this place. We have a little chat with the staff, because I think they would like to hear that we're all on the same track. The first hour of service was amazing. And then we got backed up. We got backed up bad. Melissa, you refused to communicate. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah, I agree with you. Honestly, this menu has to come down, yes? That has to be condensed. It'd be appreciated. New, small, dynamic menu. A menu that we can push out. It'll be real nice to get a new menu that'll be more concise and in order. It'll be good. <laughs> Relaunch tomorrow night. We have to make it a success. Get some sleep, yes? In preparation for the relaunch, Gordon's team worked through the night updating Handlebar's tired, dated look. Ready? Ready. Let's have a look at the new Handlebar. Let's go. Uh, Up. Yeah. Here we go. Wow. This place looks awesome. It's fresh, it's new. Billy, it's warm. There's nothing that's antiquated. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, it's awesome. Feeling wow. Wow is all I can say. Wow. 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 <laughs> yeah, wow. What about the lamps? Huh? No more gloves. No more gloves. No more gloves. We are no longer stuck in the 80s. Look at it. Warm, bright, vibrant, happy. Yes. Good. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. Everything is awesome. It's incredible. I'm totally blown away. <laughs> Billy, you have Long Island's first ever gastropub. Gastropub? What the fuck is a gastropub? What's a gastropub? Good question, gastropub. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. I've never heard of a gastropub, babe. We're the first on Long Island. That is so incredibly awesome. A gastropub is warm, open all hours, come and relax and enjoy with no intimidation. We cater for everybody. It's perfect for the neighborhood. There are 25 gastropubs in Manhattan, and they are doing a phenomenal amount of business. A pub with an emphasis on fine food at reasonable prices. That kind of hit home. It was exactly the type of place that my wife and myself were looking to turn it into. Knowing Billy and Carolyn's love for motorcycle riding. Let's go. Ready to make some noise, yes? Gordon has organized Handlebar's first annual motorcycle rally to help spread the word about the relaunch. Ecstatic? Ecstatic. Yes. But what Billy and Carolyn don't know is Gordon has reached out to another bike enthusiast and rock and roll legend. Twisted Sisters' very own <laughs> Dee Snyder. Hey! I'm good. Good to good see good you, Thank you, Thank you so much for coming. Carol. Hi, how are you, Carol? Hi, I'm Bill. Hi, Dee. Hey, Twisted Sisters. <laughs> I never would have imagined here I would get on my bike and ride with Chef Ramsay and Dee Snyder. I was like, oh my God, how cool is that? Billy, are you ready? Friends. Yes, we are. It was phenomenal that Gordon Ramsay got him to come here and help us kick off the new start of the restaurant. It was nice to get out there and ride. It was nice to see that Chef Ramsey could ride a motorcycle and enjoy himself. It was a lot of fun. Right, let's go. Get these out. The grand reopening of Handlebar tonight. Come down to the Handlebar's reopening tonight. Grand reopening, come on down. Come on down. I'm smiling because I feel that the Handlebar is pointed in the right direction now. We have some place to go and some place to look forward to. 
Now that the word had spread, Gordon gets back to the crucial task of introducing the new gastropub menu. That's the menu in front of it. Look at it. There is nothing complicated on there. Whether it's the steak, mussels, the salmon, the sausage, everything is so simply done. The new menu, I think, is uh, phenomenal. He consolidated it down to a lot of the comfort food type favorites just served in a different light. Melissa, this is the night that we make the statement. And when we start getting in the weeds, you have to come out yourself and open up. Yes, sir. Chef Ramsay put his effort into this to change us, so I'm gonna try not to let him down. We're gonna start confirming the first ever gastropub in Long Island. After the bomb last night, I'm sweating. I'm nervous to see how my kitchen pulls it together. Make it work. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. It's the grand reopening of the handlebar. Nice to see you, my darling. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh. And Chef Ramsay's motorcycle rally has clearly spread the word about the relaunch. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. Okay. Let's go, let's go, let's go. With Billy appearing to embrace Chef Ramsay's changes. Everything's homemade. Everything. All eyes are now on Melissa to step it up in the kitchen. All right, stay focused. Here we go. Everybody's excited to come in and see how it looks now and see what's going on with the menu and everything else. Can I have the portobello mushroom melt? Grilled chicken sandwich. Salmon good. You all will be pleased with the food tonight. Thank you. Melissa, I need a shrimp cocktail and then the salads and then the entrees. All right. Melissa. Melissa, listen to me. I want this communication ramped up tonight. You need to connect. The minute you stop talking, we're fucked. Okay. I think Melissa needs to be more assertive and keep everybody under control. Let's go. Too quiet for me. As the restaurant fills up... Thank you. ...and customers embrace the new gastropub menu... Yeah, right. It's perfect. This is good. Gordon takes a moment to make a special announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a local legend. Twisty Sisters, yes, Dee Snyder. He came in through the door on that bike. It was just amazing. Everybody was clapping and cheering and having a great time. How cool is this, huh? All right, here's the deal. In honor of the grand reopening of Handlebar Restaurant, we're going to be auctioning this bike off. So if you want to bid on this beautiful Holly Davidson Sportster, you can go to Handlebar Restaurant website and put a bid in there, and all the proceeds will go to the March of Dimes. Ladies and gentlemen, Dee Snyder. With Dee Snyder's family and friends now seated. I'm going for the portobello mushroom melt. In the first fully packed house in over a year. It's all about steak. Fish and chips, please. House salad. Huh? House salad? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. The kitchen is about to be tested. The salmon looks black underneath, Melissa. I don't think it's burnt, honestly. Pass through the spatula. I think it's OK. No way, madam. Yeah? I got you. But I'm not serving charcoal shit like that. No. Fucking disgusting. Melissa thought she could just take care of everything herself, and she had two other cooks and didn't ask for their help. This is a recook. I'm very sorry, Beth. I hope it is better. Me too, Missy. I'm so sorry. In her rush to fill orders... Frickin' salmon. Melissa starts sacrificing the quality of the food. This isn't cooked. Oh. Look at the middle of that fucking salmon. Gross. That salmon looked like what you'd find in a seafood section. Like, it was shiny and it looked cold. Like, are you fucking kidding me? The salmon we sent came back fucking raw, so we're doing it again for the third time. Freaking salmon. Let's do this. I think Melissa got very flustered back there. Yeah, all right. Falling apart. Why are we falling apart? Do we have any other salmon elsewhere? She is. Yeah. Where is my salmon? Where's the freaking salmon? Billy, if it's burnt or it's raw again, I'm going to shove it down somebody's throat. Everything just kept compounding and compounding to the point where it was a total disaster. you got to be kidding me. I'm going to hang myself. I burnt the shit out of this.
after first overcooking. No fucking way. Then undercooking the salmon. Raw. Melissa hopes the third time is the charm. Phil, but she's got to open up and fucking communicate. If she doesn't start communicating now, we're fucked, yeah? Yep. Please, yeah? She needs to utilize the other two cooks that she has in the kitchen. It's not a one-man show, and it could never work if she thinks it can be. Honey, let's just get it right this time. Okay. Melissa, use these two guys. I'm trying. I want to hear it. Open up, communicate, yeah? Uh, you know what? You want to cook that? I know. I got it. Please. Thank you. I will take care of the veg. Good girl. I didn't realize I can't take care of the line on my own. Salt and pepper, please. Yeah, I got Thank you. Beer. I really need to open up and communicate and get things going. Your salmon is coming, honey. I'm very sorry. Lovely. Good to go. Thank you very much, honey. Gordon's persistence with Melissa appears to finally be paying off. You give it a thumbs up? That's good. Yeah, all right. <laughs> We gotta get this together. I need three or fries. Three fries. Right now, at the moment, I understand Chef Ramsay's whole concept is to communicate and keep everything in order. We gotta get it going. As long as I can communicate with the guys next to me, it will get it working properly. I need to concentrate on Dee's table, yes? We are doing it now. Okay. Take the two burgers whenever you can. Melissa really shocked me tonight where she was able to ask Eric and George, oh, can you do this? Can you get this? We are doing real well. Let's keep it up. Very, very good. This is amazing. Lovely. That's good. The night we had a couple of really large screw ups, but in the end it all worked out. Hey, great menu, right? Everybody was happy. I feel very excited. I feel good. That's it. In the next couple of days, the word continued to spread throughout Long Island about its first gastro pub. We have a wonderful new menu. That was the best burger I've ever eaten. I thought it was cooked really well. Reinvigorated by the new direction and updated menu, Melissa has found her passion again. One small Caesar, one small how. Chef Ramsay being here has definitely brought new life into my job. Chicken sandwiches up and out, burgers up and out. I do have more passion about it. I want to make sure everything is good. I'm surprised at myself now. Even the wait staff has taken it upon themselves to maintain the cleanliness of the restaurant. We're going to make a list of what needs to be cleaned every night because we want to keep it clean and we want to make it look like presentable. And Billy, with renewed hope and determination, is moving forward. Something to enjoy while they're waiting to take your order. Inspiring everyone to make the handlebar a success. Well done. This place is going to be a success. I tell you, great location, great food, great gastro pub. My wife and myself are very appreciative of what he did. Seemed like there was a black cloud hanging over the handlebar. Um, I think the sun's starting to shine a little bit. Congratulations on being Long Island's first gastro pub. Come on in. Nice. Okay. Good night. Chef Ramsay came to my restaurant, went above and beyond anything I could have possibly asked for, and I know this restaurant's gonna be successful from here on out. That was tough, very tough indeed. We made a lot of changes, changed the menu, changed the decor, but there's one thing in there that I thought was completely unchangeable, and that was Bill, and we even managed that. 30 miles north of Detroit lies the township of Macomb County, home to Giuseppe's. Its owners, Joe Borgia and his wife, Kathy, have owned several successful Italian restaurants in the span of 25 years. After retiring, they decided to open Giuseppe's with the dream of passing it down to their son, Sam. I opened it with the expectations that we would put Sam on his feet and Joe and I could just go to Florida or wherever, but it just hasn't worked out that way. Sam basically said, Dad, I'm going to step up to the plate. I'm going to work day and night. You and Mom can come a little bit at a time. But when they started working 20 hours a week, to me, it was like uh, another empty promise. You want to go get your son? Because every time we, I try to explain, he's got to walk away. Sam, did you walk off the line? No. It's a nightmare for two reasons, the lack of customers and the hell that goes on in the kitchen. You're Pretty serving good. frozen fucking salmon. I mean, no it's matter not, what you do, you can boil it in grease. No, no, it's still no, going to be cooking. No, I prove okay. you wrong. You prove me wrong, then. I'm not supposed to have no input. I'm not supposed to be able to change anything. Usually people roast them on the barbecue. No, that's the way you do it. I'm just supposed to basically be a shadow and somebody that he can just say it's your fault. OK, Dan, whatever you say.
I'm Brian. I'm a truck driver, but I chef here part-time. Right here, Joe. I've known Joe for forever. He's getting up there a little bit in years, and he's just he's getting tired. And I don't think that his son is stepping up to the plate. You don't have to be back there. I'm not. I just have pushing me too many hours. They're not pushing you. You're pushing you. I'm a diabetic. Some days I don't feel like coming in. Some days I can't even roll out of bed. But I have to be here. That's my responsibility. My sugar is low, I'm fucked up. Here. Okay. I got it. Dad. I got it. My dad's health is not good by any standards. And it's the most heartbreaking thing to see. I just want my family to be healthy and happy. Everything else doesn't matter. If anybody can help our family, it would probably be Chef Ramsey. I'm here to work with a family in a restaurant that's in crisis. The kitchen's run by father and son, and they're constantly at each other's throat. The mother's torn between them both. She's actually here to pick me up. Wow, he's got a smile. That's, got, that's a good sign. I was excited and nervous, but I knew once he was here, everything was going to be fine. Nice to see you, my darling. Ah. And thank you so much for coming to pick me up. Now, the restaurant's run by Joe, your husband. My husband, Joe, Giuseppe. And Joe's the head chef, and Sam's the sous chef. Exactly. Is Sam taking over from Joe, or...? Well, that was the plan, but yeah. it's not happening. And I'm sure Sam's a little disappointed. Well, he's 28. He must be ready for it now, surely. He's about the maturity of about a 23-year-old. Right. He's not ready. And the Russians only been open for two years. Yeah. And I'm in debt big time. I got my house in foreclosure. I owe about $150,000 outside of that. Outside the I house? I don't mind losing a house if I can sleep anywhere. But the business, that's everything I have. And at my age, I can't start over again. How does um, Joe feel about this? He's miserable inside. Damn. If this place fails, I don't even know if we'll be together anymore. And this is it? This is it. This is my little play. Hope you brought your magic wand. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. I think Chef Ramsey may be overwhelmed this time. It's not just as simple as a menu change or firing somebody. I think it's a little more complex. And I think this is where you'll be. OK, great. That Palomino sauce, Sam, I know you don't want to listen to me. Did I do exactly you, how you, you say You put way too much white wine on it, and that's why you're getting the burn You told me to put the white wine. With Joe overseeing the kitchen, Sam will be cooking a menu designed by his father for Chef Ramsay. I think Chef Ramsay is going to come in here, order a few things, and he's going to say they're horrible. Welcome to Giuseppe's tutorial. Please allow my family and I to introduce you to the essence of Italy. Mm -hmm. The old world family recipes and cozy atmosphere. Mm. This place has only been open for two years. It looks like something from the 1970s. Hello. Hi, how are I'm you? I'm John. Nice John, to meet nice you. Nice to see you. And you're one of the servers, obviously. I am one of the servers. Excellent. What would you recommend, my darling? I would recommend the eggplant rollantini. That's our house specialty. OK, great. And um, I'll start off with the potato skins and the octopus salad. OK. And I'll keep hold of the menu, because I'm, okay. uh, I'm going to read on. OK. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Essence of Italy, my ass. What do we got? We need octopus salad, yeah. potato skins. OK. That's first, and I'll guide you through. When I saw Chef Ramsay order an octopus salad, every part of me wanted to say, we're out of it. Can you please take the salad out of the window, please? But how would that look? Mm, wow. Octopus salad. That was quick. Dad. Thank you, my darling. Enjoy. Thank you. Cheers. The octopus is like rubber. Excuse me. Jesus Christ. It's like a mouthful of hubba bubba. It should be done in a frying pan very slowly. Wait, I got it, I got it, Dad. Let me get this. Potato skin? Mm. Is that normally that chewy, that octopus? I think it is. I've heard people say that before. Would you be my guest? Just decide. I'll be your guest. Please, my darling. Very tough. Huh? Mm hmm When I tasted it, I'm like, oh my gosh, we serve this shit. <laughs> I mean, basically, that's what it was. That's what it tasted like. Horrible. Octopus is chewy. Horrible. And how are the potato skins? The cheese is um, hideous. Not good? Yeah, would you like to try one? No, I don't. No. <laughs> I don't know. How are we doing, guys? Octopus is shit. It says it's chewy. These are hideous, too. Cheese is disgusting. Oh, boy. I always brag about how good my food is and how good my restaurant is. And if they don't step up to the plate, 
I am going to cook every individual dinner in this restaurant. Put it in my grill for a little yeah. bit. Eggplant Rolantini. Thanks, honey. You're welcome. Thank you. I, I think it's too much wine. I mean, that's my personal opinion. You think idea. it's too much wine? I, you know, I... If Make a new one. Can't really identify any flavors because it's just absolutely piping hot. Almost like it's being nuked in the microwave for three minutes. I can cook every dish that he had, and I guarantee you he's going to love every one of them. What the hell's going on in there? And why aren't you back here? Well, because maybe they should try you out and see you know, what's going on. Honestly, sounds like there's a war going on. It's incredible. Uh, never this many fucking complaints yeah. in two fucking years. Relax. Relax my ass. God damn it. Two fucking ears. After sensing Gordon's disappointment with lunch, the family regroups in the kitchen. We got to stop being the mother, the husband, the son. Family is one thing. We are in the business. Yeah, you're and right. And if you think that it's that responsibility to be the chef, you better be the goddamn best fucking chef on this side of Mississippi. I want to be the best chef okay. on this side. It's where I'm missing you. But I want you to be my father, too. You know, I just want to grab my dad and give him a hug and say, look, it's going to be all right. You just got to trust in me a little bit. Now it's time for Joe, Sam, and sous chef Brian to hear the cold, hard truth from Chef Ramsay. Hello, sir. How are you? Nice to meet you. You said on the back of the menu, step into Giuseppe's, and I'm going to take you through a romantic, authentic restaurant in Italy. I like the passion, but the palate's fucked. That eggplant, bland, milky, spongy, and then piping hot in the middle like it had been blasted in the microwave and it just... It was. It was? Yeah. So you don't bake them fresh? No. Chef, we got probably 3,000 respond that we did this questionnaire, and we didn't get one negative thing about the food. So where the fuck are they, then? I don't know. You don't need questionnaires. They don't ring you up and say, by the way, I'm not coming back. They just don't come back. They vote with their feet. Why are we serving potato skins? Do I want to come to an authentic Italian restaurant with potato skins? Absolutely not. A lot of people come here with their kids, and their kids don't want to... Uh... Hey, I've lived in Italy. I've seen the Italian families, the way they eat together. They don't serve fucking children in Italy potato skins with plastic cheese, I can assure you. There's no fucking reason to have potato skins on an Italian menu. Joe, I'm not asking for excuses. I'm here to help. Yeah. But everything I'm saying, all you're doing is firing me bullshit excuses. Don't bullshit me, and I won't bullshit you. Do you understand? Yes. I got told in the car, oh, the pressure's facing this place. But I can see why we're in this shit. The food's crap, guys. I thought I had a job to do, but now it's just become 10 times fucking bigger. Yes, sir. I'll see you later on this afternoon. Get some rest. Thank, Thank you, sir. You, Giuseppe may have been born in Italy, but he's certainly not delivering Italian authentic cuisine here in Michigan. He may say it on the back of the menu, but he's not delivering in flavor. That's for sure. Before Gordon can formulate his plan to turn around the restaurant, he wants to see a dinner service and the staff in action. How are you today? Good, how are you? Hi, how are you? My name is Carol. Does that come off, that? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a cockatoo. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Three? Yeah. Not a problem. Hi, how are you? Everything okay here so far? Good. You ready, honey? Oh, yeah. I would like to add meat sauce. Meat sauce? Thank you, dear. Thank you. Iron hole, baby, and here we go. What's up there, Brian? It's going to be an uh, so, order of roast potato. How can there be roast potatoes in the microwave? That's the program here. So Giuseppe wants. Has he lost his fucking marbles? And my dad feels like he just needs to push the food out real fast, you know? He wants his mouth cheese in the microwave. But you can't take shortcuts like that. Well, it's horrible, you know? Food comes out quick. Is that normal? Really quick. Too yeah. quick, I think. Then what would you like? I'll have the uh, ravioli florentine. Thank you. Sometimes salads or soups, and then their main entree comes all at once. Like the uh, gnocchi. You guys want to do the wings as well? Enjoy, okay? I always call it fast food Italian. Fast food Italian, yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong there. The sauce is warm, but the inside is. It needs to be warmed up. Okay, honey. Hey, Brian, can you please warm this for me? Yep. More crap. 
Don't want it. Don't want to read you. That was a ravioli with Alfredo. The pillows are hard. Why do we have so much problem with that? I, I, I don't get it. Brian. Yes. The inside's a little bit on the cool side. OK. Can I put it in the microwave? Unbelievable. Two things I can definitely confirm. The first thing is they're fast. Unfortunately, too fast for their own good. The second thing is when they're fast, they're sloppy. Over 12 dishes have come back, and this place is about to explode. Unbelievable. Is everything OK tonight? Um, I don't know if I like this too much. Do you want something else? It's a little bit too lemony. I'll be right there. Excuse me, I'm going to have a reorder here a little too lemony. Maybe we should take the one goddamn <laughs> recipe. Maybe mom. we should. Put your ingredients on. A little bit of olive oil. What, just straight olive oil, or you want? Like a caramelity mix. Did you put your salt, pepper, and garlic in here? Yes. Coming through, I got it. I was trying to ask you what you wanted well, out. If I say calamari mix, you should know what I mean. I didn't hear calamari mix. That's what I said. To see my father not trust me was just getting downright frustrating. I don't know what else to show my father. This is supposed to be blackened. It wasn't blackened, and that's all fat. You need a new steak? What they say? I need an O. Did you want another steak? Yes. OK, medium rare, blackened. Sammy, you know what blackened means? Dad, I put it on a flat top. I put the Cajun seasoning on. I put it on there, and I cook both sides medium rare, blackened. Is that what blackened is? I do need another steak. Medium rare, blackened. OK, I get very it. Very blackened, very I spicy. I get it. Whatever. Yeah. Where's the Cajun spice? I got it over here. Sam is like a new puppy that you have to constantly pay attention to him. This is a joke. He's now ready to run the business. Why don't we ever have towels in this line? There's a towel right there. I won't even wipe my There's ass towels. with it. There's towels right there. There's a towel down here. Joe did not like. What the hell? How's that steak on that redo? You want me to cook it? It doesn't come out of my ass, OK? All right. I hope it doesn't come out of your ass. Don't touch your steak. What the hell? Sam, get your ass out of there. Let's try to make him happy. Joe, did not like. After multiple dishes are returned, Joe kicks Sam out of the kitchen. OK, Sam, get your ass out of there. And takes matters into his own hands. You want to make somebody happy, and that somebody happens to be your father. You want to make him proud of you. You want to make him believe in you. But I don't know how to do that after 28 years. And I'm still trying. Now I'm really seriously starting to understand what it's like behind the scenes in the kitchen. You've got Brian there and Sam cooking fine, but too fast for their own good. All of a sudden, Joe walks in, marks his orders, and then disappears. But when he walks in, they all stand to attention, and he talks them like dirt. Unfortunately, that dirt's his son, Sam. Right. That was tough. We've got ourselves in a real horrible rut cooking in that kitchen because it's just slamming food. I've never seen so much food go in a microwave in all my life. It's like no one's striving to be better. You tell me how you feel about the frozen food. I hate it. I'm embarrassed to say it's my food. Why don't you tell Dad that you want to cook fresh? Dad, I want to cook fresh. I want to cook fresh. Is Sam a good chef? He's, he, he likes to cook. I don't want my children insulted. Whether it's true or not, it cuts me. And only a mother would understand that. And what's his weaknesses? You're not committed. You put 25 hours a week. I used to work that my, when I had my first restaurant one day. Why haven't you been committed? My father doesn't really talk to me that much. And you know, I, I feel that you, sometimes you hate me. No, I, I, I don't want to be I don't talk to you. to you because you don't put enough time here to get involved. Where's your fire in your belly? I mean, why can't you show me the same set of balls that I had and just go up there and try to make something out of it? I've been fucking doing that shit since I was fucking 13. Nice to you. You don't see me? You don't see me? See what, Sam? I've been scrubbing floors nice to you. I've been wanting you to fucking notice me for how long. I don't How, how many floors? times you looked at me and said, hey, 
Holy fucking shit, good job. Not once. They just won't tell me about that you're bullshit. Long, you're not here long enough to do that, Sam. I'm not long enough for you to say good fucking job one time? Come on. I don't, I don't know what else to say. No matter what, there's always a complaint. I have not served him anything without him saying it's not done right. It, it hurts. I mean, still, to this day, I'm almost 30 years old, and that stupid shit hurts. We've got our cards out on the table. Now I want to see the passion. I want to see that little bit of flame relit. The light's back on. OK. In the morning, Gordon wants to focus his attention on Joe. Before the customers come in, let's have two minutes together. Not his battles with his son, but his battle with a crippling disease. How does it affect you, that level of diabetes? Diabetes is the worst disease you can have. I got pain in my legs every day. And you have a, a proper medical insurance? No, I don't. Oh, come on. I don't. OK, we can afford it. I had to cut it off. You know, I've been without insurance for, you know, since we opened this restaurant. God's sake. You know? Rest is the first thing you need. You can't be here seven yeah. days a week. I built this restaurant. I've been putting in 70 hours a week. I would like my son to run this restaurant and me kick back. But Sam doesn't follow through, and now I'm stuck with this thing in my shoulder, and I am keep on digging until I dig myself out. You can't be a fucking martyr. I know. Hey, you've got to look after yourself. You keep me posted on how you feel. Yeah. OK? Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Before Gordon can turn around Giuseppe's... I want to turn up a notch. He needs to test Sam's abilities... I want to cook off. ...and reignite Joe's passion. Both of you, cook something unique, anything you want. The front of the house staff, I'm going to taste. They won't know who's cooked what, but what they will know is which dish is the best, because that dish tonight is going on as a special. Ready? Let's go. When Chef Ramsay said that we were going to have the cook-off, I kind of just wanted to do something simple but bold and hopefully impress Chef Ramsay and impress my father on top of it. Everything hand-bought, freshly made pasta, fresh lasagna, fresh salmon, asparagus, double pork chops, garlic, basil. Blow me away. OK. I saw the salmon just caught out of the water maybe two hours ago. I had to go for the salmon. I love it. I used to take center cut pork chop, and I sear some scallops with some pancetta, with some uh, Italian sausage, and provolone cheese. OK, let's go. OK, right, two dishes. First one's a broiled salmon with asparagus coated in egg, finished with provolone cheese, and the salmon has been charbroiled. Next to that, we've got a pork chop stuffed, served on the side with grilled potatoes and gratinated with provolone cheese. Take a taste and then pass it down, yeah? I was confident in my dish because I always cook with a little flair and a little flavor to it. OK. We're going to start with, uh, Mum, out of both dishes, which one would you choose as a special? I would take the pork chop, put it with the Potatoes, not the pasta, with the asparagus. Mm -hmm. So, a bit of both. That's a fair answer. Diplomat. OK, Brian, out of both dishes, which one would you choose? The uh, pork chop. Pork chop? Yes. Right, darling, which one would you choose? Definitely the pork chop and the mushrooms. OK, feed it the pork chop. Tony, out of both dishes, which one would you choose? Um, I would have to say the salmon. Mm -hmm. Salmon? OK, Dawn. If I was just looking at the menu and hadn't tasted them, I would probably go with the salmon. But after tasting it, I'd go with the pork chop. Right. Well done. Oh, thank you. Yeah, really well done. Yeah. Huh? Sure, I was a little disappointed. I'm not going to lie. But at the same time, I want him to be better than me because I need someone to look up to. I need a mentor in my life. My choice, out of both those dishes, they're both good enough to go on this menu tonight. Yes? That's what's going to happen. Two specials. Congratulations. You're the man. Good dish. I wish he would have won, to tell you the truth. You know, which is dish looked really good. Tonight, you're going to be cooking your father's special. Make sure you know the dish inside out. You got it. 
I'm real fired up. Not only because we're putting a new item out there that everybody's going to taste, but me and my father are going to work together on each other's dishes, and I know they're going to be excellent. With everyone feeling good about tonight's specials, Gordon begins to work on another problem of this restaurant's, the lack of communication between Joe, Sam, and Kathy. I'm here to help. But it's, you know, it's, it, every hour it's changing because I've never ever quite come across such a difficult a restaurant change. situation in all my life. Because the restaurant's one thing, but the biggest problem is the family. And what I want you to do is I want you to write a letter and say in that letter what you really want to say to them both. Write that letter for me. I will. Please. I will. And don't show any of them it. I won't. My objective tonight is to push the specials. You've got one made by the father and one from the up-and-coming son. I want to make sure that you sell them. With Joe momentarily out of the kitchen, Gordon sees a chance to speak with Sam. Uh, we'll just give you two minutes, uh, Drew. Yeah. Tonight, when you get out of here, when you get home, I want you to tell me in a letter to your father, yeah, what you really feel about him. What kind of figure that guy is in your life. Yeah. I want you to put it on paper for me discreetly, and I mean discreetly. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. First customers are here, yeah? Here we go, yeah? Booth over here okay? We're going to put the pork, okay, and the scallop on top. Right. Um, I am going to try the salmon. Okay. Do you have to special, set be special as well? Thank you. Okay, here we go. You're going to be expediting in and out, and you're on the line, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Good, good man. So it's going to be two pork Giuseppe. OK, two pork Giuseppe's. All right, let's show them what we're made of. Olive oil, salt and pepper. Very nice. What a breath of fresh air. Every dish like that, yes? Yes, sir. Salmon, enjoy your meal. Two salmon, two pork. You got it. Mm, I really like the pork chop. Don't overcook it, Sam. It's just boom, boom, get done. Once again, Joe can't give up control of the kitchen. It's well done, Sam. Instead of expediting and making sure orders are filled quickly, He's at the stove cooking Sam's dishes. It took 25 minutes for a calamari. Joe, are you expediting? No, not really. I can't read without my glasses. Your glasses around your neck. Fuck. This is his heart. This is his place. But he's got to learn that he can't always be in the middle of the action. I can't do it anymore, man. What's wrong, brother? Fuck yeah. He's going to kill himself. Sugar is low, or I'm fucked up. Joe, expedite and let Sam cook. Jesus Christ. Want to switch? I'll, I'll dress him up. Well, right? I can see, man. I got I pick up fucking things back in on I got snow. Chef Ramsey wanted Joe to expedite, but that's Italian in him. Never let go, never give up, never surrender. Help me pull him off. Right. Because that's the only way. I mean, literally, we got to pull him off. Right. I had to get him off that stove. He's magnetized that. Is that a steak? It's well done. I don't like that steak. I don't like it. It's well done, Sam. It looks like shit. Sam. Yeah. Kick him off that. I'm sorry, dad. But your fucking sugar's up. You got to get off. Thank you. With Joe finally off the line. If that kid, we don't let him stand and fail a few times, he's never going to stand up. Sam and Brian regain control of the kitchen. Look at that, my friend. There you go, Sammy. And finish the service. Wow. Very good. And while the staff was cleaning up, two seconds. Gordon cornered Joe. Is it your wish that one day Sam takes over? Yeah. I want you to go home and just write a short letter how you feel about him, what he means to you, and what you want him to be one day. I want you to talk from the heart, and you've got to keep it between you and I. I will. I will. Even though the specials were a big success, this restaurant still has a long way to go before it's ready for relaunch. Tonight wasn't good enough for this restaurant. If we're going to establish any form of longevity, I know we can all do better. Tomorrow, we are going to do better. We're going to relaunch and market this place. So you get yourself off to bed. Yeah? So you're going to work for a change? I mean, you're going to. <laughs> you're such a Rottweiler. I swear to God. OK, good night. Immediately after the family and staff left, Chef Ramsay's team went into high gear, working through the night to transform Giuseppe's into a contemporary Italian eatery. What a beautiful morning for a relaunch. How are we? Good. When I first arrived, the restaurant was dated, and it's almost like you'd opened a dated restaurant. This is what you call a modern contemporary Italian. Are you ready to see the new Giuseppe's? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes? Good. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come through. 
Ooh, look at this. Holy. Oh, Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> it was claustrophobic. Now it's a modern, contemporary Italian restaurant. I just couldn't believe that something like this could be done in the, it just the time that I slept. I'm totally taken back by this. It's like a different place. New bar stools, new drapes. <sighs> nice new chairs. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. He's holding Sammy. Oh, he was oh. just born. When I saw my father look at the pictures of me and him when I was a little boy, you know, when I saw a tear come to his eyes, I almost lost it. You feel like you're stepping inside something historic. Now it's modern. It. I yes? Love it. I love it. Run by a, an amazing family, Joe. I just, I, I don't know how you do stuff like that. You deserve it, my man. Come here, you. <laughs> and you deserve it. Huh? Is it lovely? It's beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. Huh? I'm so happy because now we have a real chance. It's a new beginning. This is beautiful. Something even more important now. Marketing. In order to relaunch this restaurant, we're going to host the first ever Giuseppe's Bolathon with the American Diabetes Association. Yes? I'm overwhelmed. You know, Bolathon for diabetes, which I uh, lost my brother and my mom. So it's, it's, it's a big thing. Bolathon for diabetes. It took your brother, it took your mother. It's not taking my it's father. It's not taking you. Hi, guys. Hello. Nice to see you. Come through. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you so much for being part of our first ever Giuseppe's Bowlathon. We were greeted by a warm crowd cheering for us like we were some celebrities. You guys hungry? There you go. It was great to see my father passing out soups and talking to the customers and getting them all excited about our restaurant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. I have no words for this, but I'm glad that you guys are here and uh, helped spread the word about diabetes. We're going to fight it. And with help of you people, we're going to do it. After the success of the first ever Giuseppe's Bolathon, Chef Ramsay and the staff return to the restaurant to prepare for the relaunch. The condensed menu. It's fresher, it's quicker, it's smaller, and more importantly, it's 10 times more exciting. The classic soups, pasta violi, minestrone soup. That's the heartbeat of the restaurant. OK, the chicken parmesan, look at that. It's a new way, modern and something complete. When Chef Ramsay presented our new menu, and I saw that all the old bullshit was off, I was excited. We're at 2008 now, and here's the menu to prove it. More importantly, if this restaurant's got a chance of survival, we've got to communicate and stick together tonight. Right now, I'm so excited. I feel like I'm 18 years old again. <laughs> One, two, three. Giuseppe! For tonight's dinner service, Chef Ramsay has assigned Sam to run the line and Joe to expedite. We've been given every opportunity. Now it's time for me to step up to the plate and knock it out of the park. Hello. Welcome to the new Giuseppe's Trattoria. Are you ready to order? Better cheese and caponara. Feel more sauce. Seafood platter, wonderful. I'm ready to rock and roll. This is a very, very important night. It's not just about the relaunch of Giuseppe's. It's a transition. That's what's got to take place tonight. Will Sam step up to the mark? And can Joe let go and give Sam the confidence to run this place? Time will tell. All right, I got three Marcellas coming right now. I need them, baby. Only 30 minutes into service. Medium wall is coming right after. And stubborn Joe is on the line cooking again. Yeah, do you want to get off the line? We got it. I got three Marcellas coming on the fly. I need them, Sammy. Dad, get off the line. Go. Oh. Marcella, coming hard. Get it. It's not going to be you on the line, you understand? My father wasn't letting go. He doesn't need to be back there right in the action. If anything, he's making things more complicated. Priority, chicken Marcella. What's wrong? It's raw. Oh, fucking hell. Sam. Yes. Not now, buddy. I've got pink chicken. OK. Come on. Sorry about that. Come on, come on. Slow it down. I'd rather wait an extra five minutes and send out fucking pink chicken. Yes, sir. Take your time. I'm having a problem with the lasagna, the ricotta is actually cold. Okay. Hey, you guys. Yes, ma'am. They need this 
cooks more. All right. They yes, said it's cold. Yes, ma'am. Don't rush it. We're not rushing. Yeah, we are. We're going right back. This grill sucks. Dan, do you want to get off the line? This thing is awful, Sam. Dan, that char broiler, I've made the best things in the world off of it. I was, again, seeing the same thing. My dad getting worn out, getting angry. Dad, go. We got it. If we can't handle it, then we shouldn't be here. And it was really starting to get to me. Joe. Joe, two seconds. Yeah. They have to learn to do it without me. Yeah? Take 10 minutes out, get All some right. fresh air. Please. Hey, they're fine. Get out. Please. They have to learn. All right, I got this shit cracking. I just got to get a field mark working, OK, please? Do it, man. Come on. Send it, man. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Get out. Fucking hell. If I was rich. You sure the hell wouldn't be here? Well, I'd still be here. There. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Steve, we got time on this bread? Sit down. I've got the bread. Fucking hell, that guy's unbelievable. Unbelievable. This guy is incredible. He had to leave the line, he's down and out, and he's beat. So they've got to step up to the mark, and it's now or never for those guys. They've got to do it for Joe, the restaurant, and more importantly, for themselves. Come on. There you are. Thank you. You're welcome. That table was here half an hour after us. Enjoy. And we still haven't received our food yet. Honey, it's coming. How are we doing this, Sammy? Coming, man. Can, coming. I, can, can I plate this? Plate it. Plate it. I'm plating it. I'm not playing. I'm plating it. OK, great. You want a goddamn award? I heard all the noise in the kitchen. I mean, it's a zoo back there. If they're screwing around, it's hard to run a smooth ship. I do apologize for the delay. OK, we got a seafood platter. There you go, dear. Please enjoy your food. Hey, yeah, quality up here. Where's the quality? Right, right here. here. Yes. Quality's there. Thank you. Unfortunately, Brian's goofing off is causing Sam to lose his focus. You want quality? I got you quality, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and the customers are feeling the effects. It's a problem. I apologize. Can you please reorder this for me? What's the matter with this? The inside, not the cool side. Come on. OK. Brian, Sam, come here a minute. From behind the line, it sounds like we're fucking around. Food's coming back raw. All I want you to do is cut the fucking around and just concentrate a little bit. Because if you concentrate, shit won't come back raw. We waited an hour for our food. Now I'm sitting here 20 minutes waiting for raw fish. Just quit the fucking around. You'll see a difference in the standard. Come on, guys. I know we can do better. You fucking here, we can do better. Well, come on, then, just concentrate. Yes, chef. Screw that fucking shit. It's stone cold and raw. You know whose fault all this is tonight? It's his. The people are done eating, and she hasn't got her dinner. And I haven't even gotten my food yet. I want to leave. All right. You know who I blame? I blame all this on you. It's not difficult. So it's stop not... making fucking pathetic excuses. Here we got Chef Ramsay giving us a hand. And now you're going to turn around and basically spit in his face and say, it's your fault that I suck? That's horrible. I feel sorry for the man. Honey, it's coming. We don't even want it. Yeah. Hold on. It's okay. You just got to slow down and stop being a fucking goofball throwing food out there. Okay, great. Thanks. Nothing complicated. Outstanding. Good man. Good man. B6 is ready to walk. We got a table walking. Let's go, guys. Get back in your fucking truck. Right. Coming to me looking for excuses. Excuses? I ain't got no excuses. You just said you blame me. We did. On the shit I ate when I first arrived. That's cool. Thanks, Chef. Huh? What a fucking idiot. Supposed to be in this together, right? I would never come back here again. Fucking cement mixer. This guy's a pain in the ass. Where's Brian? In this hugely important dinner service. I got three Marcellas coming on a fly. I need them, Sammy. Dishes started to come back. Sam, yes. I've got pink chicken. Pull it together. Come on. I want to leave. And when Chef Ramsay tried to restore order. Quit the fucking around. You'll see a difference in the standard. Brian couldn't handle the criticism. You know who I blame? I blame all this on you. Get back in your fucking truck. Right. Coming to me looking for excuses. Thanks, Chef. And packed it in. It's supposed to be in this together, right? What a fucking idiot. This guy's a pain in the ass. Leaving a father and son to rely on each other to save this restaurant. Come on, I'm not giving up. I'm not fucking giving up. All right, Sam. Yo, Marcella, is it out? Three Marcella's coming right now. Okay, I'll take care of the sauce. Okay, I got a shrimp scampi coming on the fly. Uh, salmon, right after? You got it. We got this, all right? I couldn't have asked for any better. Father and son finishing off. Yes? Yes, chef. I'm so happy to know that me and my father can work side by side without trying to kill each other. I mean, it's a great feeling. That's what I always wanted.
Excellent. Hey, what a difference. They look great. Beautiful. Even it's delicious. Yeah, you have to try this. It is so delicious. Good. I like that a lot. Yeah, you did an excellent job today, Sam. I'm proud of us. You know what I mean? I think over home, my son did really, really good. He pulled through, so that shows me a lot. He made me realize that family, it's everything. And that's what we have with each other. This place is gonna work, Pop. After an incredibly successful relaunch, the only thing left for Gordon to repair is the family. We have come a long way. From the first minute I walked in here, I saw a family that wasn't even talking to each other. They're talking over each other, and nothing was sinking in. I asked all of you individually to write a letter. And before I go, I want you to read the letter. Kathy. To Joe and Sam, I see that our lives and the way we exist and treat each other is not acceptable any longer. We need real change before it's too late. Joe, I don't want to be a widow. Please try to trust in Sam. You need to teach and support him. You need to let him make mistakes. You need to pull back. Sam, my beautiful son, it's time to fucking stand up. You know this has always been for you and about you in your new life. Don't be scared. It's time for you to shine and start busting some ass. Love, Ma and Kathy. Well done, my darling. That was tough. Sam, you're not out of the woods. I thought maybe we didn't have time. <laughs> yeah, well. Dear Dad, this letter is coming straight from the heart. I have always looked up to you. Dad, I really, truly only want you to be proud of me. It feels like I am a big disappointment to you because of my past immaturities. I really am sorry if I disappointed you, and even more sorry if I hurt you. I love you, Dad. All I want is to take this restaurant over and let you relax. We is all we have, and without each other, we are nothing. Love your son, Sam. Amazing. And now, the man. The reason why we're all here. Take your time. To Sam. Hi, Sam. I am writing this few words to let you know that this last couple of days, you made me realize how important you are to me. And I came to realize that you are ready. I want you to take charge. Finally, I am really proud to have a son like you. P.S. I never stop loving you. And I'll be there for you no matter what happens. Love you, Dad. You're an amazing family. You've just forgotten it. This is the closest I felt to my husband and my son in a really long time. My father saying that he loves me and he's proud of me and he wants me to take over. It's everything I always wanted. It's my dream come true. Chef Ramsey brought back the love that we had that we almost lost. And I'll never forget that. You are the American dream. Good night. Good night. Great Neck New York is an upscale community on the north shore of Long Island, where competition among Italian restaurants is fierce. Trobiano's has been struggling to survive for the past three years. Owned by Anthony Trobiano and his girlfriend's parents, they are now just months away from losing everything. My desire to own a restaurant basically started right after culinary school, uh, working for other people. Look at that, huh? And then I said to myself, why am I busting my ass for everybody when I could be doing it for myself? Yeah, Joe, put a steak knife on there. Anthony came to me one day and says, this place is available. You want to buy it? 
I don't know if it took balls or I was just plain stupid doing it. They go right over me and ask him. Having a business together, you know, you see too much, you're together too much, there's resentment because of it. Appetizers, they See go back out or in no? one minute. Tiff. I, I, I heard you. Me and Anthony have been together for six years. We used to never fight, ever. I thought he was like the best person in the world. And then we got here, I'm like, who am I going out with? I want a whole new fucking slip. We should have two. When it comes down to running the business, it's really Anthony that runs it. Hey, change the fucking ticket, bro. Come on. Fucking bitch. It's my restaurant, my rules, and that should be the bottom line. Fire 14. At the beginning, Trobianos took off. We didn't maintain the food coming out fast enough with quality. And from there, our business decreased. There will be plenty of open tables, believe me. The early bird special was my idea. Any place you like. It's bringing in people to keep the boat afloat. How are we doing, folks? Everything all right? Forget about it. I feel like I'm in Florida. It's crazy. I'm working, killing myself to pay bills. I don't want to live like this. I don't. I don't really want to live this way anymore. It's depressing. I put my parents into this position. They were finally getting comfortable, and now they have no choice but to work, or they're going to lose everything. Anthony. He's only my daughter's boyfriend. I put my faith, I put my home, my retirement, my wife's well-being, everything else on the line with this young man. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, it is my name on the awning. To think that my name is going down as well as the restaurant, that would definitely be disappointing. You guys have to run more food, okay? We are. More. The last three years have been rough. By this time in my life, I thought we would have been married, had kids already. If we don't get Chef Ramsay's help, there's no other options for us. OK, here we are. Oh, shit, it's for sale. No, that's an early bird dinner menu. $14.95. Fuck me, it's cheaper than a sub shop. Right, Trobianos. Here we are. Hello. Hi there. How are you? How are you? Gordon, please. First name is? Joe. Joe, good to see you. Very Continue. nice to meet you, Chef Likewise, Ramsay. Likewise, good Pat. to see you too. Nice Pat, to nice to see you. When Chef Ramsay came through that door, I thought it was a blessing. I think hopefully he'll put us straight. So, uh, who came up with the bright idea of opening a restaurant? You bought a restaurant with your future father-in-law. It was just an exciting thing, you know? You were able to purchase a restaurant as a dream of mine. How old are you now? 28? 29? Mm -hmm. So you were 25 when you opened it. Mm -hmm. Which is fucking young to open a restaurant. <laughs> sure. Yeah? Yeah. Thought that was ready. Ambitious, you know? And have you trained in Italian restaurants? No. I have not. I felt I knew everything. I still do. Are you that arrogant? Possibly. I wouldn't open a fucking Italian restaurant without working in one. I definitely think Anthony needs to hear that he's arrogant because I say it to him sometimes and he takes it as, oh, yeah, you, know, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm gobsmacked that a young man at the age of 25 would manipulate his future father-in-law to open an Italian restaurant having never worked in a fucking Italian restaurant. That doesn't make sense. No offense, I didn't pin him down and handcuff him and said, you, I need your house to put the restaurant. But you've got the house now. Chef Ramsay was, you know, making me feel like it's my fault that the restaurant ain't doing too well. Am I having enough pressure as it is? You guys are struggling to get married, and you've been married for a long time. You know, that level of pressure, how do you manage that? It's been rough because we can't do what we want to do anymore. We just can't do it. Tiffany? I hate it here. He'll get mad at me that I'm saying this, but I do. I don't like it here. It's not that I don't like working. I like it, honestly. It's just hard yep. sometimes. Having Anthony and my parents as partners tends to be difficult. Anthony says one thing, and then my parents say another, and, you know, sometimes they clash. Whose idea was put that pathetic sign in the window? Me. It's bringing some sort of customers in, right? Yeah. It seems that everyone's in agreement with, you know, the light-hearted decisions made by one individual. What Chef Ramsay had to say to Anthony was on the point. Sitting back and just listening, you say to yourself, wow, what the hell are we doing? Why did we do this? I'll be back in now. Chef Ramsay feels one way and I feel another. And at the end of the day, the name on the awning is Trobianos. It's not Ramsay. Trobianos has unfortunately become known for one thing and one thing only. It's inexpensive early bird special. How are we doing out? Beautiful. The restaurant is only minutes away from its nightly ritual. Hello. How are you? Were you early? Of course. <laughs> Put you right by the window. 
Oh, my goodness gracious. One thing all the family agree on is that the food is great. And Anthony, well, he's certainly a confident guy. Now, I may be in for a treat. And right now, it's time for the early bird. Here we go. This is, this is busy. Yes. Huh? Got there early, aren't they? 4.30. 4.30? Who eats there early, right? Wow. The decor matches the clientele. Drab, fuddy-duddy, yeah, and seriously old-fashioned. I feel like I've come to see my granny in a retirement home. I can't eat dinner at 4.30 in the afternoon. Do you enjoy your dinner? Well, I'm sure. So what would you recommend? The Trobiano salad is excellent. Uh -huh. It's chopped. Why would you chop it? People seem to love it. Is that because of their teeth? Maybe. The... <laughs> it must be a nightmare. Knife, fork, there spoon and straw. Right. <laughs> I can't stand here. <laughs> Still need a few minutes? I know. I think I'm ready. All right. What would you Excellent. like? Uh, first thing, eggplant tower. OK. Then I'll have the chicken wrapped shrimp, please. Finally, some fish. What would you recommend? The salmon's fresh. It comes with potatoes and vegetables or pasta. Any pasta you like. But you wouldn't serve spaghetti with the salmon? Yeah, people get it all the time, because they like to take the pasta home, usually. Let's go for the salmon and spaghetti. What a nice. OK. Excellent. Thank you. Wow. Two for one. What up? You got it. Is he sleeping over there? Is he? Shit. Here we go, right here. Table 10's appetizers, please. All right. I'm very excited to show Chef Ramsay what I can do. I feel that there will be no faults in what I produce for him. There you go. Wow. The eggplant tower? Oh, my god. <laughs> When Chef Ramsay's appetizer was coming out, you could see his face like, what is this shit? I said, oh my god, we're dead. That's definitely not homemade mozzarella. It's ghastly, stone cold, solid, and tasteless. How are you, madam? How was dinner? Fair. Fair. And what have you got in the bag? What is that? Eggplant parmesan cheese. Oh, lovely. When will you have this? For lunch tomorrow? Yeah. So you're not coming back tomorrow? No, not tomorrow. Because you've got dinner there. Rock I like your British accent. Thank you. I like your lipstick. <laughs> it's great spending time in the company of the Golden Girls. <laughs> oh, the Golden Girls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kevin, bring it out. Wow. Chicken oh wrapped shrimp. Okay. Thank you. Chicken and shrimp. Well, I've got the chicken. And where's the shrimp? Bingo. I'm struggling with that. Looks like chicken. Tastes like shrimp or shit. Joe. They are solid. I've never had a shrimp that hard. Why would you stick a shrimp inside a chicken? It's one of his creations, I guess. OK. You ready? Jesus. Oh, yes, thank you, yeah. Thank you. Jesus. Your shrimp was too hard. Rock hard, like a bullet. OK. He says, why would you put shrimp inside of a chicken? He says, I don't get it. All right. When the first dish came back, I was, I, I was disgusted, pissed off. I wanted to prove him wrong. I wanted to show him my cooking skills, you know, are up to par. Somebody please run this fucking food. That's a bolognese. Thank you. And there's a salmon. Thank you. OK. Christ almighty. And dry. And absolutely hideous. Pretty silent, dry, okay. like really dry. Okay. Would you mind just? Um, Not a problem. Would you me. like another piece? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. No. Thank you. Your salmon was too dry. He don't want another piece. He said this was brutal. Here you go. You want to taste? It? Throw it out. When it came back, I was just too pissed off to even taste it. I was furious at Chef Ramsay saying that my food is shit. Personally, I feel that it's the wrong opinion at this point. I'm fucking furious. I'm furious. It's only 7 p.m. Early bird customers have now left, and at a time when restaurants are usually bustling, Trobiano's is empty. All is quiet, except it's time for the family to hear from Gordon. Let's have a chat uh, together, yeah? One thing that I was absolutely amazed with this evening is the size of the portions. When you serve an entree, 
You're serving a second entree with it. It's been confirmed to why we don't open for lunch, because you're serving the lunch the night before. So they're robbing you. However, that's not the biggest problem. The food, hideous. The Leaning Tower of Pisa. What, what, what's going on there with that? The eggplant tower? What was wrong with it? That's not fresh mozzarella. I'm really sorry. That's processed commercial crap. <laughs> Salmon, did you see it when it went back to the kitchen? Yes, I did. Yeah. Just because you may have the inclination that I'm acting like a dick, it was dry. I don't think you're acting like a dick. I just didn't want to taste it myself. It's hard to hear him get yelled at, but Chef Ramsay, he knows what he's talking about, so he should listen to him. Every time a plate comes back to my kitchen, I taste it. And then the worst dish, the shrimp and the chicken. Where'd you go looking for the shrimp? Just seems unique. Now I'm even more concerned about what you're tasting. I thought you had a better palate than the fucking customers in there this evening. It was hideous. You can bust my balls about my ego, but you should not be killing me over my food. I know I'm a great chef. I don't think he knew what he was talking about. OK, I'm out of here. It's been a tough day for everybody. <laughs> Good night, guys. 14.95. That's not easy, that, slapping a family in the face, especially when they're half a million dollars in debt. And it's tough. I honestly don't know if I can turn this around. Oh, dear. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. I don't know. We're so frustrated, we're so worn out, we're so yeah. beat up. We don't know what the fucking direction we're going anymore. Well, obviously, we have to find the right direction because well, we're drowning well, very quickly. Maybe this was a godsend that he came in. Do you know what? There's no way I can sleep. I've got to get back to the restaurant and actually find out what this guy's kitchen's like. What's he working with before I start putting my plan together? As Gordon ventures into the kitchen, the family continues their post-dinner meeting. You need to take criticism better. I'm going to take criticism better. You're like, oh, these people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You don't Maybe. want to hear it. Right, you don't want to hear it, but you have to, though. Like, you got to take it and be like, maybe I am doing something wrong. This is shocking. When was the last time this was clean inside? My goodness, me. Look at that. The floor is caked with grime. Oh, Christ. Oh, my God. When was the last time this was clean? Bloody hell. Oh. Christ Almighty. What on earth is that? Oh, the smell. You know what you do wrong? Just take more, take control. more control of these guys, and I feel that you don't. If you want me to take the control, don't go second guess me about anything that I do. Behind, behind there? Oh my God. Shit. Look at that there. That is mouse or rat droppings. Oh my God. A couple of hours ago, I was feeling slightly embarrassed for them, slightly concerned in a big way. But now, when a chef let go of his kitchen like this, it proves he doesn't care. I want to be more involved in the business end of things. Forget the business aspect. Well, your portion is the hosting portion. Hi there. Yeah. Yeah. Gordon? I was going back to the hotel, couldn't sleep, had a look in the kitchen, and I am absolutely fucking Gobsmacked. How can you do that? And when that is? Say that again. What is that? What is that? Come here. Anthony, how can you cook in this? When was the last time this was cleaned? The kitchen? Well, we try to do it on a daily basis. I mean. What? Have you seen under there? Underneath? Underneath here. Joseph, would you mind having a look? I don't think you've actually seen this. Down there. I see it. Look at that. Oh, God. Please, Anthony, talk to me. Give me some form of feedback. Don't bullshit me. Give me something, please. Well, they're asked to do it every day, the staff. They're what? They're asked to do it every day. We're on our ass with half a million dollars debt, and you're telling me now that you don't even clean. Well, that's what we have staff for, right? Oh, my God! 
What's this then? What's that on there? The droppings. They're not fucking caraway seeds. I wasn't unaware of them. Couldn't imagine it was been that bad. From the surface, everything looks nice and nice. When you start digging, I can't just can't believe it. Isn't this your bedrock? Isn't this where it's all created from? You can't create jack shit from here. I swear to God, I don't think you give a fuck. You should be absolutely ashamed. Chef Ramsey came in like a bat out of hell and again just whipped the living crap out of me. There's only so much you, you could do or say. So why, Anthony? Give me something, please. Oh my goodness, I love you. Come up with an answer, Anthony. Otherwise, I'm fucking out of here. I swear to God, I am fucking out of here. I can't take much more of this shit. Fuck it. You got no chance. I am out of there. I am out of there. Anthony's arrogance and his refusal to take responsibility for his kitchen have pushed Gordon to his breaking point. I am out of there. When Gordon Ramsay walked out, I said, that was it. We're finished. We might just fucking burn the place. I don't know what to do. Ramsay, you don't even want to help us. When I saw Chef Ramsay going out to the street, I was feeling a failure. I had to tell him how I felt and just not let this slip through our fingers. What's going on? Where do we stand? I want to get this place back. Why have you given up, then? Tell me. There must be a reason. Because on the ambulance in there, you gave up years ago. Anthony, that's your family in there, right? And each and every one of them believe in you. Yeah. Don't you feel bad? Honestly? Don't you wake up on sleepless nights? Yeah, I do. I do. You ever had that burden on your shoulders? Somebody's house? Not quite to this extent, no. I've been in the industry for 21 fucking years busting my balls. I've made mistakes, yeah? I've had failures. But fuck me. Have but I learned from to, it? Exactly. I'm trying to learn from it. Are you? Yes, I am. By that in there? Come on. Fucking, come on. Fucking, huh? I think you've had it too easy. You want lucky fucking boys to get hold of this restaurant at 25. And I don't see that fucking level of humbleness. Slightly arrogant, fine. But a little bit of humility. You know that. Yeah. Chef Ramsay taught me you need to face reality. You need to realize that maybe you're not the only one involved in everything. Time to get humble and turn the corner. Let's go. We've just had a chat, and now we're going to clean. When that place is clean and you see the difference, you will respect it from a completely different level. Not just the kitchen, the ingredients. If that's not working, what chance have we got? Let's do it together. Oh, fuck. Let's go. When I seen Gordon Ramsay come back in, I said, oh, OK, there's still a little ray of hope. Declutter everything. We get rid of all the food first, yeah? If we're going to give this place a really good clean, at this point, I'll do anything and everything that Chef Ramsay does suggest. He's definitely a, a shot of reality. It's kind of just snapping me back into place. After a stressful night, Gordon chooses an unlikely spot to introduce the family to the first of many changes. What, are we going to slaughter our own beef? <laughs> This is one idea, OK, in order to separate your restaurant from any other Italian restaurant anywhere near Great Neck. What do we get from cows? Make Every the milk, the butter, yeah. cheese. Yeah. What do we do with milk and cheese? What do we make? Uh, mozzarella, uh, no? Mozzarella, exactly. Uh, exactly that. Who's milked a cow before? No one. Oh, my god. <laughs> Miss Glamorous Pat. <laughs> gloves off, please. Gucci gloves off. Look at those gloves. Look at <laughs> 
Oh my god. Nice and gentle now. Make sure your hands are warm. <laughs> ah, yeah! Ah, it's going on! Just try and keep it in the bucket, but... <laughs> this was so out there to milk your own cow. I feel like you really say something, but I'm... Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm starting to get a little excited here. I never thought I'd see my wife milk a cow. She's over there playing with the others, going, ah, ah, ah. Come on, Tiffany, put both hands, please. Nothing's coming out. Oh, that's Tiffany. Oh, just squeeze it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, my God, look at this. I can't believe I'm milking a cow. Oh, you've done that before. No, I just, I watch a lot of westerns. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Anthony, put some muscle into it. This is running away. You're not blaming somebody else again, are you? Come on, you're the chef. <laughs> well done. OK, on the back of last night's scenario, just bringing you four together and having some fun was great because it looked like a family. <laughs> Last night, everyone was in their own little turmoil, so today was really what we needed. This now needs to be pasteurized. We'll take it back and we'll start making our first ever fresh, homemade mozzarella. Ready? Great. Yeah. Um, that was pathetic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, teats no. are not your strong point, no. right? <laughs> 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 Definitely. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Back at the restaurant, Gordon walks them through the process of making fresh mozzarella. Anthony, push all the way out so it gets really nice and shiny. Perfect. There you go, look. That's it, you got it. I didn't know how to make fresh mozzarella. <laughs> we actually had a nice little learning experience. 45 minutes a day. Chef Ramsay's idea to make fresh mozzarella here is definitely putting a stamp on Trobianos. It's something that people are gonna remember, people are gonna come for. With a number of bookings for Friday night, Gordon decides it's an opportune time to implement another one of his changes. OK, tonight, take down that sign. <laughs> the early bird's finished. You don't need it. You're running at the restaurant, not a retirement home. Let's go. Now that the early bird menu is a thing of the past, Gordon introduces pasta and mozzarella specials to the dinner service. OK, spaghetti lobster. I don't want it flooded with a heavy coating of tomato sauce. You know? Yeah, and over here, homemade fresh mozzarella, yes, with caramelized red onions, escarole, bang. Beautiful. All right, two nice specials, yeah? OK, good. Hello, ladies. Going into dinner service, I'm real nervous. I got this buzz going on. We got a lot of things on the line here. So you want a mozzarella special? Yeah, you, you can bring them out with the appetizers here. Thank you. Two more specials. Taste, 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 yeah? Yeah, I don't care if it's a fucking sauce or a breadcrumb. You taste, yes? We're looking good, looking good, looking good. Come on. The mozzarella is fresh. They actually milk the cow themselves. Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's delicious. It's delicious. Mike, spinach ravioli, lots of ravioli. Eliminating our early bird special is a lot more difficult. We have a lot more dishes to prepare for. I need the lobster special. We need to hurry up. Please. Let's go. Come on, go, 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 go. Anthony, look at me. Taste. You fucking taste. Yes, Chef. I got to watch from you. Yeah. I'm probably going to make a big sign. I think Anthony needs it, saying you have to taste the food before it goes out, or I will kick his ass. OK, we're coming, we're coming. Here we go, here we go. Go. Mike, we got a side of linguine, garlic, and oil coming up. Nine and ten, right after another. It's busy. This guy's getting absolutely slammed, but he can move, huh? He's definitely got talent, but there's one thing this guy hasn't done is taste a thing. From a chef's point of view, how can you serve food out to the customers and not taste anything? Unacceptable. Beyond fucking belief. Now I'm locked out. While Anthony might not be tasting his food, the customers are. I mean, it's all right, you know, it's all right. And they're not impressed. It's all overcooked. Yes. Special tough. Right, yeah, it's dry. It seems like it's been around, not made fresh. Another, another fettuccine? Yes, yeah, please. He wants to look at the menu, so get him two menus. Anthony, yes. table 17, they're complaining yes. about their food, saying it's, this is too dry. There's two more gentlemen said the same thing, so they're going to look at something else. You got to fucking kidding me. Anthony, you got to taste this food. Come on. Now, we're playing games here. We're in the business over here. We're getting killed right now. Falling behind big time. It's an hour into dinner service, and a kitchen that is not used to being busy is starting to crumble. All right, it's 25 minutes away. By the time we go, I don't have to go to bed tonight. <laughs> Where's my potatoes? <laughs> oh, you've got to be kidding me. 
Anthony was definitely getting his ass kicked tonight. Please get it out. Come on. The food was taking too long. People were scrambling because they were trying to rush. Go, 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 go. Hurry up. Oh, fuck. Something's burning. Fire. Oh, my God. That's not good. Joe. Anthony. Oh, fuck you know. With the kitchen already running behind, Michael's burnt entree has brought the dinner service to a grinding halt. Anthony! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, my God. Paula, Paula, Paula. Jesus Christ. We'll regroup here, we'll regroup, okay? On a night filled with more setbacks than successes, Anthony is trying to salvage the evening by pleasing the remaining customers. There's like nothing. I'm ashamed of uh, myself, and I didn't think it was as bad as the clientele found it to be. You know, could be, I guess, blinders that I was wearing. You're not fucking pissed I am. They think tonight was a disaster. You know, it's depressing. And I know we have to change things. I just don't know what to do. Oh, like my God. Like Can I have seltzer, please, with the wine? What's the matter? Can you please leave me alone? Please. I'm, I'm begging you to leave me alone. Tiffany and I's relationship has been rocky. The stress that we've been through over the past three years has definitely proved to be the breaking point. If the restaurant were to fail, maybe we don't move on. Maybe that's the end of our road. Oh, my God. Okay, tonight didn't go by without its problems. Anthony, from the first plate that left your kitchen to the last plate, you didn't taste a fucking thing. You can't be that fucking arrogant. It was a travesty. That is your fucking job. And the minute you don't do that, don't call yourself a chef. I never really tasted things beforehand. Never thought it was necessary. I guess that just comes with the cocky and the arrogance of me. You have got to taste. If you're not tasting it, what are the customers experiencing? You know, Anthony should be tasting his food. He should know why the clientele is complaining. It's just hurting my business, and it's hurting my family. Samora, we have to be different, Anthony. It separates you from being average to something quite special. If you thought tonight was busy, whew, hey, God help you, because we are relaunching this restaurant tomorrow. I know it's late. Get some sleep. A big day tomorrow. See you in the morning. Good night. I feel like it can't get any worse than it is now. Hopefully tomorrow is going to be a new beginning for everybody. In preparation for the relaunch, Gordon's team worked through the night updating Trobiano's stodgy interior. Good morning. Good morning. Right, big day today. Relaunch yes. day. A lot of changes. You didn't like this place when I first arrived. Yeah? You didn't like the decor, didn't like the lighting, and it was bland. Are you ready for a change? Yes. Let's go. Come through. Oh, Come through. My God. Out with the old, in with the new. Oh, my God. Holy shit. It's warm. Yes. I couldn't believe what I seen. I was definitely in the wrong place. I was dreaming. Everything was unbelievable. The chairs, the, the table ports, the boots. I mean, everywhere you look was beautiful. Oh, look at this! Ah. That's Italy on there, yes? Oh. You're running an Italian restaurant, so we're gonna have some authentic Italian pictures on the wall. I used to hate this place. I used to hate coming in here, but now with the new decor, everything just goes really well together. So everything is just perfect. It's romantic, it's warm, and more importantly, it's sexy. This is great. <laughs> look at this! That is a mozzarella bar. Wow. That's awesome. Are you happy? Happy is good word. Good man, good man. Yep, yep. <laughs> Come here. No, I'm happy. I'm like crying. I, know, I, know, I, know, I, know. I just can't believe it. I can't. It's more than I've ever, ever expected. It's beautiful. It's a total fresh start. You know, we're, we're going to take from today and just keep moving forward. OK, good. The menu, absolutely crucial. We've condensed it, and it's simple and rustic. Oh, my God. OK, no more salmon and bolognese sauce. It's authentic. Portions have been trimmed, and they're sensible portions. He showed us the menu. Wow. It was downsized. The prices were better. It's beautiful. It's all in place now. Tonight is where it's got to work. 
I'm a little nervous for Anthony. This is where he has to show what he's made of, so hopefully he can get that done. In preparation for the big relaunch, Gordon introduces the staff to the new dishes. Gone are the shrimp and the chicken and the dried out salmon. In their place, authentic Italian dishes. The sole, spicy roast potatoes, rosemary garlic, salmon, the ribeye steak, and the lamb ragu. Homemade mozzarella. We've got hundreds of balls of fresh mozzarella. Right, have a taste. Wow, this is good. Taste is salad, Joe. That's good, yeah. Oh my god, everything is so delicious. OK, guys, it is going to be a very important night, and it is absolutely crucial we stay together on it. Uh, one more thing. I had a phone call from the editor-in-chief of the Bon Appetit magazine. Uh, they want to join us for dinner. Wow. Oh, my god. I'm very nervous about tonight. You know, when he just told us about the critic coming, that scares the hell out of me. This is a real chance to put this place on the map. Just under six million people read that magazine per month. Tonight, I have to make sure Anthony stays on the right track with his cooking, with his tasting of the food. Everything is on the line. This could be a great opportunity for Trobianos, or it could be the final nail in the coffin. How are you? Very well. Good, yeah, how good. You? Hi, how are you? I'm Joe. How you doing? How you doing? Oh, it looks nice. It looks just like a Manhattan to come. And I want to take this. I just wanted to tell you we're trying something new. We have a mozzarella bar. Here we go. Let's go. So they got one each. So six slices there, six slices on there. Yeah. Excellent. See? Bang. Yeah, 30 seconds, $80. Right. Off you go. Gotcha. There's one for you and one for you. Why? This is, this is delicious, though. <laughs> Another one? Yeah, for four. Can't believe how well this has gone. This is know. unbelievable. It's extraordinary. I'm going to fill up on the appetizer. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, follow him behind with Chicken farm, you got one ragu coming up. You tasting the food? Please tell me you taste it. Taste the fucking stuff, man. It's very important to keep the standards high. We have to impress a lot of people. We got a lot of things on the line here. No, I want to make sure they're tasting this shit. I got to watch them now. With Trobianos busier than it has been in years, the pressure is now on Anthony to keep up with the orders. But his staff must come through for him as well. Kevin, table four. I have no idea what that is, bro. Oh, yeah, with vegetables, sorry. Danny, I have two 16s. Does not make sense, buddy. What's going on here? The wait staff here is killing me. Anthony, if you can't read the fucking thing, give it back to him, yeah? Yes. Here, take them, rewrite it right here. Quick, Kevin. Gotta get these tickets sorted, otherwise you're gonna get fucked in 15 minutes, yeah? Yes, sir. Yes. While Anthony gets the staff in line... Are they finished with it? So is it fired right away? I need to know. Joe scans the dining room looking for the Bon Appetit table. Any sign of Bon Appetit yet? Oh, yeah, good. Eyes open, yeah? Tony? Yes, sir. Start pushing out these entrees now, yeah? Yes, you're on top of it now. Stay on top of it, yeah? How we doing, baby? Done? Yeah. That's good. All right, enjoy. Oh. Wow. Now, why can't I make fish like this? Please watch that. Yeah, potential, yeah? Potential critic, yes? This and this, very nice. Go, 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 go. That's sweet. Is it really? I'm so sorry. OK, no problem. Excuse me? Yes, what's the matter? This is cold in the middle. What table is that? Ten. Table ten. Oh, shit. Hey, just when it was going perfectly well, the fucking Sulkin was back. When the dish came back, the only thing that was running through my head was whether it was the Bon Appetit table. The traditional stuff is very good. Yeah, chicken parmesan, very good. We want all the pastas, the pork chops, lamb, to give everybody a little taste. You wanted one of each? Uh huh. OK. Thank you. Okay, no problem. You're welcome. How do you know it's them? Uh, they ordered everything on the menu. And they're asking questions. <laughs> they're asking questions. They're ordering a lot of wine. That is definitely a food critic. Anthony, table yes. nine yes. is six people. Yes. One of them, I think, is the critic. Step it up, yeah? Yes. Bounce back. Come on. Let's go. Okay, we're going to do table nine. A very, very, very important table. All right, here we go. Three minutes on the pasta, Tony. Looking good, looking good. Anthony, yeah, watch that risotto, yes? Yes, chef, yes. Hey, the most important risotto you've made in your fucking life. Look at that, huh? Beautiful. Table nine, risotto and ragu. I need your second bus boy, please, quickly. Nine, please. Wow. That's great. Oh, 
It's just beautifully cooked. Everything's on the line tonight. And if we don't make it, then, you know, it's just going to be a disaster. Oh, that's lovely. It's the relaunch dinner, and Tiffany has just delivered entrees to the editor-in-chief of Bon Appetit. Now all the family can do is hope. I'm very nervous about the critics. I really do think that my business is at stake tonight. It's either going to make us or break us. I have a taste of the fish, Victoria. And the fish and the chicken are really winners. Thank you. It is not overcooked. No, it was nicely cooked. And... It's good. Asking lots of questions, and more importantly, they're passing food round, which is a great sign. Yep. Not happy with it, you don't pass it. How is the bass? You like it? Yeah. Very good, right? Yes. yes. That was a nice recommendation. Good, yeah. thank you. Any complaints? No, no complaints at all. It's great that they're here, you know that. Yeah. Huh? It's fantastic. It's amazing. No, it's a dream. Try. Beautiful. Beautiful. Awesome. I was at an all-time high with Bon Appetit, knowing that if this positive review comes out, that it's going to put Trobianos above and beyond where we ever imagined. With a wealth of satisfied customers and a good response from Bon Appetit, Trobianos' relaunch is a success. But Chef Ramsay knew that Anthony still had some unfinished business. The restaurant's on his way. Tonight proved that. But there's one more thing. What is this? Beautiful. Wow, beautiful. Make an honest woman of her. Shaken. This is unbelievable. This is coming from you? Yeah. To us? You've forgotten about it. And if there's one thing that's missing, it's that. And I know personally how long you've been putting it off because of the pressure from the restaurant. That is going to put an end to it, OK? Yeah, speechless. Thank you. Get up there. Stand strong. Tiffany's a great girl. She's put up with me for the past three years. There was no better time than tonight to go ahead with this. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to our chef patron, Anthony Tobriano. I just want to thank everyone for coming here. Um, you can see we've come a long way thanks to uh, Chef Ramsay here. And we've moved in such a positive direction that there's just one thing in my life that it hasn't been official. Tiffany? shocked that Anthony proposed to me in front of everybody. It was just incredible. I never expected this in a million years. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> it totally touched me to see Anthony propose to Tiffany, and I know this is what he's wanted. It's just unbelievable. It's a dream come true. You better make my daughter happy. <laughs> what do you mean? I'll fucking kick your ass. <laughs> I have one more surprise for both of you. I've arranged for both of you to get married tonight. <laughs> We were just totally shocked. With all the excitement of everything else going on, to top it off with a wedding, come on. I thought I was going to die. Oh my god, this is crazy. I love Anthony. I've been waiting for this for six years. We have a new life to start, so everything should just fall into place now. Tiffany and Anthony have come together to proclaim their undying love through the celebration of their marriage. I am filled with so many emotions. It was an amazing night. Son-in-law. It's unbelievable. There's no other word to describe all of this, really. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to say this family has been a pleasure to work with. Chef Ramsay did definitely save our lives. you got to be kidding me. If he didn't come here, Six months from now, we've probably been closed. I'm grateful, my family's grateful, and I hope this is a new beginning for all of us. Wow, amazing. I've seen many a dream turn into a nightmare. Tonight, a nightmare turned into a beautiful dream. New York City, restaurant capital of the world, home to thousands of restaurants vying to be the crown jewel of the city. Try this, Williams. The Black Pearl just being one. 
started by two friends as a small downtown lobster shack, they moved to Midtown, added a third partner, and hoped to become the premier lobster restaurant in Manhattan. I suggested to Brian that we put an ad in the paper to find uh, an investor since we didn't want to spend any of our own money. Ordering two hot lobster rolls. I met Greg and thought that he would be a perfect match. Gentlemen, fish and chips. It was David's concept. And um, I thought the concept was really very good. And I thought it would make some pretty good money. Did we get that 2,500? Because I'm about four grand short of payroll. The problem started when we started to run low on money. It became very frustrating around here. Brian and Greg and I stopped speaking. We would try to communicate by email, text messaging, and everybody got nervous and frustrated. This place is a nightmare for the lack of management. We don't have one voice. Well, I just asked Brian, and he's like, yeah, well, you guys can figure it out. Oh, we always thanks. figure it out. Well, I know. Because they don't tell us what to do. I think Brian's more of a silent partner. If he had a choice, he'd probably just not have to work here at all. This table had a hair in their fries. I don't want to deal with this. You deal with it. Greg is the hardest working owner, but he doesn't make a decision. Who Brian. the fuck put these letters on here? I couldn't tell you. Out of the three owners, I like David the least because his ego tends to get in the way of a healthy atmosphere. Don't touch the tickets, please. The main problem with the Black Pearl is these guys are really stubborn, and if Gordon Ramsay can help us all kind of mesh together, then this place can be phenomenal. New York City, one of the most difficult places ever to open a restaurant. I opened mine 14 months ago, and I've been busting my balls ever since. I'm dying to see how the Black Pearl are doing. Right, the Black Pearl. Here you go. Hiya. Hello. How are you doing? Good. And you are? Nigel. Nigel. My name's Stephen. Stephen, how are you? We here at the Black Pearl desperately need Gordon's help. We need him to come in and kind of whip all of the owners into shape. How's business? Could be better. But with three owners, and all three of them being over the business, they must be here, what, three or four times a week each, together? No, they're never here together, no. They're never here together? No. Is that one of the owners? Yes, yes it, it is. is. Excellent. Hi. What's your name? David Leonard. David, Gordon, nice to see you. You are? One of the three owners. One of the three owners. And are you hands-on or hands-off? Hands-on. Hands-on. And how many days a week are you here? I do three or four. Three or four. OK, good. I'm going to grab a quick bite to eat, maybe start off with a uh, little bowl of chowder, and then maybe have a chat after. I'm going to be around. When I walked in and first uh, met Gordon, I thought he seemed a bit confrontational. That was not very pleasant. But otherwise, I really had no impression of him. I'll be back with some water for you. Excellent. My name's Steven, so if you need anything, just let me know. Thank you. I like your enthusiasm, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> What a weird bar. And when you look at the bizarre concoction of the interior, it does confirm that three different people, the owners, of course, decorated it. All oh, right. Wow, that was quick. Now, how many's in the kitchen? How many people? Yeah. Uh, three. Three. There you go. Well, thank you. That smells lovely. Did you need more time to look at the menu, or did you um, want to jump No, I don't know, actually. You know that. Um, um, I'll go for a uh, mussel bangkok. All right. A mac and cheese lobster, please. And then I'll finish with a lobster roll. If you're looking for the most popular one, it would be the Maine and the Connecticut. Do you know what? Bring me the three of them. All three? All right. Will do. Thank you so much. My name's Steven, so if you need anything, just let me know. <laughs> no, you are. Just making sure if you need anything, just yell. If anything's bad, I didn't do it, though, so I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> what was your name? Michael? No. What? Your name? Ha, huh, very funny. Ha, <laughs> huh, you're a kidder. <laughs> When Chef Ramsay joked around with me, I think it added that personal spark of, oh, you know, Chef Ramsay isn't this evil devil that everybody sees him as. Well, the same top, first course. OK, then a lobster mac and, and cheese after mac that. Cheese. Okay. And he has a chowder right now. Mmm. A little bit watery for a chowder, huh? What a shame. Hello, Chef. How are you? Oh, very well indeed, thank you. Are you You're Muscles Bangkok. I'm Greg. One the of owners. Oh, one of the owners. No, I'm, not, I'm not the chef. Trust okay. me. Okay. No, you don't want to eat my food. What a way to come from. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you thank too, you. sir. So there's one more owner to come. Yes, yeah. Brian. So David, Brian, and Greg. Whew. Okay, great. Lovely. All right. Confusing. <laughs> uh, thank you. Go ahead. Burn your mouth off. My God. Fuck me. That's hot. Lobster mac and cheese. That's excellent. Lobster mac and cheese. Wow. Thank you. Speak of the devil, and I'll oh, let you enjoy it. Right. 
How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm good. Yeah. So? Yeah, very well indeed, thank you. Yes. How did the three of you come to run a restaurant? Originally, David and I had the place uh, down on Avenue Way, and then we decided to get out of there. Fascinating. OK, I'm going to tuck into my uh, mac and cheese with lobster. OK, thank you. Gets more and more complicated. I'm thinking we send out all three lobster rolls on separate plates, dressed just like they would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So far, he doesn't like much. What do you mean? Food-wise. The mussels can't taste of mussels because of stupid Thai curry Bangkok broth. Mac and cheese, it's chewy and rich, and the chowder. That watery. It's not how a seafood restaurant should run. This is not going to be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, this is the Connecticut, or the hot lobster roll. OK. You're, this is the main lobster roll. Main no. lobster roll. Whoops. Connecticut, Maine, don't worry about that. And this is the New York City lobster roll. New York City. Yes. Connecticut, Maine. Gotcha. All righty. Uh, that's great. Thank you. All right, let's start off with CT. Drawn butter. <laughs> Horrible. Soaking wet bread. It's like eating a fucking wet diaper. So sorry, Connecticut, but I am moving on. Lobster's not seasoned. Land. What a shame. All right, so what did, what did you think of the main? Pretty piss poor, to be honest. I'm going to stop there. Thank you, Stephen. What's up? Well, he likes Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I know. That's his boy. Is he still here? Yeah, he's still upstairs. What's he doing? He's eating. He had uh, three lobster rolls, three different kinds. He had mac and cheese. He had um, Bangkok. David wants to know, is he paying for this? You should definitely give yeah, him a check. Yeah, give him a check. check. I can see that. That'll be fun, huh? After tasting the supposedly best food on the menu, How are you? Gordon gathers the three owners and head chef, Bill. Who oversees the food? I do. The award-winning lobster roll. Bread, soggy. Lobster bland. Do you not season it salt pepper when you bind it with mayonnaise? No. No. Why not? Well, we get most of our recipes and our ideas from Maine, and it's not the way it's done. Well, they have salt in Maine. I've, I've lived in Maine for three months. I know it very well. Chef Ramsay didn't like our lobster roll, and he said he's lived in Maine for three months. But if he'd lived in Maine for three months, he'd know that a lobster roll is exactly the way we make it. I'm really nervous now. I've never known a chef that's not allowed to season his food. Is this man your chef, or is he your puppet? No, he's my chef. David has this tone of being condescending and knowing it all. How much debt have we got over the house? Quarter mil. Yeah. Yeah. Who has the final say? If one of us presents an idea, we vote on it, and we decide whether we want to go forward with it or not. Is it hard running a business with three partners? It's hard for us, yeah. When was the last time all three of you sat down? We have not, we have not done so. OK. I don't feel that any of you are committed to making this work. Have we fallen out? Oh, yeah, a couple, three times, yeah. So that's yeah. why we don't meet? Yeah. OK, who fell out with who? Oh, I get mad at them. Why? Because uh, I don't think they're doing what they need to do. And we feel exactly the same about him, of course. Yeah. yeah. I felt that Gordon was right about many things, but I think he jumped to conclusions and that we are not committed to Black Pearl. A restaurant run by three passionate owners, no chance. Brian, he works two days a week. David, well, I don't trust him one little inch. And as for Greg, well, he's pissed off with both of them. Basically, in a nutshell, sleepy, dopey, and grumpy. Who am I? Snow no fucking white. After a frustrating conversation with the owners, Chef Ramsay decides to take a look at how the Black Pearl operates during a dinner service, especially on a night that all three owners are there. Hi, how are you? Good to recommend. The chowder's good. It's fancy like calamari salad. It's really good, I promise. Ordering two hot lobster rolls. Where's that fisk, Phil? Call me right now, David. I got a crab cake, it's getting cold. Two lobster rolls and a fried shrimp to beef. Uh, the, the shrimp rolls aren't ready yet. What happened with that? I don't have a fried shrimp french fries. So when you and Brian are here together on the same day, Brian takes care of the... We're box. never here together the same day. Oh, you never here? Oh, okay. Yeah, it was weird having David in here expediting because he doesn't normally do that. And having someone on this side of the line that knows what they're doing is key. Do we have one more crab cake? No, no, I, you sold the last one. Oh, that's it. We don't have it. Oh, my God. That's cool. Hey, how are you guys doing? I believe this may be raw. <laughs> What's wrong? Undercooked. Undercooked. That way we deep fat frying it. This can't be normal. They surely to shed. I need an order of fried shrimp. This one was undercooked. What? Are you kidding me? 
David's lack of experience on the pass is resulting in lack of quality control. They wanted these two well done. Zap them. I'm fucking believing it. Zap them. What's that? Four fuck ups already with them? I think it was a competition amongst the three owners to try and prove to Chef Ramsay that they knew what they were doing. And I felt Greg kind of felt out of his element because he's normally in the kitchen. I'll take this back and we'll do something about the muscles. We got sand in the muscles. There's supposed to be sand in the steamers. That's why they get a fucking bra. I don't know, guys. So if people don't know what the fuck they're ordering, what are they ordering? David's definitely a know-it-all, and he can be a little rude. What table is that? Table eight. Thank you. Hi. You had the uh, clam bake, and there was a problem with the mussels or the steamers? Both. They're terribly sand. Yeah, there should be sand in the steamer. There often is, and that's why you have the broth to dip them in. So what would you like instead of those? Uh, nothing. In fact, I'll just eat the lobster. I'm fine. Okay, it'll be right out. Uh, we just reprimanded. I do not think that Chef Ramsay likes David because Chef Ramsay has a bullshit detector, and David can be full of it sometimes. What happened? Thanks, Chef. No, they're done. They're done. Yeah, they just didn't like it. Jesus Christ. That's the funniest fish and chips I've ever seen in my life, you know that? What happened? I just smell inside there, mm. will you please? Phil, two seconds. Smell it smells all right to me. It's from the sink. What do you smell, Phil? It smells old. Why didn't they eat it? I don't know, Gordon. Yeah, do you ever ask yourself that question? I don't. I ask I myself that question all the time. I suppose you actually don't give a fuck, you know that? I do give a fuck, I've and you know seen... I give a fuck. You seem a very relaxed man with your restaurant. What do you want me to do? I disagree. It doesn't smell bad to me, the fish. I've just given a piece to your chef. Yeah. The piece was stinking. It wasn't stinking. You're blind, my friend. No. If you're not blind, you're fucking clueless. You know that. Now the owner said it's not stinking. It's fragrant, fresh, and perfect. That's why it came back, right? Massage his ego. Concerned about the quality control of the food yeah, show me around. and the truthfulness of the owner, Gordon wants to do a little investigating. They're all from Maine. These are uh, Maine, some from Canada. They look Canadian lobsters to me. Yeah, these are Canadian. Yeah. So the Canadian lobsters, they're always a lot cheaper. I use the Canadian lobsters for raviolis and tagliatelles and spaghetti, but they're not Maine lobsters. After a disappointing dinner service comes to an end, Gordon is ready to share some of his initial observations. Tough day today, and I'm, um, I'm deeply concerned. I see a ship here that is rudderless, and maybe that was the first time that all three of you were working inside this restaurant in a long time. Tonight showed. When was the last time you expedited? All the time I'm back there. You were not, you're not really back there as much as you were I'm, back there tonight. No, no, never, because it's never been that. We've never had the whole line up, the whole line with tickets, ever. David, can you stop being a slippery eel for 15 minutes in front of your team and answer the fucking truth? Gordon, the fucking truth is that yes. I'm back there when it's busy every fucking night that I work. I think a lot of what Chef Ramsay's had to say about David was fairly true. I don't believe that David shows that he cares. OK, I've, uh, I've seen enough today. I've got to go and start really seriously fucking understanding, you know, how to get a direction within this restaurant. I'll see you first thing in the morning. Good night. Uh, David. Yeah? You tell me about the passion with the main lobster. Are you aware that the lobsters in your fridge are Canadian? Same water as North Atlantic waters. <laughs> You're telling me now a Canadian lobster, half the price of a Maine lobster, is the same taste and flavor? There's a big difference. I can't get Maine lobsters. That's right, so they get yeah. them from Canada. I'm using Canadian lobsters. That's right, that's what they do. But, the but price... I don't advertise them as Maine. Tell me, is it a different animal? Maine mm -hmm. is a Canadian lobster for you. Amartus Americanus, same animal, right? Holy shit. I'm asking you a question. What you're trying to dictate to me is that you're selling Maine lobster. They're not from Maine. Well, it comes from the same vendor. Holy shit. The award-winning Maine lobster roll is Canadian. He was wrong about the lobster issues. It pissed me off. I thought that was a bit unfair for him to take that stand, and especially since he was incorrect about it. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. That was fun. Incredible. It's a new day, 
and Gordon has organized a staff meeting. How are we? Good. A rarity here at Black Pearl, as there have not been any meetings in the last seven months. OK. A quick exercise. So, I want to find out how you feel. We're going to write anonymous questions. When you write, make sure you put the name you want the question to at the top of it. Fold it up and put it straight in the pot. OK. Greg, how come you waffle with your answers? Well, basically, I try to keep everybody happy because otherwise I wouldn't have a staff. And that's why I sometimes waffle and go back and forth. But if you had a, a little bit stricter philosophy yeah, for Yeah, I could definitely things. be stricter. Oh, yeah, I could definitely be stricter. Thanks for being honest. OK. David, why haven't we got aprons? They know where the aprons are. They just don't choose to wear them. But why can't you say it's policy to be in an apron? Cat, it's policy for you not to have a drink here after your shift, but you often do. Why can't you ask my question without a question? I did answer your question. You did? That is quintessential David. He'll answer you with the question. So to communicate with him can be very frustrating. David, show the girls some respect, will you? You're great at beating around the bush, you know that? No. Yeah. Huh? In front of everybody, why can't you answer the fucking question? I thought I did answer the question. Rather than trying to be such a smart ass and answer another question. I did answer the question. Do you know what I've just discovered? Hmm. You're so full of fucking shit, you'd make a great politician. You know that. David has the biggest ego. He's very stubborn. And obviously, you're not doing everything correct. So get over yourself and allow somebody to help you. Incredible. I'm fucking surprised you've got anybody working for you. Over the last half hour, you all look so, so cool as if you don't give a fuck. It's disgusting. Finally, to all three owners, why don't we have one general manager? What are they crying out for? Greg. Crying out for direction. They need a rudder. Make it one of the three. Why can't it be just one of the three owners? Thank you. Absolutely critical. One voice, one direction. So who's committed? I believe that I'm capable of doing it. Uh, but now I have to follow through and do it. I think Brian and David will get on board. I'm going to get some fresh air. I'll see you later. As the owners were contemplating which one of them should be the hands-on manager, Chef Ramsay decided to generate some excitement for tonight's dinner service by adding a new special. OK. Yep. Right, time for a new beginning. OK. The secret of this dish is the lobster bernays. Lobster they're going to eat first. Underneath is breadcrumbs, potatoes, and a hint of rosemary. First off. The membrane and the inside of the lobster, out. We said this one, open and out. OK, done. And our potatoes. OK, get the potatoes nice and crispy. Yeah. Put our breadcrumbs in there. Two thirds potato, one third breadcrumbs. OK, now they're starting to colour. OK, good. Out. And lightly fried. OK, line the shell with that. Now, I want to see it ooze lobster. OK, on, and then we'll go with our sauce. Absolutely delicious. And then in the salamander, OK? This is an absolute pleasure to have him in here and showing us things, and we learned a lot. Mmm, lobster. I would pay $40 for that, yes? Right, get some forks in, let's have a little taste. A little bit of pecorino, lightly, over the top. It's delicious. I'm not blowing smoke in my ass, but that was fucking delicious. <laughs> it is great. It's I'm not very good. That. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Long day today. I want to try something for tonight. So here's what I'm going to do. I want you to run in the place for an hour. OK. You expedite, and then you switch. And I want to see one person step up to the mark and take control of the ship. Unfortunately, the appendix, out of all three of you, is Brian. We don't need him. He's a nice guy and all that, but nice guys don't run restaurants. OK? All right. Thank you. David's going to be expediting for the first hour. Then we're going to switch back. If I have the choice of Greg or David, I would definitely prefer Greg, because I think he's a really nice person and uh, great to work with. What's up? You get to go home. Really? Yeah. OK. All right. Am I out of here? Do you mind? I, I don't. I mean, you don't mind. That's great. Is, it, is it all right? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely fine. Don't take it personally. Get have a relaxed evening. All yes. right. Excellent. I felt a little uncomfortable being pulled from my own restaurant, but I get to go home. Much longer. Open up, open up, and you're ready, guy. Okay. Hi there. Welcome to Black Pearl. Right this way, ladies. 
All right, you guys enjoy. Ready to rock. Thank you very much. And roll. The specials for today um, are on the front left. It's a, a one and a quarter pound lobster split in half, and then with the Bernays sauce on top of that. It's delicious, I have to say. It was really good. <laughs> Maru, next time you come back, would you bring me a diet soda in it? Mix a little bit of club soda in it, too. That's not quite so sweet. Here, let me uh, get that out of your way. You want um, these? You want to keep these or take those away? OK. Yeah, don't just put the club soda at the end, because then it won't have the mixture. You know, mix it in. Thank you. Take care now. Good to meet you. So, I have two fish and chips, table 36. Oh, how about I rip your fucking heart out? <laughs> what? When David's expediting orders, sometimes I'm a little nervous about going into the kitchen to ask about my tables, because he'll just bite back at you. I, fi I, I fired this one, so. Yep, yeah, but no, that's why it's over there. Right. Talk to me like I'm a real person, not like I'm an idiot. David, I just want to remind you, of this one I wrote, gluten-free. I got it. We're all set. We have several brains in here. Oh, my god. Ugh. Keep an eye. I'm going to go switch with Greg. Switch. OK. Right, we're halfway through service, and uh, Greg's on the hot plate now. I can't wait to see what happens. But personally, once a waffler, always a waffler. We'll find out. Muscles, Bangkok, thank you. I can't find them. Bangkok, Bangkok. There they are. That it is. You coming or going? How many are you? Five. Five. Under what name? Jackson. David sometimes can uh, patronize the customers a little bit. Jackson, five. I'd rather have someone that's going to be cordial about it than some asshole that's going to patronize everybody. Man, you guys are always annoying. Uh, Phil, this lobster roll sitting here. What's it going with? Oh, I didn't tell you it was even ready. It's waiting for a roast fillet of fish. to you guys. That's know. what I'm trying to say. I mean, it just sat there fucking going soggy. Standards, yeah? Let's start to talk to me, too. I'm down here. It's a Blue Point, Malpec, and a Malaspina, and they said they already had it. They did. They did? Then why am I doing it again? 35? I have no clue. You can use Greg, it. Greg, we've got food backed up now. Last line of defense. Which tables don't like it? Well, it was um, my table 8 and table no 30. Did they fire it? No. OK, fire it. They're waiting. They already had their oysters. Mussels with garlic, lobster, bernays. Well, it seems to be slower on the hot plate with Greg yeah. at the helm than when it does David was there. Yes, it does. It seems to be a little bit slower with Greg. Nah. Greg, I feel, is trying his best. Hey, the bisque. No? Jesus Christ, where the hell did that go? Why don't you call it so I know what it is? What are you waiting for, Doc? Oysters. Oh, they're coming, then. All right. Maybe. Where the hell did it go? I don't have a lobster bisque. It went out. Come on, get it together, man. Making it another two. Shit's fucking getting very fucking tired. Getting very fucking tired of that shit. Fuck up. Just when things seemed completely out of control. I don't have a lobster bisque. Where the hell did that go? Getting very fucking tired of that shit. Come on, guys. Greg settled things down in the kitchen. Put the old girl on the plate and get her out of here. All right. Thank you, sir. 86 it. And managed to get the final few plates out. That's it. Start cleaning it up, breaking it up. Before Gordon can turn Black Pearl around, he needs to find one managing owner. So he gathers the staff to make a decision. Okay. If all of you had to choose one out of the three owners to direct and to run this place completely who would it be? Write it down for me. OK, first person, David. Second vote, Greg. Third vote, Greg. Fourth vote, Greg. And finally, Greg. This is pretty significant. You know that, guys. How do you feel, Greg, if you were to run this place? I'd, I'd run it the way I think it should be run. Um, I would do a lot more with the staff, um, and I wouldn't have to justify myself all the time. All three of you have fragmented this business. David, isn't it best that we listen to the team for that cry of help rather than having to massage your own egos? I think Greg would be a perfect general manager. David is full of shit. I've heard him say many times that Greg has no idea what he's doing in a restaurant. So it will be very interesting. I'd definitely like to give it a shot, for sure. Thank you all for being on it. Thank you.
Well, one thing's clear, that the staff want Greg to run this place. Even David wants Greg to run it, so that's good news. But I'm not 100% certain that Greg has the balls to run this place properly on the back of tonight's performance. But what I can tell you is the business does not need Brian. In the city that never sleeps, Chef Ramsay's team worked all through the night to transform the Black Pearl into a Manhattan hotspot. Right, good morning. Good morning. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Everything is uniform. Oh, wow. Much better. <laughs> we haven't got three different sections with three different colors. It's not a mix and match. Oh, those are so cute. It's vibrant, classic, and inviting like it should be. Oh, this is so nice. Oh. I love the lobster. Great. It gives us a great boost. This is a, a, really, a real good shot at getting this thing up and moving the way it needs to be. Davey, what do you think? Column should be yellow. <laughs> Everything's reorganized. It's, you know, it's another way to do it. David, please don't touch it. Does it blow me away? No. I've got something to explain over here, something quite exciting. It was donated by the Marine Ecological Habitat. Now, I promise you, you'll never find another machine anywhere like this in New York. And David, I promise you now, between you and I, this is from Maine. <laughs> And of course, if they catch it, they eat it. Yes? I think it's terrific. <laughs> oh, you got it. We're going to have all sorts of people coming in there trying to get a lobster out of that. Oh. And people will be attracted to it. You are mine. And it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. As the staff enjoyed the new interior, Chef Ramsay got set to reveal another change. The room looks great. Happy, everybody? Yes. 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 Now. We have to market this place. Yes. And I can't do it without the help of our special guest. Here he comes. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How you doing, buddy? Manhattan's favorite lobster. Right. right. We're going to hit Times Square and get some noise on there. We're going to hand out flyers. We're going to hand out t-shirts. We're going to shout it out. OK, Louis the lobster. I'll see you in uh, Times Square in five minutes, yes? Get going, buddy, yes? And Louis. If you fuck up, you're going in the tank, OK? <laughs> Please come visit us tonight. Being in Times Square with Chef Gordon Ramsay and all those people is a terrific idea. Have a great day, yeah? Thank you very much. Have Love. a your restaurant tonight. It's New York. The word spreads fast, so I think people will be rolling in tonight. Come visit us to the Black Pearl tonight. Going to Times Square with a lobster guy and where all the tourists are and tell them to come down and eat at your restaurant, hey, we're not going to see any effect from that. I'd be really surprised. Oh, we love you, guys. Nice nice Only hours before the doors open for relaunch, Chef Ramsay wants to get everyone up to speed on the new menu. OK, start off from the top. Uh, we'll go through each and every dish, and then we'll have a little taste after it, OK? OK, good. Right, two chowders, yes? A Manhattan clam chowder, a New England clam chowder, yeah? The lobster roll, black pearl uh, special. And it's going to be toasted on the inside as well, OK? So it doesn't go soggy. And then we go to the Boston cream pie and uh, a waffle sundae. It's fresh, it's vibrant. Standards are going to be set tonight, and the kitchen's going to be properly run. OK, good. I want to get changed. Get some knife and forks, start tasting. Ceviche, majorly trendy. You taste the ceviche? It's so good. Not very good. I don't like it. Mm, really? Those scallops were so good. Oh my god, this looks like heaven. I don't like that shrimp thing either. That's amazing. Ah, and that's good too. What kind of fish is it? It's codfish? I don't really like that. With relaunch night upon them, Gordon gathers the owners to implement his biggest change. When you think back to the beginning of the week, it's been a bit sort of tempestuous. But we did come to a consensus on who should be running this restaurant. This is a document basically outlining that all three of you are happy for Greg to be running the Black Pearl. Could you just read it out for me? We, the partners, David Leonard, Greg Ryan, and Brian Woods, uh -huh. agree to name Greg Ryan as the managing partner of the Black Pearl, at which time decisions involving bigger issues arise, Greg must call a meeting to present the proposed changes to all of the owners. A majority rule will determine whether or not the proposed changes should be made. That's it. Excellent. Who would like to sign first? My name's first. I'll sign first. I don't know if I have more faith in Greg. So if Greg succeeds, that'll be great. Wonderful. There you go. So you're now running this place. I am. Yeah. 
good. David, Brian, tonight you're coming as guests. All oh, right. 6.30, table's booked. I'll see you later. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Now get the fuck out of here. I definitely feel that I'm in control now uh, and that I'm going to run the business the way I think the business needs to be run. All right, guys, we're going to have a big night tonight. We have a beautiful new restaurant. We have a wonderful new menu, and we're going to have a lot of people in tonight, and that's the best thing that can happen here anyway. <laughs> so please, everybody, have a great time. Do a good job, and we're going to be great, okay? Yep. Thank you. Party of five? Party of five. Party of five. Party of five. Uh, office. Lobster. The lobster, Bernays. All righty. Five sirloin burger, medium rare with cheese. Make sure the waiters get the customers up to have a little go of pulling the lobsters out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. suggest yes. that to them. Yes, I will right now. And then we'll yes. let you have them. Yes. Make sure, make sure we get the customers up to play uh, lobster rama. We are encouraging customers to try for a lobster. Because if you catch one, we seal it for you, and it's free. Oh. Here we go. First course, New England clam chowder, field greens, and tuna ceviche. It's going to be a big night tonight, and this is Greg's chance now to step up to the mark and prove to him and his two partners that he's capable of running this business. We've got to flip tables, we're going to be in a lot of pressure, and more importantly, the kitchen has a menu streamlined they can push out quickly. Only time will tell. Grilled swordfish and a... Uh... And a burger. And a burger, thank you. Medium and medium rare and swordfish. You took the wrong table. What did I take? Where'd it go? Gordon, I introduce you to my closest friends in the world. Nice. Are you as stubborn as this one? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, yes. Probably. Right. Nice. Cool. Gordon, I'm a guest. I, I'm sorry, excuse me, yes. Uh, welcome. Come in, come out of the cold, please. We got a hostess over here, please. As customers roll in, the kitchen is about to be slammed with orders, and Greg and his kitchen staff are about to face their first big test. Chicken, a slider, a Bernays, and a two fries. Also, another fish soup, another burger medium. You're killing me, chef. You're killing me. The lanterns. Those no. things are terrible. Let's fish put candles. Three chickens, four sword. Thank you. On table one. With table one. And sub salad. Where? They got the what car. table? Table one. So what do they want? Instead of fries, she wanted salad. Have it. I first saw the tank part, and I said, we got us a fucking lobster tank? The only one in New York. What does that tell you? What can we do? Anything? Got a gun? What's the matter? On table 27, I yes. put in the pearls and appetizer, and yes. I did not fire their entrees yet, and they're getting their entrees. Ah, yeah. shit. Come on, hold on. Yeah, hold on, B3. Come on. This is all B3. B3, right here. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Service sucks here. Kitchen must be fucking buried. Oh. I got grilled swordfish, two soups, two seafood casserole. I can't cook for two people calling orders. I don't give a shit. Just make it. Son of a bitch. I'll take this back, and I'll see what we can do about that, all right? 34 said he got a New England clam chowder. Give me your break. I need a Manhattan clam. I mean, a New England clam chowder now. Jeez. Tonight has been like a clusterfuck again. The kitchen got backed up. It took forever for all of our food to come out. Come on, Greg. We've got to run it. We're falling behind in there. Come on. It's ridiculous. That lobster salad's been sat down there for fucking 20 minutes. Yeah, What's going on? Yeah, it's supposed to go out with this table right Come on. here. The uh, coleslaw, very different from ours. We had a great coleslaw. We had a great coleslaw. We can go back on that. That's ridiculous. Greg, you told me 33 for the fish and chips. I did not tell you 33. I didn't tell you anything. Oh, my God. You got a pen. I got to rent this down. Note to Greg, our puppet dictator. <laughs> So she wants a salad. Give her a salad. That's all. Just tell me that. Ah. I ordered a medium rare. Yeah, thank you. Where'd you go? What do you need? Medium rare. Fuck. Uh, what does she want this medium? Where the fuck is sick? Why don't you call it so I know what it is? I have called it. I've called it a dozen times. I got grilled swordfish, two soups, a sirloin burger, two lobster rolls. How many times can I call it? I need table one. I need, I need table nine. I got shit getting cold. It's been a chaotic evening. Right there, right there. It's going out the door right now. And the kitchen has been on the brink of disaster. Come on, you guys. You got to set your kitchen, too. We can't do it all for you, right? But Greg has not given up. Get him organized. And neither has his staff. I need three of these right off the bat. Just stack them up there. I'm going to 36. I'll be back. Excuse me? Who's the blueberry crumble people? Okay. What's the feedback from the table? Everyone really likes the food, even though it's taken a while to get there. Without having David or Brian around, it was actually all right. It was pretty good. The staff worked very well together, and so that made me feel good all night long. The lobster was really good. Nice and buttery. We might have to do another waffle thing. Yeah, I have about four more waffles. All right, we've got one ticket left. 
Greg's doing really good. He's making decisions like right and left, and that's a big change. High five, you guys. I just can't wait to see what's going to happen two, three months from now after Chef Ramsay has left. After a tough relaunch dinner, Gordon gathers David, Brian, and Greg to give his final words of advice. Tonight, you stood on that hot plate and you busted your ass off all night long. Mate, you've got a big heart. Fuck me if you've got passion. Thank you. But whilst you've got the hunger and the passion, I don't think your two partners actually give a damn. You are an honest individual. You're here two days a week, but you don't put the effort in. You amaze me. What? Because all week long, face to face, you fucking pretend to care. Oh, fuck, Gordon, come on. You don't give two fucks about this place. Really? You're not passionate about running a restaurant. Really? You're just abusing it and using it. I, what, 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 what did I do? I've never met an individual that's so full of shit in all my life. How have I been lying to you, Gordy? How? Tell me. Gordy. Yeah, how? You want to disrespect me? I can disrespect you too. But tell me how. Be, be, tell me. Tell part. me how I'm, I'm not lying disrespecting you. you. I'm telling you the truth. No, you disrespect me because you don't know the truth. You're just massaging your fucking ego. Gordon, bullshit. What do you mean bullshit? It's not true. From the first minute you walked in this fucking door, standing there with your big long coat and your fucking sunglasses, looking like proud cock. That was it. First impressions. Then you start debating lobsters because you think you're some smart ass on the back of a few fucking shit dive books. Are you aware that the lobsters in your fridge are Canadian? Homartus americanus, same animal, right? Humanus americanus, my ass off. Hmm. With 21 restaurants under my belt, I work my fucking ass off. So what? So what? And I never take anything for granted. Fascinating, Gordon. You treat the staff like shit. You yeah. amaze me. Never did that. Excuse me? Never. Cat, it's policy for you not to have a drink here after your shift, but you often do. Never. You can't even be honest with yourself, let alone me. Mate, you've been exposed. Oh, yeah, exposed. You're a hypocrite. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. For you, it's about a fucking TV show. This man is about a restaurant. Fuck the TV, David. And I mean, fuck it. This is real for me. And for you, it's an image. I disagree with you on almost everything you said. You do? Yeah, I do. Why do you disagree? Because you're wrong. The great Gordon Ramsay is wrong. You're a sad fuck. My advice is for him to get his partners, get your money out, yeah? and disappear. Yeah, all right, well, my advice would be for you to disappear, and the sooner the better. You don't get it, do you? Well, fuck you, Gordon. Of course I get it. This question has every chance of succeeding, but not why you are in it. Because you're not passionate. You're soulless. Say what you like, let me get out of here. You're ungrateful. And do you know what really hurts? The amount of effort has gone into it. Despite what a prick you've been to me, I'm still grateful that you were here. I love what you've done. I think that the menu is brilliant. You like it? I don't like it. I don't really like the, I don't like that shrimp thing either. It's what, what happens when I've gone. We had a great coleslaw. Come we on. had a great coleslaw. We can go back on that. That's ridiculous. The minute I'm out of that door, you'll slip back into I'll the tell old you what. I'll tell lazy you what. ways. Why don't you come back in, and you know, I'm sure you will, and see how it goes. Yeah. Time will tell. I guess it will. Thanks again, Gordon. Good night. Goodbye. Good night. That's tough. I mean, really tough. And personally, I've got mixed feelings about this week because I so want this to succeed for Greg because he's got the determination, the guts to make it work. But on the other hand, David, well, I think he's just opened a restaurant because he wants to make a quick buck. And that is not the reason to open a restaurant. That man has no passion. Tough. South Bend, Indiana, a middle-class town made famous by the University of Notre Dame. Just a few miles down the road is Jay Willie's Restaurant, owned by husband and wife Rick and Tricia and their friend John William. We're having a great day at, day at Jay Willie's. This is Richard speaking. How may I help you? When we took this over, it was making great money. Every year, consistently, this made great money. Yo, yo, let's make money, man. Come on. The day-to-day -day management of Jay Willie's is left to John, 
as Rick and Tricia live over three hours away where they own another restaurant. Who knows what's going to happen tonight? We assumed that John would be able to uphold the service standards and the food quality that we have, and it will continue to make money. I can do it. And John has run this into the ground. John has just let things go. I certainly got it off kilter. He needs to step up. He's got to be the spark. He's got to be the fire. He can't just be back there. Uh, 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 thinking and contemplating what he's supposed to do. He's got to do it. It's really been tough. Since we were struggling and we weren't really bringing in the cash, we don't have a chef in the kitchen. I'm just here to to serve what he wants me to serve and get it out as fast as possible. All right, got an order up. You get a lot of complaints about the quality of the food here. And that was just a frozen patty. I'd rather really have a little bit of burn. That was really gross. It's not much fun working in a restaurant when all you have to experiment with is canned beans and uh, enchilada sauce out of a jar. The standards have declined so far that I, I'm not even sure we can revive it. I don't think we'll come back unless something's fixed. Sales have just pretty much flatlined. You know, this sucks. This is tough. Now, this place is so depressing, it's hard to even talk about it because it just makes me want to cry. <sighs> now it's just slipped into complete failure. Once it closes, all the money I put in, everything, you know, my inheritance, everything, it's gone. If we don't make that 22000 a week, then we're cooked. We've cashed in our 401ks, we have no savings, and there's nothing left. So, I mean, if this doesn't work, we will no longer be here. We're gonna end up homeless, and it's all because of Jay Willis. <sighs> but it's just, you know, that's it. Jay Willie's Bar and Grill, that's fine, but as for that ghastly sign at the bottom, whenever a sign's flashing, it means desperation. The outside building, well, that looks like it closed down 10 years ago. Let's hope inside is much better. My god. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Rick Excellent. Sutton. Rick, good to see you. Gordon. David Benningham. Thank David, you. nice to see you. First of all, who put that ghastly sign up outside, the one with the flashing lights? I believe our owner, John. Is John here? Yes, he is. I can't wait to meet him. Very embarrassed to have Gordon Ramsay come in here. Uh, he's a world-renowned chef. We're not even close to being up to a decent standard. <sighs> chef Ramsay. John William. John, good Owner. to see you. So you are Jay Willie. Yes, sir. Excellent. Good. Take a seat. Chef, this is uh, my wife. And first name, sorry? Trisha. Trisha, nice yeah, to see you. Nice to meet you. So, Trisha and Rick. Yeah, we're together. Yeah. And John is your partner. Yes. I'm going to have a good look at the menu and uh, look forward to catching up with all three of you. I'm really nervous about what he might order because there's quite a few items on the menu. And I know he's not going to like the pictures in there. Always nervous when there's menus with ghastly pictures. Did you need a few more moments? Um, no, do you know what? I'm going to order the uh, loaded potato pizza. Yeah, let's go for the uh, famous ribs. I'll go for this pulled pork cheese boat. Not a problem. Thank you, my darling. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Say a little prayer. Trust me, I already said a prayer today. Well, OK, here's his order. Is that Ramsey? Yes, sir. I'm just hoping Gordon Ramsey isn't too hard on me because this type of food wasn't my idea. This fryer is ready to go. God, it's grim in here. Sad and grim. <laughs> and a carpet that looks like it's had a thousand buffaloes walking all over it. Holy shit. Yep. I now have loaded baked potato pizza. Lovely. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Holy mackerel. That's the strangest pizza I've ever seen. I'm going to ask my beloved father to bless my food. Gentlemen, can I ask a quick favor? Yes. What's yes. that? Would you mind just blessing my food? Oh, yeah, oh would you? sure. Yeah? If you'd be so kind. Absolutely. Well, good and gracious God, we ask that you bless this food, bless Chef Gordon as he is about to receive it, that it may nourish him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Fingers crossed. <laughs> God. 
roof. Oh my god. What is all that on there? That is a ranch sauce. So they put a ranch dressing on the pizza. Yes. It's almost like sort of wallpaper paste. So the pizza sucks. Jake, I can see that right there. Can I help you? John, your pizza has bombed. To be honest, I, I've tasted the pizza and it tasted good. I didn't see what he was talking about. The ribs are gonna be right, huh? What do you think? Yep. Perfect ribs. Finally, the ribs. Lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. I was hoping, maybe, just maybe, he'd like the ribs. Chef, been doing all right here. Who's responsible for the sauce? Is it chef's recipe or? It's a generic sauce. It's a shame because it just I destroys do. the flavor. Uh, they are embarrassing. Yeah, I mean, you've got cartilage in there, a mouthful of fat, grease on the outside. That's not even trimmed. Sad. Uh, I agree. I'm a very embarrassed. A bit like the restaurant. Sad. Yeah. Dude, we're serving an untrimmed rib. What do you want trimmed off? The fat. All ribs have fat on them. John doesn't get it. He's ordering an inferior rib. He's trying to cut corners. I'm just so frustrated that I feel like banging my head against the wall. Stand up, sandwich with French fries. Thank you, Dwayne. Enjoy. Thank you. Processed cheese that just like gluing. Pulled pork sandwich. Yeah, that's pulled straight out of the bin. Sweet. Taste of nothing and absolutely ghastly. Oh dear. They have a pulled pork sandwich. Oh, um, sorry, excuse me. Forgive me, Father, but oh. they have sinned, and I, out of respect for you guys, you're not going to eat that, okay? okay? I don't want to go straight to hell. Oh, man. Forgive me. They have sinned. After saving the priests from an ungodly meal. Dear, dear. Gordon's anxious to meet the creative minds responsible for the food. Jeff, Gordon, are you the chef? We don't really have a chef. How can we not have a chef? The recipes don't really change. Everything's prepared the same way. You seem to stand proud of that. The menu was designed to cut a lot of the labor out. Cut a lot of labor out and serve shit. I finally am glad that I have somebody who agrees with me as far as the standards on the food. John doesn't listen to me. Hopefully, he'll listen to Gordon. I think of Midwest cuisine, you think of the excitement in terms of, you know, a lovely braised rib, a fantastic sauce. The sauce was synthetic. We sell a lot of them. Is that an excuse to serve shit, because you sell a lot of them? Are you that lazy? Or you sell them, so fuck it, who cares? Uh, sorry, the attitude stinks. Can we have a chat as owners? Yes, somewhere? Sir. Yeah, We're together? Right now. Joe, ready? Hi, hi, hi. Oh, that went about as, as I expected. Yeah. Dissatisfied with the answers found in the kitchen, Gordon takes the owners aside, hoping to determine the root of the problem. What's wrong with the business? John. John has to be the leader here. He's not taking any ownership. Passion. Exactly. And there's none. I try, but without any money, the passion is tough when you when you're going downhill. How much are we in for if we have to close the door tomorrow? Million two. So you're you're on your ass. I'll lose the first and only house I've ever owned. Yeah, we've never owned a house before. Any children anywhere? No, we no. can't have kids. I'm too busy babysitting two restaurants. Trisha, she deserves to have kids, too. My wife would love to have a child. She deserves it. But we can't do it because of Jay Willis. <sighs> I mean, I just feel so bad because I keep She's such a beautiful woman, I can't give her what she, she deserves. I, this wasn't how we planned our lives. We are in the ship. We're screwed. Gordon is hoping tonight's dinner service will give him some more answers as to why this restaurant is failing. Hi there. Welcome to Jay Willie's. How are you folks doing today? Floodgates is open. 
Oh, got a 16-inch pizza. What's that for? It's a special pizza. So that's a frozen rock, dough. Frozen yeah. dough, ranch dressing, and then the, what are these little fish food pellets? That's, what are they? Yeah, pre frozen sausage. That's the saddest excuse I've ever seen for a pizza in my life. There's no doubt I've taken some, I've cut some corners. Some of the items are frozen, and that's just from a cost point of view. What's that there? Uh, cooked chicken. I mean, it's like cat food in here. Well, it'll get fully cooked. It's really hard when you're trying to stay open. And what's in here? And baked potatoes. You don't clean them before they go in? There's Paul's cube. My god. That's the. Uh... I, I didn't put them in the oven. Everything's reheat. God bless Middle America. The quality of the food is just not there. I wouldn't feed it to my dog. It's embarrassing. It really is. Buy it, defrost it, fry it, send it. You can't call yourself a restaurant. No wonder no one's coming back. Jay Willie's is doing bad because John is not upholding the standards. What are up. OK, thank you. The things that I see in this restaurant, it's like he, he accepts it all and rolls uh, rolled over and died. You think it's too greasy? So you sent your fish back. Yes, I did. What is that? Fish sandwich. Fish sandwich. I like it. It's frozen. Holy mackerel. Oh. My whole sandwich is like all bad. I want something I'm going to eat. What have we got here? Oh, lordy. What's wrong with that, darling? She doesn't like it. She doesn't like it. It looks like a dog's dinner. What is that? Oh, my god. That is a shock. Uh, I'm absolutely devastated. I mean, they're cutting corners, but all in the wrong places. And John, clueless. Nobody responsible for the kitchen, but overall, it's an insult to fast food. It's a fucking disgrace. Son of a... Why the ribs, back? She said it was... These were too mushy, these were too cold. Is it good? <laughs> <laughs> oh, garlic, you bitch. It's food coming back. They're not eating. I, I, I don't know what to say. Horrible. Food just put in the process line, more food coming back that's been sent out. I mean, it's almost like you guys have just, you know, given up. I'm standing here with my jaw on the floor. This was definitely humiliating, eye-opening, embarrassing. Gordon Ramsay's appearance at the restaurant may have brought in some extra customers. We're not eating. We're going to eat some else. But unfortunately, the food has scared many of them away. Jay Willie's is doing bad because John's killing off the business. That's the bottom line. After a miserable dinner service, Gordon decides that he needs to meet with not only the owners, but with the entire staff. We have some serious issues back there. I wanted you all together to get an idea of how you felt. And how does it make you feel when you serve that food? Not very good. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. I'm amazed you guys put up with it. It's getting harder and harder every day because the paychecks keep getting slimmer and slimmer. And our sales are dropping like a rock because of John's inability to make anything happen. Rick, you're not here. You're killing this man over here saying that he's not good at anything. And Sam wouldn't be here if this restaurant wasn't dying. So you don't, you can't blame this on me. I'm, I'm not blaming it, it all on you. There's no, stuff problem. everywhere. I'm saying so don't blame everything on him. Yeah, you're, right. yeah, okay. you're never here. Right. I cannot come down here and run this restaurant. We live three and a half hours away. John has to do it. It has to come from John. The point, the point is, okay. you're just so, not helping so the business, and you're point. blaming John for it, and it's wrong. He's here. Okay, yeah, he's so, here every day, and, so and he goes through it. You know, this is our business, too. I have mouths at home to feed. Nail me to the cross. Rick's ridiculous. I really just want to punch Rick sometimes. To be honest, this whole issue is not what the problem is with this restaurant. The problem here, whether we all like it or not, is the food sucks. And it's not fresh. And even frozen food is handled badly. All three of you should be ashamed to stand there and allow it to go on. Is it time to get somebody else in to run it? I mean, you know, have you had enough? I believe it's still in me. I just need somebody to help. I need somebody to cover my back. All three of you need to wake up and wake up quickly.
After the staff meeting, Gordon takes a peek into the kitchen storage. What's that there? And uncovers the unthinkable. This is basic hygiene. It doesn't get drained and the blood is sat out in a warm kitchen. It's not even cold. John, there's more. When Chef Gordon pulled those potato skins out, I knew that he had found something that I wasn't going to like. So hold on a minute. That's going to be deep fried tomorrow. Yeah. That's really going to make it taste better, right? Potatoes are rotten, and we're sat here wondering why the business is on its ass. It starts at the top, John. It's called responsibility. No wonder you've given up. I've been in denial, and I've lowered my standards, and it takes somebody like a Gordon Ramsay to come in and, and wake you up. Rotten tomatoes. Soft, rotten. Oh. Rotten peppers. The whole box is rotten. I wanted to crawl under the table and hide my face so people wouldn't associate me with such crap. If you seriously are honest with yourself that you are starting again, then we start again. Well, we'll do whatever it takes. I'd be fucking ashamed. Hey, chef, I'm embarrassed. Where do I start with the problems in this restaurant? The staff have got their issues, but that's irrelevant. The big problem is the food, and the quicker they all get up to speed with how shit the food is, the better, because that is embarrassing. John. Yeah? You gonna pitch all this crap? Chef Ramsay gave us a challenge to see if we're committed to changing this food and making it better. It's a fresh start for every, everybody, everything. All right. Oh, my god, are they taking all the food out? They are. I guess we start new tomorrow. I guess so. I was absolutely ecstatic that he was throwing everything away. It has been a huge complaint for a long time. So how does it feel to throw it away? Does it feel like a purging? Yeah, I have to now. It could. Let it go. Just let it all go. It's a huge amount of food that we threw away this evening. John, does it feel good? Yeah? We're starting fresh, and that means getting rid of everything. When I finally saw John, throwing out food that he would have otherwise saved, I knew that we were taking the first step to making progress. OK, it's a fresh start to a fresh day. After the owners took it upon themselves to clean out their restaurant, this morning, Gordon is looking for the owners to bear their souls. Good morning. How are we? Good. Tough day yesterday. Real tough. Cleaned out the restaurant, cleaned out the kitchen, and I'd like to think we started a, a new chapter. I want to chat with you. I want to clean out our conscience. Rick, go first, yeah? Let's go. OK. Clearing your conscience is about reaching inside and being honest with yourself, yeah. Biggest fear is what? My fate rests in John's hands, and that really scares me. I want this to work desperately. I I'm just haven't got much to work with. That's what I'm struggling with. Most people who face depression and problems I have give up, and I, I refuse to do that. I will fight till the last dog dies. I like your determination, you know that. I appreciate it, Chef. Who'd you turn to? I don't have a, anybody to voice my concerns, so it's been tough. Everything's pretty much inside. That's not easy. Truthfully, I'm just struggling to find an internal flame. Have you got it? Because I don't feel it. With support, I've got it inside me. It's there. What I saw last night was huge. What I uh, felt last night was huge. And what I feel this morning, I'm ready to go. Look forward to seeing you later. Trish, what do you want to see happen? I want John to be Jay Willie. <sighs> if I could take half a rig and put it in John's body, I think things would be a little bit better. He'd have more enthusiasm, a little bit more passion. He's just lacking in that. Thank you, Trisha. Thanks. Having gained a deeper understanding of the owner's situation, Gordon is ready to start implementing his plan, beginning in the place that needs it the most. Come through. The kitchen. Look at all that ingredients. What's that for? Barbecue sauce. Excellent. Barbecue sauce. First off, garlic, ketchup, chili, ground coffee, soy sauce, spice, 
First off, olive oil. Yeah, quite generous on the olive oil. That gives the shine on the sauce. Yeah. It was an absolutely amazing experience working with Gordon Ramsay. Nicely caramelized. I'm just in utter awe of his ability as a chef. And then a molasses. That gives it its barbecue flavor. OK? And that is that barbecue sauce. We're serving fresh, homemade barbecue sauce tonight. <laughs> In addition to the new Jay Willie's signature barbecue sauce, Gordon introduces a new hamburger special that Jay Willie's has never offered before, one made with fresh ingredients. Homemade burger, so with a homemade barbecue sauce and fresh cut homemade fries. Are we ready? Yes. As customers arrive, Just follow me. the kitchen prepares the new burger specials. We're serving real food tonight. And everyone seems eager to make tonight's service a success. We have a homemade fresh ground beef burger. I am going to have a burger. I got four yeah, Thank you. Got your ticket. Go ahead and uh, get those fries coming. Four orders. You can do it. Tonight, prove it, yes? It's a half hour into dinner service. Kobe's are done. And the new burger specials are flying out of the kitchen. It's really fresh, isn't it? That barbecue sauce smells good. It's incredible in there. The difference in the energy is extraordinary. And it just goes to prove one single thing on the menu. Freshly made, homemade, sells like hotcakes. Oh, boy. Walking in, we got three chef specials going well done. The tickets kept coming in, and I got real nervous. I could barely read the tickets. Two medium wells and a medium. Make that two well dones, five mid wells. I thought you said two mediums. Uh, make it, make it a medium well. Dude, I need you to tell me what I have, dude, because now I'm all fucked up. I was frustrated. I wanted to throw stuff. I wasn't okay with the organization at all. Fuck, wow. dude, I don't know what's going on. I'm fucking up burgers. Is this burger you gave me? Is that the well done? No, it was. You said mid well. It's done, dude. All right, got an order up. Thank you. Despite the confusion over the burgers, burger, burger, burger. They are rushed out to the dining room. A new burger. And the customers are in for an unpleasant surprise. It's pink. Is it pink? It's over. All right. How many burgers have we got left? Uh, one more burger. Okay, Christian. 86 burger, yes? Hey, yes, sir. Stop. All right. Yes? Yes. Make sure everybody knows, David, please. Yes, sir. Chris, I need two recooks. Medium on the fly. Yeah, we can't make that burger. We're completely out of ground beef. Oh, my gosh. All of a sudden, burgers came back undercooked, overcooked, and it's bad. We don't have it. We don't have it. We don't have it. We got a burger coming back. It's supposed to be well done. No, we're out. Unbelievable. We got another recook. This is ridiculous. We are all kind of freaking out. You know, it was scary. Burger's sitting over here. Burger's here. Burger's here. And I don't know what to do. It's an hour into dinner service, and the kitchen has run out of its special fresh hamburgers. We're completely out of ground beef. And the burgers that have been served are unfortunately coming back. We got a burger coming back. With no one taking control of the situation. I don't know what to do. The kitchen, and the restaurant for that matter, is in a state of confusion. Dave, could you uh, grab us a package of the old burgers? Sweet sourdough instead of buns? We gotta do what we gotta do. Get them out the burger. They're gonna love it anyway. Sourdough or bun. Hell yeah. I was just gonna keep trying to put the food out. We're going back to regular fries. So we started making the burgers on sourdough bread and using the frozen french fries and the frozen ground beef. Dude, this, I can't serve this, can I? I don't care. Serve me yeah. what? I mean, I, I guess I have to. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. In an effort to make good on the orders. Order up, Ashley. A desperate kitchen staff lowers its standards and starts delivering cheap substitutes. Sorry about that. Be good. Your bun? That is all we have is a bun. And the disappointment combined with the long wait is too much for one customer to bear. I'm really excited. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like something else? You ran out of the fries. You ran out of the bun. This is bad. No. The whole dinner is gone. Uh, it can't, the burger came back. Sorry. Take it off for check. In tears. Uh, she's in tears? Yeah! <laughs> what is that pile of shit? What's that for? For the special burgers. What? Whoa, hey guys, why is that burger on there, the processed one? John, why did the 86 it when I said take it off? 
We were dropping the standards just a bit, but we were under tremendous pressure because there were so many people out there that were anxious to try the food. If we haven't got the right buns, we shouldn't be serving it. And what's the point in lowering the standard just to keep it on? It doesn't make fucking sense. Boys, that's got to go bad. Yeah. He's afraid of pink, sorry. Now I got two paper plates around some sort of big meatball. It's not so How do you run out of potatoes? Right. <laughs> what do they say? It's disgusting, unedible. Unbelievable. Such a shame because we got off to a really good start, but then standards started dropping. But John and Rick accepted the standards dropping, and they just were happy to send slop. So a real sad ending to the evening, because right now, we're back to square one. You should be ashamed. I busted my balls all day today, thinking of a way of marketing this place and putting it back on the map. Oh, fuck it. Can't do it. Don't give up on us yet. I'm not going to do anything until I'm 100% convinced that you guys are ready to turn the corner. I seriously want to help. I need to know from each and every one of you that you're ready to commit. I commit. Are you? I'm ready to commit. OK. See you in the morning. I'm here early. Taking the staff's word of commitment to heart, Gordon moves forward with his plan to transform Jay Willie's from a dreary restaurant into a more inviting establishment. All right, guys, good morning. Good How are we feeling? Can you see? Good now. Yes. Awesome. Does that look great? Jay Willie's Barbecue awesome. House. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be the best barbecue house in town. Oh. Yes. Rick, what's the matter? Thank you. But if we don't execute tonight, hey. this is for shit. You're absolutely right. Well, we are going to play to our strengths tonight. And let's get positive. Come on. I am OK, good. You own part of this place. So I'm going to be looking towards you to drive this forward. Yes? Yes last night. The minute you guys left, yeah, my team arrived and been working all night. Let's go. Huh? Yep. Now, come through. First oh of all, new God. wallpaper, new paint. Oh, look at that. Vinyl this. tablecloths, yes? It's a new place. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh it's beautiful. I'm so overwhelmed. There are no words. There are no words. Look at it. And this. Oh, my I... gosh. That's just amazing. The brick facade to give it some warmth. Oh, my gosh. It's classy. I... Yeah. It was overwhelming for me. Just everything blew me away. Warm, vibrant, and exciting. Carpet. First time in 15 years. Hey, John, keep it clean. Yes? Keep it clean. Yes? And I'm not sticking to the floor. Look. John, what do you think? It's awesome. It's yes. Awesome. Rick, what do you think? That we don't deserve this. What do you mean, don't deserve it? Huh? Smack him. Hey. I just want to yell and scream, woohoo! I mean, oh, this is this. too much. This is too much. Every top barbecue house in the country has the best sauce. And that is what we're going to be famous for. Oh, Look over God. there. On site, homemade, hey, exclusive. And when people come to visit South Bend, Jay Willie's, the best barbecue house in town. Oh it's my warm. Gosh. I want to stay in this restaurant. I want to spend money in here. Today's a moving experience, both in my career as well as my attitude. And I just, there's so much potential, I just can't wait. With the staff energized by the changes to the restaurant, Gordon now unveils his plan for the food. 75 items on the last menu. No wonder we couldn't control it. Hey, it's now in half. It's fresh, and it's going to be quick. From the homemade burger, the BLT, to the pulled pork. Potato skins, no processed cheese anywhere. Barbecued chicken, uh, spicy chicken wings and legs, yes. At this point, I think with the momentum that Chef Ramsay has given us, we are now committed to making this thing right. I'm going to do something I've never, ever done before. I've had my concerns about the lack of strength in the kitchen. They need a proper training and a proper insight to what's going on. I'm bringing in not one, not two, but four chefs. Scott, Kim, Michael, please, and April. This kind of tuition has never been done before. It's awesome. Chef Ramsay let us know that he was there for us. We will be ready 
for the relaunch of Jay Willys tonight. Let's go. Jay Willys has come a long way in a matter of days. Oh my gosh. It's awesome. And it's only minutes from relaunch. Tonight is comeback night, yes? Yes. yes. So, John, you've got to motivate the place, push it through its highs and lows. Don't just do it for Chef, do it for the Gipper. <laughs> yes, the Gipper. OK, guys, let's go. We're opening four minutes, yeah? Right. Let's go, yes? Let's go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm side your coleslaw. It looks a little different now. Chef Ramsay is hoping his chefs will give Jay Willie's kitchen staff the support it needs to make this critical night a success. Welcome to Jay Willie's. Welcome to new Jay Willie's. I'll take a baby back rib. Yo, yo, kitchen! Get us wrong, let's go. We're gonna be busy. I'm so apprehensive because if we aren't perfect, then none of this matters. Now I might as well just get in my car and drive home. Let's rock this shit out. Dave, you gotta expedite. You and Steve you gotta stay connected. Come on, let's go. Let's get this shit out. In all of my being, I didn't want to fail. I was a little scared. Order up, 122. These guys have never been held to these standards. Yeah. Barbecue chicken. <laughs> this is one really cool. Good sauce, different. It's good. It's all really good. Sean, that's it, that's it, yeah? Got a good start. Um, vibrant in there. Food, looking good. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. How are we? The no bacon on the potato skins was not cool. Damn, damn, damn. Yeah. Let me check on your entrees. Nice to see you all, yes? You, entrees will be fabulous. <laughs> OK, guys, the skins they just sent, was it, there was no bacon in there. Please concentrate. Yes, sir. Cream corn and mac. It's all good. No, Dave, we do not send a dirty plate. We're getting busy, guys. We're starting to slip. Come on. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh, Chef Ramsay busted me out. You know, there's a little barbecue sauce in the corner. Get it out. This is our ticket time. I'm so hungry now. We all are very hungry. It's the heart of dinner service, and in spite of the pressure to get dishes out, unbelievable. Gordon insists on the staff maintaining its standards. Kept the customers waiting. We can't keep them waiting for fans. Yes, gotcha. What table? 14. Time is 7 o'clock. There you go. All right, 114, Steve. We're waiting for an hour. 114. That's our next check. Our next yeah. check. Come on, come on, come on. Let's push it, Steve. Come on, man. Uh, it's 8.30. It is, it is. It's late, and I'm tired, and I'm hungry. John, standards, come on. Yeah? The kitchen really got behind. Part of it was my fault, because it was overwhelming for me. Come on, guys. Can we stop pushing food around the outside of the plate? They can't eat off the rim of a plate, guys. Yes, chef. Yes, okay. We can't drop standards. Last fucking time, OK? Once fine, twice slightly pissed, three times. Take your jacket off and fuck off, yeah? Yes, chef. Yeah. Thank you. Now clean it, John. As the backup in the kitchen continues to grow, John turns his attention to the potential disaster in the front of the house. I one drink, and I need food. She trusts me. OK. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> I, uh, I got to talk you? to these people. Do you? And uh, okay. trust me. I don't know your name, though. My name, Jay Willie. Jay, oh. That's me. Jay. John. Yeah, I'm John, gonna... I need some food. OK. OK. I'm going to do my best. How long's the wait? It's running pretty late right now. Let's worry about our standards and not worry about that, all right? John. Can we look? Why are you going to run out with that, John? Look, 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 look. You, you taste that, then, and just think of a nice pile of shit. Yes, customers are waiting, but are we happy with that? You are happy with no, it. No, I'm not. Come on, then. Standards. So much stress. The guests were starting to get pretty tired of waiting. I did drop my standard, and I shouldn't have. I'm just ready to go home. I'm taking about Steve and I'm going to spot. I mean, because that is kind of ridiculous. Uh, we'll get free desserts, right? Uh, I'll do my best to take care of you. I had so many people were upset, and I was embarrassing. I, I was just, I was ready to pack up and leave at that point. We, I'm sorry. We cook it fresh to order. Come on, guys. Tonight's too important to fuck it up. Come on. I'll be back. Come on, please, Dave. No one's getting a handle of this, and I'm getting fucking irritated here. All right. Oh, the thought of crumbling existed most of the night, but the feeling was, I hope it just doesn't explode. I'm leaving. Two hours. No food, and it's just tough. I just want you to know, 
This isn't gonna last. Come on, guys! Tonight, Jay Willie's kitchen is being tested like it's never been tested before. We do not send a dirty plate. And although the standards are better than ever... It's been way too long. I'll be back. One customer Gosh. is fed up with the wait. Two hours. No food. Right. And it's just tough. I just want you to know, this isn't going to last. I'm leaving. John, Rick, two seconds, both of you a minute. I know tables have walked out, and we can't just all walk around with our heads on the floor. No. Come on, then, dig deeper. Yeah. Tables have backed up. It's not the end of the world, is it? We've still got to keep it going. Right. But if you give up, they give up. I'm sorry. Give up. Play to the very end means the last ticket. I'm with it. Thanks. Come on, guys. Okay, let's go. We got it. We're going to have to push the staff, or else this whole thing is just going to fall apart. Wait a minute. This is cold. This can't go out. That's all we needed. Fuck. You sound just like Gordon. Yeah, Come on. OK. No problem. With the owners stepping up, the staff gets inspired, which in turn motivates manager Dave. Come on, let's let's calm down and focus. We need some rings and chicken, baby. Serve it. You know, I, I do feel that I'm going to have to step up and take charge and get her done. Six combos I need now. All right, let's do it. Full rack, tri-tip entree, and a half rack. Let's worry about our standards. You hear that? Sure the ribs are hot. Oh, they're hot. They're beautiful. Service, please. Come on, you Muppet, let's go. The kitchen has shifted into high gear, and with one final push, the highly anticipated food is on its way to the customers. Mine's very good. Tender, spicy. All right. Very best ribs I've ever had. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, got an order up? Now we're moving. Now we're feeling good. Let's keep it up. Food's coming out right. Yeah. I believe that John has realized he will not accept substandard quality. Good deal. All right. We got a dining room full of locusts, man. They've eaten everything except for the plate. Every plate I've picked up has been clean. Awesome. All we got to do is get these tickets out, man. Just this last bag. Oh, I think I see the light at the end of the tunnel, folks. Now, I, I don't feel like I'm a man on an island alone. I know that Rick and Trish will be here to support me. That food looks beautiful. Yeah. The hamburger's the best hamburger I've ever had. There's one worth the wait, I guess. And we will be back. With the locals' seal of approval, Jay Willies is on the road to recovery. It was so nice to see clean plates coming back. Yes? Yes. And we were so busy. 165 customers. I know there were some complaints, and it was difficult, but the kitchen got slammed. And more importantly, we held on to our standards. And now that we know how to do it, don't stop. We won't. Okay? They won't let me. No, no, no. Chef Ramsey has taught us have a passion and make perfect and don't accept any excuses. John, if they offer you a little less expensive cheese, and it might no. Not be. no, 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 no process. No, 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 no. The staff has changed. John has changed. I'm overwhelmed with sincere thanks for Chef Ramsay. Without him, we would not be here now. What was the feedback from the dining room? They loved yeah. it. The word is starting to spread. Yeah, definitely. You've got your foot on the ladder. It's really important that you continue climbing. You all did a bloody good job, and I'm really proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye, ladies. Thank you very much. John has a new bounce and a step. He has to know that we're on his side and that we're all in this together and it's just not him taking on the world, it's all of us. And get ready, because we're going to take on the world. Wow. It's been very interesting for me to come to the heart of America and meet a really nice bunch of hard-working, humble individuals. But when I first arrived, I honestly thought the restaurant was beyond salvation. But tonight showed a little glimmer of hope. So long may it continue and heaven help them. In the days that followed, everyone at Jay Willie's worked hard to keep their standards up. Let's do it. Start hollering out. Thank you, gentlemen. And continued to perfect their barbecue sauce, a sauce that earned Jay Willie's first prize at the College Football Hall of Fame Ribs Cook-Off. <laughs> With a taste of success, the staff at Jay Willie's continues to work together to make its new barbecue house a success.
It may only be an hour outside of Manhattan, but the quiet town of Cranberry, New Jersey feels like it's thousands of miles away. In this historic village is a little French bistro called Hannah and Mason's. Friends Chris and Brian were co-workers here under the previous owners and jumped at the opportunity to buy the restaurant three years ago. Can we get serious now, please? All right, come on, focus, focus. I was afraid from the beginning to take the restaurant. Oh, what the fuck am I doing? This. I was also a little short of cash, so I figured Brian knew the operation. We worked together already, and he had the other half of the cash. We could do this. We could do this. But looking back, no, I don't think I would go into business with Brian. This was a mistake. I'm very laid back, and I, I don't think I let a lot of things bother me. Brian, you suck. Whatever. Brian's very lazy. Brian can be lazy. Brian needs to step up a lot. I just find it difficult to be motivated. That's just how I've always been, and I find it difficult to change. When your heart's not in it, why doesn't anybody else be in it? Why? I agree. My partnership with Brian is not equal. Enough. Enough of this shit, please. I generally pay most of the bills. But I spend a good portion of the day ordering food, doing prep lists, working on menus. Generally, I'll work the line for most dinners. Brian, why are you clean? Hold on. I don't particularly like to work the nights, so we're only open three nights a week for dinner. Done. There's no more to be had. I really don't think we're losing out on any business. There's nobody here. People call and they ask, you know, can I come in on Tuesday? And no, we're not open. And you can't bring in the customers. You can't bring in the money. We're having a very tough time making ends meet. It has been increasingly more and more stressful to come in and look at how much we owe money to, and the bills are piling up. And it's, it's a little too much stress for me. All right, this pretty much sucks. Hopefully, we make some money tonight. I go to try to deposit my paycheck in the bank, and I can't because there's no money. I get sick of how much money we spend on bounce check fees. It's, it's a horrible feeling. Oh, my gosh. If Hannah Mason's ever had to close, I would be lost because I wouldn't be able to support my daughter. You know, for me, it's a career. I don't know anything else. I don't want to really know anything else. I'm trying to hold out for hope. If it goes on much longer, I don't know what I'm going to do. What a beautiful, quaint little town. I can't think of a better way to spend Valentine's Day at Hannah and Mace Mesa. I guess I couldn't afford the end. That's not a good start. Right, here we go. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. Follow me. OK. Excellent, that's fine. Lovely. And so you are? Nick. Nick. Okay. Yes, sir. OK, great. Nice cool. to meet you. Hi, watch. Good to see you, too. And you know, what do you do here, Nick? I'm the manager here. Manager. Mm -hmm. Wait, you're young. I am very young, yes. I'm only 23 years old, and I bust my ass out day in and day out. Chris. Yes. He's sitting down. He's very cute. <laughs> when I saw him walk through the door, and I says, oh my gosh, look at this man. <laughs> this is Maurice. She's going to take Hello, care of you. Nice to meet you. Gordon. Happy Valentine, my darling. Happy Valentine's to you. Excellent. Is this a picture of your wife? Yeah, that's my dear lady, yes. Can I see? Oh, please, yeah. That's the 14th Valentine's Day. We haven't been together. She's beautiful. Thank you, my darling. Can't wait to taste the food. I would suggest is to start off with the baked onion soup. Right. Are you asking me or telling me? If you want my suggestion, baked onion soup. Let's go for that, shall we? OK. Um, the quiche, yes. a little slice of quiche. OK. Thank you. Um, I'm fascinated by the lamb lollipops. OK. Lovely. Got that. Lovely. Thank you, my darling. You're welcome. Mm. Well, the start might be onion soup, that's for sure. We're going to start with onion soup. OK. Some people might say, oh, French onion soup is French onion soup is French onion soup. But I think ours have a distinct, you know, presentation. Wow. Let's start off with zero out of 10 for presentation. Lovely. Ooh, greasy. Kate with cheese. Kate with bread. The only thing missing is the soup. What is that in there? Absolutely tasteless. It tastes like I've just had the dregs from the dishwasher. Hardly any soup. That is shocking. That was very different. Did you like it? And uh, once you got rid of all the bread and the cheese and the gunk, it just okay. very, very bland. But I'll bypass and hopefully the uh, 
Lamb lollipop. We'll be tasting. What those next? Thank you. You're welcome. Fine dining. A fine mess. And he didn't like this. <laughs> Off to a great start, ladies and gentlemen. What was wrong? Once he got past all the, the gunk with the bread, he said the broth was just bland, and he's never experienced anything like that before. He's never experienced anything as amazing as that. We've gotten, you know, fairly good reviews here, so I find it hard to believe that it's really as bad as he says. Say something, Chris. Get mad, Chris. I want Chris to get pissed. Uh, this is not going to go good, because if I can't get him with the French onion, I can't. I'm, nothing's going to be good. Wow. That is a big, big lollipop. My goodness me. It's an absolute nightmare to, to cut. Undercooked. It's hideous. Chris, no matter what anybody says, I still think you have the best onion soup and the best lamb. If he talks shit about the lamb, he's, he's out of his mind. It's completely <laughs> ridiculous. That sauce there, that's hideous. It's like a caramel. It's sweet as anything. Three. Um, what did you say that was? A roasted garlic jam. God. Nick, would you have a little taste there? It's like someone's put a topping of a granulated sugar caramel. Although Gordon didn't like the lamb, all the employees and all the customers think that that's our best dish. Very sweet, the sugar. Suddenly, the lamb is raw, and it's obviously cold in the middle because it hasn't rested. OK, let's, uh, let's go for the quiche. Uh, Dali, I, I, you've got to turn away now. I don't want to see you facing that shit any longer. Absolutely appalling. You say the order of rare, not raw. And the sauce is a spoonful of sugar. So, Chris, why, why did that go out like that? Where's my car keys? You got to go out there next time he says something. Uh, yeah, I will. I will. You sort of sound like my wife now. You're cowering. Whatever. I don't know. Chris is, is definitely scared of somebody telling him his dishes aren't good enough. It frustrates me as a manager because he needs to put his foot down sometimes. Here, possibly my darling, they're going to be saving the best for last. Lovely. And what flavor quiche is it? It is mushroom and spinach. Mushroom and spinach. Yes. Lovely. Thank you, my darling. You're welcome. Damn. My quiche has collapsed. It's gone into, like, this sort of meltdown. It's almost like it's been left out of the refrigeration all day. And as for the salad, well, you do. Get really nervous when the ends of the salads are all black. Hmm. I have a feeling I'm getting yelled at already. And they sort of collapsed and went all sort of um, runny and soggy. I'm sorry. Huh? Happy Valentine, my darling. Thank you. Oh, good. No. He cut into it and it just collapsed and it's all gooey inside. And... The customers mostly have good things to say, so it's a little shocking to hear someone say that almost everything that we served them was horrible. Bye, darling. This quaint village had put Gordon in a pleasant state of mind. First name is Chris. Chris, and where's the brigade? Unfortunately, the food destroyed it. This is my partner, Brian. Brian? I'm not really nervous to meet Chef Ramsay. You know, we thought everything was gross, but whatever. OK, lunch was hideous. It's really important, before we go anywhere, I need to know the, the foundation. How many nights a week are you cooking? Well, we're only open three nights a week for dinner. <laughs> Are you three nights a week? Why? Being ridiculously cautious and fearful and the way I've led my entire life. You played safe. Yes, sir. But sending those kind of messages out to the local community that you're closed longer than you're open is telling the locals you're closed. If he wasn't here, what's his weak points? He doesn't have a love or a passion for the business itself. So how come you're passionate and you're not? We're just different people. Yeah, business is a business. Yeah, it's a restaurant. Yes, I love to cook, but... It would be easier sometimes just not to own a restaurant. When was the last time you made a decision? I made a special. What was it? Turkey panini. Turkey panini. Right. I, I'm just, you know, I don't know what you're looking for. Passion, strong will, determination. You look like you're just about to lose your virginity. <laughs> Sorry. Something needs to happen to relight this flame. Now I'm going to see how you operate it, OK? I'll see you in two minutes. Right now, I am absolutely unfocused for dinner. I, I, I'm going to be thinking everything I send out is, is shit. Unbelievable. All right, let's just get focused and let's get ready for dinner, because dinner is going to be a debacle. Gordon was shocked to find out that Hannah and Mason's is closed more than it's open. 
But this is Valentine's Day, a day when all restaurants are busy. This is our special uh, Valentine's Day menu. And a great opportunity for him to observe a dinner service. We've got a lot of spinach here. OK. So we have two tables upstairs, right? How many people do we have coming in in the immediate future? I knew that going into Valentine's Day and knowing that Chef Ramsay was going to be overseeing everything that was happening, I was definitely a bit nervous. Dear, oh dear. So, uh, is that ready to go out, Matt? No, sir. Display purposes only. Seriously? What the fuck is that? It's apple cobbler. When was that made? Well, it's anyone's guess, Chef. I mean, not more than a week ago. And... Holy shit. That's a, uh... A molten lava cake? A molten lava cake? Yeah. No, a molten rock. Yeah. Lava rock. Well, so what'd you do with that? What? Do you play ice hockey? No, that's, again, display purposes only. Right off the bat, we, we were in the shits right off the bat. Why would we even think about going to a customer with something a week old? Oh, we shouldn't. Thank you, Chris. Brian. Yes. No, that doesn't look good at all. I agree. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah. Hello? Get rid of it. OK. Yeah. As tensions mount in the kitchen, customers are about to celebrate one of the most romantic nights of the year. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. I wanted to go in and almost talk. thinking of leaving. So food sat up there, nobody taking it. I hit the bell. What? Oof. At least you don't work for him all the time. I could never. <laughs> no way. No fucking way. I think after the first day, I would just leave and never come back. I wouldn't care if I didn't get him paid. <laughs> Chef Ramsay telling me that, you know, we do things the wrong way just doesn't really work for me. Oh, my God. Brian. Yes. Two seconds. And he, like, never shuts up. <laughs> Who's checking this stuff? Does, does this guy just send food out? Yeah. So who's checking it? Nobody's checking it. Nobody, no. OK. There's lettuce all fucking rotten there. Yeah? Lettuce rotten uh, there. Yeah. Fist, you got to pick through the lettuce yeah. better. I really am trying to. Like, I'm not well, even... These ones are no good with the rotten lettuce. Let's just go. Oh, fuck me. Where's this coming from? Jesus Christ almighty. Sir, has it been washed? I did not wash that. No. I did not know... We don't wash spinach? We get it pre-washed. You get it pre-washed? That's the first. Oh, look, every time I dig my hand in, it's all rotten. And it just do you. Just you toss it. Yeah, it's gross. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't toss it. Why don't you eat it? <laughs> no, I'd rather not. You'd I rather wouldn't, not. I wouldn't eat it. But you charge people for it. OK, there you go. You shouldn't, this shouldn't be sent out. No. You should open your fucking eyes. We'll try to fix whatever issues we have, but I can't. I'm not going to cry in the corner about it. You know, life goes on. So. Upon further investigation, Oh, my God. Gordon discovers that something is missing from the display-only dessert tray. Have we served that dessert on there? Yeah. Here we are. That dessert's been served from there. That's not good. What's this here? It's been leaking in the fridge. What, what? That's really old. It's a bread pudding. That's a bread pudding? Oh, sure. That's a shrimp. Fuck it. What's that? Yeah, that's disgusting. Why is it bubbling? Because it's old. That's gross. We'll get rid of all of no, this. No, 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 no. Nick, I know you're busy. Yeah, I'm fucking shitting myself now. I feel when you know things aren't going good, I, I just assume get out. You know, just move on to the next thing. Yeah, hey, where's Brian? I know you want to run away from it. I, I'm not running. No, no, I can't run away from it. Yeah, I've just been watching and fucking shitting myself for the last hour. What are you doing to people? Give me an answer! You know, we can't oversee everything we assume that... OK, know. take me down to the fridge. I want to see how you fucking really work. I cannot believe that this is how you guys are running a restaurant. In my head, I was thinking, we're going to be screwed. That's what in there? That's the walk-in freezer. The freezer. That's the walk-in freezer. Look at the mess here. What's this here? Bacon. Yeah, obviously, bacon, smart ass. That's from lunch. Yeah. Yeah, five years ago. You leave a spatula in there like that. I'm sorry. Nah, fuck off. I cannot believe 
what you guys are doing here. There was so much going on. My head was spinning. My head was going to explode. I, I, I thought to myself, this is a disaster. What's that in there? Shit, that didn't get put on. Oh, my God. I don't know what the fuck oh, that's all. Oh, fuck that. Oh, my God. Oh, no. This is not good. Raw chicken. That should never happen. You know? Oh, my God. Chris, it's fucking chicken against raw chicken. It's, it's fucking. Hey, panini head, are you listening to me? Yes. You're going to kill someone. I'm eating here. Partners. Partners in crime. You should be ashamed. We are ashamed. You've just contaminated the town. And Nick, Nick, yeah. stop. Yeah, everybody. Right now, this is not a romantic eat out. This is a Valentine fucking massacre. It's a disgrace. How can you do this? I'm closing the place down. Switch it off. It's Valentine's Day, the busiest night of the year for restaurants. But what the customers don't realize is that some shocking discoveries left Gordon with no other choice but to shut it down. Switch it off! What do you want me to tell the people? To tell them. You tell me then. What are we going to tell them? Or you say I'm going to stand here and watch you serve contaminated food? No. Yeah. Yeah, fucking shut it down, switch it off, and condemn it. I knew that we were going to run into some problems tonight. I didn't know it was going to be this bad. Mark, turn everything off. That's it. We're done. No one touches or serves any food right all the way down. I suggest you start coming up with some suggestions to the customers, yeah? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah? Hurry up, Brian. Um, Chef Ramsay is shutting us down. I feel absolutely horrible, and uh, certainly not something uh, I expected. Just, just for the easy. Never in my wildest dreams thinking that we would have to shut down. This is the most horrific thing I've ever had to deal with in my life, quite frankly. I felt horrible. What I've just discovered is totally unacceptable. Enough's enough. Chris. Yes, sir. If you are passionate about food yes, and sir. you feel deeply about it, I want to hear it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to, to tear it down and start over. You've got a big pair of balls facing those customers tonight. What they can say for the partner that you are in business with. Where were you? How many tables did you talk to? How many customers did you apologize to? No. How much support did you give the waitresses, the manager? Okay. That's right. You were doing jack shit, mate. I do feel like I carry the bulk of the restaurant. Oh, it absolutely bothers me that Brian doesn't take on some of those things. You make me sick. Unbelievable. On a night when they should have been busy serving, the staff finds itself cleaning up the mess. I don't even know where to start. I mean, I never really thought I'd be in this situation. I'm really trying to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm trying to hold out for hope. Oh, my god. Of course I'm worried. This is my life. I need those customers to come back. Before Gordon unveils his plan for change, he explores the town of Cranberry looking for inspiration. This whole town is built up on farms. Perfect position to have a local restaurant. Wow. Amazed by the number of local farms in the area, Gordon decides to check out the seasonal produce. Hello, ladies. Huh? So happy Welcome to here. Turhan Orchard. Delicious. Glad to have you. It's beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely Thank you. amazing. Well, just driving appreciate. around yeah. locally and just looking at some of the farms. I mean, it's a chef's dream. <laughs> We pick everything every day. Amazing. And in terms of variety of apples, how many do you have here? We grow 35 different kind of apples. Pretty good crunch there. Mm, delicious. Right, shall I uh, just help myself? Yes, your yeah. favorite. Fill it in. Excellent. Lovely. Look at the size of these. Great. That is amazing. Yeah, I'm going to put these to good use. Excellent. What are you going to make? Uh oh. That's a secret. You're going to have to come for dinner. All right, we're available. Thank you. Inspired by the fresh, locally grown apples, Chef Ramsay heads back to the restaurant to work on a special he has in mind for tonight's dinner service. Right. What are they called? Apples. Apple fucking smiles. You asked me what they were. They're apples. Yeah, I know, but it's the way you say it. You're with no enthusiasm. If I want to learn to cook like you, I'll definitely buy your cookbook. 
Uh, what, what, this is just not for me. Why are you in business running a restaurant when you're completely passionless about talking about ingredients? It's a fucking apple. Yes, they're local apples. It's great. Okay, when was the last time you tasted one? It's been a while. I haven't been to the local orchard Tur to get an apple. Taru Farm, well, I've been there for the last two hours. Okay. It's like being around your parents when they're arguing, and it's the most uncomfortable thing in the world. And uh, now I hated it. Yeah, it's a good apple. You don't get it, do you? I do get it. They're delicious. And so talking to you about it is like, oh, really? It's an apple. Yeah. One a day but, but keeps the doctor away. Do? Am I supposed to jump up and down? No, right not now? at all. It's just becoming clearly evident that you are incredibly soulless when it comes to food. You're entitled okay. to your opinion. If Chef Gordon keeps pushing me, I just won't be here anymore. You won't see me today. As Bryant cools off. OK, apples in. Gordon teaches Chris a new special. Everything has to be relaxed. Pork medallions with caramelized Braeburn apples. And then just finish with a hint of the mustard. Yeah? Yes. Hoping to put the Valentine's Day massacre behind them, the staff gears up for dinner service and takes advantage of the local produce. Apples are good. Are we, uh, are we ready to go, yes? Yeah? OK, guys, let's go. Let's get them in. I have no qualms about leaving. I feel bad for you guys, but there's no way. If you start swimming with that shit again, I will fucking leave. Let the bloodbath begin. All right, I'm going to do the best to get Brian more focused for dinner. Brian, why don't you show me your passion and lead the brigade tonight? Sure. It's fine. That's fine. That sounded enthusiastic, didn't it? I don't feel like I need to prove anything to him. I mean, I am who I am, and what are you going to do? Special, we have sautéed pork medallions. I will have the filet mignon. Harvest salad. You fire the entrees on table five. What's first up, uh, Brian? What's up? What's first up? What's uh, I'm running around trying to get all this stuff together. Um, with uh, five tickets on the board, uh, is it worth getting something going? Brian, it's a very quiet kitchen. Normally, it's quiet. We don't tend to yell and shout out. Or... So how do you guys know what's going on when no one's talking to each other? We haven't said anything. I guess I'm not running it then. Nothing right. makes me angry at not getting served in the restaurant. Beginning of the service, Brian told me he's going to run the kitchen and run it with some passion. But so far, I don't see it, I don't feel it, and the kitchen is backed up. Customers are complaining about waiting, and I don't think Brian actually gives a fuck. I'm just waiting for my for what? entree. Which one? 102, 102 still? Okay, I'll get it. 102, how long? Two minutes, three minutes, four? Not really sure. How long have you been waiting? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Fuck. Dude, this is taking forever. Brian, yeah. should you tell Nick to slow down the orders or what? He should know. I mean, we shouldn't have to tell him. He could tell that we're backed up. Oh, my God. Come on. Brian is not putting in enough effort. It makes me frustrated. He needs to step up more. I feel pressured when some of us are watching me and telling me I can't do it, but I don't need him here yelling at me. That's not going to make me want to work any harder. Your lack of excitement and passion bugs me. I'm struggling to come to terms but, to but why I'm you're just, in business. I'm not like you. I, I can't get excited it's over it. It's not what you're doing to me. You've got to understand that. It's what you're doing to the business. The business for me is the bigger picture. I'm not here to massage your ego. I'm really sorry. Customers are complaining about waiting. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Uh, I just felt like I was being picked on and whatever. Panini Head, I'm worried about how much you're putting the business down. But you I won't accept that because you can't be honest with yourself. Because I'm not. Oh, okay, you're being what, a dick about it. What am I being a dick about? Talk just, to me. Just the way you talk don't to me. Don't run down the stairs like a little girl. Talk I'm not to gonna, me. I'm talking to you. You don't talk to people. That's your problem. I'm calling people a Panini Head. No, that's I called you. I, I called that's you. like fucking I, sixth grade. How I fucking old you. are you? I, I don't need someone to tell me, you know, talk to me like that. I'm past that point in my life. It's just ridiculous. Enough is enough. I'll leave it. Fuck, man. It's an hour into dinner service, and Brian has threatened to leave the restaurant. I'll leave it. With no food leaving the kitchen, Fuck, man. everything is at a standstill. You don't, you think, I don't think he's going to walk out tonight. Yes, you will. I don't, he's on the verge right now. He's, he gives, says he gives it another hour. He says if Ramsey keeps digging in, then he's leaving. Brian did get a little frustrated with Chef Ramsey. And I don't know what's going through Brian's head right now. If I didn't give a shit, you know it. I would have left a long time ago. I'm dedicated to this place because I want to be here. I want to do this. I want to I make it work. What I want is 
It's just for you to show a little bit of interest. I am stop moping around. If I wasn't interested, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be doing this. Right. In my heart, I really, I do care. Maybe I don't show it all the time, and I should, but I definitely need to show that I have more interest than what I'm perceived to have. Great, hey, let's go. It's table 11. Table 11. Um, I gotta wrap a couple more pork. Table 102, an FO. Okay, here we are. I'm sorry about the wait, I apologize. Hit the bell, please. Wow, keep going, yes? That is going. Table three. Table three. Table three. All right. Thank you so much. You were braver now. Can you go that really goes well together. Thank you. We started pumping things out. It took a little bit while in the beginning, but once we got going, it, it went over pretty well. Thank you. Have a good one. Good news tonight is that the special sold out. Yes. Yeah? Great news. Brian, you're smiling for the first time since I met you. I'm changing right now. I mean, I need to be able to have a positive attitude all the time. Let me tell you something really seriously, honestly. If you actually think this restaurant in this community is going to be here in five years' time when you're mediocre, bang. We know that, you know, we have to do something different to make the business grow. Thank you. And you're absolutely spot on. We have to be special. And we have to cook locally. I think the products that we had today were excellent. So it would be good to, you know, put a lot of that into our menu. That's what we have to change. Yes. Tomorrow, we're going to revamp the whole fucking place. I think we need a change, but I'm nervous, scared. Tomorrow morning, this place becomes the crown jewel within Cranberry. I really don't know what to expect. Is that clear? Sounds good. Is there anyone here that's not fired up? OK. Let's do it. With Brian finally on board, Chef Ramsay moves forward, transforming Hannah and Mason's from a dreary bistro into a delightful cafe. Right, good morning. Good morning. Excited? Yeah. Extremely excited. <laughs> I've got you an end. Oh, how you feel? Oh, shit. That was awesome. You Happy with the end? Yes. <laughs> now it's time to open a new chapter for Hannah Mason's. Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. my God. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. the floor. Oh my god, I just couldn't believe how great it looked when we walked in. A new deli counter showcasing local fresh products. Oh my god! We didn't just renovate this place, we changed the meaning of it. The breads, the homemade cupcakes, everything made locally. I like it. Local farms share the pride and you show it off. This place can become synonymous with these farms. You know, it's got synergy there. Oh, my god. It's amazing. It's, amazing. it's the happiest I've ever seen you. <laughs> <laughs> if this doesn't really light your fire, I don't know what will. I'm glad Chef Ramsay came and, you know, he made these changes. It's amazing. It really is. And I'm hoping that, you know, it makes our business all the better. Beautiful. I think I'm in shock. The restaurant is gone. I just don't know. You don't know? Oh, no. You changed your mind? I don't know. It's a complete... Hannah Mason's closed last night. Hannah Mason's Bakery and Cafe opened today. I just don't know going forward. It's, I, mean, I mean, everyone's afraid of the unknown. I knew there was going to be changes, but this is a complete departure from what we've done. Hannah Mason's didn't close last night. We just changed. We changed and completely. A new completely. chapter. It's, oh, it's overwhelming. Just Embrace change. Just being a realist. You're not being a realist. Yet. You're being pessimistic. Chef Ramsay obliterated Hannah and Mason's as it was, and it's not going to work. Gordon has revealed that the new Hannah and Mason's will be an upscale cafe and no longer a French bistro. But not everyone is comfortable with the change. Embrace change. Just being a realist. You're not being a realist. You're being pessimistic. Right. OK, we'll go through the menu. Previously, the menus, two menus before, lunch and dinner. Absolutely crazy. You've got no idea how simple this is. Fine dining has gone. Yes, it's small, but it's powerful. Fresh, vibrant, rustic, countryfied cuisine. Brian, I'm 
I'm ready. Let's get started. Let's see mm -hmm. what all this stuff looks like. Chris. Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just re I'm just reading the menu. Thinking in my head, it's different. It's, it's definitely different. No Why didn't you ask me here? This is because we needed a kick in the ass. This is, I, Jeff, this is I, just things going through my head. That's all. I, well, let's see. Chris is really nervous to make the change just for the fear of losing business that we have. Yesterday, he astounded me. Today, you're <laughs> shocking me. Because I'm shocked. Oh, just, my God. I need to get my hands in it. While Gordon had the staff focusing on the new menu, his team put together a farmer's market, an event to showcase the new relationship between Hannah and Mason's and the local farm community. Uh, let's go. Hi, guys. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Good morning. How are you? Right. Look. Uh, fantastic. Awesome. So we've got some taste of olives. We've got some scones. Get the staff involved. And uh, make sure all these menus go off as well, yes? OK. Hello, everybody. A little chilly out today. Scone? Right, flies given out, a little taste. Let's go. So this is our new menu. We're reaching out to the community. It's going to flourish our business to a whole new level, you know? You got to see it. It's yeah. beautiful. Man. The new menu looks really good. It looks yeah. great. Hi. Hi. Well, How are you? Congratulations. Thank you. For you. Yes, it is. Thank you. It's great for me to meet the local farmers. I love the idea of using locally. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed our apples. We did. They were awesome. Well, let's see if we can work something out so absolutely. you can use more local produce we all year round. Yep, yeah, we are yeah. going to absolutely do that. Great. I hope that people uh, are going to be happy that we're using local growers. And people are always happy about that. And you taste it. You definitely taste the difference. There's no doubt about that. After a successful farmer's market, Gordon introduces the new menu, a menu created to take full advantage of all that the local farms have to offer. Let's go through the menu, yes? First of all, just look at the color of it. It oozes what? Vibrancy, freshness. freshness. The dishes you can recognize easily, the ribeye sandwich, the smoked chicken salad, beef hash with eggs, the entrees, a really nice uh, winter uh, free-range chicken stew, the lamb burger, great short ribs, uh, fish of the day is going to be the swordfish. Yeah. I like a lot of the items, and I like the menu, and I like the simplicity of it. But I think there's going to be a learning curve. Any questions? No. No? no? Excellent. Did you see the sign? It's Hannah and Mason's, not Hannah and Mason. All right, come on in. We're right here. We have a couple changes to our menu, as you can see. The chef's special today is a grilled swordfish served with tarragon mashed potatoes. This morning, I thought Brian would be really anti any form of change, but he's actually embraced it quite well. But Chris, he's been on and off the train all day long, and the jury's out as far as I'm concerned on him. But tonight, we'll find out who really wants to turn this place around. It's been an interesting launch. Gordon knows that in order for Hannah and Mason's to make a profit, they must successfully flip tables and have two complete seatings. Chris. Yes, yeah, Chef. We have to flip tables tonight. Well, what does that mean? Making money. I know you're not used to it, hey, but we've got to do it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm in control at all for what's going to happen this evening. Not until the tickets start rolling in. It's just the anticipation at this point. I think the special sounds really good, though, too. The swordfish. Here she comes. First order. Well done, yeah. Brian, one cup salad away, please. OK. Take the four is up. Gently, gently good. Nice. Two and 20 gone, Brian. Uh, yes. Yes, yeah, chef. First course on 23 just went. Can I? This tastes so amazing. Damn, by now. Much fresher. Tastes so fresh. Salad soup moving out. Yes. Quickly, yes. Yeah. Any com any complaints? Any feedback? No complaint about the freshness yet. No complaints about no the complaints freshness. Complaints about the freshness. That was a joke. Yes, it was. Yes, Good. sir. I've never seen it move so quick. You are. Yeah, let me just. Yeah, I'm a yeah, thermometer I'm alive. again. I'm alive. I'm alive. I got a pulse. Yeah, no, no, just. It's moving. Yeah. Huh? Surely there must be a difference inside here. With Brian rising to the occasion and getting appetizers out promptly. Sorry? Go start turning those tables there now. Yes. It is now up to Chris to deliver the entrees so that the next round of customers can be seated shortly. Next table? Uh, right now, nothing else fired. Nothing else fired. Get me Nick, please. Anything about to be fired? Anything happening or. Got a turn. Chris. He's killing me. I said you're killing me. Uh, Nick, are we falling behind or? Yes, uh, I think we are falling behind. 
unbelievable. Last night, the appetizer took 20 minutes to come out. Tonight, they're only taking 12, but that's not the problem. The problem is the entrees aren't coming out quick enough, the customers are staying at the tables longer, and we need to flip those tables if we've got any chance of surviving. Get some tables up, get some tables up. Right, yeah, with the queue at the door now, we've got to push these tables out. Go on, uh, what are you waiting for, Marie? Table four. Table four, yeah. Open up, buddy. What's going next? Come on. You got backing up with tickets. You've got to talk to these two guys. Someone needs direction here a little bit. I'm going on a salmon and crab and a swordfish, so I need mashed potatoes, please. V86 mashed, unless we got some somewhere else. Having run out of mashed potatoes, Chris makes a very telling decision. I'm not going to be serving mashed potatoes on the uh, swordfish anymore. We were running low on mashed potatoes. Um, and I didn't think it would be a big deal to sub something out. I'm thinking in my head, I don't want this to get backed up, then the whole house of cards falls. Can't we put potatoes on, Chris? I mean, by the time we get them peeled, we're gonna put them on. Might be tomorrow. Oh, here we go. It's just excuse after excuse after excuse. excuse. You yeah. own the fucking place. Yeah, yeah, you damn sure. So you want to tell the fucking customers we can't be bothered to make a fucking mashed potato? We can sub something out. I just find it embarrassing. Why can't we sub something out? take it out. out. And we could sub something out. Just too easy. Ah, fuck it. Do the easy route. Yeah, tell the fuck off. We can't be bothered anymore. You're the boss, chef. Yeah. That's bullshit. It's the heart of dinner service. And in an effort to keep up with the orders... Go start turning those tables there now. Yes. Huh? Chris decides to cut corners. I'm not going to be serving mashed potatoes on the uh, swordfish anymore. Oh, here we go. We were running low on mashed potatoes, um, and I didn't think it would be a big deal to sub something out. I'm thinking in my head, I don't want this to get backed up, then the whole house of cards falls. Just too easy. Ah, fuck it. Do the easy route. Yeah, tell them to fuck off. We can't be bothered anymore. You're the boss, chef. That's bullshit. All we need to do is peel half the potatoes. We get them on. Huh? Silvio, peel some potatoes, please. I've tried to make it as simple as possible so you don't get backed up. You're all right, you're right. We're and I'm right. trying to relax things a little bit to speed things up a little bit. So, okay. Yeah? Yeah. So we get out of that fine dining mentality and sort of, you know, push it forward turn over. Bit. Okay. You'll be surprised over a year how many tables you turn quicker. Which we do. We need to turn them. The staff quickly preps the mashed potatoes in an attempt to get back on track and push entrees out. Uh, potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Service, please. As Chris finds his groove, the kitchen catches up. And now, for the first time, this dining room is turning tables. She's going to sit you down, and we do have a couple of tables getting up in here. I promise, as soon as we get them clean, we'll get you right down. Three more salmon and crabs up, a macaroni. We used to have nights where we would do 30 dinners, and it felt like 85. Everything's looking good, guys. Beautiful. It's the relaunch, we did 85. It felt like doing 30. It was a nice change, I got to say. All right, pick up, please. It's just going to take Chris a little while. He's not really good with change. I mean, think about it. We've had the same food on the menu for almost four years now, so change is not a thing for Chris. Are we starting to play down, or...? Yeah. yeah. With two dinner seatings completed, the new Hannah and Mason's has successfully cleared its first major hurdle. The buzz was phenomenal. The vibrance, the freshness, and the feedback was great. However, more importantly to this restaurant is quality control. A special is to enlighten a customer to what the chef's about. Uh, fair enough. You can make mash. Four potatoes peeled, bang. That's where we discipline ourselves. Yeah, you're right. Uh... You're right. I'm saying you're right. Relax, guys. <laughs> you're right. Brian, I want you and him to be better. Do you understand? I want you up there and not treading water down there. I look forward to the, the future. I, mean, I just, I still think there's a lot that we need to work out, um, Chris and I. So, you know, there's still some more changing to do, and this is a start. So, we're excited. I came here because you asked me to come here, yeah, to put this restaurant back on the map. Yeah, the minute I've gone, yeah, it's up to you guys. But one thing you have to do is make money to survive. That means commitment, heart, desire, and a real hunger to make it work. I give you a new menu. New decor, new equipment, new launch. What I cannot give you is the heart to make this successful. That can only come with it. And that's what it's going to take to get this place pumping.
I think Brian sees that he could put his stamp on this place now as well. I think in the past he thought it was only Chris's place, Chris putting his stamp on it. I think he, he sees now it's a clean slate, and he could put his thumbprint on it. Call me, yes? I will. Yeah. Murray has your cell, right? She has my email, she has my cell, yeah, and she has my home address. One thing she hasn't got is my fucking hotel room key. <laughs> <laughs> right, good night. Yes? Oh, no. oh. Thanks, Jeff. Yes. Thank you. Take care. That was tough. Honestly, really tough. From the minute we had the Valentine Day massacre to a successful relaunch tonight, it's been a tough week. And I personally feel that I've been dragging Nick, Brian, and Chris every inch of the way. And I don't know if they've got the desire to go that extra mile. But what I do know is these apples are delicious. St. Clair Shores, Michigan, a summer resort community about 40 minutes from Detroit. Located on prime real estate is Jack's, a lakeside restaurant recently acquired by three bodybuilders, Bill, Scott, and Tamar. Let's do it, Scott. I met Bill and Scott at the gym. Easy, get it? We all work out together and hang out together. All of us are partners in the restaurant. Jack's is known for having great entertainment being the resort style place to come to. It's like girls gone wild across the whole lake. Winter time, there isn't much going on. Jax has had a reputation for bad food. I don't think I'd order again. And so that's really, in my opinion, that's what killed us. We really got to fix this. We brought AJ in to run the kitchen. Here's the ribeyes. AJ is Tamer's father. No, that's your table, that's your kebab. I don't see the fish and chips, man. No, you don't understand. We put all this trust in him. Oh, never mind. And the kitchen has completely fallen apart. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. So we had put him in the front of the house to act as the general manager, just so we don't have to fire him, because that is my partner's father. Can I help you with something? I'll be talking to the customers, flirting with the ladies, and asking about the food in between. I'm gonna go get myself a drink. On a business level, I can't stand a man. Every night during hours, he gets wasted. He gets so drunk. Bring it on. <laughs> Uzo is my favorite drink. I like to drink Uzo. And we are gonna have music tonight. To me, it's not professional. <laughs> it's a nice life. I like it. <laughs> Get him on, take him out and beat him. Scott is dangerous. He can hurt you if he wants to hurt you. People are terrified of him. No, no, no. One minute late. I'm telling you to see. Started getting calls from customers saying he scares everybody away. So Tamar and I had to make a decision to remove him from the restaurant. Unbelievable. He's a silent partner now. I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. Total mess. We got Aaron in to replace my father in the kitchen. I'm looking for 53 calamari. Let's go. I had only been here seven weeks, and the whole ball of wax was, uh, was, was messed up. I'm smelling fire. I knew there had to be some changes, but I wasn't going to be allowed to make them because the owner's really happy with the menu. It's just unfortunate that we have to take money from other avenues to try to make the place survive. I'm the one that has the most investment. I have almost a half a million dollars invested. If we're about to lose this business, I can't recover. Scott feels that we are running the business into the ground and he's losing all of his money. We owe Fairway $11,000. I mean, we owe back sales taxes. We owe back payroll taxes. When you start getting to owing the government money, then you know, that's an issue. If things don't change, I don't know how to make the place survive. Taking advantage of the frozen lake, Gordon snowmobiles his way to Jack's. Wow, absolutely amazing. This restaurant is centrally located at the heart of five great lakes, but they're in trouble. I don't know why, and I'm about to find out. Unbelievable. Jacks. Wow. What a place. Welcome to Jacks. Hey, nice to Jay. see you. Nice to have you. Gordon. Come on in. I'm actually not nervous, but I hope he loves the food. Of course. Um, AJ, so you're the owner? No. 
But Scott is here and Will oh, are here, yes. And Scott is the bouncer? No. Why oh, no, are you standing there looking oh, no. for a fight? <laughs> <laughs> Come over. Tell the way you're standing there. How you doing, man? How, How are you doing? Good, good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Are you in training or what? I've been training huh? 24 years of my it's life. extraordinary. Are they real or...? <laughs> They're very soft. <laughs> so, um, you're the owner? I'm one of the owners. Oh, uh, his son is another owner. OK. okay. He'll be in this he's afternoon. OK, good. Okay. And there's one more somewhere. He's the nice to meet you. <laughs> another gym <laughs> rat. <laughs> extraordinary. Nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Should we step out? This is After the... meeting two owners and a general manager, Gordon decides to talk to each of them individually so that they can be totally honest about the problems at Jack's. Now, what kind of hours are you putting in? 65 a week. And Scott put 65 in? No. We had to move him out of the restaurant. He was scaring my employees. Holy shit. Why was Scott pushed out? Because he's lost a ton of customers because of the things that he did. We got complaints, complaints, and complaints. Why would you scare customers away? I, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe because I was intense, you know? But I want to be more involved. What's the problem with the restaurant? We have terrible food. Yeah. What's the problem with the restaurant? I personally don't see a problem with the business. It's really good. It's... OK. Um, what's the problem with the restaurants? AJ. What's he drinking in the bar? You know, he drinks ouzo all the time. He just turned around and drank a quick shot. That's what he does. He makes some $100,000 a year. 100 grand? Yes. Ridiculous. Oh, my God. Three individuals, three completely different stories. I haven't even tasted the food yet. Where do you start? Oh, my God. OK. Here we go. Hmm. Right. Nice Erica. to see you, darling. Erica. It's really important for me to see as much as possible. I would try this omelet here. Oh, it's crab spoon. Just split with a cake. It's, it yeah. looks like crab. Yeah. <laughs> a crab omelet. <laughs> I hope not. OK, I'll definitely take one of the uh, K omelets. Okay. Then I'm going to go after that for the uh, honey pecan salmon. OK. And then um, mm. good old-fashioned fish and chips. Oh, good. Yeah? Thanks, darling. Excellent. You just sat there staring at me like some big muscle-head meatball. Fuck me. Aaron. What? Why do you spell with your crab with a K on the... Because it's not real. It's my crab meat. I didn't want anybody to get the misconception. It's artificial. That's a guarantee. No complaints on this. Guarantee? That's a pretty bold statement. Excellent. Thank you, my darling. Wow, look at the size of that. That's a lot of crab. And you haven't told me about the K yet. Oh, he said... He wanted everybody to know that it wasn't real crab, it's artificial crab. So he spelled it with a K so there was no misconception. So it's fake crab meat mm -hmm. in a seafood restaurant on the water. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck me. Holy crap. Rubber, tasteless. That's going straight to the trash. Okay. Oh, my God. What's wrong? He hated it. Why? The fake crab was the number one reason. The didn't go over well. No. He doesn't like the crab in there. I, I've never, uh, that was already here. I didn't buy that stuff. I don't want to use frozen fish. It's not a product that I'm absolutely overly proud of. But at the same point, I'm held accountable for all the inventory that the owners have paid for. How was the food so far? Why are we serving fake crab in an omelet? I don't. He did that. You're the general manager. Why are you, <laughs> why are you laughing? I give the choice. Have you been drinking? No. The crab was shocking, embarrassing, and fake. It tasted disgusting. Have you tasted that crab? No, I'm extremely allergic to crab and shrimp, so no I crab can't in, even There's eat no it. crab in there. I understand, it's monkfish. So, oh, my God. I'll let you finish your meal. General manager, my ass. I'm being blamed. He thinks that I should be allowing him to do that. Or letting yeah. him letting serve him. those types of Correct. dishes? Because it's fake crab. AJ is the general manager. He's supposed to oversee the food. And now I'm hoping and praying that Gordon says AJ is the one that's bleeding his business. OK, fish and chips. Certainly the best looking thing I've seen. Is it really rubbery? Is it frozen, the fish? I believe it's frozen. It is frozen. When you take a bite of that cod, it's almost like you've got a breaded condom in your mouth. Oof. He said it was rubbery, uh, too greasy, and it just said it tasted like a frozen cod, and obviously he hit it right on the button, so... 
This is the same recipe that we've used here forever. So I am for change. I want the change. Good. Wow. This one is the salmon. salmon. Look at that. Thank you, sweet. Damn. I think just so sweet. The dressing is like honey and so much of it. Absolutely disgusting. Quite possibly one of the worst salmon dishes I've ever eaten. He hated it. I don't like it. No. I don't like anything. That's one man's opinion. It's a pretty successful opinion, though. <laughs> Fuck. Whoa. After one of the worst meals he's ever had. This is Chef Aaron. Aaron. Chef Ramsey, how are you doing? Gordon begins to explore how this perfectly situated seafood restaurant can serve such dreadful food. That was horrendous. Why are you serving fake crab meat? It's inventory that we have. Have you tasted that? It's plain. There's nothing to it. It's just disgusting plastic. It's exactly what it is. The salmon dish. That was shit at its best. Sweet on sweet on sweet on sweet. That's actually one of the top sellers. For the That's crab. why the place has got such a shit reputation for crap food. It's still not clear who's in charge of the food. He's in charge of the food. It's not true. I have no control. I felt like guys being thrown under the bus because all the recipes and the things that he didn't enjoy or things that were set in place before I even got here. Who's controlling the fucking menu? The owners are. Scott, Just the is that what you wanted here? Not, not at all. I don't have nothing to do with food. What? Yes. AJ, I want answers. There are certain things that are not under my Sorry, control. you're the general manager. I tried not to have it go on, but I get overruled. AJ has many excuses and never wants to own up to his faults. <laughs> it's terrible. AJ, it's got to be your responsibility. No, no. With no one taking responsibility for any of the problems, Gordon knows the best way to get any answers is to observe tonight's dinner service. OK, how would you like that cut? All right, it's our first order. We got tables. Tamar, how you doing, brother? After working a full day at his other job. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Tamar, the restaurant's third partner, arrives. Let me ask you straight out, what do you think is wrong with the restaurant? The food's like hit and mess, it's inconsistent. Yeah. And forget the father figure now, but isn't AJ responsible for the food and beverage in terms of running the restaurant and the kitchen? Yes. And every time I asked AJ to what was going on, he was blaming the owners. I do have the most difficult position being here. I'm working with my friends and my father, who is my family, and that makes everything very difficult. It sucks. I'm going to have a look around. Okay. Spend time in the kitchen, the dining room. Chef, it's good to meet you. Yeah, likewise, finally. This rice has issues. Take this out and at least try to stir it up or something. You brought it up here? Why well, I got to move it? There's not enough depth in our kitchen. Yeah, I got a big chunk here, too. What the fuck, man? They've been set in their ways. I don't know that they want to conform to a change. Do we have any rice yet? Nope. I threw it out. Oh, my God. With a clear lack of support in the kitchen. I'm fucked here. Aaron has yet to send out the first wave of orders. She said it's on the way. So it's Christmas. <laughs> my lead is table 11. They don't have any food. Well, if it doesn't come in 15 minutes, I'll see. 15 minutes, we're All right. Here's a big blue filet. Up top. 45 minutes into the dinner service, and food is finally beginning to leave the kitchen. Keep it going. 64 calamari. I'll take it any time. As the dishes get rushed to the dining room, that looks wrong. customers are receiving food that's not exactly the way they ordered it. We gotta send this back. What's wrong with that? It's supposed to be a uh, well done in the career. Oh, for fuck. Up and top. A well done steak is the easiest steak in the world to cook. It's a little chewy to me. Ribeye, we need this medium on the fly. It was overcooked. There, where the cheese is. She said it, she said it's terrible. I, she didn't like it. We need a chicken alfredo on the fly. We hate that. Okay. He wants this under the heat for it. We're weeded here, dude. We're weeded here. Right I've never seen frozen food so fucking complicated. <laughs> Unbelievable. An absolute meltdown. Not just in the kitchen, but the dining room as well. Just under 20 dishes have come back. And more frustratingly, it's frozen food. They can't even cook that right. Unbelievable. <laughs> Where'd your dad go? I don't know. <laughs> AJ's gonna have to get back up. Where is he? 
AJ is a general manager here now, and he needs to be overseeing the restaurant. <laughs> We won't we'll probably be coming back here. The food was raw. It was raw. It we'll, we're going to take care of this, and then, you know, please come back, because it's only going to get better. I don't know. Now just comp it. Buy him around on me. Okay. So much money lost. You guys, I'm getting, I'm giving away every damn meal that I have tonight. Everything I'm giving away, free. Honest to God, the last hour, everything we gave away is free. Oh, my God. Can it get any worse? I'm watching food get thrown away in the garbage can. That's my money going out the window. It's just a disappointment I let it go on this long. After a chaotic dinner service with numerous dishes coming back and comped food, Gordon confronts the owners with an important question that has yet to be answered. Who has the final say at Jack's? We haven't come to an agreement on that. We've only been in the business for one year. AJ, he's been in the business for 40 years, and we were relying on that to drive us to where we needed to be, and he has let us down. That's the truth. That's what it is. Right. So that's a tough spot for you. Yes. My dad has made many mistakes here, but my partners need to step up and understand he's my father, and that makes everything very difficult. You have to separate the father-son. Nothing to do with business. You have to let go. That's the first and foremost crucial thing in this fucking restaurant. Understandable. I think AJ is the main reasons why this business is extremely in a hole, and he's still taking his damn check every damn week. We ain't. AJ, you're the one that makes all the money, not us, you know? Yeah, how many hours do I work to eat, Scott? That doesn't matter. I put the money up, not for you to lose it. I put it up because AJ was supposed to be a 40-year restaurant. Let me say something. I booked. Eight parties, big parties by thousands of dollars, and that's the thankfulness I get from this man. He's acting like a child. You know, be a man, face up. Story after story after story after story, I'm so sick of it. I'm pissed. With so much food coming back last night, that's not normal in any restaurant. So I decided to get in early this morning, have a good look around before any member of the staff come in. That is salmon. That's just marinated in, it's like an Italian dressing. Oh, dear. What's this? Oh. Seafood restaurant on the water. Tuna and dyed pink to make it look authentic. Look at it. My god. Unbelievable. And here we have, that looks like the mushroom risotto. Great risotto. Unbelievable. Alarmed by the state of the kitchen, Gordon is anxious to take the staff on a tour. Good morning. There's something I want to show you guys, yeah? Come with me. Come in. The general hygiene in this fridge is a fucking joke. All right, come round. Walking round, want to get up to speed, looking at the ingredients, checking. What is that? Is that just taken from the steam table and dumped on the trolley and then whisked yes, in here? That's exactly what it is. That should be straight in the trash. Hey, I ate here yesterday. Yeah. I'm not happy. Whoever's responsible, 40 years in the business, well experienced, you have to seriously start opening your eyes. This place is not right here. We got no chance. I did not know that was going on. Item after item. Oh, I was pissed. What's this here? I believe it's beef tips. Beef bits in blood. That's nasty. I need some answers, AJ. It's pretty terrible, and uh, you know a lot of it lies on AJ. There's no excuse for it. And that's the that's the classic of the day. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a risotto. Take a good look. Unfortunately, it's not a drawing. That's real serious shit at its best. It's a joke. Look at the fucking colour of the chicken, AJ. Come on, have a look at it. Yeah, you've got to see it, AJ. I do see it. My father doesn't want to deal with the back of the house. The back of the house is falling apart. That's my frustration. I'm sorry, but it's not right. It's got to be somebody's responsibility. I'm not going to take responsibility. It's the owner's fault. Why would I blame myself for that? I'm not going to blame him for that. Unbelievable. Trusting my dad is obviously not working. Look at where all our money is gone. I'm really okay. mad right now. It can't go on like this. 
Get everyone together, we're gonna just get everything cleaned up, start scrubbing walls, cleaning all the stoves, get rid of all that food in there, whatever's dirty, garbage. While the staff and owners clean the kitchen, Chef Ramsey meets with local fishermen. How are you? Pleasure you meeting you. To see what Jack's is not taking advantage of just outside its doors, fresh fish. The ice is what, a foot deep? Uh, the ice is actually about nine inches. Look at the size of that tiny little rod. Yeah, I'll try it a couple and times. That, you that, might get um, something that, on there. That, that attracts them, my god. Yeah, if you feel something, then you pull it up. Perch, I mean, very tasty. Oh, very yeah. tasty. Do you yes. ever get into jacks to eat? Yes. Oh, yes, I do. What's the food like in there? I don't like their fish so much because they use a little bit too much sauces and kind of lose the actual flavor of the yeah. real fish, you know? Yeah. You got something on there? I think you no. got a fish. Pull it, pull it, pull it up. Oh, yeah, he is, he is on you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. You got one. Very good, very good. Very good. It's just nasty. It is nasty. And I've had people tell me, when I eat at your restaurant, I get sick, and I start laughing, thinking, oh, they're just full of shit. They're not. They do get sick. Gross. This is fucked up. Oh, my god. God, look at them, eh? Not a bad catch today. Fantastic. Now, I'm going to um, turn this into a, a really nice chowder, OK? And once you guys are finished, you're going to come over and have a bowl? Absolutely. Yeah? Hey, yeah. thank you very much. Get those Pleasure. bloody hands warm. See you later. After an informative afternoon with the locals, Chef Ramsay introduces the first of many changes designed to get Jax back on track. You and you and I are going to go make a chowder. Yeah. I'm going to serve it in a bread basket. Something simple, finished, fresh local caught fish. Let's go. Up. I'm pretty excited to prepare this food. I, I think that this, some of these changes are going to be what does it for us. Start off with a touch of olive oil, bacon, onions, celery, yeah, with a touch of Tabasco. Oh my gosh, I'm standing here next to Chef Ramsay. He's showing me food that he likes and he thinks will work. You better take advantage of it, that's all I can think of. Bang, a really nice chowder. Yeah. And then I'm gonna do a little poached salmon as well. So salmon in, three or four minutes in there. The whole thing has to ooze fresh. Out of the court bouillon. Your broth, over. Two easy dishes to make the pressure less on the line. I'm excited. Yeah, I hope you are. With the special set, Gordon decides to implement one other change to the dinner service. Scott, you said you want to be more involved. Tonight, run a section. Present the menu, welcome them, hand over, take the order, push the specials, and serve. Scott is going to get beat up really bad tonight. I'd like to laugh at him a little bit. He's going to be running your Ooh. section tonight. Give him your apron. Yeah, I think we've got enough string to go around. And, um, yeah, prove that you're not some scary monster that wants to beat the crap out of everybody. Does that large egg have a smile or not? Sure. Yeah. Give us one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck it now. OK. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Push the specials. Excite them. Don't scare them. Uh-oh. Okay. With customers starting to arrive, How are you? Good. Scott is embracing being a waiter. The kitchen seems ready with the new specials. Now I'll keep my eye in the window and communicate with you. And everyone seems ready to make tonight's service a success. I believe we have balsamic or I would vinegar. Prefer, what do you I would like? prefer balsamic if, if we, If I don't have, you know, bear with me. I, I, if we don't have balsamic, is raspberry OK? OK. How's he doing? He's doing good. He's doing good. Yeah. I'm watching. He's doing great, actually. Why is his head all tilted like that? Uh, I don't know exactly what happened. I have everything right off for you guys. Thank you. Roly poly. Look like at chimpanzee hanging over a cage looking for some bananas. Like, mm -hmm. yes. come on, eh? Give us some oomph there, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's a half hour into dinner service, and the new fresh seafood specials are a popular choice. I'm going to have a boat salmon. Fish chowder and seafood chowder. As the tickets pile in. Three special salmon and a chowder. The challenge now is getting the food out. God, I need those special salmon. Bulo. Special what? I'd call for stuff, and they'd be not listening to my organization and what I wanted to have come up to the hot plate. One piece of salmon. Did you season that with salt, like I said? Oh, shit. Need it? I need it yesterday. Get it done. Not one table came out of this kitchen completed yet. Fuck. Come on. It's so frustrating looking at the cooks behind the line because they don't actually give a damn. <laughs> so Aaron's got his work cut out, and you can't work with that dead wood. No chance. With Aaron's orders falling on deaf ears. I'm dying, dying for those Alfredos. Very little food has left the kitchen. Wait, where's our food? Oh, we have been waiting. Oh, 45 minutes to an hour for our food. I'm shaking. That's I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad. Okay, calm down. Calm down. It's going to be OK. 
Look, you guys, it didn't say cheese on the ticket. I can't have cheese on the burger. What are we going to do? We got to fix this. I don't know nothing. Well, they're waiting forever for this food. Be honest, I, I don't know. That time, they start showing the guy a little bit of respect. But they're not. So, hey, that one guy is just rude to him. I need a new bun for this kid burger, please. Anton, give me a new bun on now. Aaron, Aaron, look at me. He's got to do it. Yeah, you can't mop up for them. Can we run that? Come right back for that kid burger, please. The place is going down in flames. The tickets are backed up. Nothing's coming out. It turned into a total disaster. Oh, my God. An hour into dinner service. Virtually no food has left the kitchen. Oh, my God. And Aaron, who's only been working at the restaurant for a matter of weeks. Just toast me a croissant. I need it yesterday. I don't know what that is. Now faces the prospect of running the kitchen alone. Why do my yeah, items yeah. take so long? It's too much of a head fuck here. I want to talk to you about it seriously to get it fucking right. And each and every one of you have to step up to the mark. This restaurant hasn't got long to go unless we change. We're changing, with or without you. So do as the chef says and listen, OK? It was good that Chef Ramsey came in and he kicked them between the legs and made said, hey, get your shit together and get out. You got 84 coming my way, right? Grill fry? Yeah. OK. Get burger, no cheese. Finally. OK, special salmon. Pinko perch up top, 84 up top. Good. Food is finally coming out of the kitchen. Thank you. Oh Look God. at that. Oh. And Scott is finally getting comfortable as a waiter. Can I get not anything out of your way, guys? Although diners are enjoying the new seafood specials. Well, How's the fresh good. perch? Great. Yes. yes. Fantastic. Nice. The rest of the menu is a disaster. I need this a little bit more. It's really good. That's not made well. The, 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 the complaint's going to go straight back to the kitchen. Whoever's cooking the shrimp's overcooking it. They've got to know before service. If we tell them after, the next dish is going to be overcooked as well. It could be done straight away. OK. Yeah? The customer can wait. AJ? When they're in a crunch in the kitchen, AJ sometimes gets confused. AJ? AJ? Who's calling me? Of course, we laugh because he waddles away. But at the end of the day, it's really not funny. The kitchen needs to know first, my friend. <laughs> then they stop fucking overcooking it. That's your job. We got a complaint on the shrimp. Aaron, listen! Aaron. Listen! We got a complaint on the shrimp. There was poorly cooked food. Or it was undercooked food, or they weren't happy with the food. We lost it. We lost control. Is that ready? This is not ready. No. This is not ready. Come on, big boy! Sick of this shit. We're going down quicker than the Titanic. They get better service at a shelter than they do here. What the fuck, dude? Where's the honey? I, I don't know. Everything was screwed up. Give it to me again without all the grease in the bottom. Food got screwed up. Oh, I need the whole sandwich remade. Am I pissed off? With yet another meltdown in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay knows drastic changes are needed. Aaron, there's no one behind there that respects you enough as the head chef, and you need to stamp your authority on that kitchen. I mean, a joke. It is a joke. You're not an asswipe for your staff. They're there to support you. And I'm more fucked off with you, AJ, because you pass it to him. If this was my restaurant, your salary would be cut by 50%. Half your salary can benefit crucial areas that need supporting right now. That's a big thing. He is the motivation for me being here. So cutting my dad's salary, that's not a, a simple thing to do. And I'm not a heartless, cold-hearted person. Tomorrow, there's going to be major changes. We're relaunching this place. And I am going to have them crammed in here like fucking sardines. In order to be ready for the relaunch, Gordon's team works all night to make Jack's a more inviting seafood restaurant. Now, all night we've been working, yeah? Ready. We've made some really nice, exciting, subtle changes. It's beautiful. Ready. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. I'll check it out. <laughs> Very cool. It's awesome. This is sweet. Hey, something. That's the Which love. I can't believe you've never had in here. I know. Yeah? Fun for the kids, yes? A wonderful fish tank. <laughs> 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 What do you think of the boys in the ceiling? Those are great. Huh? That's so great. Cool. So simple, but cool. Oh, yes. Look at that. Look at the metal. We've got the oh, wow. wall lined with that corrugated iron. So it just modernizes it up, freshens it up. That looks so nice. And no more faded wood 
I hated those walls before. Nice little fresh fish tanks on the wall, yes? Oh, there's a little fish in there. We've got the little fish tanks along the wall as well, just so when you sat in those booths, you can have some fun. That is great. I was like, wow, especially because I thought the only answer to this place was a bulldozer. It's incredible how he took something so simple and made it so warm and inviting. It's, it's great. Thank you so much. And none of you are very welcome. Now, you're probably wondering why the rope is on the table, yes? This is the new menu, yes? Wow. Yeah, and on the back of the menu, How did yeah, I know? you can have some fun with the knots. That is yes. so cool. OK, here we'll you go. give the kitchen a touch of time when we get backed up. How fun. Yes? That's awesome. That's so cool. Chef Ramsey took it real simple. He took a nautical theme we had, and he ran with it, and some simple, nice, light touches, and it's great. I love what he did here. It's warm. It feels friendly. I love it. Thank you. Now that the decor has been freshened up, Gordon introduces the most critical change for this restaurant, a new menu. Fresh mussels, crab cakes, fresh oysters, the fish tacos, yeah? Nice. Like poached salmon, exactly like last night. Fresh, delicious. I'm glad the whole menu's gone. I thought that menu was crap when I got here. Now that it's gone, I'm pretty excited to prepare this food. My favorites, yeah, fish and chips, yeah, with homemade tartar sauce. You now can stand proudly and announce that Jack's has the best fish and chips in Michigan, OK? The menu is incredible. I'm excited to actually be a part of this new restaurant and hitching where it's needed. Big night. We're relaunching Jack's tonight, and we're starting afresh. People are going to come back to this place and finally enjoy coming back to Jack's again. OK? We're ready. Don't fuck it up, yes? Let's go. Let's go. Are you and I up. With relaunch night upon them, Jack's not only has a new menu to contend with, but a winter storm as well. Cold. This is crazy. It's a winter storm, but it hasn't stopped anybody from coming, and these cars are backed up nearly half a mile. Now, Jack is back, and if this doesn't work on relaunch night, I'll take that rope and hang all three of them over the side. Unbelievable. Fuck me, it's cold. All right, they open this up. Nice, I like that. This is going to keep kids entertained. I know. This too, you, know, you can tie, you can play. That's something that I like. Yeah, everybody loves the new remodeling we did, so they're having a lot of fun. I did a figure eight. I mean, I have a baby I'll have a herbal fish chips. Turn it up now. Yes, yeah. sir. Turn it up now, yeah? Yes, sir. There's no room for error. I'm the chef. I need to control my brigade. How much I want my chicken wing? Answer my question. I'm going to do my best to be the strongest chef that I can be here. All right, this has got to go. It's a steak dish. It's really good. Yeah, chicken is like the best about me. With customers clearly excited about the new Jacks, the restaurant fills to capacity, and the kitchen faces a monumental test. OK. Sell me a fish taco. You hear me? Fish taco, how long? Let's go. OK, I can't talk with nobody listening. Come on, guys, answer him, please. Fish taco. Fish taco. Fish taco. Fish taco. They're fuck, I'm dying on grill fry here, man. With Aaron still fighting to get his staff on board. All right, so sorry, there's a little bit of a hold up in there. Customers who ordered fried food are getting restless. So you know there's a new look, right? Yeah. Now we're waiting for the food. Well, bear with us. It takes a couple minutes for the food, please. How's uh, Chef Aaron doing? Under massive stress. <laughs> yeah, losing your mind. I got food dying. Jesus Christ. These guys are they're, they're, I'm getting buried by Grill Fry. I'm not getting any of their food. Everybody else's food is coming up. They're burying me. Grill Fry's getting beaten, AJ. Bill, I need him to coordinate with me. I need a fish and chip to sell right now. I can't stress enough that AJ, he has 40 years plus experience. Of course, I throw them in the kitchen to help us out. I need two coconut. roasted chickens. Here's coconut shrimp. Where are they? Coconut shrimps. I don't need coconut shrimps. When AJ came back here to help. <laughs> Here's your poor boy. Here you go. Poor boy. What table numbers are you feeding me, AJ? Table 41. Okay, 41? AJ, I sold 41 like 45 minutes ago. OK, never mind. Fuck, man. You have to communicate. You have to communicate. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, better than that. Better than that. Can't even see him behind the fucking line. Get a box from the staff. I can't see the short ass little fucker. Yeah, hold on. Unbelievable. 243 customers through the door so far. Alan's backed up in the kitchen. He's asked for help. AJ's gone in there and made it worse. If they're not careful, this place can fucking sink. Now I will 
see what's holding up those appetizers, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Coconut shrimp, lead app. How long? You guys are killing me down there. I mean, you're bringing the whole kitchen to an end. We're gonna have to slow the seating down. I can't, these guys cannot keep up. I'm hearing, where's my fries? Where's my fish? And then I don't hear her. It's up in one minute. I'm up in two minutes. I wasn't hearing nothing, so I was like, screw that. I need that fish taco. Send my motherfucker. I don't want to hear no damn arguing back here. I hear people screaming at each other. The only person that should be giving orders back here is Aaron. Is that understood, everybody? Excuse me, did I hear an answer? Did I hear a yes? I'd like to hear an answer. You guys are killing me down there. You're bringing the whole kitchen to an end. With anarchy in the kitchen. The only person that should be giving orders back here is Aaron. Is that understood, everybody? The former silent partner decided it was time to speak up. I'd like to hear an answer. Yes, sir, sir. All right. That's it. Fucking believable. Scott came back here and he showed that he gave a shit, you know, where before I'd never see Scott. I'd... And that actually helped me. OK, let's go. I'm looking for a fish taco. Hey, Larry. Fish taco, thank you. Beautiful. That's nice looking food. With Aaron now finally controlling his kitchen, orders are getting to the customers a lot quicker. All right, I almost have a smile on my face, guys. I'm almost smiling. You love it? I'm loving the food, yeah? Keep it yeah. going. Yeah. Keep it going. Yes, Thanks. sir. And more importantly, you've got clarity with your fucking brigade. I agree. Salud. 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 As dinner winds down... Thank you, guys. ...there's a problem with the night's final order of onion rings. That look undercooked, way undercooked. Yeah. Chef Aaron clearly follows Gordon's advice and demands quality food and respect from his staff. Martini, what are you doing? Smoking a cigarette? Did you sell those things, those onion rings earlier so you could go do that? No. Go look at them. They're shit, man. All night, onion rings have been beautiful. Look at them. T touch them. I was in the back going touch to the bathroom, man. Touch them. I'll drop them again right now. God damn that shit. It can't happen. Good. Last table of the night, and the food has to be just as good at the end of the night as it is in the beginning. Holding his staff accountable till the last minute, Aaron is finally acting like a head chef. Scott. Yes. Good job with what you did with the kitchen. Oh, thanks. Thank you. I feel my partners realize that, you know what, I can be a benefit here. I enjoy it, yeah. This helped me redeem myself to my partners. I think that Gordon Ramsay saved my friendship, my partnership, and this business. I, for the first time in this restaurant, saw each and every one of the owners working their ass off. None of you were fragmented. It was together. We fixed the biggest problem in Jack's, and that was the food. Now you know what it's like to maintain that. Tama, what's the most important thing you've got out of this week? I got a partner. <laughs> Seriously, the most important thing I got out of this week. What a lovely compliment. And when I first met you, big boy, honestly, I thought your days were numbered. The rumors, the crap, and you've turned it around. We know what we're doing if we put our minds together and we work together, and we can fill this place. Absolutely right. There's I, only one I, thing. Excuse me? Tamara, I, Bill, we've yeah. all admitted that, you know, we kind of put ourselves out there. AJ never admitted to nothing. You know, a lot of this was his fault. I never said I have no faults, and I did the best I can with all the hours that I put. Let me talk for a second. On that exact point, you are here way too much to be effective. I know you think you're effective. We don't think you're effective at 80 hours a week. AJ, it would be the most generous thing you could do as a father for his son to step back. Cutting back on the hours okay. and cutting back on the pay. Not a problem. Yeah. Not a problem. I hope Scott, Bill, and Tanner will see that the hours I put here were needed to run the business. They probably will see it. Maybe on my deathbed, they'll confess it. 
but not before then. That's hard, that, with that. That yeah? was very see, hard. But it, 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 it been agonizing over the conversation. It wasn't a personal thing at all. It was, it's needed for him, too. He can't be here that many hours. It's good for everybody. I can't yeah, wait, so, yes, so to get back, you yes? You, we're bringing you to the gym when you come back. OK. <laughs> Take care, Gordon. Oh, Thank you. Oh, dear. Good night, guys. Thank you for everything. Keep pumping, yes? Yes, sir. After Gordon left, in the days that followed, Bill, Scott, and Tamar gave Aaron the full authority to run the kitchen, the menu, and the staffing. If you have anybody in here that has to go tonight, you can remove them tonight. Aaron immediately fired two cooks and brought in two experienced sous chefs. They don't know the way it was before, and there will be a new standard set. And the partners realized, although it was difficult, they needed a new general manager to take over Jack's and so they fired AJ. He let it happen, and what is done, he did to that's himself. Right. You're right. I can't You're put right. it on me. You're right. Or no. you. It just sucks that it is, because that's your dad, but you got my support. Firing my dad is what I need for this place to survive, and he's going to back us up on what we need to do, just like any father would that loves their son. We're now moving in the right direction. We actually finally know what we're doing. I think it's awesome. We do three, right. four nights like this, It'll be a breeze back here. Thank you, Gordon. This was an experience of a lifetime. <laughs> the three of us as owners have never been as close as we are right now. Stamford, Connecticut is a city that has a vast variety of restaurants. Smack in the center of town is Sabatello's, an Italian eatery opened three years ago by its owner, Sammy Settembre. Known for his once successful pizzeria, Sammy has been struggling with this venture and is only months from closing. How we doing, guys? I was eight years old when I started. I worked at my brother Benny's restaurant, starting at making pizza. I always had a dream of a really nice restaurant. Hey, how are you? How are you that. doing, mate? I make everybody feel like a superstar when they come to Subatel's because I'm a superstar, and that's why my name is on there. It's all about me. How are you tonight? Good, thank you. You're welcome. I've been with Sammy for two and a half years, and the restaurant was really busy all the time, and it slowly declined. Now we need some customers. I know. I can't believe this. Usually we have a couple tables. We have an awesome, beautiful place. I think the decor is excellent. I don't know why people are not eating here. The food is good. It fucking kills me. Where is this guy? It was hard as a rock. Yeah. And it tastes yeah. disgusting. Yeah. If you think of something else to complain about, please get me. I'll be downstairs. The Neymar at Sabatielos, it's Sammy. He can be really nasty. Tell him to fucking go to work. If not, go to fuck home. Hear me? Calamari. Oh, me... To be honest with you, it was edible. That was about it. Thank God you didn't have a microphone with you. I don't want everybody to hear it. I think that if Sammy doesn't change, I don't think it would make it another year. Bye. Fuck out of here. They have eight meatballs in here. Why have we put so many meatballs? Was he a friend of yours? Man, you guys go bowling together? My restaurant's a nightmare because my staff doesn't listen to me all the time. Why you got to be a big shot with my money, bro? Be a big shot on your day off. Thanks, pal. And let us talk. I presently have over a million dollars in debt to this restaurant. I have a house on the line, and uh, I clean out my savings. Everything rides on this place. 25 or 125? 125. You sure? Sammy is very stressed out. When I look at him, knowing him for so many years, I can see a different person. He's just not as happy as he used to be. I should have been a fucking mailman, swear to God. I waited my whole life to step up to this plate, which is this really nice restaurant. You know, and if I lose this restaurant, I lose my life, because my restaurant is my life. As Gordon walks through Stamford, he catches up on Sabatello's most recent food reviews. Right, food review, Sabatello's. Uh, food mediocre, don't get wrong. The owner is the most obnoxious human being I've ever dealt with. Two-star food at four-star prices. Here we are. How are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, very well, indeed, thank you. Let me get you a table. Maybe go upstairs and uh, have a bite to eat. Yeah, I'll show you. Yes, yeah. upstairs, let me get a menu. I wasn't really nervous when Chef Ramsay came to the restaurant because I make the best Italian food in the world. I'm awesome, and it speaks for itself. Well, I can't wait to look around. My God, look at this. Isn't that inviting, nice and warm? It is nice and warm. So if the decor's nice and warm, the host is nice and warm, it must be all about the food, right? My food is good. My food is very good. So um, what would you recommend for lunch? My lasagna is homemade. All this is fresh, right? Yes, everything else is fresh. If it's not fresh, we don't sell it. The soup of the day is a? It's a, a wedding soup. It consists of vegetables and little mini meatballs. It's really nice. Actually, the best balls in town. It's awesome. People love it. 
Okay. When Chef Ramsay sat down, the first thing I thought, man, this guy's gonna be surprised. He's definitely gonna do some kind of cartwheels after he eats his food. So, he's, got, he's got a few items he wants. So we start off with the soup of the day. Uh, I'm gonna try the lasagna, that's homemade. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I'll finish up with a New York strip. How do you want that cooked? Mid-rare. Steak rare. Steak rare, excuse me, please. And how long have you been here, David? Three years. Three years, wow. Did you put his order okay. Did you put his order in so he can... I'm talking to him. I just want to make sure you take care of him. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. OK, so why does he interrupt you like that? Uh, I, sometimes I, in the middle, I'm giving, like, specials. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I got to uh, bring Dave in. The, I'm like, Damn. I'm talking to the, the yeah. people. They feel like, what's the matter with him? God, that's not nice. That's not nice at all. Sammy, he got no manners. And I think somebody got to teach him how he got to be when he's working. Give me first the lasagna, and then you're going to give me the uh, sirloin steak. You hear what he said? Make it nice, please. You got that wedding soup, right? Yes, yes, yes. Wow, well, that was quick. We got Thank soup. You. Lovely. Mm hmm. Mm. It's hideous. Like a mishmash of bits of shit put together and brought to the boil, and anemic grey meatballs in there. Mm. How was your soup? Yeah. That's the wedding soup? That's to get him in the mood to get married. Jesus, I'd rather get fucking divorced. Oh, my God. And that's made fresh every day, is it? Normally, our soups last two days. Two days. How could it be soup of the day when it's soup of yesterday? <sighs> and it's sort of, it's bland. Anyway, hopefully. Hopefully, the other dishes will be better. Thank you. Soup of the day. You said the soup, the soup is bland, it's not good? That soup was two days old, but that doesn't mean it's garbage. You know what I'm saying? Oh, what is he, a fucking health department critic? Oh, my god. Chef, you say the soup is not good. Well, I can't throw the soups out. That's the rules. What I want you to do is take two lasagnas out. Put them in the mic. Make sure the lasagna's nice and hot, Manny. I told him it's my homemade lasagna, my signature item, OK? Do the right thing. Lasagna, please. Manny, got dish one. Wow. Here's your lasagna. Homemade lasagna. Oh, Jesus. Look at that. Someone drop it. Jesus. Go. Here we've got, like, white bits of chicken or veal. But there seems to be something slightly synthetic and plastic inside that tastes absolutely hideous. And if that is homemade, I'll fucking dance in this restaurant tonight, start bollock naked. Because that is not homemade. Holy crap. With a steak. Thank you. What is that in there? That's the uh, ground beef. That's beef. It looks like canned dog food. Ask the chef where the uh, recipe's from, if it's homemade. There's only still a recipe de la lasagna. Which one? Which one? You the lasagna? want to know uh, if it's a homemade lasagna, where you get the recipe? My mother. And where you put ground beef, and uh, what was the... Because it's Italian lasagna. It's not a goddamn Chinese lasagna. Jesus. It's a tough steak, not seasoned, greasy. The food is consistent, consistently poor. What a shame. OK, I'm done. That's full of grease. Where do the steaks come from? Who buys them? Is that Sammy? Yep. The food is really, really bad in all aspects. We've been trying to tell this Sammy for a long time. But of course, because we are the employees, they don't listen. Having had a good taste of some bad dishes, Gordon heads to the kitchen to meet with Sammy and head chef Jose. Hey guys. How you doing? Let's go through it together, shall we? Yeah? Soup was hideous. How old is that soup? The soup has been, like, uh, three days with me, yeah. Three days with yeah. you, yeah. It tasted like it. It tasted disgusting, bland, and everything was cooked to fuck. The lasagna, let's quickly go on to that. That was unique, uniquely shit. That's homemade. Where is it? Tom, where is lasagna is over there. Yeah. Can you get me a portion? Why was it dry in the middle? Was there it sauce? Sean, we proportion it, we cut them. That's it's frozen. He it says, it yeah. says it's frozen. How old is that? That's the lasagna I make the last week of priority. We make three trays of lasagna at a time, and then we proportion them, and then we freeze them. We right. take some up as we need. OK, so it's not fresh. That's what I'm trying to say. It doesn't right. mean it's bad. So... 
Does it mean it's bad? I'm Italian, man. Here's a guy from Scotland. What the fuck's he know about lasagna? Does any chef throw food away if it's not bad? Answer that, Mr. Ramsey. Any chef? Yes. Yeah. Hello? You gonna throw it away? Should I answer it, or are you gonna fucking... No, uh, fucking uh, tell me. Go ahead, uh, fucking tell me. Are you getting upset now? No, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. A little bit, maybe. Every not. fucking chef I know makes lasagna fresh every day. When Chef Ramsey started critiquing, telling me all these bad things about my food, I felt like, what is this guy out of his mind? Then the biggest disappointment was the steak. Who buys the steak? That's the toughest steak I've ever eaten. I dropped down on the steaks because my business has dropped. It was a choice steak. It's not my Black Angus, you're right. I love the way I, you got excuses for everything. I couldn't do anything right. I mean, it was, it was amazing. It was very hard for me to swallow. I, cu I couldn't believe it. He said everything I did was wrong. You're very pumped up. I have you ever pumped thought? Because I believe we have good stuff. Yeah. Are you asking me or telling me? I'm telling you, I think maybe you walk up uh, on the wrong side of the bed. I get out the same side of the bed every day. I know what the fuck I'm talking about, and that food was bland. I, I can't believe you're telling me my food sucks. I can't believe it. I, I, I honestly think you're out of your fucking mind. It ain't, it ain't, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. I think you're a little too critical, overcritical. The minute you get down off your high horse and start understanding what the fuck's wrong with this place, then we may have something compatible to work with. Are you finished? Are you done? Am I done? I can't believe it. I've just started. Unbelievable. OK, I'm going to clear my head. I wanted some, uh, some fucking, I need some fresh air. Yeah, want me to show you where the door is? Oh, I'll go through that one there. Thanks. He critiqued the shit out of me and just like really broke my balls. And this guy's out of control. You know, I think someone needs to put him in line. Let me tell you something, man. For a guy to talk like that in front of me like that, I can't believe it. And he's still alive and we didn't shoot him? Fucking kill that guy? After a night filled with Sammy's excuses, Gordon decides to take a closer look at the kitchen. Right. This place is spotless. Absolutely spotless. Amazing. What the fuck? Raw chicken and cooked chicken. Where's Sammy? What the fuck's that? What is that? Yeah, it's called chicken novella. When were they cooked? Sunday we do those chickens. Can you get me Sammy, please? Yeah? Fuck it now. Same shit, different town. Sammy, having a quick look around the kitchen. Uh, the place is spotless, yeah? Very clean. Kitchen's immaculate. We try. Unfortunately, the shit I found in the fridge. What's this? Have a look at this. That's not the way we cook, is it? What have we got? Chicken franchise there. Yeah. Cooked. Sat there. What's, yeah? What, and what's the matter with it? What's the matter with it? What's that set next to? That's a uh, grilled chicken marinade. We do it for sandwiches and for salads. That's raw chicken, Sammy. We can't put them close by each other? Oh, come on. I know you want to mouth off and tell me how fucking wrong I am and I'm a fucking meatballer, but that's appalling. What's this here? It gets worse. What the fuck is that? And why is it cooked? Because it, we have to make it raw and bake it in the oven. It's going to take too long. The customers are not going to wait. They're going to leave. Well, customers aren't here, so how can they leave if they're not here to begin with? It's a nice dish. People like it. It's so shit. No, no, no. It comes in like his shit doesn't stink, and I was trying to be prepared, but it gets my blood rolling, and he's out of fucking control. Can you do me a favor? Can you get rid of the cooked meat and put them with cooked meat and the raw meat with raw meat before we fucking kill someone? He's right. He's right. Argue back. I'm dying. Holy crap. You know, you know that, bro. Jose, you're killing me. My kitchen staff, they're not doing their job. Everybody wants to do something their own way. And there's only one chief, and that's me. Oh, my god. Four for dinner? Yes, yeah, please. Main course, I got a stuffed filet of salt, stuffed with a crab meat. The uh, New York strip. Thank you. <laughs> dinner service tonight is going to be outstanding. And I want to show Chef Ramsey that we really do know how to make good stuff. Jose, I'm waiting for table three. Is that soul almost ready? Thank God. What's this soul stuff with, Jose? Uh, I do vegetables and imitation crab meat. Imitation crab meat? Yeah. Why imitation? Crab meat is too spicy. I like fresh stuff in the house. Well, Sammy, don't let me do it. And everybody got to follow what he says. How, uh, how can we have a special or a soul stuff with fake crab meat? No, it's not all fake. We, we, uh... Jose, you, you told me the crab meat's fake? Yeah, you should crab meat. I... Normally, I can't you know, wait what kind of bullshit you're going to come back with now. No, no bullshit at all. Normally, we do put the lump crab meat. We do. $28. You taking the fucking piss out of temper. 
We all make mistakes. You know, maybe I cut some corners, but don't call me a liar or a cheat or a dishonest guy. I wouldn't be this far being a liar, cheating, and dishonest. So I think you should fucking take it back. I mean, hey. You're making me look horrible in front of this guy. You're my number one guy, right? Son of a bitch. That was a fish. That's not good. Okay. I'm being pissed, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What, what's the matter with this? You say it's not fresh. You say it's not, it's not good. But well, it's fucking watery. I wonder what it tastes. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad, though. It's not bad. Not bad. Oh, no. Come on. He spits it out. It's not bad. You're fucking delusional. It's not. It's, it's not. It's mushy. It's watery. It's not the right it's fake, right. And it's fucking disgusting. You'll jump him down like a big fucking baboon and go, oh, it's good. Woo! I think we make great food. If I didn't make great food, I wouldn't be here. So for this asshole to fucking tell me that I'm not doing good, it really pissed me off, to be honest with you. Watching this restaurant perform is embarrassing. Fake fucking crab meat inside a stole is pretty obvious. It's become the appendix of restaurants in Stanford. You just want to get rid of it and get it out. Bollocks. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I think I'd like to have it just a little bit more done. A little that. more? A little yeah. Bit. Okay. Give me one. What's the matter? Listen, Jose. What's the matter? Cook a, li a little more, a little bit. What's wrong, Anna? Cold in the middle. All right, put it in the microwave. Just put it in the microwave. Put it in a minute and a half. Come in the rock and lamb? Go back and lamb right now. Cook perfect, or you need more? I kind of got the idea that maybe someone just took this plate, because the plate's pretty warm, and maybe just stuck it back into the microwave instead of putting the lamb chops back into a pan. You need more? Yes, thank you. Well, what's the matter with it now? Well, what's the matter with it now? He said he don't want it. Fucking busting my balls. Now, wait, let me see. Now it's too much cooking for it. It's too fucking rare. And now it's too much? How do they want the meat the first time? Oh, my God. How do they want it cooked? Sammy, I don't know. I'm going to go fucking ask the lady right now. With food now coming back, it's a perfect opportunity for Gordon to witness Sammy's customer service skills. How did you want your meat cooked? Would you want it rare? How do you I want it? Medium rare. So can we make you another one? Will you wait, or you don't want it at all? I'll wait, but the thing is, is I don't want you to stick it back in a microwave. If it's not no, we're gonna throw that out and make you a new one. Nobody's talking about microwave. You're the one who's talking about microwave. They came out of a microwave. Otherwise, they wouldn't be like exuding heat. Do you work for a microwave company? You know so much about a microwave. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Let's all take a hike. That is wow. rude. Like <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that lady. Taste it, Sammy. Please. Bullshit. You told me you went to a microwave? You want to make it? Let her wait. Let her wait now. I don't know if this lady wanted a free meal or whatever. I thought it was a total nightmare. I kept my composure. I wanted to kill her, and I did. Jose, it's not your fault. The lamb is tough. If you're even shit tools to work with, of course you're going to create shit food. Here's the lamb market. Bring it to her. Come on, I'm going to follow you. I want to see you cut into it. How is it? Is it still too rare? You know what? I'm done. No more chances. Unbelievable. Oh, my God. I just wanted to pick her up and throw her out. There's a, a right way and a wrong way of handling something like that, and she was totally wrong. She sent it back three fucking times asking, how does she want to cook? Go out there and apologize to them. I don't want to apologize. I don't give a fuck. Let it go. Sammy. Sick of it. Go out and apologize to them. I'm actually really embarrassed that he that he made a scene with one of the customers tonight. Regardless of what happened, the customer is always right in a customer service business. So fucking mad. It sucks. I'm like so upset inside. I'm fucking fumigating. Tonight I look like a jerk off for this asshole. The real job tonight. You know something? Don't even make it none of us. Shut everything fucking down and forget it. I don't really give a fuck. Shut it down. Don't fucking do nothing. So fucking mad. Tonight I look like a jerk off for this asshole. After a frustrating evening in the kitchen and in the front of house, Sammy has hit his breaking point. You know something? Don't even fucking make it none of us. Shut everything fucking down and forget it. I don't really give a fuck. Shut it down. Don't fucking do nothing. It was uh, one of the worst nights of my life. And uh, I wanted to strangle the customers tonight. I wanted to strangle my guys, especially in the kitchen, everybody. It was just a total nightmare. It was a mess. Ladies, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm sorry. 
That's right, it's not your fault. Thank you for being so understanding. Oh, I really appreciate it. I'm the person that apologizes for Sammy because he won't do it. And I don't want his reputation to be any worse than I guess people already see it. I can't believe it. I, I, I can't believe it. All the time he does this, the same story, all the time the same problem. So, I mean, he don't care. I fucking lost it. I feel so mad, I feel so hurt. I can't get my staff to listen. I feel like running away, to tell you the truth. After an unusual evening in which Sammy shut down his own restaurant, Gordon has now confirmed the source of the problems at Sabatello's. 58 customers we serve. Not 108, 5 eights. I've never seen 58 covers done in such a difficult way. You know that. Is that normal for you to go into the kitchen like that and talk to them like that? If I didn't go in there at all, yeah. forget about it. We yeah. wouldn't have 20 entrees yeah. come back. You've got no right as an owner to be so selfish and start picking on fucking staff or blaming customers. The problem is with you. Come on, are you serious? You agitate customers, you agitate staff. Why are you so negative? What do you mean negative? I try to keep these guys happy. I was in there trying That's to- That's happy? Right. Are you kidding me? Guys are making mistakes like- No, you gotta right. go back to school. He said that all this is about me. The, the way the place is going wrong. Nobody talks to me like that. People come here because of me. People love my food. Sammy, I'm here to help. I see a guy that's passionate about running a restaurant, but fucking clueless. You're the hardest individual to work with, my friend. And each and every one of your staff are shit scared to tell you that. You handicap the kitchen, a menu far too big with two cooks in there, and you've got such fucking imitation material on here, they can't cook it. What do you mean imitation material? That steak's not fucking Black Angus, 1855. We used to carry Black Angus. It's what you're charging for now, Sammy. It's not about you used to. $28 for a stuffed, rolled fucking fillet of sole with fake crab. Hey, you're a bullshitter. Yeah, I made some mistakes. I cut a couple corners. Why? I'm in a fucking tough spot right now. What the fuck he would do it too, no? Look at the level of false advertising on your menu and stop taking the piss out of you and Stanford. Did you forget anything? That's it? So all this is about me? Of course it is. I've got to rethink. I've got some fucking ideas and some plans. I've got to get going quickly. But I want you to do one thing. And what's that? Take your head out your arsehole and get fucking real with me. OK. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Stubborn fucker. I don't need this jerk off to fucking tell me about how I run my business. Don't tell me that all this is because of me. He's full of fucking shit. I didn't like that. And next time that I see him in person, I'm gonna fucking tell him. It's a new day, and Gordon has come up with a plan to get what? Sammy back on track. Hey, Carl, how are you? Good. Yeah, good. Sit down. You look um, pissed like you're ready for a fight. Do you think I'm here to fight? No, I, don't, I think you have good intentions. You're a tough guy to get through to. I know, I know. You've got this defense mechanism that no one seems to break down. I came in early this morning to sort of talk to you, to sort of try to get through. So I want you to take me back to the beginning. I need to know more about Sammy 10 years ago. You ready? Yes. Holy mackerel. How did you get this picture? Because I had these under, under lock and key. That's the bit I like at the bottom. Only my own business, succeeding by 35. Uh, I always loved the restaurant business, working for my brother since I was small, nine years old, making dough to making sandwiches and eventually making pizza. Which brings me into this. Oh, my God. My brother Benny passed away seven years ago. Actually, get me all choked up here. This man's a hero in your life, right? And he's the one that really got me motivated. I love him. He was like more of a father. I mean, I would do anything for him. He was awesome. Do you miss him? Totally, because it's like, uh, like now I, could, I would love to call him and, and ask for some advice. It's like, I don't know where to turn. All has to come from me. I'm like, I'm bombarded everywhere. Yeah. I can't believe you got that picture. There you go. This was a huge success, this thing. That's how I made my money. That's how I, I bought my house in Greenwich. That's how I, I got this. Now I feel like everything is uh, draining me. I'm trying to keep this afloat, and it's not a little place anymore. Over there, it was smaller over there. I had less people. Maybe I had more control over it. Now it's like, I don't know. Look at that. You remember that day like it was yesterday, right? <sighs> yes. Look, Reshenter gives students a taste of a career in the kitchen. They love nice. it. That's you in you know, mentoring, tutoring, um, prolific position. 
Now look at the way you were dealing with your staff and your customers last night, and you know, it's fucking night and day. And that's where I need to connect, in there. That Sammy. Not today, Sammy. I need your support, but more importantly, I need to get you back in love with the restaurant. OK. I, uh, listen, you got my word. Not 110 percent. I'm going to give you 220 percent. I want that same feeling back. I want to be that same Sam. It's sad that I wait this long. Thank you. Please. Thank I'll you for your help. Thank you. Yeah. Not so. Chef Ramsey and what he did really opened up my eyes. I feel like, um, Something's brewing. Something's going. Something's moving. It's the best thing I've felt in a long time, to be honest with you. Now that Sammy is focused once again, Gordon has begun to make some menu changes for tonight's dinner service. Straightforward lasagna. First off, a small amount of bolognese sauce. Two nice layers. A little bit of mozzarella in the middle. Heavy ricotta on top. Nothing gets put in the freezer. In the oven now. OK, so we'll do a grilled filet mignon. Table side. A little bit of thyme on there, and we're going to roast it now in the oven. She goes. Some potatoes and Brussels sprouts. Now that Gordon has shown them how to prepare tonight's specials, he is looking for the front of the house to create some excitement in the dining room. Here we go. Two nice slices, not thin slices. Up, lift, bang, and away. And present. Great. This is just one small measure of you personally reaching out and doing something different here. Subatels has never done table side, so we're excited about it. Actually, I'm very excited. I got my confidence back. I got my balls back. I got my lasagna back on track. It's going to be great tonight. With news that Gordon Ramsay is in town, Sabatello's is busier than it has been in years. But only time will tell if we'll see the volatile Sammy or the personable, friendly Sammy. I'm going to totally have an awesome night tonight. When people walk out tonight, they're going to be thinking, wow, is that Sammy? What a difference. We got two specials for tonight. We got a nice baked lasagna. Also, I got a nice black angus filet mignon. You don't even need a steak knife, by the way. I tried the filet mignon, OK? Every time. I'm very excited for tonight. I feel comfortable to go to the tables and sell the food. We're going to get, yeah, the filet. Thank you. How we doing, Jose? You doing at 13, table 13? And what about 15? You got the one for 15, which is three? This man has to talk. He doesn't open I up know, the I know, I know. In one hour's time, we're going to be fucked. Look, uh, Jose, come on, man. Help me out. Don't rush me to get to the table out. When you rush, nothing is good. Thank you, bro. All right, up the stairs, please. Be careful. Is this yeah. medium? Actually, you know what? That's really rare. <laughs> Want me to cook a little more? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. I'm sorry. No problem. Just give me a few minutes, all right? Oh, no. The medium, no medium grab. Oh, come on. For fuck's sake. This is supposed to be medium, bro. Come on. Don't let me down, Jose. Come on, quick. He's, like, completely behind already. Hi. My husband's steak is raw inside. Do you want me to cook some more? Totally. Yeah. Take a minute. OK. You're welcome. You want a little cook a little more? Medium. I asked for medium. Put this Please. back on the grill, medium. Medium. The medium. The no, no. What happens? Who wants no. a medium that's safe? What's it say on the ticket? It said medium. Just read the ticket, pal. It's very simple. Although dinner service started out with a very cool, calm Sammy, problems in the kitchen have brought out the old Sammy. God damn it! He's doing the middle line. He's serving it up. I'm tired of fucking excuses. I'm taking all the blame here. I look like a fucking jerk off. This whole fucking town, I'm tired of it. Jose is not communicating, he's trying to do everything himself, in turn slowing the restaurant down and making me look bad and making me go under. I am not gonna let that happen. Jose, just make the food, damn it. Unfucking believable. Jose, just make the food, damn it. Although Sammy may have been the main cause of the problems last night. You don't lose, I lose. I lose everything here. Tonight, head chef Jose and the kitchen staff have dug a hole for the restaurant that is virtually impossible to get out of. You guys are not communicating. I told you, he's so thankful. You see what ticket. Ask him, what are you working on? Yes, sir. Sit down. Call me. Let me know that you hear me. Yes, Sammy, I got it. I don't know you're listening. It was just a total nightmare. It was a mess. It was a real mess. Nobody had their act together. Nobody knew what they were doing. We kept getting in the weeds. We kept getting behind. Yes, supposedly. 
Out in the dining room, the customers continue to feel the effects of the problems in the kitchen. You want me to cook a little more? A little bit more will be good. Sure. For you, it's fine. Right? I know you, you said you had a hard time doing... I'm, I'm meek. Yeah, don't worry. Thanks. No problem. What's wrong? Oh. Say medium. Oh, fuck me. Come on. Fuck it now. Hey, now, listen, you've got to listen to me now. It's not good enough, Jose. Medium requested. No more excuses. Come on. You got to communicate better. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my fucking shirt. Everything I ever fucking worked for is being shot down the tube and being laughing stock of fucking Stanford. Who the fuck wants that? We've been here for hours. I'm hungry. Are you hungry? Yeah, we're hungry. Jose, let him do the vegetables. Damn it. Man, you don't let Jose do all the work because he's too goddamn slow. We're losing everything here. He speaks Spanish, talk to me Spanish, I don't care. Yo, can you can we do 61? I can't. It's not cooked as a meal. Do 63. Don't even let me finish the tickets you have in the fucking front of you. Don't even grab these tickets. Do 63. Get it going. It's going already? No, it's coming we now. Need it now. We need it now. You it's got it going? Up. It's coming now. Yeah, we need it now. Jose, we can't keep these people fucking waiting. You're better than that, Jose. God. Cold dinner. Very cold. It was a disaster today. This is one of the worst nights I've ever had. Yeah, sit down. Another night, another rough service, and Sabatello's is clearly running out of time. The big issue here is the kitchen. You have had a relationship with that guy for 13 or 14 years. It's like a married couple. Yeah, you've switched off from each other. You bark, he ignores. I'm not happy with him, you know something? I have been too lazy letting him do everything and not checking up on him. I'm really starting to open up my eyes. I can't count on this fucking guy anymore. Well, the fucking truth, I can't count on him. And tonight, I thought it was gonna be so easy with steaks. You send a meeting out in the fucking rear, every rib came back rare. Any asshole can cook steaks. I'm glad you say it. I gotta do something different. You're absolutely right. And the more comfortable I get with this jerk off, the more, the more they take advantage of me. But I'll be honest with you, he doesn't step up to the plate tomorrow, let him go, I'll get somebody to place it. It breaks my heart. What all the fucking truth, I'm tired of it. That's that what pisses me off. That is exactly what I wanted to hear in the middle of service. And I'm not going to count on Jose doing the job anymore and just sit back and let this guy do what he want. It ain't happening. It's either I make changes now or I fail. I don't want to fail. After witnessing two failed dinner services, Gordon spent the night devising a plan to alleviate the problems in the kitchen. Let's discuss. Menu. OK, there we are. Well, now, the secret behind this is we're going to streamline the menu. We've increased the meat. We've brought down the appetizers, the greens, the sides, desserts. Look at the size of the menu, Jose. That is done to the maximum ability of what we've got to cook out of from downstairs. This new menu is going to be more better for us to knock all the food out. It's going to be easy for me. Tomorrow, we're going to relaunch this restaurant as a unique Italian steakhouse. Sammy, what do you think? I'm blown away by it. What an awesome menu. It's so much nicer. It's smaller. It's more attractive. Got some really nice uh, entrees there. Really yeah. awesome. Change it to an Italian steakhouse totally made a lot of sense because I have too much competition. I think now we have something to show people. We're oozing quality, freshness, great steaks, great wine. Happy? I'm ex yeah. Yeah. excited. Laura? Excited. Excited. Yeah. OK, good. I was very nervous, had a lot of doubts. But after seeing the menu, I'm not so nervous anymore. I feel more confident and so prepared now to do something different. Let's go. With the relaunch dinner just hours away, Gordon meets Sammy and the staff to introduce the new dishes on the menu. OK, entrees. This is our selling point, the bistecca. We've seen that. It flew out the kitchen. OK, 14-ounce uh, bone in New York steak. Look at it. Six-ounce filet mignon grilled lobster tail. That, for me, is the heartbeat of this restaurant. If we can establish that kind of excitement with our Italian steakhouse, everything else will follow suit. That's our jewel. Dig in, have a taste, get familiar with it, and push it. Unbelievable, right? Try it. Chef Ramsay's menu, compared to my menu, is totally different. Mine was old school. Look at the way it's perfectly cooked. Chef Ramsay's menu is so, so innovative, so different, so new. I like it, and, and I should have changed it a long time ago. Can I tell you right now, I, I want you and everybody to make that food like that. If not, it's not acceptable. See where it's over there? Yeah. I want it to be the same all the time. 
Yeah. Right? And, and, and the appetites, I want to be the same. I told Manny, too. And yeah. I'm telling you. Because you know something, man? I can't be nervous anymore. Where if I'm going to keep this place, I'm not going to keep it. If I'm going to lose it. You hear me? I said that. This week, with this guy, unbelievable, man. Really opened up my eyes. Yeah. Not to just do the same fucking thing over and over. And look what we got. Nobody gave me fresh ideas. Nobody helping me out. Listen what this guy did. Thank God this guy came. God bless this guy. You know that? It's my fault, you know that? Sitting on my ass, not trying to yeah. make a change. Yeah. Okay. Tonight, I'm counting on Jose. The kitchen has to function better. It has to happen in the kitchen. I want it to work. With a brand new menu and a community willing to give Sabatello's another shot. Hi. Hi. It's got some awesome specials tonight. Homemade lasagna. It's now up to Sammy to show what he's made of. Okay, and also the filet mignon is really good. I am so excited about tonight. Actually, I'm nervous and excited, but it's a good nervous. It's like having little butterflies before you go on stage. What I recommend from the grill is the, the bistecca. It's delicious. With the restaurant now focused on being an Italian steakhouse, Jose's ability to cook meat is put to the test. Come on, Jose. We're grilling steaks and we're cooking to order, yes? Show me it can be done, yeah? Big night. Got to talk. I got it, I got it. Coming up. We're going to split the sticker. How do you like it? Medium, medium. Well, it's good. OK. Big, big, big night tonight. It's relaunch night and a couple of questions unanswered. Can Sammy run the restaurant the way it should be run? And can Jose deliver on a menu that can possibly save this restaurant? Right now, I don't know. Welcome to Subatellos. This is so good, it's like m and is going to melt right in your mouth. Wow, I think Enjoy, sir. Guys, enjoy. I told the guys, this is our last hurrah. If we don't do it tonight, I'm going to lose everything that I work hard for, my family, responsibility to the community, everything. All right, I like the six ounce filet. Portobello uh, flat. Polenta? Yes. Sure. How's that? Good. As orders pile in, you got to start sending some tables out, or else we're going to be in the weeds. The kitchen is about to be put to the test, and so is Sammy's patience. It's a lot of pasta. Make me another one. We need to get this kitchen up and running and get the food to the table a lot quicker. You make the ensalada Mediterranean? Not ready yet. Did you make that spaghetti butter back? No, it's not ready. Can you fire it right away? You hear me, pal? I hear you, sir. I feel like I'm babysitting. I hate fucking babysitting. I got to babysit the staff. I got to babysit the kitchen. It's more like red. Red. Oh, oh come on. on. You've got to listen to me now. It's stone cold. I don't know why. I'm getting really nervous. I want to keep the customer happy, please. Used to be good cooking. Used to be fast as hell. I don't know what happened. Getting old? And Jose's not doing the work. We kept getting in the weeds. We kept getting behind. Come with me. Here's my worry. 58 covers in. Second turn of service. Table's coming through. Yes? Yes. Service too slow. But this is not normal. This is fucking worse than Spaghetti House. Okay. Is that what you're doing? No. Come on. Fucking hell. I think Jose's kind of lost his, his sense of drive, you know, I guess me being too hard on him. I finally realized that we need to help him out. Show me it can be done, yeah? With everything at stake, Sammy decides to jump behind the line to help Jose. But will he make it better or worse? Uh, let's do it. Let's do it. Put it here, put it here, put it here. That's good. Bye-bye. I'll do it. I'm going to do everything myself. Just give me the equipment team. When I'm over there, I need you. Not now. Fuck, I should have this a long time ago. $1,200 in my pocket. It's all good. Here, let's read the thing. Oh, my God. Jose, kill me. Son of a fucking bitch. Watch out, watch out, Ty. Oh, fuck me. It's relaunch night, and knowing it's do or die for Sabatello's, Sammy has jumped behind the line to help. Oh, my God. Son of a fucking bitch. Thanks, tell me, Ty. Cock sucker. Thank God that my kitchen guys are uh, not involved in any bombs or rockets or decisions because we all be in danger. Put the meat back up or you can't take it all. You're not fucking Superman. Come on. Waste of time. Put it, put it, put it. Jose, get it done. All right, you're killing me, damn it. I just want to get through tonight. I fucking had it. I got it. Do, do, do another ticket. Let me do it. Dude, I'm going to do everything myself. How much longer would we have to wait for? I'll double check on the time, but I, I would give it about 25 or 30 minutes. Table at the bar. What's that? Day at the filet mignon. How could you get about that table? Yeah. The machine printed it out down here exactly two minutes after you were in the kitchen. Which which one you got? I gave you two medium rare, bro. You're the right one, bro. They're confused now. Talk to him in Spanish. Does he understand what he's saying? Does he understand what he's saying? I don't think he understands. You understand, Talk to him in Chinese. Well, this is all gonna die here. I'm not on that fucking side tonight. 
So unorganized, we don't know shit. If they need you back there, you should know what you're doing. It's coming, I promise. They're just, they just wanted to make sure it was nice and hot. It was really frustrating for the six people at the bar, and they were sitting at the bar waiting for their food, and that shouldn't happen. How, how far behind is the... It's coming out right now. Here it comes, here it comes right now. After a long wait by many of the customers, Gordon hopes the new dishes will be worth the wait. Enjoy, guys. It's really good, though. It's really good. Very good. But this is absolutely delicious. I can't believe the change. Sabatello's relaunch ended successfully. Primarily because when the kitchen struggled early on, Sammy jumped behind the line and helped, instead of spinning out of control. Still a shot with these guys. Give me seven on the fly. Beautiful. Hey. Hey. To a better day at Sabatello's. Hey. All right? Hey, good luck in the future. Tonight, making these changes to an Italian steakhouse. It was a step in the right direction. I mean, it was a new menu. It was our first time doing it. There, there was a few mistakes. But we're moving forward. I think I think it's gonna it's gonna only get better and help the restaurant. I'm leaving here with the Sammy that I've always wanted. Hey, look at me, seriously, big boy. A man that's back in control. He knows exactly what to do. Move forward and make those changes. I'm gonna do my very best. Yeah. Fuck you now. Thank you. Fuck you. <laughs> Take care. When I first met Chef Ramsay, I thought he was an arrogant jerk. Yes, it is. And then I kind of saw the way he comes about it. He really does care. And he made me realize I have a purpose. And he got something out of me that I haven't had come out in a long time. And that's hunger, creativity. It's the will of doing good again. Take care. My god, finally. I honestly thought I'd have to wait for a lunar eclipse before that guy seriously got the message. And who knows, sometimes miracles can happen. West Nyack, New York, 30 miles outside of New York City, an eclectic town that lies west of the Hudson River. West Nyack is home to Vic and Yolanda Flores, who previously owned another Mexican restaurant that failed. They wanted to try again, but didn't have the money, so they asked Yolanda's daughter, Patty, to use her credit and savings. I'm 100% owner on paper, but my stepfather, Vic, controls everything. All right. He didn't listen to me, he didn't listen to my daughter, he does whatever he wants to do. We have to discuss the problems. We'll discuss the problem, we go on and on. I thought this was a big opportunity, but from day one, it turned out to be a disaster. It's so tough, I can't chew it. <laughs> Initially, we were busy, and then after a while, it just, the numbers started dwindling. Is it normally this quiet? So I said, maybe we should make some changes. And he said, everything's fine. I've been thinking of changing the menu, but my husband say people like it. But how many people? We spend so much time just looking out the window, staring at each other. So how many tables are there? Nothing now. Figuring what can we do to bring people in? It's like the blind leading the blind. He always thinks that he's right. He decorates the way he wants to. It looks like. Tijuana threw up in here. He has a stuffed chili pepper that he moves around named Manuel. Make fun of it. The most that bothers me is that my daughter um, has ruined her credit. I have to go cover a bounce check or something. She has a problem in her marriage. I, I just feel very guilty that I put Patty in uh, this position. I never thought it was gonna be this bad. Well, I realized it was bad. We can't pay our, our bills. I resent my mother. Um, I think she put her husband before me, and it's hurtful. I'm just hoping to God that Chef Ramsey will help us and um, that Big will listen to him. Otherwise, our personal lives are going to be changed drastically. Right, there's the sign, but grill 303. What the fuck is that? Maybe I'm too late. Grill, fiesta sunrise. 
Oh dear, oh dear. How are you? Very well indeed, thank you. Grill 303 or Not a Fiesta? Not Fiesta Sunrise. OK, good. Fiesta Sunrise. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. I thought it was too late. I thought it was the new restaurant already. Oh, well, we don't change the, the little logo on the front. You haven't changed the logo on the front? No. And it's been like that for how long? For a year and a half. A year and a half? Yeah. OK. Right. Jesus, what's that? This is a new uh, favourite of margarita we have in here. So it's complimentary? Complimentary, exactly. Wow. Yeah. So you don't have to pay for drinks, you just come up here and... Well, you yourself. know, when the people, they come in, we try to be, you know, mm -hmm. give us something to appetise her to start. Mm. Too, too strong. Mm. Leo? Mm. Tequila? Mm. Right, that's put some warm on my balls. OK. Yes. Should we sit down? Please. Excellent. Come. So that's free. Right. Wow. Look at the size of this place. So how many seats have you got there? 120. 120? 120, yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. How many's booked for lunch? Two tables. OK, what would you recommend? The combination number one. Number one combination? One, one taco, the... you have one taco, one burrito and one enchilada. OK. Yeah, I'll try one of the fajitas as well. OK. I'm hoping that Chef Ramsey kicks me his back. What is that on there? Looks like I've got a sticker on my menu. Just trying to peel it off and it's bugging me. Ah. The art of Mexican cooking. What is that under there? The name of the... What name is that? It was uh, my another restaurant that, that I used to have. Fiesta Garibaldi. Fiesta Garibaldi? Yes. So you brought the old menus from the old restaurant into the new restaurant and stuck some sellotape on there? Exactly. Yes. And is that restaurant still open? No, we closed. And you called it Fiesta Sunrise as opposed to Fiesta Garibaldi? Correct, yes. Uh, I'm really confused for you. Same chef? Same chef. Same ingredients? Same ingredients. You brought the ingredients from the old restaurant into this restaurant? Oh, well, you know, different. We buy in fresh, you, you, but you bought the same. Fresh same ingredients? Menu. Yes, correct. Ooh, thanks. for that. This is your combination, OK? Lovely. It's very hot plate, be careful. This is the burrito here. Yeah. It's hard to see that. It looks like someone's been sick on my plate. <laughs> Chicken's so dry. It tastes like it's been cooked weeks ago. The beef. Mm. Excuse me. It's impossible to swallow. I can see he didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Wow. How old is the rice? It looks like it's left over from Christmas. They cooked this uh, yesterday. Yesterday? How do you know that? I check in the kitchen. Check again for me, would you please? Thank you. It looks older than fucking me. ¿Qué tiene? No le gustó. ¿Cuándo hicieron el arroz y por qué hoy no hicieron nuevos y todas las? It's dreadful. Absolutely fucking dreadful. How's it going? He hated the rice. Why? It's old. How old is it? They're disgusting. Yeah. Basically, they taste of shit. I was feel very embarrassed. First of all, there was the menu, and the more important thing that was the food. That is gross. Oh, now it's my fault. No, no, I'm just now asking you. Oh, no. So you bought the glasses from Gary Baldy as well. We Wait. invested a lot of money into this. We should have known this shit a year and a half ago. Yeah. Maybe that's the key when you're coming to Fiesta Sunrise. Stop off at the tequila bar, get drunk, and then enjoy the food. You know why you listen to me? Hi, Hello. how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you both? Good. I'm nice. Patty. And your husband and wife? I'm stepdaughter. Oh, okay, so I thought you said you were partners. Excuse me. We're, right. we're all partners. Okay, we're great. Nice Likewise, and first name is? Yolanda. Yolanda. Right. How was the pia colada? That was delicious. Sad, that is the only thing that I enjoyed. Um, let's go over to the bar and have a little right, chat, right, yes? Right. I'm hoping Chef Ramsay will convince Vic that change is good. You know, I think they're stuck in their ways. We should have stepped in a long time ago. Now it just seems like this is the end of our rope. Hopefully we can make some type of changes to save this business. All three of you pay yeah. for the business? No, this two. This two. <laughs> you two pay for the business yes. and this man runs it? He ruins it. Ruins it? <laughs> runs it. Runs it. Runs it or ruins it? Yeah, so far it's fucking ruined, yeah? Did you have anything to do with the old business? I didn't. No? No. I did. You did. So that restaurant failed and then you came to run this one for your wife and your stepdaughter. Yeah. 
But before you left, you grabbed the chicken, the menus and the glasses? No, just the menu. OK. I'm trying to get my head round this. If you all own it and he's running it, why aren't you involved? My opinion is, I think he just wanted us to finance him a restaurant. I put a lot out here. I put my credit, my home. I borrowed money from my father-in-law. It's not important to him. It's not important to him to make things right with me. What does it take to break even? How much do we need to take a week to break even? 90,000. A month. A, a month, yeah. A month, so 22 grand a week. We do a third of that. So you're losing half a million dollars a year. What's the debt? About 850. 850,000. And you've only been open for 18 months. Right. What in the fuck have you been doing? No, I'm the big guy in here. Everything is going wrong. They're picking at me. Oh, I will see you later. Thank you, ladies. See you later, chef. Vic. That's embarrassing. Right now, they're all blaming each other, and it's bloody obvious that Vic has run the place into the ground, but how can the women complain about that if they haven't put the time and effort in this place? So, personally, they're all to fucking blame. This restaurant's run with dysfunctional management, and I'm dying to find out how the kitchen actually functions, because how is it possible for someone to cook food so bland as that? And tonight, I'm going to find out, but I'm not eating again, that's for sure. You like some appetizer? OK. Wow, look at the size of this kitchen. It's huge. Ambrosia. Ambrosia. Gordon. OK. In there, what's, the, what's that in there? The turbo fridge. Holy crap. Ugh. Oh, shit. When was the last time this was cleaned out? Yesterday. Um, what's this? The other rice. The famous rice? Yeah. That's the fresh rice, is it? No. Uh, I got served the old ship, yeah? What's this one? Where's that one from? Yesterday. Which one's the fresh one? I was disappointed a bit in the cooks. It, it seems like I see this place for the first time. Hi, how are you? Can I get the chicken enchiladas, please? OK. When were these done? Yesterday. Yesterday? Fuck off, Vic. Please. They weren't done yesterday. OK. You can ask him his own language. And ask him very, very quickly. When were these cooked? Cuando cocinaron eso? Bien. Oh, so this was for last week? Of course they're from last week. They don't look like they're from fucking lunchtime, do they? Cardboard. The tasteless. I have no taste whatsoever. Okay. Oh my God! Look at the fat. Look. Why is there so much disgusting fat on there? What's wrong with those chips? I take only one. You say that it's a little crispy. So you take them from the table back into the drawer. Did you see that? They come back from the table and you put them back into the drawer. Oh, he said he didn't touch it. He touched one. He said he touched one. But you're not supposed to. Fuck me. We're like a bunch of children that are doing the wrong thing. What are these? Vic! Yes, Chef. These were fresh chives. Sell by date. Five months old. Where do you find that? I found them in the fucking fridge. Smell them. Vic, look, let me just show you something. What is that? I'm getting nervous now. Talk to me. What is this? That's the fish we're using. That's the fish you're using? Oh, fuck me. Smell that in there. Is this today's fish? No, um, no. The fish, that was really scary because it was smelling bad already. I just couldn't believe it. Where's Patty? Yeah? Have a look at this. Oh, my God. What, look how crispy and curled up it is. Just touch that. Oh, it, it, it's, like, solidified. What's this here? This is tank chip. Why is it all wrapped up in tinfoil? Look at the colour of it. It's oxidised. And what's that in there? Just pieces of pork. 
That's pork. What have you done to it? Why is it all stuck in there with blood at the bottom of the tray? Why is that? How old is this stuff? Yesterday. Yesterday? He said Friday. Look at that. Oh, my God. <laughs> When's all this from? Friday. He took it out Friday. Oh. Everything's Friday. Look, let me just show you something. Look how green and slime it is. That's from Friday. Look. Look at that. That's from Friday. Look at my fingers. Friday. Look. Look. There you go. That's from Friday. How do you say this in Spanish? This is not healthy. No muy saludable. Thank you. What is going on in here? A hungry cat would walk away from that. I was mortified. I felt embarrassed for letting this go on for so long. While customers in the dining room continued to eat subpar food, Chef Ramsay's kitchen investigation intensifies. What is going on here? What's that? The burrito. What's that one? The chicken with enchiladas. Oh, how? Oh, my God. What's that? That was the uh, ground beef. Ground beef? Half of it's fucking fat, you idiot. It's fatter than you! I felt satisfied that finally somebody called him out on his bullshit. Oh, shit! What's that? The bean. Oh, how? It's like a cement mixer. Are you fucking stupid? Who's controlling this? I am, Chef. You are. You are a walking disaster. Now I'm feeling, like, stupid. Lift it up! The fridge is full of shit. It, it's disgusting. I wasn't here on Saturday, but what were they expecting? Fucking 10,000 customers for lunch? Paddy, I'm fucking disgusted. Yolanda, that's a joke. I understand. I don't want people to get sick, and I don't want them to spread the word that food is bad here. You're overstaffed, underworked, shit food. I wouldn't trust you running a bar. Let alone a fucking restaurant. You must be out of your tiny mind. I'm here for the restaurant. I want to take that out there. I dare you. Take it out there. Go on. Give it to them. Yeah, there you go. It's with me. Look at me. Why wouldn't you take it out there? That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Why are you serving it? You don't fucking care. Why? Why? Because you're serving that and trying to charge people money for that. That's why you don't care. I care. For you don't care shit. No fucking way. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry, but we're stopping service. Shocked by disgrace. What is going on here? After disgrace. How do you say this in Spanish? This is not healthy. After disgrace. I want to take that out there. Chef Ramsay had seen enough and took matters into his own hands. You don't fucking care. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry. But we're stopping service. Everything you've had to drink, eat so far is all on the house. Sir, that thing in your hand, put it down. If you'd just seen where it's come from, like I have, you wouldn't be eating it. Very sorry. Close up. No pill anywhere. I was like, what the hell are you doing? You can't do that to my customers. By the way, there's your refried beans on the way out. Have a look at it. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe it. And uh, seeing all these people walking out of the restaurant, it was like, this is the end. I think Vic got a dose of reality. He walked around like he was untouchable. So I was relieved that finally somebody else told him that he was responsible for a lot of this. While Vic supervises the cleanup, Chef Ramsay spends his time with a woman who is torn between her daughter and her husband. What I'm really concerned about is what's happening to your daughter. How did it start? Because something's blurring for me. My credit was messed up, so we use party for credit. Right. Too. She was clean. Clean, yeah. You've destroyed your daughter's credit because now she has no choice. I mean, yes. you and her are in the shit, my darling. I know, sometimes I can sleep at night. Do you love Vic? 
I do, but it's different now, you know. No, before you came here, I said, if this doesn't work, I don't think you and I could be together anymore. Who's more important, your daughter or your husband? My daughter. At this point, you know, I realize it's not, not really a choice. Right now, the only way to show Paddy how much you care is to get involved. Yes. To help turn this business around. Oh, you tell me what to do. Another marriage that is affected by Fiesta Sunrise's debt is Patty and Don's. Usually, Don drops her off to avoid running into Vic, but on this occasion, Patty asked him to come in and meet Chef Ramsay. Good to see you. Good to see you. I want to save the relationship with my husband because he's really angry at me for getting involved, and it just seems to be spiraling out of control. Um, obviously, um, Paddy explained, I'm absolutely furious in terms of the way the kitchen was run, the way the place has been abused, and I can't believe a guy like Vic would try to do so much under your own eyes without even you knowing anything about it. Are you aware of what's been going on? We fight all the time about it. Yeah. He saw it coming, and I said, no, he wouldn't do this, he wouldn't do that, and he said he's, he's not who he appears to be. No. He's taking advantage of you. Yeah. And your mom. You know, even mum admitted last night that you had a clean credit record. Oh, my goodness. So that, it's, got, it's, that it, got abused. That's and, in the well, crapper. That's one thing I'm mad at. You know, money um, can always be made and repaid back. Yep. The credit, you just never paid the, the monthly payment on. Do you think you can get more involved in terms of the support mechanism? Oh, sure. When I saw Diane, my reaction it was like, oh, this is Patricia's husband. This has nothing to do with the business. I have. Sit down. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it, Vic. I'm trying to understand the madness into how we've been operating. When you knew you were borrowing all that money from family, why weren't you being more honest about where the money was going? You know. God, oh, it's not you... clear. Now it is, but when I ask him, are you going to give Patty any money? No, no, I don't think so. That really doesn't cut it. I believe Don's trying to stand up for me. He feels that Vic walks all over me. You're not going to give my wife any money? You're going to walk I, away I, with all the cash? Wife, you have to go and huh? I paid your mortgage here, you jerk off. One month, I paid $50,000, oh you douchebag. You don't even have a job. I don't have a job? What are you doing? Pal, I got Pal. a job. Oh, please, you're hunting. You're fishing. This is your, your job. I have downtime. I do what I want. Oh I pay my, my bills, God. pal. I pay yeah. my bills. And in yeah. fact, I pay your bills, too. What bills? Ah! Relax, relax, what? relax, relax. What? Relax, relax, what? relax. It's done, pal. It's done. Relax, relax, relax. While Patty and Don were discussing their financial situation... Are you aware of what's been going on? We fight all the time about it. Yeah. Vic joined the conversation. Sit down. Accusations were made. You don't even have a job. And Don and Vic were at war. I don't have a job. I pay my bills. And in fact, I pay your bills too, what bitch. Bills? What? Ah! what? Relax, relax. What? Relax, 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 what? What? Oh, now, now, outside. Relax, relax, relax. Outside. Let's go. Let's go. You can't say that. You can't start talking about that. You can't start telling that. You can't. This ain't even half this shit. I'm upset. My husband really wanted to help, and he's probably going to be mad at me for putting him in a situation like this also. So, in a way, I'm mad. Shh. I'm here to help this place turn around. But to make this work, all three of you have to work as a team. While the family cools off, Chef Ramsay heads to the kitchen to come up with a game plan to fix the restaurant's biggest problem the food. Oh, my God. What in the fuck is that? That is a fucking joke. Victor. Right, ladies. I want us all to get involved in doing something together. Yeah? So I wanted a little fun element. You make a burrito, you make a burrito, you make a burrito, and the best one goes on the menu tonight. That's what I wanted to do. I couldn't do it because of these little fuckers here. Look at them. 
Oh my God. I'm so sick to my stomach. I want to throw up because I had coffee here earlier. I don't know if the roach went through my cup. I didn't know about this problem either. Two dishwashers, two prep cooks. Who's cleaning around here? Do they seriously put food on those plates? Vic's here seven days a week. I don't know how he didn't realize the problems in the kitchen. Can't you see these? I'm trying to move forward. I'm trying to get going, but every time I put my foot on the ladder, I get knocked back. Did you know this was like this? I noticed, I noticed, but... Uh, you I, knew you know, it? I, yeah. We're going to have to do something we cannot open. I need an exterminator here. How can I start in attempting to cook when the place is festered with cockroaches? I didn't expect this. I don't think it could get worse. I don't even know what could make it worse at this point. After Chef Ramsay's dirty discovery, he immediately called in an exterminator. I had no idea these were that bad. Bloody hell. I'm pulling my hair out now. I'm sorry, but you're running the place. Sorry. Oh, you're so stupid. Where do I go, Vic? I feel embarrassed with Chef Brown's here. I don't think that uh, we can make it in this restaurant. You can't run a fucking restaurant like that. You think I'm not? I'm fucking embarrassed You now. should be fucking embarrassed. I'm not putting one foot in that place until that place is fucking clean. Yes? You're right. Now you start getting those guys cleaning, yes? Yes, sir. With some fucking pride! Do you understand the word pride? Yes. It's not possible for someone to have his head so far in his arsehole. Fuck me. I was feeling so depressed because all the pressure that I have right now in the, in the restaurant and everybody picking everything about me. You know, he always thought he was right. Now he finally knows all of his mistakes. I'm very sorry, I'm very wow. sorry. I don't mean to hurt your feelings and I don't mean to hurt Danny's feelings. I'm very sorry. After taking time to reassess the situation and allow the exterminator to finish, Chef Ramsay returns more determined than ever. We are not giving up. Do you understand? We cannot give up. Tonight we're going to open. The place has been cleaned. We're prepping up now. And in under two hours' time, we'll be in a position to open up. And then we work it together. Yes, sir. Yeah, are you going to listen? Yes. Due to last night's shutdown, Chef Ramsay was unable to experience a normal dinner service. Tonight, with the old food a thing of the past, he can finally observe the staff at work. Tonight, it's all about fresh food. Everything we prepped this morning, we cooked tonight fresh, yes? Yes, sir. Fresh. What is it? Fresh. Louder. Fresh. You may be small, but you've got a big pair of lungs. Fresh. Fresh. <laughs> they speak English. They're just being clever by ignoring me, yes? Yeah. Yeah, I know that. What do you guys like to drink? I'm going to get up the chicken and fajitas. And one beef enchilada. Thank you. With customers in the restaurant, Chef Ramsay is anxious to impress them with something Fiesta Sunrise has never had. Fresh food. Bloody hell. Get me Yolanda, please. Fucking hell. Yolanda, you cook at home, don't you? Yes. Yeah? What's wrong with this? Overcooked. Absolutely right. It's mush. We've got four chefs in the line. Not one of them can cook rice. The cooks don't even know what they're doing. I realize how bad it is today. I think you should start spending some time in here. Yeah. Can you cook rice now, Yolanda? Yes, sir. Like a fucking golf ball. It's been a while, huh? With the rice disaster, the kitchen is now backed up and the customers are getting restless. Four chefs on the line. Yep. It doesn't seem to be happening fast. Yeah, can you speed up a little bit? I'm starving. <laughs> I just wish I had my food. Yeah. Excuse me, guys. We have four people over here. We have to start moving. What is these guys doing? They don't even know who is, who's the leader over there. We're finished with our meals and the rest of our table hasn't even received their meals yeah, yet. Yeah, I know. 
Travis, please. Pass it over. What's those black bits coming from the... From the top. From the top of the broiler. Yeah. Jesus Christ almighty. When was the last time the broiler was cleaned? The chefs that now is... They are crazy now. And this is like, this place is half full. What are you going to do when it's crowded and there's people waiting outside? This is unbelievable. What the fuck's happening? When was the broiler cleaned last, gentlemen? If he fucking tells me Friday one more time, I'll boil him. Every Sunday, they say. Every Sunday, my fucking ass. This is out of control. I mean, you got food. I'm full. You got fishy food. I've got four chefs that can't cook fucking rice. Soot all over the food. What is going on? Fuck me. You're supposed to put salt on the food, not fucking soot. It's a joke. You're going? You're going to just leave? You're not going to last here. You can't employ these guys. One can't fucking clean, one can't cook rice. I never imagined how bad this restaurant was doing. I don't know what else could happen. I can't come to terms with what the fuck's happening. On the heels of another dreadful dinner service, Chef Ramsay knows he's running out of time to save this restaurant. Hard day today. What we took tonight, couldn't even afford to pay for the staff. That's how it is every day. Tonight is a perfect example that you're digging yourselves a bigger hole. We're tightening the noose around our necks. I, I, I've never been in this situation before. I'm now going to start taking drastic measures. We need help. A lot of help. A lot of help. I'm going back to New York City now, yeah? I have got to think of, uh, you know, an idea. Or we're screwed. <sighs> Chef Ramsay stayed up most of the night in New York City trying to think of something or someone to help salvage Fiesta Sunrise. He returned the next day, reinvigorated with a comprehensive plan. Right, good morning. Good, good morning. morning Come round. After last night's dinner service, this place needs help. Definitely. Yeah, oh. I have an expert, OK, that I've taken care of that's going to be here to help you. She has the number one Mexican restaurant in Manhattan currently. She's from Mexico, and she seriously knows her Mexican cuisine. Oh. Say hello, please. Juliet Ballesteros, come and say hello, please. This is Yolanda. Hi. Yeah, one of the owners. So I got the call from Chef Ramsey. I got very excited. I will only do this for him. Vic, the gang up on you now. One, two, three, four against one now. You're outnumbered, big boy. Woohoo! I was pleasantly surprised when Chef Ramsay introduced Julieta because we really need the help. With the kitchen in good hands, next, Chef Ramsay reveals the work his design team did to modernize the restaurant. Oh my god! Come through, come through, come through. Now, look at it. <laughs> we got rid of the clutter. The ugly white banqueting chairs have gone. Look what you can see now when you look down through there. It matches perfect. Look at the tablecloths. Oh my god, look! Oh, I love it. I'm in you shock. Can. The shutters. Beautiful. All the crap gone off the ceiling. The walls have been done. That glass the glass is gone. gone. Stunning. Beautiful. Now you have one beautiful Mexican restaurant. Chef Ramsey is unbelievable. I can't believe that. He work all night to do all this. I used to get dizzy walking in here. I used to turn my stomach, and now I feel calm. And it looks like a place you'd want to stay and hang out and spend some time. Take a look at it. I love my new decoration. I love my chairs. I love my new place. Thank you very much. I just want you to run it, yeah, with your wife, with your daughter, and run it as a team. That's all I want. I promise to you, after this, no more mistakes. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Having updated the look, okay. Chef Ramsay moves on to the most significant change in his master plan for saving the restaurant. We've brought in an expert for the kitchen. We've revamped the dining room. And now the most important change that will be significant in turning this business around, and that's the menu. Do you like the new cover? No. 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 Good, because that's what it's not going to be. There we go. Oh. That's what the menu's going to be. 
simple, elegant, easy to read, easy to control, and maintain consistent standards. Uh, have a quick look. I'm very excited. I'm happy. Beautiful menu. Read over the menu. I'm going to spend some time in the kitchen with Juliet, yes? OK. Let's go, my darling. In order to ensure a successful relaunch, Chef Julieta stays on top of everything and everyone in the kitchen. The taquitos, just crispy enough to be like to have a crunch on your mouth, but don't, don't overcook them. I honestly never ever expected to be here tonight, relaunch night. What a fucking week. The toughest so far. So now they have to pull it off. They may have the best Mexican chef from Manhattan, but it's up to them now. Everything's here, they've got to do it. Let's see our meat. Oh, look, that's beautiful. Now that you've got it, you run it. And I'll be watching the service. Tonight is crunch time. This restaurant has to have a successful service tonight. OK, anything to say? I hope we work together as a team because I want something to be proud of and I'm proud of my family and I'm happy. Everything is changed. Good. Ready? Ready. We're opening in five minutes. Smile! It's good. I'm <laughs> excited. You can as big as it can. You're like a sumo wrestler upside down. Smile! <laughs> With a contemporary new look and simplified menu, the success of Fiesta Sunrise now rests on the staff. I'm excited, but I just want everything to go okay. So I hope they could pull this off. You want appetizer? We're definitely gonna take the guacamole. Mmm, that's good. It's for a kid, it's for a little girl, so don't put any peppers. They need somebody to be in charge. They need guidance, but they're willing to learn. Medium rare. Y este que está delgadito, ponlo para el medium. Chef, it says kind of cold. And when it, uh, oh, come on. Julieta. What happened? They said it's cold. Cold. Yeah, because it's hanging around. Okay, uno nuevo en 20 segundos, por favor. Everything's set up. Everything's set up. So, you know, this is idiot proof, and they still can't execute it. It's quite a worry. Come on, guys. Something's burning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They burned the nachos. They burned the nachos? What's going on, guys, please? How the fuck do we burn natural? Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Yeah. What's this? Nachos flambe? After a shaky start, Bloody hell. the pressure is now on Vic Se tiene que comunicar, to get the restaurant running smoothly. Yeah, this is excellent. Is it good? Very good. The presentation is beautiful. Dos carnes asadas, medium red, uno no arroz. Good. What do you think about the salsa? I like this. It has a nice texture. Thank you. Oh my god. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm very happy. For the first time I see the people, they're smiling. They're talking good things about the restaurant, especially about the food. It's a good piece of chicken. I really like the quesadilla. This is delicious. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. For the first time since it opened, Fiesta Sunrise is functioning properly. But they have one more hurdle to clear before the night can be considered a success. I just had a phone call. The mayor of Nyack coming. The mayor? Yeah, the mayor. Oh. Yeah, great. Great. So he's arriving for dinner tonight. Wonderful. Great. Fantastic. We had the honor of having a local mayor visit us. Hi, how are you? Fabulous. You good? I was a little nervous because yeah. I wanted him to enjoy our new food and recommend it because it's some exposure locally. Hello, senores. Thank you for coming. Can I offer some appetizer? We'll get one of each appetizer. OK. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. And put it all out put here, all right? Out here, Thank you. Vic, make sure that mayor's OK. Make sure he has a jolly time, yes? What is this? Taquitos, the appetizer. <laughs> Excellent. The taquito is the best. Yeah, that was delicious. I'm coming back for those. <laughs> <laughs> it was excellent food. We had a great evening tonight. I would absolutely come here again. Cheers.
Thank you, Julieta. You're welcome. With dinner coming to a close and the mayor satisfied, Fiesta Sunrise finally saw a glimmer of hope. Can you believe we made it to tonight? No. Yeah. Extraordinary. I don't even know where to begin thanking Chef Ramsey. He came to me as a gift because I was really at the end of my rope and he brought back happiness between all of us and I, I can never thank him enough. I honestly never, ever, ever thought we were going to make it to tonight. You know that? Everybody had to wake up to get where we are now. Yes, yeah. Chef. And Vic, 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 after all the mistakes you made and all the crap you're telling me, tonight, you were great. I was impressed with your performance tonight. I'll be honest, I was nervous. The tables, all the customers, everybody giving a good compliments about the food. Good. I was like so happy. For the first time since I arrived, I got to see your passion and your hunger to keep this place alive. That's what it's going to take. And I'd like to say that tonight would not have been of any significant improvement without the help of Julieta. Thank you, Julieta. You're welcome. We're doing this to give this place a hope. We all need to work as a team and as a family. Julieta, thank you personally. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. OK. Go back a week when I arrived. I didn't even know if I was in the right place. The signs with Grill 303. I couldn't understand what the hell was going on here. I thought I'd arrive too late. OK, come outside. Now, when we walk into the car park, yes, here's something that each and every one of your customers saw tonight. Oh, my God! Oh. <laughs> yes, we did change it, so when they park in front of the restaurant, they know where they're eating. <laughs> What's it called? I can't sunrise. hear you. Fiesta Sunrise, I still can't hear you. Fiesta Sunrise, Chef. Good. Make sure it stays up there. We stay, the one that stayed over there. Fiesta Sunrise. You got one more this way. Oh, you got it. Wow. Oh, my God, Chef. You did it. You did it. Fiesta Sunrise in front of the mall. That's right, in front of the mall. Every day, 25,000 cars go past this restaurant. How could all those people drive by every day for 18 months and you not take advantage of that? Are you mad? I'm happy. Oh, my God. Everybody that drove past here tonight saw that. That's it. I'm not kissing you. Yeah? I don't, I don't OK, good. You. Let's go. <laughs> OK. This is my American dream. And I think it's going to be one of the best Mexican restaurants in town. Keep it fresh. Thank you very much. Thank you. The City of Angels, famous for its movie stars, stunning coastline, and healthy lifestyle. The ideal place to have a healthy restaurant. But in spite of its location, Sante La Brea is in critical condition. It's chewy. It's like meat, but not. Dean, the owner, and his two sons, Arthur and Sammy, have been running Sante for nearly 10 years. Dry red wine. So what, what does that mean? I don't only drink, bro. But business has dwindled to almost nothing, and this father-son team is in desperate need of Gordon Ramsay's help. I'm the owner. I am the cook. I'm the janitor. I also do all the maintenance. The water's still on? With a thin, very thin thread, I'm holding this place alive. You want to take his table? Maybe dad should. Hell fucking no. Uh, you want it to be good, right? This place is running like without a fucking captain. And I don't think my dad can really be a manager. Now, how about you just man up, man, sack up and do this shit, man? I always wanted to be surrounded with good, intelligent, strong people. I needed help, like genuine help. I hired Mark about six months ago. There's a lot of food here, I don't know who it's oh, for. My role here is a little bit undefined. It was really no job title. I'll be the hostess, I'm the best hostess. We don't know, we don't know what he does. I think of Mark more of the interior decorator. I want to make it feel like a, a nice, welcoming home. I do what needs to be done. I treat it as though it's mine. I've worked here since I was 15 years old. I don't remember the last time it was, like, busy. Just hold your breath. It's only 7 o'clock. The nightmare is the fact that I'm not making money. My father is in at least $200,000 of debt. I owe everybody. I owe the landlord, taxes, vendors, short on my mortgage. It's really sad. I, I gave it my all. I, 
it's my heart and my soul and my time. Everything is uh, in jeopardy. I stand to lose everything. I think we need Chef Sir Ramsey's help because we don't know what the fuck we're doing. Everyone at Santa La Brea is getting ready for Chef Ramsay's arrival. I'm nervous and excited about meeting Chef Ramsay. It's like being awake in a dream. Aurelio didn't show up. Fucking Aurelio didn't show up again. But owner Dean has just received upsetting news. He locked his phone and his home phone his is, phone is no answer. Too? Aurelio, baby, where are you, man? I need you. His head chef, Aurelio, is nowhere to be found. Come over, OK? I really need you today. OK, bye. Aurelio is a no-show today, so it's like, uh, what else is new? Motherfucking Christ. I'm a little bit nervous to meet Chef Ramsey. I heard that guy's like fucking 6'2 and shit, like he's a fucking monster. La Brea Avenue, one of the busiest streets in LA and home to hundreds of successful restaurants. One thing's for sure, the location is not an issue. I'm about to find out what is. My God. How are you? Chef Ramsey. Good to meet you. This is Dean, yes? Yes, it is. Good Hawaii. to see you. Good to see you too. So, this is different. <laughs> this is yes. a, this, welcome huh? to my place. It is different. Give me a... Um, a little tour? A little tour, yes. Okay. Uh, this has been remodeled lately, not too long ago. God. And I just put that in together. It's supposed to be wheat grass. It's easy. You've got all grass growing at the yes, corner. Yes, wheat grass growing. Oh, you grew that? Yes, we do. <laughs> Jesus Christ almighty. Actually... That there? Excellent. <laughs> okay. You gotta. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm not gonna give it to you. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> huh? Something about Chef Randy, it just uh, freezes a part of your, your, your brain. So, the food, tell me about the food. Is it all vegan? Vegetarian? No. 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 We're, we have chicken and fish. Chicken and fish. Yes, we do. I've always vegan. Everything in the kitchen is made, made in two versions. Either vegan versions or non-vegan versions. How many chefs have you got in the brigade? Uh, what a head fuck. I have, actually, I have none today. My chef didn't show up. Is he sick? Is he...? I don't know. He's just vanished. Everyone takes advantage of me. I'm not really making money. I actually was spending money for last year. What's the problem with the restaurant? Straight off, what is it? Really, money money is the issue here. Mark spent $5,000 on these things. They bought $5,000 worth of product. products. So Mark's your partner? Mark is not my partner. He's just lend me $10,000. Mark is just a big talker. He just talks too much. He makes makes many ideas he doesn't follow up with. Nice to meet you. Likewise, really, good really, to see really you. Nice to meet you. Really Heard nice. so much about you. Explain to me what you do. Um, right now, I've been trying to make the place just a little more hip, a little more fresh, a little more modern. Right. Okay, tell me about the design. What are you, what's the vision here? I want it to be like no other place you've ever seen. Which You're is definitely, right. definitely not wrong there. That's for sure. Thank yeah. you, thank you. I'm dying to get something to eat, get okay. up to speed. I've tasted some grass. Do you, yeah. do you um, want a picture? I'm a little bit hot. I'm going to sit outside in the okay. terrace and... Uh, and I'll bring you a menu. Yeah, get some fresh air. Nice to meet you, Mark. Nice to meet you, too. Really Likewise. good, really. Thank you. Sweaty hands. Your hands are sweaty. Mine? Yeah. I'm very hot. I'm very hot. And I only wore this for you, and it's hot, so I can change it now. Excellent. He is H-O-T hot. Hot, 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 hot. <laughs> oh, really? Good afternoon, Chef Ramsay. Sammy, how are you, buddy? I'm all right, man. We got a couple of glasses. Thank you. What can Thank I get you. for you? I'll go for the patty melt, the turkey, please. Nice. Patty melt. OK. And then I'm fascinated, uh, which I've never come across before, the mogul dufu. What is that? It's like a... It's like... It's like a stir fry, mixed vegetable stir fry with the, with black bean sauce. It's a little bit spicy. Okay, yeah. and I'll finish off with the blackened salmon. Thank you. Brilliant. All right, you got it. Wow. Mono tofu. Mono tofu. Orale way! A grande order, man. Come on. Hey, what's the your dog's name, please? Tubbs. Tubbs. Look at it. Turkey patty melt. Turkey patty melt. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. What is he eating right now that he's looking like he's picking through it like it's dog shit? Turkey melts. My God. Oh. If this restaurant prides itself on being healthy, that does not look healthy. That is dry, and they are disgusting. Come here. Look, smell, tubs. There you go. <laughs> A little bit more tubs. There you go, buddy. <laughs> He's feeding the turkey patty most of the dog, here. 
I saw him feeding the burger to the dog. First of all, I'm so glad the dog ate it. <laughs> I was so glad because I thought if the dog doesn't eat this burger, we're fucked. Uh, this here is a mobu dofu. <laughs> oh, come on. This is a joke. He doesn't like it. The no mobu dofu means shit in Chinese, that's for sure. <laughs> He's looking loud. He's ripping. He's, He's ripping. Rice cooked to hell. And. I'm stuck here in the center of La Brea with my do food. <laughs> oh, come on. That is shocking. My God. That's what he was, that's what he was ripping apart. Oh, that's horrible, though. <laughs> Maybe he can get through to Dean about the food. You can smell it, you can taste it, you can talk. And this is the salmon here. Black and salmon. Black and salmon, absolutely. Okay. Very black. Dry and it tastes way too fishy for salmon. Like it's been in a refrigeration unit that's not even properly cool. Disgusting. God, the food is bad. How was it? Just in terms of the presentation, it looked like a dog's dinner. Mm. Then you get to taste it. Mm -hmm. It's hideous. Healthy food yeah. does not have to look like shit and taste crap. No, I, really suck. I agree with you. So, oh god, oh, no. Jesus, oh, not that bad. Show me where the salmon is. It was smelling fishy. Unfucking believable. Fresh salmon. Oh dear. That's wild salmon. When did it come in? Yesterday. Yesterday. My salmon was very fishy. You got all that in there yesterday? Yes. Yeah. So you got the salmon and the turkey in the same container melting. So the chicken comes in fresh? Yes, it does. Yeah. I guess this is extra, you know, whatever we have. It... Why are you lying? No, I'm not lying to you. This is not exactly what I expected to find in a healthy restaurant. What else is in here? One of Chef Ramsay found all the stuff that's been there for a long time. It's rotten. It was very disturbing to me. Your food is about as healthy as these vegetables. I didn't realize that nobody looks in the refrigerator. Were you going to serve this tonight? No. All of a sudden, Dean, there's a lot of food in there that you're not serving. When I smell bullshit, hey, I go straight for the fucking juggler. I felt destroyed. It was unbelievable. I, I feel like breaking down completely. I. Let the chef take care of the, 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 the um, refrigerator. I don't look into it. This is your business. Yes, it is. It is true. There's nothing for me to say. The biggest problem in this restaurant is you. Congratulations. It's a fucking disgrace. After Gordon discovered the deplorable conditions of the food storage... It's rotten! Owner Dean is devastated. I mean, is it okay if I sit down? Dad got very emotional. I felt like the hopelessness kind of feeling from him, you know, in a way. And it was really fucking sad. What happened today, man, will not happen again. Because we got Mr. Gordon on we'll the other side. Yeah, you get you goddamn right it will never happen again. And all these things supposed to be dumped by goddamn Aurelio yesterday. Look at it, there he is. Where have you been? Yeah. I think bring that somewhere. Yeah. Two hours late, Chef Aurelio finally shows up for work. You better fucking deal with this like a man. That's all I gotta say. What happened to the, all this stuff inside the refrigerator is all bad and moldy and shit and stuff like that. We should have dumped it before. Do you remember our plan's supposed to be dumped? You know. It's okay. Who cares? Dude, yo, man, we had a fucked up situation today, man. Can we even trust this guy? Can we trust you anymore or what? I mean. I don't know, man. No, man, we trust them. Take them back with open arms. Yeah, seriously. It's, it's the cancer you're talking we can't, about. We can't do this anymore, man. My dad's got no balls, man. He got no balls in terms of this. He can't get rid of them. Can you get inside and look and see what's going on, please? Take care of everything. I'm distressed. You know, I can't serve any food without it. I'm stuck here. I have no choice. I got to keep him because I wouldn't have no one otherwise. Ugh. I see the tears falling, Dad. I really want to cry. 
It's all right, man. It's gonna be good. Come here. Come on, Pops. Give me a hug, man. Show me some love. Let's see some, let's see some, some fatherly love and shit. Come on, all this chaos, all this confusions. This is the worst thing can happen to a restaurant owner, actually. It's kind of cringing to me. It makes me feel bad. Four for dinner? Yes. Come on with me, please. Judas Burgers it is, and for yourself, sir. Uh, the saffron? Now that Chef Aurelio is here for dinner, Gordon has an opportunity to see if the restaurant food is any better when the chef is around. Did you see the fridge? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, anything to say or? No, I don't have anything. Nothing to say. It's my fault. He knows it's my fault, I guess. It is, it is my responsibility after all. I'm just a cook. I'm not in touch. I can do whatever I want here, so you know, that's why I never go somewhere else. I need pants, dude. Pants? I need pants. You have some more pants ready? No. The chef hasn't put the stuff back in the fridge? They, they didn't, you, you know, they got busy, so. They got busy? Mamma mia. Why are you scared of the chefs? Uh, because if they leave, nobody is going to be served. Aurelio is one of those entities in my life that I can't live with and I can't live without. I'm tired, dude. We have, uh, Mediterranean platter, it's like hummel, sabuli, five ganoush and pita. That's so like good. It's too heavy. It's too square. It's not the worst. <laughs> it's not the best, though. It's, not good. it's an hour into service, and dinner conversation at this restaurant is primarily about the poor food. Bite my fork, whatever. Will you, will, you, will you bite this and tell me this is good? Okay. Will you bite it's this? Real. This is good. <laughs> right. Maybe I should give them a recipe of how to make the best. <laughs> Excited about eating healthily this evening? No, we're not very happy with this. No, right. So it's not very good. Damn, thank you. Enjoy. Having heard the general sentiment of the customers, Gordon heads back to the kitchen to get to the root of the problem. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And what is that? <laughs> he what almost that? got in altogether. Uh, I'm duck. It's duck. But it's on duck. It's fake, fake duck. Fake duck. So you call it what? We call it on duck. Un duck. Un duck. Right now, I feel like I'm getting completely fucked. Is that popular? Yeah, it is. Actually, a lot of people ask for that too. Un duck. Fuck duck. Fuck duck. <laughs> That's fake fish. Fake fish. And it looks like fish and tastes like fish, and it's got seaweed on, on the outside. We have everything that's on. This is incredible. So far, I've had unduck, unfish, and unfucking believable. What a mess. Not my favorite. No. A. God bless Los Angeles. You're joking, aren't you? After a disappointing dinner service. Thank you so much. I hope to guys see you guys again. Thanks again. Have a great week. Gordon confronts the staff with the harsh reality of the situation. I'm somewhat confused. Um, nobody seems to take and accept responsibility. Everybody's a free-for-all. No rules, no one's fear for the job, just a lack of care. I, mean, I think a manager needs to make sure that things happen. All these things that are unattended to, I, I have to take blame for. It's all me. For some reason, people are not listening to me. My management style is not functional, it's not working. Let me tell you, yeah, what the problem is here at Sante. Lack of management, yeah, that's clear. That's happening. But let me tell you the biggest problem here. The biggest problem here is the food. Not just the food, it's the bullshit. Everything's a gimmick. On chicken, on duck. Your philosophy is not healthy style. The shit I uncovered in the freezer, the discovery in the fridge. You've got grass hanging from the ceiling. It's like fucking Lord of the Flies up there. Have you seen the shit hovering around there? <laughs> I am not going any further until this place is fucking clean. And I mean spotless. If a health inspector had witnessed what I witnessed, just in one of the fridges, bang, game over. Clean this fucking pigsty. This place does not deserve an A. And the only thing you're getting from me tonight is that, an F. There, it's staying on. And guys, 
I'll take it down tomorrow, personally, yeah, when it's up to the standard of an A. Now move your fucking asses. There, it's staying on. After giving Santi La Brea an F for their filthy kitchen. I'll take it down tomorrow, personally, yeah, when it's up to the standard of an A. Now move your asses. The staff worked through the night. The flask coming out of this one. Cleaning every inch of the restaurant. I certainly wasn't going to have Gordon come through and say, what is the matter here? Did you not listen? A thorough cleaning is the first step that Santi La Brea has taken in the right direction. But before Gordon can change the menu or the food, he needs to change its owner. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you feeling? <laughs> very good. Thank yeah. you so much. I'm tough fine. day yesterday. Yes, it was very tough. Yeah, about really it. tough, but tougher than I expected. What worries me is that the burden is on these. You're not letting go. You're not releasing any of that pressure. It must be so frustrating inside because nobody's listening, Dean. That's the problem. The chef's not even listening. You employ them. They don't employ you. You have to know how to talk to these staff. You're correct. Yeah. We're now standing on the top of the canyon. Nobody, yeah, can hear us. So what I want you to do is let it out. Let's start off with Mark first, yeah? What have you got to say to him? Get, get the fuck out of my life. I don't want you around. Yeah. That's it. That's how you tell staff. Pathetic. Here you go. Mark, understand that you're here to run the restaurant, yeah? Not to run crap up my walls. Start listening to me now. Chef Aurelio, if you ever leave my kitchen that state again, look for a new job, you little fucker! Aurelio. Why? What? What's going on with you? Didn't I tell you to go ahead and clean the goddamn refrigerator? Fuck. It's not difficult, it's business. You have to get a grip before it's too late. I want to know from you, face to face, that you are going to accept responsibility and, more importantly, take control. I've got to hear you. It is hard for me to let go, but, you know, I have to take Chef Ramsey's advice. Mark! That's better. Good. Listen, no more shit, no more fucking fucking around, no Good. more whatever it is that you bring, no more functue shit, and don't put the Good. mirror here. The, Good. I want to put that there. Just Good. do it for me this time, please. This just, just this time. What the hell? No more, OK? Good. No more. Excellent. Aurelio. Give it to him, you limp dick! Aurelio, what the fuck? I know you for so long, and I know your family. I was stupid enough one, one time, three times, four times, six times, Good. ten times I took you back, man. Who the fuck is in charge in this motherfucking kitchen? Good. Well done. Now, that sounds like a boss. It feels great to just scream out and say those things. I'm not used to doing that. Wake up, you idiots! Last one. Here we go. Wait, get off, you fucking idiot! God damn it! Excellent. Good. Hey. Gordon right now kind of gave me a little bit more confidence. I'm ready now to go ahead and do my job a lot better. How do you feel? Great. Having completed the exercise, Dean returns to Sante and puts Gordon's lesson into action. Unfortunately, it's with his son. What the hell happened to all my apples here? Oh, please, man. I took this shit out. I don't want to see the, the end of the bottles here. I took them out. I'm not putting them back. Don't talk to me like this anymore, OK? Yeah. Don't fuck. Even if I'm fucking wrong. Do it. So you were My dad exploded. Ass, man. It was a Kodak fucking moment, man. There is a fucking boss here. So don't argue about everything. Just do it. It's my bullshit. I'm responsible. <laughs> fucking he laid it out, man, like a little bellow to fucking flame and shit came out. It was awesome. It was great. At the end of your sentences, say, but I'll do whatever you want, sir. OK, Mashi. Am I the boss here or not? You are. Then listen, sir. Listen to me. That's it. Mashi. After Dean released his frustration, everything settled down, just in time for Gordon to inspect the kitchen. Good. Peppers? Fresh, yes? Fresh it is. Good. Gordon came in and he kind of checked everything out and yeah, everything was good. Everything was clean, top notch. Welcome back. Yes? Yeah? Yeah. Keep it there. Yes. Yes? 
Thank God it, the F did not stay more than, you know, 10 hours <laughs> overnight. With the kitchen now in proper working condition, Gordon turns his attention to the food. Two specials on the menu side. Yes. First dish is a halibut. We're going to cook it in a marinade. Second dish, salad of shrimp, local shrimp. It's really nice to see Chef Ramsay be able to take his je ne sais quoi and bring it down to our level, like we're doing ghetto Gordon. Shrimp dotted around. It's a celebration of California. And now, on halibut, two vibrant, straightforward dishes. It's 30 minutes before dinner service, and although everything appears to be moving in the right direction, Mom. Gordon gathers the group for an important meeting. Now, Dean, mm -hmm. yesterday, mm -hmm. there were some serious infractions in this restaurant. Yes. Spoiled food, yeah, problems throughout, yes? Here he is. Do what you have to do. Sir, put your hands in front of you. Hold oh, together. Do what you have to do. It is. Sir, put your hands in front of you. Palms together. I had, whoa, like what? What the heck is that? What did I do? I said, where did I break the law? I, it was a scary moment. I am fed up, up to here, with you, walking around, picking up after your chef running around after your sons, after Mark. Tonight, you're not doing that. You're not touching anything tonight. You're going to tell them exactly what you're doing. Run your business vocally. You're not getting arrested, you silly Billy. Hey, relax. Look at him. He's about to cry. Jesus no, Christ. I see what you mean. You're yes, right. that's right. My dad's supposed to be a manager. He's supposed to be verbally conducting the situation, as opposed to like physically cleaning about the people. Thank you, Bob. OK, first table just about to arrive. Let's go. Good luck, by the way. Thank you. Try not to show the handcuffs. Keep them tucked in there, yes? <laughs> Let's go. OK, guys. I'm supposed to be the boss, so I can't help you, OK? Just do a little bit you can. I'm very, very excited about tonight, and I'm looking forward to see this place swamped. Now I'm going to try not to let things go out of hand. Good evening. Nice to see you. Hi, Come through, please. You? Sorry to keep you waiting. This is Mark, our hostess Hi. for the evening. Hi. How nice are you? Nice to see you. Can I get you guys some beer and wine tonight? Push the specials, yes? Yes. Now, I'm going to explain the specials real briefly. We have a, a spiced halibut, which is marinated in uh, fresh yogurt. And then we also have a shrimp salad. The specials are really good, um, and they'll be gone quickly. I have a special, the halibut special. You got it. OK, this is for table two, two halibut specials. Showtime. I can't, I can't clap. But... Did you want something to drink? Okay, Moretti and? Moretti, uh, Moretti. Moretti, Moretti? Moretti, Moretti. Mark, you was tricking again. Oh, no, use a napkin. It was a warm night here in L.A. I thought, oh, I'll be smart. I'll wear a light shirt. Hi, ladies. How are you? Good. How are you? Did you guys have a reservation? He's touching them with his sweaty palms. Don't touch the customers. I wasn't sweating that much, but the shirt was catching all of my sweat. Oh. I don't like wearing deodorant. What can I tell you? Damp it down or dry or absorb. I don't know, but it's all leaking over. Oh, my god. Oh, mother fuck. <sighs> <laughs> Don't touch anything. I can't help it. It was torturing to have to be in handcuffs and just trying to work normal way. What is this doing here? Can you take it to the front, please? Right now. Hurry, hurry. Hurry up. Like, run. Run, run, run. Come on. I'm always tying the loose ends for everyone. Now I cannot. OK, halibut now, OK? One halibut for this order. This is one of them for table two. Get the halibut ready? This is ready. Take that, take that, take that. Oh, ladies. Thank you. Enjoy. It looks beautiful. Oh, it's really good. The specials are nearly sold out, which is great news. Now, Mark, well, he's just sweating like a pig, running around like a headless chicken and sweating all over the place. As for Dean, I don't think this guy's finding it easy. He's struggling not to run around after his own star. Crazy. This one is this one. You sure of table two? Yes, yes, just go. It's fine, table two. That's the last halibut, right? Did um, you want any of the specials? Because I could maybe hold one, because I think they're going to be gone. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I don't know. Okay, I'm just tell them to hold those three halibuts, okay, until they get your order, all right? Aurelio, Aurelio, will you hold three of uh, the specials on table four? Give me a ticket, please. Okay. Give me a ticket. All right. The halibut, I'm out of right now. So sorry. You said you still have one halibut left? Or no, no more, no more, no more. So what is this going to do with this one? Mark, can you come here for a second? First of all, you took an order? You took a fucking order! Don't fucking do it, god damn it! Mark should be taking order. He doesn't know how to take an order. He's he's always making mistakes, and I let it out. Just listen, listen to me. I understand. I understand. I'm the fucking boss I understand. here. I understand. It's crystal clear. It's crystal clear, Dean. Crystal. Clear. I made a poor choice at that moment. It's not like I spit in someone's suit. Are you guys at a pause or no, stance? Thank you so much. Is there any more wine? I think. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. You've got menus tucked under your sweaty arms. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh, you can't tuck menus under your sweaty armpits and then hand them out. Yeah, I hear you. Mark, please. What is he doing now? Menus tucked under his armpit. Gordon, yeah, please, they send them home. Send them. I don't need it's them. It's your fucking member of staff. The motherfucker has to leave. Mark has this very, very bad sweaty armpit, and he put the menu under his arm. You have to take care of that. It was ugly. Go home and change that shirt, goddammit. Please, please. It, Just run, run back, yes, okay? Yes, run yes, back. You got it, you got it. Do something. As Mark heads home to get a new shirt, back at the restaurant, customers are lining up, and Gordon is on a mission of his own. Hello, sir. Um, I've got a friend that sweats a lot. I'm looking for a really strong antiperspin, but really strong. Thank you. And I'll take both of these. Thank you, boss. Thank you. It's a different shirt. It's heavier, I'll probably sweat more, but at least people won't see it because it's a dark shirt, hopefully. If this one takes the sweat, Gordon will probably kick my fucking ass. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, two seconds. Two seconds. Okay, now stop that. Thank you, sir. Okay. Hey, quick. Jesus Christ. Secret, made for a lady, strong enough for a man. He's a fucking funny little limey bastard. Right, come here, you. Let's go. I would like to think you've learned your lesson. Look at me. If Eon does these, yes. yes, I want a guarantee that you're going to run your business. Yes. And not pick up things. Yes. Bob, do the honors, please. Thank you. Sure. I'm positive. Yeah? Don't fall back to your old ways. Oh. Thank you, Officer Bob. Thank you, sir. Let's go. Dino, move, huh? Yes, 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 yes. Come on. Uh, no, no, no. Ahorita. When you're ready, I can take another order. Let me know. Once Dean's cuffs are released, his managerial skills are put to the test. There's a hair in her. No way. Yeah, and then her posture was cool. Oh, my God. That is hair. What the fuck is this? Make another order of penny? It's going to take long. I don't know if they want to wait. Do it now. I'm waiting to boil this shit. Just take the hot water from here. Take it easy, relax. I don't want to take relax. it easy. Relax, relax. relax. Just take it out of there. I just want Aurelio to understand what's really going on. I needed to be the boss. I needed to actually do my job. You want to cook? I don't want to cook. No, I want you to cook. Sense. Just listen okay, to me. go to the back. Don't stay here. Go I want to stay back. here, and you're going to do what I'm asking. Go just to the do back. it. Go no. to the back. Aurelio. Stupid. Shit, what a fucking attitude. After another disappointing dinner service comes to an end... Thank you, thank you, thank you. ...Gordon tries to make sense of one of the most bizarre evenings he's ever witnessed. The good news first. Within 15 minutes of announcing the specials, the halibut sold out. Dean, tonight showed significant signs, yeah, of becoming a better manager. Unfortunately, I had to handcuff you in order to get that out of you. The biggest problem, still, in this restaurant, is the food. The feedback is the food is bland, boring, and barely mediocre. Tomorrow, we are going to relaunch this restaurant. I want people to say, La Sante, yes, is 
The healthy restaurant where the food tastes great! If there were ever a restaurant that needed a makeover, it was Santi La Brea, and Gordon's crew worked through the night to pull it off. Excited? Big, big, big day today. Take off your blindfolds. The new Santi La Brea. Clean, fresh, and green. This is beautiful. We decluttered the canopy. Inviting, fresh. Here we go, outside patio. Oh right, come oh through. Look, oh no dirty white curtain, fresh shades, hand painted blinds, new benches. Oh, this is fucking comfortable, man. Look at the color of it. Nice, new, oh. vibrant. It's almost like the dream materialized. Everything I was dreaming about it just came and flashing in my face. What a change. What a vibrant, oh. sexy, healthy change. Awesome. I moved to tears so much. He's a brilliant man. So sort of cool. Ready to go inside? Oh, yes. Yes? Look at this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We painted the entire restaurant. We added a beautiful mural on the wall. I was floored. I mean, if my mouth could, like, unhook, it would have done that. No more tacky plastic tablecloths. A proper, healthy, vibrant, fresh restaurant. No clutter. You two. Just don't clutter the place I up again. I'm not this is what LA wants. This makes an incredible statement. They took what we had and they made it better and smarter and beautiful. Now this. Oh my god. The menu. Oh Absolutely my god. crucial. When you come into something healthy and vibrant. Oh Jesus Christ. Oh my god. My... Dad got really emotional when he saw the new menu. I'm so happy to see my dad happy. We're not looking through 150 bits of crap. It's fresh. And if it's not fresh, it's not on there. I'm happy for you. You deserve it, and your sons deserve it. Thank you, man. No question this is a good beginning. I would never, ever be able to do it without Chef Hans. OK, absorb, have some fun, and I'll see you in five, 10 minutes, yes? Well done. In preparation for the big relaunch, Gordon introduces the staff to the new dishes. Gone is the bland mogo dufu and dried out fish. In their place. Wonderful chilled tomato soup, egg white potato, the eggplants, sea bass, cassoulet, the lentils, the salads, and your favorite, the tofu, yeah? It's yes. been grilled. It's the most important night so far of Santa Libre. Mark, you're hosting tonight. Greet, sit them down, don't take any orders. You got it. <laughs> no worries. Well, don't just stand there staring at the food. Get some nice and pork to taste it. It was an amazing day today. Brand new restaurant, brand new menu, brand new feeling, brand new man. It's relaunch night and time for the world premiere of the new Sante La Brea. Hi, how are you guys tonight? How are we doing? We okay? I don't want to see clutter here, all right? I want everything to be clean at all times, okay? Halibut? Wonderful. Wonderful. Can you do the sea bass? Sea bass. Yeah. Like the cheese appetizer? Sure. This mushroom with the cheese first, and then the tuna and the beet salad. Thank you, man. Do you decide if you like any wine? Santa Barbara. The Santa Barbara? You got it. Thank you. Thank you. What are you doing? You don't want me to bring wine? I thought he wants me to sell wine, so I'm trying to... Do you want me to just tell them then? OK. Mark, once again, he didn't listen to my instruction, and he was taking an order. And uh, I wanted to take control of that. Don't... I already told you once. Who the fuck is in charge? Don't take an order. I won't. I won't. OK, relax. I won't. Tell me once. I'm telling you again. Don't take an order. Don't Dean is the boss. Dean is the owner. Dean's word is gold. Dean's feeling the pressure as more and more customers arrive at Sante. So put things in, the, in, in its own place and don't eat, don't drink, don't do anything here. This is not good, OK? Whenever I see that, I'm going to be best off! And his kitchen staff is starting to feel it, too. Just hurry up a little. You got you to gotta run a little bit. Just hurry up a little bit. No, Just I hurry up a little bit. I yeah. need the food out. I can do those two things at the same time. Just listen to what I'm saying. Do it fast. You really want me to live? Look, I keep in mind what I say, OK? What? I what? I'm keeping in mind what I say, god damn it. Stop it. Goodbye. Get the fuck out of my life. I'll do it. Next. Let's go. Eat salad. Be right with you in a second. You want to treat me like he's all the obvious employee? Yeah, that's a bullshit. I'm not like the other guys. Where is our grilled cheese and our hummus? Hey, what? Come here. What's going on? What the fuck is going on? What's the matter? Get all the right, fuck out of here. I don't need it. Hold on. Get out. I'm tired of this shit. Aurelio! Aurelio! Fucking relaunch night. Come on. What? what? 
What's going on? What the fuck is going on? What's the matter? Right, right. Right. Yeah. What what fed up with Dean's new management style, Chef Aurelio takes off during the restaurant's most important dinner service. Aurelio! Fucking relaunch night! Come on! What in the fuck? What happened? He's going like this, you know, going slowly. I can't fucking wait for it. I said, hurry up and listen to me. He don't listen. So, God damn it, I don't care. Enough already. It's the end of the line. I'm not gonna take it anymore. This is unbelievable. The fucking chef's run. Dean's going fucking crazy. What have I created? A monster said, run your business, but don't start really slamming into everybody. The restaurant's filling up. This guy's fucking mad. I just want to I wanna say I'm sorry to the chef, Brancy. I want to tell him who is Dean, you know, like, he's not a good man. Come here, come I just want to say I'm sorry. OK, no, 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 but listen, okay. listen, come here. This is important. This is launch night. I can't beg the fucker. You do care, don't I you? I can't. I beg you all my okay. life. At least, you don't want to listen least, to me. At least pay me the rest of the money you owe. That's all you fucking care about. I'm not going to be in your goddamn oh, set. I'm not going to work without pay. pay. OK, how much money you owed? He owed me 140 OK, here, here, here. No, 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 come here. There's That's 100, it. OK? The rest that comes after service. Please. Cool. I is going to do this tonight for because of him. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you. Come here. Calm down. Big deep breath, yeah? Pretend you're in a yoga class. Just cool, cool. Now, discipline, yeah? But don't screw it, OK? Big deep breath. It's an hour into dinner service. Right, thank you, yes? And Aurelio's absence has caused a backup in the kitchen. Grilled four portions, so you stay in front, yeah? Yeah. She's ready to stab herself in the head. Head. Out in the dining room, customers are left waiting for their food. We've been sitting here for like 15 minutes. Uh, 15 minutes only? I have some people waiting here for longer than that. Oh. Sorry about that. Oh, We're, this is brand new. I'm, I, will, I'm... I was watching everything fall apart. You know, food coming out. Our customers were like waiting, hungry, waiting, hungry, waiting, hungry. With a dining room full of hungry customers, Gordon tries to salvage the evening. We started off badly. Yes? yes. Really badly. Yes. Can we at least finish? Strong. You have to, look at me, motivate the team as well, yes? Get a grip. Yes. Let's go, yes? Go. Breathe deep. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about anything. Just do the best you can. See, man, for table one, right? You want. Go. OK, one more thing. This restaurant belongs to all of us. Eggplants. We all have a lot of passion for it. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Now it seems like we're closer together. Look at it, it's beautiful. Mine's really good. And I really like the sauce and the vegetables too. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It made me feel this much better. <laughs> I learned a lot from this experience about myself, what I'm capable of, what I can do. I learned how to manage this place. <laughs> After a less than spectacular start, the staff at Sante La Brea rallies and pulls off a successful relaunch. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've come a long way since the beginning of the week. Trust me, this place definitely felt like a completely different restaurant from the one I entered when I first arrived here. Hey, each and every one of you cared, full of passion, energetic, and more importantly, we didn't give up. Work together as a team, yes? You guys are a family. OK. Good night. Good to see you. Thank yeah? you so much. Line-wise, good to see you, you too. Appreciate Put a it. smile on that face. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Yeah? Pleasure yeah. meeting you. I need two minutes with you. Guys, give me two minutes, please, yes? Right, take a seat. OK. You have everything you need yes. to make this place successful. I honestly, truly believe in it. So manage it and don't be scared. I'll try. I seriously want this to work. I'm rooting for your success. Thank you so much. Thank you, yes. thank you again. Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> Make it work. You got two great boys there. Huh? Molodufu. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Thank you so much. Molodufu. <laughs> LaGrange, Illinois a well-to-do commuter town outside of Chicago. Terry and Carol were high school sweethearts here. Two years ago, they fulfilled a dream and bought Cafe 36, an upscale French bistro. There you are. Oh, thank you very and much. And for you, sir, my dream was to have my own restaurant, be my own boss. Okay. 
Thank you. I'm 58 years old is at a time when most people are thinking about retirement. I'm just going to head out of the way for a while, unless you... Okay, 6.30. Unless you want me to Philip. do something. I was very nervous with the whole idea, but let's try. Let's go forward with the dream that he wants to do. Okay, talk to you later. It gets me upset that sometimes he doesn't delegate. I'll do the vacuuming. I'll clean the bathrooms. I'll get the bar stocked. Leave this here for Terry. You go do what you got to do, then we'll go small. Terry, why are you doing this work? And you have a staff standing back there. Why are you doing it? OK. And the onion soup? And the onion soup. It's coming up. That's coming up right now. Pino, he's really a great chef. The food is tasty, it's good, and it's done right. Pinto's sanitation skills aren't the greatest. He, uh, he tastes a lot of his food as he's making it. The running joke is, you know, do you want a side of saliva with that? I don't like sticking my fingers in food. I'll give you a whole hug. I think that Cafe 36 would be a better restaurant without Pinto. Well, nobody's calling out tickets, so I don't know, you know? I mean, it's just somebody's got to be in charge. This is the problem. Terry and Carol keep talking about how Pinto is so awesome. And everybody else knows Pinto really can't run a kitchen. Table 13 waited 25 minutes for a house salad and a soup. The customer's reaction in the restaurant is very positive. Mine is not cooked. They were raw. I'm going to send mine back. Really, it's, it, we're hurting at this time. We'll have nights that we'll only see six or eight people for dinner service. We just don't understand what's not working. I am so sick to my stomach. I have chest pains. Carol and I have never taken a paycheck since we started the business. Here's the bills. More. More bills. I really love my husband. I want his dream to come true, that's all. It's that drive and that passion of the dream to say we want to make it happen. Thank you. Cafe 36. OK. Comes Ramsey. Glad. I just saw him walk by the window. Hi. Hello, Mr. Ramsey. Good afternoon. Nice sir. to see you. Pleasure to have you with us. My name is Terry Gilmer. I'm Jerry. one of the owners. This is my wife, Carol. Ah, How do you do? How are you? Very nice to meet uh, you. My, very my happy pleasure. To have you here. I'm so very happy to be here. Very excited. What kind of restaurant are you running? We try to style ourselves after what we call an American bistro. American We're trying bistro. to have fresh seafood, steaks, chops, sandwiches, uh, pasta. Yeah. I can't wait to yeah. taste. OK. Right over here, sir. Oh, the restaurant's big. How many seats have you got? Uh, we can seat about 85 in the main dining room. Right. And how many's booked for lunch today? We have 11 people in the restaurant right wow. now, and that's unfortunately a little bit of a typical day for us. Uh -huh. This is Douglas. Douglas will be your Douglas, server Douglas, today. When Chef Ramsay walked through our doors, you know, I was feeling really good. And I thought, you know, this is going to be great. Uh, the specials today, the uh, risotto today is a wild mushroom. That's pretty good. I'm dying to taste the risotto. OK. Yeah? Uh, this fascinates me. I've never seen a duck and a strawberry together. Yes. Well, you yeah. good chance to try it. And I'll take that rare, please. Hi, rare? Thank sure. you so much. The of the day is a sautéed Atlantic salmon. I serve an awful lot of them, but I'm not a big fan of any crepes at all. Doug, is this special? Okay, no. Okay, so the crepes aren't special? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, you know why, why don't we give them a shot? Then let's give them a shot. Yeah, exactly. Then you can tell me. I love that honesty. Right. Let's go for the crepes. I know not to order the crepes, because they were frozen. Frozen crepes are crap. I got three courses. Pinto, please fire the crepe for a soda and the duck salad, please. For Chef Ramsay to coming in, it's, it's very exciting. Am I nervous? No. I think everything is good. Always makes me feel nervous when I sit next to plastic grapes caked in dust. And the plates look like they've been picked up at the local flea market or the dollar shop. Is this the normal um, quiet so lunch? Is normally this? Lunches, we average three or four people. Three or four? Yeah. Unfortunately, one of the problems is we don't get the food out in time for to do a <laughs> business lunch. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Let me go check on your food. Certainly. Stuff. You ready? He wants a duck salad rare. That doesn't look very rare, right? No, I'll get it. You know what? Bring out the whole thing. The guy's full of shit. I'm ready for a nap. No one to know what comes for lunch. It's taking this long. Coming out way too slow. Well, we fired it all. Does food always take this long? Yeah. I see your food put up. I was just going to go grab it. I'm relying on the Chicago the suburb's train being pushed through the dining room is so old-fashioned. All right, Chef. Wow. 
Wild mushroom soda. Plain Lovely. as it's hot. That's the wild mushroom risotto. Yep. And Lovely. your duck salad. Rare. Yeah. Starburst. Place it dirty. They're just old plates, or? Yeah. OK. Risotto. And I really got nervous when he started eating. But I believe that the food here is well, well above excellence. The risotto's exploded with mush, and it just disintegrates in your mouth. And it's very salty. We'll bypass that. Don't ask him to make another one. Way too salty. Little rice is mushy. OK. Just telling you what he's saying. That's fine. The risotto came out nice. It was good. It was really good. I always know that risotto was overcooked all the time. Once Gordon Ramsay comes in here and tells him this is mush, this is, you know, it's like, yeah, I've been saying that for months, boy. Orange strawberry duck. Right. Ooh. Jesus. What a bizarre combination. What's with the walnuts? What are they doing? Candied the candied walnuts. Candied walnuts. As if we need more sweet on there. That definitely didn't work. Pinto, the crepes. OK. When you see a chef putting those ingredients together, it's, it's rather sad, really. Clearly, no one's controlling him, and he hasn't got a fucking clue. OK, mm -hmm. chef, the next course, your salmon crepes. They come out like that normally? All the time. What have they done? Chop them up? Um, no, that's how he makes them all the time. He just puts extra on top, I believe. Who makes the crepes? Um, I believe the crepes are store-bought. No. Yeah. Damn, look at that. And this is the speciality. I'm fed up with eating crap of the day. When you think of a crepe, you think of something nice, light, crispy, tasty, not something mushy and hideous. That is shocking. I thought you were looking are out you for me. Are you taking this away? Oh, yes, please. That's yeah. looking out for you. Just even going to bypass the pigs. You don't like it? None of them? I don't think there was anything he even said was OK. I was just in shock. And where did you train from? I trained uh, in Italy. And working in an Italian restaurant? Correct. I thought the risotto was an insult. It was mush. OK. Where is the risotto rice? It's in the cooler. Can you get it to me? Yes. I'm just amazed that you lived in Italy that length of time. You studied there, you worked there. And they didn't even teach you how to make risotto. What's that date? 2.20. What's the day today? 28. You've got the balls to walk in here on a Thursday and serve that shit from a week ago. It's mush. That was not bad, and uh, it's still good. Nothing smelled bad. Why, in your tiny mind, do you think it's still fresh from last Saturday? It was in the uh, reaching cooler. A reaching cooler confirms in your mind that it's fresh. Well, I'm sorry, but I mean, I, you know, this is really weird for me. This has been going on for a while. Pinto tries to stretch the food as far as it can go, and sometimes too far. Bring me everything in that fridge as a week old. You call yourself the executive chef? You should be ashamed. You served me risotto from a week old. Oh, my god. All this is from last week. I was very shocked to find out uh, that we were not serving fresh products. It was such a horrible feeling. And then I was getting very angry and mad inside myself to say, how can my staff do this? Chopped clams. We're keeping clams from a week ago. We'll smell go. that. What does it smell of? That doesn't it smell good. Smell? Congratulations. You haven't managed to kill anybody off. What are you doing? You're not a real chef, are you? Yes, I am. What? Any chef that keeps hold of that crap in his fridge for a week, two weeks, in my mind, has given up. A lack of caring, a lack of responsibility, and more importantly, ignorance. Fuck me, what more can you say? Carol and Terry have put everything they have into Cafe 36. Unfortunately, this restaurant may be too far gone to save. That lunchtime, now that was a tough one, that one. Are you trained in the business? Have you had a restaurant no, before? No, I have not. No, right. not me. Have you ever had a restaurant before? Absolutely not. You've never had a restaurant no. before? No. Terry, sorry, how much did you pay for the business? A million two five. No, million no. one. Million one, I'm sorry. We put our own savings, okay. IRA accounts. We had a large four-bedroom home that we sold and used the, the proceeds and the escrow from that to put into the business. And you're here lunch and dinner? Yes. Carol drops me off in the morning. <laughs> we only have one car between us. Uh, we sold the other one. Everything is very scary right now for Terry and I to see where we're headed. It's hard. It's hard when you just put your faith in something and really believe and believe and believe and 
It's still not coming. I respect the level of sacrifice here, but you're pondering and querying to why the business isn't coming through the door. Correct. It's on the back of the food. When food's crap, it's crap. The chef's cooking me a risotto with rice that's eight days old. I, I just, I'm still in shock. Yeah. You have to focus on the wrong, not ignore it. Right. Yes. We certainly got an eye opener today. Yeah, I'm panicking <laughs> on both of your behalf. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. You know that. No. Don't take it the wrong way, please. Right. No, I understand. And I'm here to make this work. You must understand that. And that's, you know, the objective from day one. Um, good you. to catch Thank up. You. Yeah, I, we got Thank a, you. We got, we got, we got, we got a mountain to climb, and yes. uh, it's, uh, it's a tough one. As the staff gets ready for dinner service, Gordon ventures into the kitchen to do a more comprehensive investigation. Pesto, vinaigrette, looks like oil out of my car engine. Unbelievable. Everything's frozen. Frozen and defrosted. This place is a mess. Pinto, certified exec. What's going on here? What's all this stuff floating in water? That's a group are taken out from the freezer to keep it fresh frozen. Fresh frozen? Yes, sir. There's no such thing. It's either fresh or it's frozen. I understand. What's this in water? It's a salmon, chef. Frozen? Yeah. It was a fresh frozen. You keep it frozen, fresh frozen, it stays more fresh. It's mad. It is. You're making all this fresh stuff, freezing it, and then taking it out two portions at a time per day. Because it doesn't sell enough. And what? If, if you had a plan of business like this. Nothing to do with business. That's lazy. Everything's frozen. Trout stuffing. So we take it out. We slow thaw it. We, yeah, cold. Cold. Boom. Cold. Yeah, slow thaw. We stuff the trout, then we refreeze the trout. Yes. I rest my case. Certified jerk. Chef the Booper was a strong smell. That's it. That's it. A chef's uh, opinion. It's dinner time, and Gordon is about to see how this fine dining restaurant is anything but fine. Hello, Hi. good evening. Welcome to Cafe 36. Welcome this evening. Would you care to see our wine list? I'll start here with you. You're Alice, up. how are they? They're terrific. Would you mm -hmm. be able to do the salmon material? Sure, I can do that. We need a pair of cobia and a salmon, too. I'm very nervous, very nervous and very scared, and we're just hoping for the best. Escargot? What is that? This is the butter that we use for the escargot. It's parsley, chive, garlic. The butter's frozen as well. What don't you freeze? Here's Chef Ramsey, one of the best chefs in the world, telling Pinto that you're doing shit wrong. In fact, you're doing it bad. It was great to see Pinto eat a little humble pie. What stuff don't you freeze? Give me one ingredient. Like a calamari comes in. Like the calamari. Comes in quick. We never freeze it. So the only stuff you don't freeze is the stuff that comes in frozen. Astounded by what he's just witnessed in the kitchen, Gordon seeks out the owners. Terry and Carol, I'm panicking. Pinto, it's crap. I, um, I don't get what he's trying to do there, Jimmy, in terms of all this fresh, frozen stuff. Everything in, fresh, cut up, portioned, frozen. It's 45 minutes into dinner service, and most customers are still waiting for their food. I feel like I'm drinking more than I'm eating. <laughs> you know, that's probably the reason I don't wear a watch, because it takes a head to longer. The nightmare of Cafe 36 is still food time. Not being able to get your food out of the kitchen really makes your job as a server difficult, because that's pretty much the description of your job, to serve. I think they got to catch the shrimp first. Is this slow? Everything seems so slow. Yes, sir. If you have one more person, then it goes faster. Yeah. If you had one more person, it will go faster? Yes, sir. Eduardo, no wonder you've gone so old. You've aged, waiting for the last main course. <laughs> huh? While the kitchen is struggling to cook the food, Gordon also sees a problem with the delivery. Another departure. Holy crap. I'm not aware of any particular reason why we serve on cards. I thought people got pushed into a, right. a mortuary on trolleys, no? Right. Not serving food. Oh, jeez. <laughs> would you like to hold the plate by the hand, or would you want to push a trolley all day long? I would rather hold them by my hand. 
when the orders finally make it to the tables, customers find it's not worth the wait. No, this is rare. It's rare. Harry, is that what you ordered? I ordered no, medium. medium. Bloody rare. Yeah, I might have to send this one back. I'll be right back. Please. The New York's supposed to be medium. Huh? The New York's supposed to be medium. What is it? Medium rare, right? They said Ticket medium. says medium. Well, okay. They said medium when I was here. Why don't you just put it under the grill, Pinto, as if we're in a position to argue? My things come back, it doesn't mean I'm a bad cook. And it's not just Chef Pinto's cooking that catches Gordon's eye. Well, these are pitiful. They're not even seasoned asparagus, are they? No, not right now. They're very expensive. They're very expensive, so why have you got them on? A veggie of the day. A veggie of the day? Yes. Aren't yeah. you bothered about the cost? Yeah, it comes from the different part of the world, Chef. We, we can get it. It comes from the different part of the world. Are you listening to this? Yes, Chef. It's the most expensive vegetable on the market. You want that? And it's out of season. And you've just put them on four dishes. This is unbelievable. Tonight, I'm starting to see new cooking techniques that I've never, ever seen before. Slow thaw, fresh frozen, but what's becoming really clear is that he seriously is taking this lovely couple for a ride, and it's got to stop. This is true about Pinto. He's telling you he's screwing you. Is that, could that be? I hope not. We don't know our ass from a hole in the ground. I'm so scared. During dinner service, owners Carol and Terry were stunned by Gordon's criticism of their head chef, Pinto. We don't know our ass from a hole in the ground. I'm so scared. He opened our eyes to a lot of things throughout the restaurant that people have been taking advantage of us, so we have to take a good, hard look at everything. After a long, difficult dinner service, the customers who have eaten are not exactly thrilled. Chicken's a little overdone. OK, so too soupy and the chicken is overdone. I didn't eat much of my salad because I didn't really care for the dressing. And those who haven't been served are not willing to wait. Oh, we got here at 5 after 7. <laughs> OK, so <laughs> five, five minutes, I'll and that's five minutes it. And OK. okay. All right, table five's going to walk out in five minutes. Or is this the pace we move at? Is this the fastest we go? Pinto has one speed, and that speed is fuck you. How long has it been? Gosh. Almost two and a half hours. Some of the customers have given up completely on Cafe 36 and are leaving without even eating an appetizer. It's just been a long day. I have to really take it all in. It hurts. After a rough night, Gordon confronts the staff. Overall, honestly, pretty disappointing, both in the kitchen and the dining room. There's one thing in here that I would change instantly. On the back of my experience today, and that's you. Why? You are the executive chef. You're supposed to be a leader, a motivator. You are seriously, seriously leading this place into bankruptcy. Because the big problem in this restaurant, Pinto, is in the kitchen. Fresh frozen, slow thaw. I think that Pinto deserved every single solitary second of that ass reaming that he got from Gordon. If this was your restaurant, would you be freezing everything, portioning it, and then dropping in bowls of water to defrost it to recook it? Okay. Yes or no? No, I wouldn't. Embarrassing! Do you think I enjoyed standing there and listening to this? You know, I'm a proud man. Get the message. Now show me your pride. Chef, because I'm fucking waiting. And unfortunately, whether you like it or not, the two people behind you, it's them you're dragging down. That's why I'm pissed. So cut the bullshit. Get ready for some changes because Cafe 36 needs it urgently. Good night. After witnessing a night of inefficient and bizarre cooking techniques, Gordon's first priority is to implement changes in the kitchen. If there's one thing this restaurant needs right now, it's something authentic, yes? Yes. This restaurant needs a good risotto. You, you, and me, we're going to cook a risotto together. Here, 
is all our fresh ingredients. When I say fresh, I mean fresh. I bought them myself this morning. Are you ready? Yes, yes. yes. Let's go. Cooking with the chef Ramsey was, it was pressure. There was a lot of pressure I was on. This is just a really nice, simple uh, porcini risotto. Mushrooms in. That's sauteed already. Finished with Parmesan cheese and a little knob of butter. Make sure you're happy with it. Mushroom risotto. First change, yeah, risotto, yeah. Second change, we'll be taking the plates out tonight by hand, faster and not running up and down with this fucking thing all the way up. Hey, we're going to carry the plates, yeah, by hand. When Chef Ramsay took the carts off the floor, it was great. I hated them from day one, so to me, it was like, yes. <laughs> I do have a usage for the trolleys, because tonight, We'll come up with a goat's cheese salad special, where you'll be dressing the salad. Gives us more time in the kitchen, and we'll be doing, like, goat's cheese fritters. I absolutely love the idea of having the salad made at the table site. Sort of a little bit of entertainment and showmanship. Yeah, I mix greens in. Touch of salt, touch of pepper, honey mustard vinaigrette. Yeah? I goat's cheese fritters. Yeah, one, two. There we go, bang. Salad on, madame. And madam. So, light, vibrant, exciting, and more importantly, we're changing today. We're changing. changing. We're changing big time, yes? As Gordon starts to turn around Cafe 36, he knows that what really needs to change is Terry. I'm going to identify your uh, weaknesses and improve your strengths. Right. And, you know, Pinto is a big weakness. And don't ever be intimidated by controlling chefs. And you've got to right. be strong. You must be strong. Absolutely. And I can see that now. And I think a lot of it was I'm more involved in, you know, the mundane daily operation, the mm -hmm. things that I shouldn't be doing, mm -hmm. and not watching the things that I should. And I mm -hmm. can see that now. What's at stake is my dream, and I'm not going to let anybody take it away from me. And you have got to start being firm, because if you're not firm, they're never ever going to respect you. Good evening. Yeah. Welcome this evening. Four. We have you right over here. Lots of people coming. All right, let's rock and roll. Hi, how are Hello, you? Hello, how are you tonight? Good. The feeling going into service. There you are, man. Getting all charged up and ready to go. Let's all pull together and let's get this roll. The chef has prepared a porcini mushroom risotto today. My special salad is a goat cheese fritter salad. Cheese salad. OK. Two salads. I'm going to have that filet, please. I'd like your filet. Ah, uh, medium. OK, take control now, yeah? You listen and say yes or no, yeah? Yes, yes. Let's Too go. Masala. Hey, you fill it. Yeah, medium on, yes? New York strip medium, yeah? What's next, please? Hey, I got a crab cakes, a smoked salmon appetizer, and an onion soup, please. Right now, I'm pretty stressed out about tonight. I don't want anything to go like last night. We're trying to make this thing smooth the operation tonight. Two risotto, a trout, and a scallop. OK, good. Let's go. Two risotto, yes? Such a presentation. First one I've ever done. Thank you. Looks good. The goat cheese is excellent. But while the special salads are a huge hit, they haven't had their appetizer yet on this table. It's going to take a few minutes. How long has it been since we got half hour or so? Cafe 36's characteristically slow service continues to leave customers waiting. 45 minutes already. Right. Well, we go with that one now, yeah? Two salmon, one shank, one 36 bill, yes? Working, chef. Working, yeah. How long? Three minutes, four minutes. I'm ready, I'm on it. Pinter, change gear. You always told changing gear? Yep. Unfortunately, you're still in neutral. Is it the risotto that's taking so long? I'm sorry, I don't know why. I, to, I swear it should be the next ticket up. I'm tired of working someplace where I can't get the food out, I can't service my customers. Five has been waiting no less than an hour and 15 to an hour. It's going to be like a five minutes. All right, they told me that like 30 minutes okay. ago. I swear to God. I just think Pinto's making this crap up as he goes along. It's all a lie. Unbelievable. My God. You know, red veggies for one, for two there. That, that, that's what I said. Oh, say it over and over. First time you said one, then two, no, and then I one. No, I didn't. You said you got one there, and it's two I know. veggies. I said three. Look at the book. Look at the book. Hey, I got shit to do. I, I know. Bye. Pinto, we have to speed up over here now, yeah? Yeah? We'll work as a team, please, yeah? yeah? Last night you worked as individuals. Tonight we're going to work as a team, yeah? Yes, yeah. Let's go. I'm not having food hanging around tonight. No, no chance. They just got theirs. They were seated before us, so it's been, it's been a while, though. Chef Pinto, 
Can you lie to me and tell me it's almost ready? How long, baby? It's gonna take a few minutes, bro. I can't fire all these pans. I just can't do it. We're halfway through service, and the good news is we've sold 42 salads, which is great. Sadly, the bad news is that Barney and Pinto, they don't like each other, and that's affecting the service. Things are slowing down, and customers are now starting to complain. Damn. We should have another New York medium. All right? No. You guys aren't even working together. Come on, Barney, you got to keep it driving. Don't let it sink. Let's go. I don't know where we are. I don't know what you guys are firing. You haven't called anything out. Huh? I mean, I don't oh, know okay. what's going on. Pinto doesn't listen to me, and I don't, there's got to be a better system than what we're doing because it's just not working. It's been a long wait. This is cold. It isn't even hot. And not even the center is hot. I'm going to go ahead and take these. This is the entree size portion, correct? That's not an entree. That's appetizer. Pinto really can't cook on the line, and Pinto really can't run a kitchen. On the ticket, it's got risotto dinner. Unbelievable. Barney, talk to your cook, yeah? Let's go. make it a larger portion. And it's too thick. Pour some more okay. stock in there. OK, I'll thin it down. Oh, my god. Now we're pulling that down. We're going down, boys. Just just two seconds, you. You as well, yeah? Just come here for two seconds. You, I'm not doing that in front of the coach. Come here, you. None of you are talking. You have got to talk together. He needs you, yeah? You need him. So we go back in there and we work at it. If he's sauteing, you've got to expedite. He's trying to expedite, plate, and cook. He can't get in front of the tickets, OK? Now, come on! I agree entirely with what Chef Ramsey had to say about our performance this evening. We weren't working together as a team, and it hurt us. It should be up in just moments. So all I'm doing is lying to people right now. That's it. You know, I'm safe. With some of his customers still waiting for their food and others giving up altogether, Brian reaches his breaking point. Now, I got to say two things that are really hard. You're hiding, and you need to be fired. Let me tell you something now. You work for me. I don't work for you. You're a waiter. Remember who you work for. I'm sorry, I don't know why. I, I swear it should be the next ticket up. Tonight, the waiters of Cafe 36 took a lot of heat for the problems in the kitchen, and Brian is truly frustrated. Now, I got to say two things that are really hard. You're hiding, and you need to be fired. Let me tell you something now. You work for me. I don't work for you. Brian made some very harsh comments that were extremely out of place, and it made me very upset to the point that I almost fired him on the spot. But this has gone on way too far. He's not. If you don't like working it. here, then keep your opinion to yourself. I want Terry to start telling everybody what to do instead of letting the inmates run the asylum. You're a waiter. Remember who you work for. After experiencing yet another disappointing dinner service, Gordon is curious to hear what the head chef has to say. OK. Um, Pinto, what do you think about tonight's service? It was, it was excellent. It really was. Everybody got involved. What kitchen were you in? Pardon me? Uh, Barney, truthfully, is that the way you saw service tonight? No, I thought it was bad. It was really rough. Once again, complete different opinions. You're right, though. Service was terrible. Nothing was coming together. No communication, no coordination, no teamwork. Customers waited tonight. They waited big time. What did we do? What's going on? How can this happen to us? What did we do? Let me just give you three major issues that's wrong with this restaurant. The first issue is the service is way too slow. The second problem, the food is too inconsistent. Inconsistency is a killer. The third reason, and one of the most important reasons why this restaurant is not busy, it's not contemporary. A 1970s restaurant trying to compete in the 2008 market. We're behind the times. We are behind the times. OK, I'm going now. I'm, I'm working all night. You know, by the time I see you tomorrow morning, we should have a well-put-together plan. Good night. That night, Gordon and his team went to work, doing away with the restaurant's old-fashioned and outdated look, creating a more contemporary restaurant. Right, good, good morning. morning. How are you feeling? No, I'm thrilled. A big day today, excited. yes? Today's relaunch day. We're going to turn it around, yeah, and put it back on the map. In we go. 
Come through, come through, come through. Oh, wow. oh my God. How cool is this? <gasps> oh, it's God. modern. It's awesome. <laughs> it's oh, wow. We've got a black and white color theme. Yes. And who knew I love black and white so much? Oh my God. It's been brought up into the 21st century. Beautiful. It's a new restaurant. When I walked in the door, I just instantly felt alive. We've got rid of the old fuddy duddy stuff. And now it's a really nice, sharp, cutting edge feel. I absolutely am getting choked up. It's just. What a dream. Hey, look at the plates. I... No more mismatched china. All the same. It's wonderful. It's amazing. Beautiful. Now that we have matching plates, <laughs> it looks like we know what we're doing back here. The booths have been upholstered. I love the black. We've got new chandeliers. I'm just so thankful. It's unbelievable. A restaurant can't just survive on a new decor. Yes, it needs a new menu yet yeah, to go with it. So we've gone modern, yes. fresh approach, and more importantly, we've condensed the menu. I think the kitchen should respond favorably to the new menu. Unless they screw it up with their usual bullshit, it should work out. It's seasonal as well. We have everything in season. I think that the new menu is going to make the kitchen faster. And before dinner, we'll make sure we taste one of everything. Yes, so you know what you're selling. Tonight, head chef Pinto is cooking from the newly designed menu and has one more chance to prove himself to Chef Ramsay. First of all, just look at the difference. Appearance, plates, portion size. Start from the top, onion soup gratiné, yeah? Perfect for the winter. Crab cakes, grilled chicken sandwich, a grilled albacore tuna, Mediterranean ragu, filet mignon tartare. Uh, you like steak tartare? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> and then one of my favorites, the duck confit. Have a little taste, get familiar with the uh, taste and textures. I love that tartare. Wonderful. It's a whole new beginning, and Chef Ramsay did that for us. Let's take advantage of tonight, and let's show LaGrange, yeah, what we're made of. With the new menu and decor, Carol and Terry face one of the most important nights ever at Cafe 36. Well, welcome to Cafe 36. We're glad to have you here at our grand reopening. Mm -hmm. Personality has changed. It's more Carol and Terry's. When the orders come in, can we call out the orders so we got some form of vibrance in here a little right. bit, yes? Good chef. Yeah. And what do you think of the new menu? I think it's sharp. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, Good. it's night and day. Tonight, we have to be faster, yeah, and keep the standards up, yes? Right, chef. Big, big, big night tonight. And personally, I've never, ever wanted a dinner service to work as well as tonight because of Terry and Carol, because they so deserve it. And they're really endearing. But I honestly hope that Pinto doesn't screw this one up. Please, not tonight. Order in. Order on, Pinto. All right, we're coming up with Pinto. Risotto. Order on. Mario, one crab cakes. As the orders make their way to the dining room. Brian. Your food's here. The dinner service gets off to a good start. That's good. Oh, I should have got done. So you just got your entrees. How is everything so far? Really good. 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 Delicious. Fresh food, simple menu. Love it. All right, am I ever going to get a crab cake with this? Right, talk to me. Next table coming, please. Mario, I got a four. Four crab cakes. But barely an hour into service, and the kitchen's bad habits are back. Table number, please. 13, please. 13. How long? Just like uh, six minutes. Oh, my God, it's still not ready? I got every burner full, man. If one empties, I put something else on it, OK? Pinto, we have to go a little bit now, yeah? When you're looking at all these tickets, sometimes things can be a little slow. Pinto, if we go quiet, nothing's happening. We need some form of voice in here. Pinto was running the tickets while Pinto got behind. But he's the chef, and he should be in control of the situation. All right, come on, guys, you've got to talk to each other. Yes, yes. We just gotta to talk to each other, guys. Pinto. 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 Executive chef certified dick. Once again, Pinto's inefficiency in the kitchen is upsetting both customers we want to eat. and staff. I'm just pissed off. I just can't take this, man. I hope Terry strains us out. The real problem right now is they can't seem to finish any food back there. 
It's just like really bad sex. It keeps going on and on, and at some point you just wish it would be over. Cancel my entree. Cancel your entree. Right, I'm leaving. It's been more than fair. It's been 6:30. It's been three and a half hours. Yes, Rob. Yeah, it's a little. I've got a pork chop. Little hectic tonight. Pintos gotta go. Just stand and do nothing. I know. I agree. Nobody's communicating. No one's even stepping up to the mark. And watch what Barney's doing. Barney's now trying to read the tickets, cook, saute, and expedite. Yeah? And not Pinto is just trying to dress the salad. Not good enough. That's not a no, team effort. Not, I could see it Nothing's been directed, and it's a it's fucking not, it's journal. No, no, Unbelievable. Gordon Ramsay really did give me a swift kick in the butt to say, you know, wake up. If you're going to have your business be a success, you have to take charge. What are we waiting on? Where are we at? So I need us two crab cakes right now. Coming up. All right, come on, guys. Hey. I need to get this food out. I got tables I got to turn. We can't fall behind. Thank you, Eddie. Go. All right. Talk to me. What's next? With Terry finally staying on top of his chef. Two steak tartare. Apple salad, crab cake. The kitchen gets back on track. Cheers. Cheers. You got our food. Thank you. Two salmon. There's two salmon in the oven. OK, beautiful. Keep it coming, guys. I got to get this dining room turned over. We got a lot of people waiting. I think Terry's eyes have been opened up. Two risottos. Two risotto play right there. You know, you should give everybody the benefit of the doubt, but you should also demand performance out of them. That's all I want is just communication. For the first time since Gordon's arrival, the back of the house. Let's see if we can finish these last two tables strong, shall we? Yeah? Yippee. Let's go. Is in sync with the front. Follow, I'm following. Worth yeah. the wait. Worth the wait. Here, here to Terry. Lively. Terry Hello. Carroll. Yep. And it was Terry who made it happen. You have a beautiful restaurant. Thank you. It is. It's, it's, it's so stunning. much more beautiful. Yes. And an amazing, amazing, amazing potential. Yeah. Very rare you come across a couple today in this industry. On the back of the commitment it takes, the sacrifice, the personal life, you're so unselfish, it's untrue. And you're so perfect for each other. It's extraordinary. And that's quite rare. And I really mean that. I can't tell you what to do with Pinto, but you know my feelings. Mm -hmm. But do. when you make a decision, I hope to hell that you don't make it too late. You talked about change, you know, and that we have to do that, and I can't, yes. you know, hold back any longer. No more oldies on the radio. No more. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing I've learned is I have to definitely be more aggressive in running my business. I have to take full charge and I have to change, and I've already changed. You've done so much for us. Yeah. Mm. And it's just an incredible feeling that you've done that for us. Uh, you know, you said we had to get rid of the old, and yeah. back from the 30s. Yes. 30 years ago. Yeah, so we got to... Oh, you guys. Oh, you're so so this is from our oh, own personal crazy. wine collection. Oh, my God, no, I can't take that. Come on. That's a bottle of Chateau Chem 1976. You said I would 30 years ago, so we're past it. No, oh, God. <laughs> Can I keep it here for when I come back? Absolutely. And when I come back, we can have a glass together. We would love that. Would you? Absolutely. Yes. God, what are you two like? You two, honestly. Honestly, you're like the most perfect mum and dad. Unbelievable. Right. Thank you so much. Oh, dear. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Yes, you. Thank you. And you deserve everything. Thank you. you know that. You stand strong. And you listen to this lady, yes? Yes. She's the love of my life. Good to see you. Thank you, darling. Congratulations. So much. There's absolutely uh, a light at the end of the tunnel. And in fact, it's bigger than just a light. I think there's a whole sunshine coming out. <laughs> Best wishes. Thank you. Yes. We got work to do, right? Yeah, we do. No, they do. <laughs> That's tough, really tough. What can you say about a couple that have sacrificed so much to get where they have today? And what can you say about a couple that are so devoted to each other? Incredible. I know what you can say. Damn, I hope they succeed, because they deserve to. So much. There is one last footnote to this story. Relaunch night was the last night Pinto worked at Cafe 36. He left the very next day. And Barney was promoted to head chef. Lancaster, California. 
70 miles north of Los Angeles is home to Casa Roma, the oldest restaurant in the city. How's your pizza, guys? In spite of having absolutely no restaurant experience, Nyla and her son Jeremy bought this failing landmark restaurant with the hope of turning it around. Two and a half years ago, I was in real estate. I was sitting around looking at business opportunities, and I found Casa Roma. I talked my oldest son into getting in with me, and had we had known the restaurant business very well, we probably wouldn't have done it. We got to get this place turned soon. Me and my mom thought we were buying a restaurant with a bar attached to it. You guys want to sit in the dining room, or are you going to go to the bar? Okay. But really, it just was a bar with a restaurant attached to it. <laughs> my bar does all my business. It's like two different countries. Our bar is always packed, and the restaurant sits empty. In food on a good night, I'm making 175. On a slow night, I'm making $9. I didn't want to ask you how many you fucking drama. That's bullshit, and you know it. We've had almost 20 chefs over the last two and a half years, but I've had Drew for a year and Eric for almost six months. Eric's a huge reason why Casa Roma isn't doing well. Not one table! Not one table's had their food yet. He lacks getting the food out in a timely fashion. And his food is very bland. It's dry. Yeah. I, don't, I lost my appetite. I'm going to need five chicken breasts. I'm good at this. I'm good at it. Do I make it look fancy? Do I, can I put pine trees and stuff? That's not what I do. I make the food taste good, it's presentable, and it's like, shit, that's pretty damn good. Eric and I do not get along in the kitchen because he doesn't produce very well, and he expects me to do everything. I need every fucking one of my pants right now. We totally are in dire need of Chef Ramsey's help because there's something that's got to be turned around about this place because it definitely is a nightmare. If I closed down, I don't know what I would do. I raised four boys and uh, ran, ran a home my whole life. Five years ago, I got a divorce. And then I bought this place two and a half years ago, and it kind of took up the, the time. I don't care about getting rich from here. I just, it would be nice to pay my bills, you know, and have some, some extra money at the end of the month. Casa Roma, since 1958. This restaurant's nearly 50 years old, and by looking at the sign, it shows. Time to find out what it looks like inside. Hi. How are you? Oh, hi. Uh, nice to see you all. Nice to meet you. And this is Nyla. I'm Nyla. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. This is my son, Jeremy. Jeremy, how are you, buddy? Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Now, this is uh, very cozy. No windows anywhere? No, not no, the bar part. No. We have a restaurant part over there. Dining okay. room's over there. In terms of business, I mean, the bar's obviously busy. Um, bar's always busy. Bar's always busy. Yes. Always busy. Nice. It's our restaurant we can't get going mm -hmm. to save our lives. What restaurant were you working in before you got here? I wasn't. He wasn't. I work in the grocery store and he works in carpet cleaning. Grocery store and carpet cleaning. I know. <laughs> yeah. Is that blood down there? What is that? No. No? Don't just dirt. Know. Oh, just dirt. Dirt. And just out of interest, with no previous restaurant experience anywhere, why would you open a restaurant if you've never worked in one? Because we're insane. So, um, I think it's about time I had a little taste. Okay. Yeah? Sounds okay. Good. Where's the dining room? Right through, right here. through here. Right through there. Jesus, that carpet's disgusting. I was so excited whenever Chef Ramsay walked in the door. It was like, wow, I can't even believe he's here. I thought, well, here we go. He's going to see the nightmare I'm really living. Ugh. Jesus. Crusty bits of lime, lemon, and bits of tissue on my table. Hello. Hello. How, How are, are you? you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good. I'm uh, Ashley. Ashley, nice to see you, darling. So I'm, nice to meet you. Can I just give you those? They're, yeah, they're on the table and little bits of, I think, lime back from 1958. Oh, nice. Just down the side of the back of my oh. uh, chair. Sorry, darling. Excuse okay. me. Excellent. You see, it's, I feel like a, I mean, I, I, I know I'm not exactly the smallest, <laughs> but I, I feel like I'm just going to go through. Is that normal like that? No, it's not. No, no it's what not. I mean, I'll, I'll fix it in a minute. Um, Casa Roma, fine Italian dining. Dining. Oh. Or is that just an Italian spelling? <laughs> no? Weird. Anyway, um, I'll start off with the stuffed mushrooms, please. The stuffed mushrooms? The Monte Cristo. I'll go for that as well. Monte Cristo? Yeah, I'm hungry, as you can see. And finally, I'm dying to taste a pizza. A Casa Roma Deluxe. What size would you like with uh, Yeah, let's go for medium. Medium? Yeah. Thank you, my darling. You already got it? Leave this damn fucking thing open. 
Yeah, I got a big order. People say, well, he's a five-star Michelin chef. OK, so he's got four tires and a spare. Kiss my ass. That means nothing to me. The shit on the blinds there is disgusting. Oh, my god. Why are you hiding there? You're trying to see? Have they brought any food to you? Uh, yes, I found some limes and lemons dehydrated down the side of my uh, chair and bits of uh, tissue left on the uh, table. Do you have a cleaner in here? Yes, we do. Christ almighty. Is she blind? Probably. Hey, you're not doing nothing right now? I'm cleaning up their stuff before give me, they... Give me a glass of ice water, please. White ice water? Yeah. Nyla, can I have an ice water, please? Way to go. Two. She's standing right there. Oh, my God. It's um, zero for zero. 15 minutes in, nothing. I'm starving. We got some appetizers coming, right? What? Appetizers coming. It's cooking. Fucking thing. That's what snapped. Damn. We got to get rid of all these dirty dishes. Our choke heart is killing too. me. Spend more time cleaning up after his ass with fucking make shit. That's better. A proper seat. Just turn that one. Turn it's it. done. No, it's not. Turn it. Why is the kitchen so slow? If somebody wants me, I'm out back. We're past the half hour mark now, so hey, things are looking uh, ooh la la. Nope. Hey, what about appetizers? They're all cooking. Oh, you want to start on those pizzas Just then? Relax, take a chill. I might as well keep fit and do something, can I? No. Go for a job. Got a marathon coming up. Nothing wrong with working off for lunch when you get it. Do you have anything on that last order ready? Or What's close? that? Any, anything on that last order ready or close? No, we're putting everything up at one time. We're just right. waiting for the sandwich and the pizza. You want to start laying? Yeah, if you got one thing close, you you yeah, one thing close lay it out. OK. Why well, the fuck you want to do that? But OK. OK. We got the appetizers. Oh, jeez. OK, great. Yeah, Ooh, I was nodding off, then. Huh? I was nodding off. I'm so I know, sorry. I saw that. Thank you, Madonna. And that's stuff with crab. Right. Lovely. OK. Thank you, Madonna. You're welcome. Wow. Fine mushrooms. Jesus. Soggy. Tasteless. There's not even crab or any form of flavor or texture or anything in there. But what worries me more than anything, they're just full of water. What is that? How is everything? Um, yeah, pretty vile. Um, are they frozen, the mushrooms? Um, they should be making them fresh. Really? Yes. <laughs> Fucker didn't work. I told you. The um, stuffed mushrooms that he got, because you could definitely tell because he tastes that it was frozen. And he didn't like those at all either. Deluxe pizza. What is that? What's that sandwich? That's an ugly sandwich. Yeah, no shit. I'm not worried about him. Let's see what he's got. If he wants to bitch and moan, that's his drama. Okay. Here's it. The deluxe, and then here's your Monte Crisco. Thank you. Is that powdered sugar? Yes. On the sandwich? Yes. With fries? Yes. Is that popular? No. Jesus. It's actually dripping. Fat. Ew. When Chef Ramsay squeezed the Monte Crisco and all that oil came out, that really disgusted me. That was very disgusting. Pizza. Maybe the best is for last. Jesus. Unfortunately, the dough is raw, so thick. It's like wallpaper paste, raw. Oh, my God. And that's why, clearly, there's nobody in the restaurant. 
because the only people that can eat this kind of shit are the ones in the bar. Drunk. After a long wait in an empty restaurant for some horrible food, Gordon gathers the staff. So you're the sous chef, and you're the head chef. Yeah. Sure. To discuss the nightmare that is Casa Roma. Lunch. Absolutely embarrassing. The fried sandwich. I, what planet are you on when you put that shit together? Casa Roma celebrates its 50th year this year. Yeah, I mean, what a fucking embarrassment. Eric, you knew I was coming for lunch today. I didn't know when you're, who's you were. I said, which one is this? They come, they wouldn't tell me. Ashley. You never asked which one. And it shouldn't matter if it was him or her it doesn't or whoever. Matter. I came here today, yeah, to taste your best, like any chef would do when they go into each other's restaurants, yeah? I'm not here to fucking catch you off guard, so cut the limp dick excuses and give me some fucking respect for the restaurant alone. It was a bad fucking day, pal. Now you're bad pushing it enough. I get it, we understand. A bad day? Yeah, shit happens. You never had a bad day. I do have bad days all the time. Obviously, have one today. Just relax, take a chill pill, reload and do it again. What the big problem is with you, Eric, you've accepted it. In your opinion only. What? What part of that don't you freaking understand? What do you mean, freaking understand? Yeah, what part of that don't you understand? In your opinion only. I haven't accepted it. Yeah, and I fuck up stuff. Yeah, I fuck up. So I try and reload and redo it. There's nothing edible. Move out of the way. Why are you walking away, Eric? Uh, so I don't fucking rip your head off. Appalled by the food, Chef Ramsay's little chat with head chef Eric didn't exactly go over well. Lunch. Absolutely embarrassing. What planet are you on when you put that shit together? Why are you walking away, Eric? So I don't fucking rip your head off? I was in awe when Eric talked to Chef Ramsay like that. He's coming here to help us out. Don't be rude to him. You got two minutes? Two minutes? I've got a week. I'm not gonna give you no excuses at all, all right? Long days. Haven't been feeling 100%, but I'm here anyway. You do what you gotta do. You work, try to get these people better. Let me reload and see what we can do again. Okay. I think we, we got fucking caught flat-footed, but I get to reload one time. I won't get caught flat-footed again. You can bet your ass on that. Is that what we're writing? Yep. C-E-C-S-A-N. Sicilian what? That's right. That isn't even how you spell Sicilian. Does anybody know how to spell it? Or it might be Sicilian. Sicilian's from Sicily. Okay, really? Because S-I-C-I-L-Y, I don't think there'd be a Y. No, it's I-L-I-N. Sicilian. There we go. Thank God you guys saw that. Uh, do you work here or are you just bypassing? Come around so we can say hello. This is Jimmy. Jimmy, and what do you do? Um, I'm the son of the owners. And so what do you do? A little bit of everything. Uh -huh. Just try and help out. So what's that in there? Cranberry juice. Cranberry juice? Mm -hmm. Nice. A little vodka. Vodka and cranberry yes. juice? Yes, yes. I see you drink and work at the same time. No, I don't work. Oh, you're not working? No, Sorry, I don't, no, here no. To work. Okay, no, right. no, no, no. So what do you do then outside of here? What's your job? What's your oh, career? I do construction. Heavy okay, so no one's got any cooking or restaurant experience? No, no. Ah. Not at all. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, guys, how you doing? Get your chair here, and I'll put you one on the end. I'm going to have the chicken parmesan. He's going to have the chicken nuggets and fries. Okay, I got calamari to start, and then kids' chicken nuggets and with fries. Excuse me? Do you have any questions about the work? Here's spaghetti alfredo. I'm so scampy. Chicken parm, Asian marinara. Okay. Eric, you want me to saute, man? Do you want me to saute? Eric and I do not get along in the kitchen because we don't really communicate very well. Do you prefer working on your own? Mm, just sometimes, yeah. I can tell. Why is that? She's not saying anything. Just, just doing what I got to do. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh. Sure, Steph Mashers, you're welcome. Okay. You dig in. <laughs> Is it cooked? <laughs> you think? You're sick. No. <laughs> you send that bag. This sausage is not done. Eric, this sausage isn't done. 
I ain't got time for this. It looks like it's frozen. I'm sorry about that, guys. Working here is life for us. It's what pays our bills. And to know that the cook is keeping us from making money, it's hard on us. What was wrong with the calamari? Uh, what happened to the calamari that just came back? They said that it tastes like it was frozen. Oh, is this normal? Yes. Well, you know, what can you do? Drew, I need one, two, three, four, five chicken breasts, Drew. Eric doesn't ever really push to get it done. He just keeps telling me, oh, it's OK, I got it. Everything's going to be fine. But it's not. Did you get the lasagna, Drew, or no? Damn it, am I the only one that fucking works here? It's an hour into dinner service, and several appetizers are getting sent back to the kitchen. It's good. Yeah, definitely cool. go back. And only one table has received its entrees. Okay. This is probably the worst shrimp scampi that I've ever had in my entire life. Let me take it back to the chef and explain it to him. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. OK, guys, listen. Worst shrimp scampi they ever had. And they say it, no flavor at all. Well, you know, what can you do? Give me some water, Jimmy. When food comes back like that, the shrimps, you never taste it? Well, you know, what can you do? I've never seen two cooks so far apart from each other up until now. I get frustrated, but try not to get angry at people. You know, everybody says I'm a motherfucker anyway. So why should I perpetuate the problem that's not necessary? But you need help. If you don't get help, we're going to be in the shit in the next 10, 15 minutes, no? Is it really 8.30 already? It's true. Yeah. We've been here for two hours, and I'm calling you. Is this normal? This is fucking normal. This is incredible. Right through those doors has to be, for me, one of the worst restaurants I've ever seen in my entire cooking career. The chef doesn't give a fuck. The owner's completely clueless, and not any form of communication between the kitchen, the restaurant, and the management. It's a fucking shambles. What are we waiting on now, Ashley? I'm still waiting on chicken piccata with panay marinara, an individual kid's pepperoni pizza, half order spaghetti with meat sauce, eggplant parmesan with angel and meat, chicken piccata, angel with marinara, three chicken parms, and a veal parmesan for just one table. I felt like crying because it was that embarrassing for me. Eric. Yes, sir. Yeah, can I have your undivided attention? Sure. Nothing's happening. We served one table of four, one table of two. For the last three tickets, half the order's gone out. Half is still on the board. You haven't got a clue what's going on. You're running around crazy. What chance have we got serving one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tables? You asked for one more cracker at lunchtime. Let me go, big boy. Let me go. I want to do it again. We're spinning around and serving shit. Do me a favor. Close the fucking restaurant. I can't stand any longer and watch that embarrassment. Serving any more dinners tonight? I need the door fucking closed. Forget it. All right. We're done for the night. This is a joke, guys. You're pissed off. You're frustrated. Forget it. Good night. What restaurant stops their business and tells everybody that they have to leave? There's no excuse. At a point in the service when more food was being returned than sent out... I need the door fucking closed. Gordon shut down the restaurant. As of now, we're not going to be serving any more dinners tonight. And confronted the chefs about the problems in the kitchen. This is a joke, guys. You're pissed off. You're frustrated. Forget it. Good night. It's now time for the cold, hard facts with owner Nyla. I don't even know where to start with a chef that can't even cook something basic. Why are you employing a chef that is that incompetent? Darling, he's not in the slightest bit interested in fucking making it work. He doesn't give a fuck about his cooking, doesn't give a fuck about you, and he's here for one thing and one thing only, hey, money. Jack. And the only restaurant that fucking guy will ever get a job is in a restaurant that doesn't have any customers. Have you got any chance of surviving here? Get rid of him. What are you scared of? Talk Nothing. to me. There's well, got to be something. Where am I going to? Well, I need to find another chef. So, Drew, what's wrong with Drew? Drew, I think, can carry it off. So get rid of it. OK. Go. Fuck me. Unfucking believable. Hey, 
Okay. I'm sorry. I know. But no, you no, don't no, know. No, no, I feel bad. Just wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Jeremy, come I here. I feel bad. I feel real bad. The whole thing is this. This isn't the first time you've let us down. I don't know. I just can't doing. do it. I know, but I can't do it. Eric, I gotta make. You guys get your paycheck every week. Jeremy and I never take a dime out we of here. Shut up. What, I know, but I mean, the whole thing's just not gonna work because you. Okay, you, so what do you wanna do? I, to we're gonna part ways. Okay, no problem. Okay. Okay. Damn it. I got fucked on that deal. You couldn't pull off lunch, couldn't pull off dinner, and so we just had to let him go. I can't, you know, I can't do this. With head chef Eric gone, Gordon is hoping sous chef Drew can rise to the occasion. That was a tough one tonight. Oh, very much Yeah, so. yeah, very tough. Don't get down in the dumps. Tonight was shit. Very much Clearly, so. at its best. But you don't need me telling you that, because that was embarrassing. Very much. Yeah? Is that how you run it? Hell no. Good. Tomorrow, we go again. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. I need you. All right. Yes? Thank you. Good night. Good night. I'm glad Eric's not in our kitchen anymore, because maybe it'll give me an opportunity to step up and do something. OK. That was embarrassing. Not only a bad morning, but a bad evening. For every plate we put out there this evening, we were losing what little reputation we had left to salvage this place. What chance would we have of getting all those tickets out? There was no chance. To put it bluntly, that chef. Possibly the worst chef in America today. The quicker you put a man like that out of his misery, it's the biggest favor you've done for him and the restaurant. OK, tomorrow's a new day. I've got Drew. That's what I've got left to work with. What's his strengths? Uh, I would say pizzas, calzones. Um, his lasagna is awesome. Right. Drew is the only saving grace I've got there. I've got to work with him tomorrow. I've got to be by his side tomorrow and start from scratch. OK? Good night. Thank you. I think Drew will step up, and I think if he gets some confidence behind him, I think he can do it. The last 24 hours was one of the toughest days ever spent in a restaurant. Last night, we did get rid of the chef, which was a positive move. Now I need Drew to step up to the mark, Jeremy to support his mother more. I got here early this morning, so I'm going to check out the place properly with no interference. Jesus. Christ almighty, where do you start in a place like this? Roast beef, dating back when? Now, what is that there? Just me defrosting. Again, no sign of what it is. Fresh Palmer ham is caked in mold. This is outrageous. Look at it. It sticks to your fucking hand. It's that rancid. Whoa, fucking hell. That's just over three months old. Jesus Christ almighty. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. After witnessing one of the worst kitchen walk-ins he has ever seen, Gordon moves on to an area outside the kitchen that restaurants are judged upon, the bathroom. One of the best ways to check the hygiene of any restaurant is always through his bathrooms. Turn that on and turn the lights off. Right. This could be quite scary. Oh, my good God. Green and yellow identifies bodily fluids. Any form of bleach or any form of cleaning will be identified through the color blue, but the body fluids on here is extraordinary. Look, as high as the ceiling. Oh, my god. Even the ceiling's caked in it. Oh, my god. This is shocking. Wash your hands. Yeah. Honestly, I've seen enough. Let's get the fuck out of here. Disappointed by the state of the restaurant, Gordon is concerned about the family's commitment to its own restaurant. Right, got in early this morning, 
Stack a new day and I'm somewhat, not just confused, but disappointed, yeah? Come with me, let me show you something. How old is that? Tuesday. Tuesday? Oh, come on, guys. How old is this? Oh, hold it and smell it. Touch it. Sticky. Ugh. Let's come outside. The walk-in is just rubbish, really. It looks like shit. It's horrible. It's old. Probably about as old as Eric. This is the killer for me. Pass it round. It's three months old. And then, look, only in California. What in the fuck is that? It made me sick. I hated to see it. We talk about cleaning out the refrigerator, making sure things are clean all the time. And to my surprise, they aren't. Nyla, the state of that fridge in there confirms whoever's running this place in terms of kitchen management has given up. They don't give a fuck about you, and they don't give a fuck about standards. I went into the bathrooms, and that's where it got worse. I need two minutes with you. Uh, you start taking that out, yeah? Um, hey, get a bin, get every ounce of dirt out of there. Having a dirty refrigeration unit is one thing. Having a filthy bathroom is something that fucking scares the hell out of me. This thing here detects body fluids. Just have a look at this. That's body fluids up there? That there has got nothing to do with any form of cleaning. Look at the fucking state of this. Green, 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 green. But here's where it gets really scary. How the hell is it up there? It looks like some of you may have peed on the ceiling, the walls, the doors. You know, could be throw up. I can't even imagine, you know. I mean, it made me sick. I didn't even want to touch the door and I'm coming out myself. Bring your son in. Yeah, I'm not going in there. My god. This is body fluids. Body fluids on the ceiling. Uh huh. People are peeing. Up on the ceiling. Well, pretty good maybe. at that. As Nyla shows her sons the bathrooms, Gordon's inspection continues at the kitchen prep area. What in the fuck is going on here? It just shows that there's no bleach. You know, these walls probably haven't been washed. Come, oh, you're hot. What in the fuck are they? Look at that there. Holy shit. Jimmy, come here. People pissing on the ceiling. What? What is that? That's supposed to be his meatballs. Good God. Have a look. Those are from Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl Sunday? Yes. What is that? That looks like raviolis. What? Soaking in water. Ugh. I need to start stepping up, taking the reins, taking control, and doing what I need to do. My big worry is this is not difficult to spot. You could spend 10 minutes after every night's service behind the bar, walking through the kitchen, and turning this place upside down. And you don't need to be a fucking rocket scientist to understand that this place is in desperate need of support. Before I go any further, I want the fucking place clean up. Fuck me. After a full day of cleaning, Gordon realizes that if there is any chance of relaunching this restaurant, he has to turn his attention to Chef Drew. Drew, right now, I want you and I to go and cook some pizzas. And I'd like Jeremy, Nyla, to taste them. I've got a little trick on my sleeve. This is a secret between you and I. OK, I want to find out if they can actually tell the difference between a frozen pizza to something freshly made. That goes in, OK? Array of ingredients, fresh, yeah, vibrant, exciting. Let your imagination go wild and create, yeah, the ultimate pizza. OK, yeah. let's go. Who's the chef of this place? I guess I am now. That's right, eh? While Drew creates his own signature thick crust pizza, Gordon is preparing a special thin crust pizza that will be on Casa Roma's new menu. Lovely. Working with Chef Ramsay was, like, one of the best things ever. Like, oh, my god, I just worked with a world-class chef. Frozen pizza. And yours? Right, ready? Huh? Nice. OK. So two nice pizzas. I'm going to be looking for a verdict on both of you. I mean, I 
I like this one. Mm -hmm. Good. Same for Jeremy. Big Same. one as well. Yeah. I'm so glad you chose that one there, yeah? Because this one here was frozen, yeah. cheap shit. I was shocked when Chef Ramsay told me the one pizza was frozen because I thought it tasted a lot like our pizza we had. <laughs> the good news is both you know your pizzas. Now let me get you my pizza. So this is a thin crust. I like this too. These two mm -hmm. are the type of pizzas that should be on your menus. We are going to relaunch this restaurant and we are going to shout from the rooftops how good these pizzas are. I'm happy. Well done. Very nice. In order to transform Casa Roma, Gordon and his team needed a full day to turn this broken down Italian restaurant into a contemporary pizzeria. Nice to see you guys. How are we feeling? Uh, nervous. 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 Now, just have a look at the new decor at the outside of the new Casa Roma. Take off your blindfold. Nice. Wow. Nice new oh, colors. Yeah. The concrete jungle is gone, yes? The Italian flag. We've got the most amazing size, Casa Roma Pizzeria. But look at the windows. It felt like we were in prison before. Now it's more inviting. I yes? love it. Are we ready to see the new interior? Okay. Let's go. Come through. Come through, come through, come through. Come through. Oh oh. I was shocked beyond shocked. I looked like a bright new pizzeria. That's the crazy. We've got a thing nice I've ever new seen. bright pizzeria. Oh Carpets have gone. Oh the booths have gone. Chairs relined, new colors. And the restaurant's being painted from top to bottom. God, look at the floor, and I love it. No more hideous rugs, no more carpets to clean. Just nice. Come through. Look. Uh, uh, look at these new chairs. The bar has been sanded and stained twice throughout the night. And now we have a theme coming through. We were trying to be fine dining, and then we had the bar, and it was like two different countries. Now it's all blended together, and we're one big pizzeria, and everybody can come and have fun now. This place needs to celebrate its 50th year with a comeback. We are going to hold the first annual Casa Roma Pizza Eating Challenge. Yeah, thank you. Hey. I love this. You happy? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> In recent years, the community's perception of Casa Roma is as a bar with an inferior Italian restaurant attached. Gordon knows this restaurant now has to reintroduce itself as the new happening pizzeria in town. Thank you very much indeed. Welcome to the first ever Casa Roma Pizza Eating Challenge. Excellent. It was great to see that many people supporting us today and actually getting out and being part of the relaunch. OK. Contestants, are we hungry? Yes. 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 Are we ready? Are we yes. yes. Five minutes. On your marks. Eat. Let's go. Yeah. Come on, guys. Take some water. It goes out a lot easier. I can't do it. Come on, Jimmy. Yeah, eat that, man. Jimmy is substituting for Jimmy. <laughs> We have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Congratulations to Andre! The pizza eating contest was definitely a fun way of spreading the word that Casa Roma has changed, there's a new look to it, and there's a new menu. Give it up, please. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Four hours prior to relaunch, Gordon goes over the new dishes. This is doable. Uncomplicated, nothing frozen, and freshly home-baked pizzas. Wow. Chicken wings, served with a cherry pepper sauce. Stuffed mushrooms, bit of a house speciality. Bruschetta, simple. Look at it, it's a lot more condensed, yeah? It's cooked to order, it's fresh. OK, good, get familiar with the food, have a little taste. The menu is easier, it's lighter. It's more sufficient. It's, it should be great. How good, huh? That's crazy. Tonight, honestly, for me, is one of the most important nights in 50 years. We've got to make a mark. Yes? Yes. Absolutely. Tonight's the night. Tonight is definitely the night. God bless Casa Roma. Let's go, yes? 
are we all doing tonight? Thank you. Drew! Yeah, first order on, most important. Let's go. I want to shine for Chef Ramsay today, and it would be silly not to because I have the best opportunity ever that I've ever had in my life to actually show that I can handle it. So we got our setups for the mushrooms, yep. wings, and garlic knot. So we're ready. Good. Hi, guys. How you doing? Are we ready to order? For relaunch dinner, Drew has Nyla's son, Jimmy, assisting with calzones and pizzas. Put the dough on and stretch it all the way out till it's even with that. Jimmy had to be back here to be solid and pick up the pace a little bit. And he's never done that before. Try not to make love to it, and you'll make it happen, OK? We're working on the calzones right now, please. The wings. You're welcome. I'll be right back with the other two. Not very good. Those are good. Those are good. So get, get her back here. The whole evening started, and everybody was in a rush, and all of a sudden, Food was going out cold. Drew, they complained that these chickens are bloody in the center. They're not even hot. Quick refund. Oh, man, I was rather embarrassed when the chicken came back. I was like, oh, come on. Not. Nah, we're not starting like this, you know? I got to relax and not try to rush things that take time. That is the second time she's brought that back, and that is not her gut. It's her raw. Again? Yeah, they're raw. Okay. It was extremely embarrassing. Chef Ramsay was completely disgusted, as well as I. Fuck me. Same fucking table. There's a second fucking bowl. Look at me. They've got to go in the pan and in the oven. Not even hot in the center. What's going on? Not good enough. Come on. Once is a fucking joke. Twice is just disgusting. No rush. I know. On the I'm week. just trying to tell everybody. You know. Just keep working. I don't know what the hell that thing is. Jimmy, this is your first attempt at a calzone ever, and it's the worst one I've ever seen, but it's cooked. It was just the size of the fucking thing. Is that for two? It's a large. The calzone looks huge. You could probably feed about five people with it. Jimmy. Yes? The calzones, yeah, are huge, yeah? Yeah, be careful of the size. Oh, look at all the cheese. <laughs> I thought I had a large. <laughs> you should have just got one of those. You could feed the station. I but I think it's huge. Cut down the size of the car zone. Yeah? That can fill an entire football end zone. Look at the size of it, yeah? I want them coming back for more, yeah? The other ones are better. Jesus Christ. I need some form of quality to control, guys, yeah? It's like a loaf of fucking bread in there. Most important thing here is fucking standard. You slow down and pay attention to detail, yeah? Okay. Has this pizza been started no, yet? It just got up there in the you window. Want, you want to go ahead and take that order and start looking at it? It's coming because he fucked up and he had to make another one. It's a calzone. He's getting yeah. beat up over here. Take a deep breath. Stop pushing me and just chill. OK. You're making me hurry shit up. I can't okay. have anything to fucking do with. Go for it. Fuck. This is unbelievable. Drew now is starting to feel the pressure, and it's showing. Cracks are appearing. He's fighting with the owners, fighting with the chefs, and he's not careful. This place is going to start sinking. What a way to celebrate 50 years. Hold on, Jan. Do not take that. With orders in the kitchen backed up. Don't tell me change OK, sorry. Customers have a lot of time on their hands. we got to pull it together. We're like this rag right here right now, you know? we got to pull it together. OK, I need a large deluxe calzone and a small deluxe calzone. The mushroom calzone's fire. I got the calzone up. The calzone's in, right? Yes, yes. OK, thank you. In a dramatic turnaround, head chef Drew has finally taken Gordon's advice by taking complete control of the kitchen. This is your mushroom calzone. And orders are moving out to the customers promptly. Drew is doing a great job. He stepped up to the plate. I'm real proud of him. Mm. That is good. That looks pretty good, too. This one goes to the bar right here. Thank you. It's so nice to actually see food coming out fast. It's pretty good, huh? I think the new menu is a huge success because it's just easier. Yeah. Bye, guys. Yes. It was so good. I yes, I know, and we're taking it home. That it, guys? I pulled it off. Thank God for Ramsey. <laughs> OK, good. Well done. After a most impressive turnaround, Gordon has some final words for the staff. I know I put a fork and a spoon on the wall, yeah? But you didn't have to make the fucking calzone to match it. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. What was that, for a tent top? Yeah. Cut them down. We're here to make money, not give it away. Yeah. Good. Now you've tasted it. Make it work. We will. Oh, yeah. We're going to keep each other you. motivated on this. Considering we have a new menu, new chef, New look. If we couldn't make this restaurant work, we'd definitely be idiots. Trust me, if everyone does their bit, 
three months down the line, this place is going to be rocking. My heart's here. He saw that. He saw that it's a dream of mine. I just want to, I want to make it live. What a week. When I first arrived, that had to be the worst ever Italian restaurant going. Then we made some drastic changes, promoted the chef, reinvigorated the owners, and turned this place into a really nice, classy pizzeria. Only hope now, Lancaster embraces it. But one thing's for sure, that has to be the biggest fucking calzone I've ever seen in my entire life. Holy mackerel.